I was reincarnated as the youngest son of the strongest magical family, but awakened a low-level shadow magic. Meanwhile, my two older brothers awakened perfect level earth and fire magic. As a result, my father passed on the family legacy to my brothers and decided that they would protect me and ensure my prosperity. However, when I was still in my mother's womb, I kicked and punched them, even kicking them out with one kick. It was because I obtained the sixth brother's card drawing system, which allows me to gain villain points by doing immoral things and draw cards. So, after they were born, their faces were covered in bruises. They not only didn't hold a grudge against me but also let me choose the most beautiful exclusive maid in the family to take care of my life. I also gained a thousand villain points. Then, I couldn't wait to press the draw button and do a 10 consecutive draw. I drew the primary talent of shadow magic and proficiency in the Lionheart Empire's universal language. In an instant, a surge of abstract knowledge flooded my brain, and at the same time, a layer of black-purple halo covered my young body. It was the system bestowing me with magical talents. It turns out that the feeling of becoming stronger just by moving my hands is so wonderful. A few days later, when the maid, Kelsey, was bathing me, usually, as an exclusive maid, they are not allowed to bathe with the young master or miss, but I didn't like that. In theory, the infant stage is when I am the most uninhibited and the best time to earn villain points. How could I be confined by these foolish worldly rules? So, during my first bath, I struggled not to go into the water. I struggled with all my might, and in the end, I grabbed Kelsey's collar and didn't let go. This indirectly enlightened them. After obtaining my parents' consent, Kelsey would bathe with me every time, and in the absence of outsiders, she truly didn't treat me as a young master. The heavenly enjoyment, coupled with the constantly updated villain point acquisition record in the lower right corner of my vision. Perhaps this is the correct way to open this system. In just the time it takes to bathe, the system told me that peeping at a cute made bathing earns me plus 500 villain points. And this is the result of her restricted identity. The system uses my identity as the benchmark, adding bonuses upwards and reducing them downwards. If it were my biological mother bathing me like this, I estimate that the villain points given would be more than tripled. But let's forget about having my own mother bathe me. As the saying goes, you have to start training children from a young age and the offspring of a noble family is no exception. Just one week after being born, my parents brought in an enlightenment teacher. It's quite absurd when you think about it, but it seems like my father doesn't care whether we can understand or not. The main focus is on cultivation. After finishing lunch, Kelsey carried me to another room and placed me in a specially customized child seat. Our teacher was a female teacher who was directly borrowed from the local preschool. Named Becky, she is famous for teaching children, but I doubt her abilities will be effective on infants and Becky is temporary, she will leave sooner or later. So, I don't want to put much effort into her. But she pointed at a familiar man on the blackboard and called out, Daddy. Then, I repeated it more than 20 times without getting tired of it. Just as I was about to cooperate, the system's prompt suddenly sounded, intentionally not cooperating with the teacher's teaching. The antagonist value increased by 100. A conversion formula immediately appeared in my mind. Not cooperating once is 5 antagonist points. I ignored her a total of 22 times just now, so I gave a total of 110 points. On the 60th time, the teacher finally broke down. She lowered her voice and started hysterically, both afraid of scaring the children and disturbing the maids outside. She grabbed her hair, wanting to vent her helplessness and anger. This contradictory feeling was driving her crazy. It's this little son again. He must have some problem. Why does he always go against me? Just when the teacher was desperate, the corner of her eye suddenly caught my lips moving making a motion like dad. Seeing that there was finally progress in teaching, the teacher forcibly calmed down her restlessness and secretly comforted herself. He's just a stupid boy who doesn't understand anything. Why bother with him? However, in the next moment, the teacher spread open her hands, and between the opening and closing of her lips, the incantation had already been completed. The sincere and warm flames, like my heart, burned passionately. Then, in her palm, a dazzling red flame suddenly rose, without any warning. The flame floated, and I finally knew what the talent for magic meant. In the blink of an eye, it was time for dinner. During that time, I sprayed corn soup at my brothers and then climbed onto the table and smeared cake on my second brother's face, successfully gaining 100 antagonist points. After dinner, Kelsey held me and took me to the meditation room in the castle, which was specially designed for shadow magic practitioners. It was already arranged as the most suitable place for practicing shadow magic. Crystals rich in shadow magic were piled up like small mountains in the corner. I could intuitively feel the energy continuously flowing into my body, merging with the energy I already had, lingering throughout my body. The host is currently in an environment rich in shadow energy, detecting the residual innate aura, 
The energy will cooperate with the innate aura to transform the host's body to the degree most suitable for this attribute energy. Current progress is 1 out of 10. 0, 0, 0. After 1 minute, it becomes 2 out of 10. 0, 0, 0. Seeing this, I was immediately overjoyed. Originally, upgrading the shadow talent to intermediate level required 10. 0, 0, 0 antagonist points. But now I can achieve the same effect with the innate aura that the baby possesses. The most important thing is that I don't need to spend extra antagonist points, commonly known as free loading. However, the progress of only one per minute is a bit embarrassing. To reach 10, 0, 0, 0, I would need to stay here without eating or drinking for 7 days. Even if he wanted to stay here, his parents would not agree. Babies need a lot of sleep. This is a limitation that this body will inevitably bring. If I can't extend the time spent here, then I need to increase the absorption efficiency. I sat on the cushion. Looking at the previous chat records of the system with a determined gaze, it is known that people slowly absorb the free magic power in the air into their bodies, and the amount determines their talent. In other words, the higher the talent, the more energy they can absorb, and the faster the efficiency. If the talent is raised to another level, will the efficiency of absorbing energy increase? And will the progress increase faster? This should be the only option at the moment. It's just 10, 0, 0, 0 antagonist points. Looking at my savings, a total of 9, 900 antagonist points. I just need to earn 100 more. That would be a great experiment. If I can really improve the efficiency, even if it's just a little, I have enough confidence to upgrade my talent to the advanced level within a year. And the cost is only 10, 0, 0, 0 antagonist points, which is an investment that won't lose in any way. It's easy to get 100 antagonist points by having a meal or spraying my brothers. The next day when I came to the meditation room, I already had 10, 0, 0, 0 antagonist points in my pocket. Whether my grand plan can be achieved depends on this moment. When I pressed the upgrade button, the 10, 0, 0, 0 antagonist points were cleared, and at the same time, the surrounding shadow energy became restless. The sudden change almost made the mage lose control over them. The mage's eyes were full of disbelief he didn't do anything. According to the contract between him and the duke, he didn't even touch these energies. Why did the dead energy move on its own? He didn't even think about me. In the end, he couldn't come up with a reason and could only attribute everything to celestial movement causing geological changes. When the energy returned to calm, it was as if nothing had happened. The mage relaxed and went back to daydreaming as usual. The system gave a prompt right after. Shadow talent upgrade completed. From beginner to intermediate, I waited anxiously for a minute staring at the progress bar. This time, it directly added 6 points. It seems that upgrading talents can really improve efficiency. I suddenly realized that sitting still like this is also a wonderful thing. But at this rate, staying here for 3 hours every day will take 93 days to advance to the next level. I secretly made up my mind to seize every opportunity to earn villain points during these 93 days. I always managed to make Kelsey giggle while taking a bath and always fought to stick close to my cheap dad and mom. Professor Becky's enlightenment class always dragged on 50 times before harvesting. After 93 days, I finally had a bountiful harvest, with villain points reaching over 60,000, half of which were provided by Professor Becky. The most important thing is that the shadow talent, accumulated over time, has advanced from intermediate to advanced, but it seems limited by innate energy. This time, it takes one minute to add 10 points. I can feel that the shadow magic around me is under my control. Not a single bit of shadow magic can escape my will. If that mage only gathers these magic powers without controlling them, like an adult intentionally going easy on a child, those talents inferior to mine will instantly lose control over these energies. This is the suppression brought by talents. In actual combat, when two mages of the same level and talent attributes fight, the one with higher talent will be able to control the free magic particles on the battlefield. They can slowly replenish themselves with these particles, while their opponents cannot. In this game of give and take, the person with higher talent will undoubtedly win. This is almost a consensus among everyone. It is precisely because of this that people in this world value talent so much. One year passes in the blink of an eye. The upgrade progress of the shadow talent finally got stuck at half. It's not that I can't handle it, but the system prompt says that the innate energy has completely disappeared. This result is acceptable. During this half year, I have accumulated 180, 000 villain points. At this rate, I can quickly make up for the shortfall. Just the thought of being able to receive a perfect level talent reward when I go online makes me excited. Currently, I have a total of 241, 000 in savings, but I don't plan to put it all into talent upgrades. Since I have this card drawing system, the only time I drew a card was when I was in the womb. So I decided to draw 100, 000 from it first. Let's have a satisfying thousand consecutive draws. 
Fish for a premium card pool opportunity on the side. I'll do it. In the middle of the night, Domi suddenly sat up in a state of shock from his dying sickness and turned his head to look around him. His two older brothers were sleeping like dead pigs in the two cribs next door. And in the big double bed, his parents were still asleep as well. Although not sure if a high mage and an archmage were mentally awake, but he was drawing cards in his own crib. It shouldn't have alarmed his two oldest. Finally I can get over the card drawing addiction. I've been growing grass for a whole year. Those who don't know would think I've quit drugs. He spat as he tapped on the system panel to the card drawing interface, which was a huge disc with a wide variety of things etched on it. With excitement in his heart, he pressed 10 consecutive draws 100 times in a row. And then a whole bunch of thank you for your patronage and a series of prompts for obtaining items brushed his screen. Energy Potion X66. Inspiration Potion X5. Night Vision Potion X7. Potion of Trauma X48. Strength Enhancement Plus 0. 7. Mental Strength Enhancement Plus 0. 3. Agility Enhancement Plus 2. Staff Crafting Diagram, White Legal System of Your Choice, X6. Staff Crafting Diagram, Green Legal System of Your Choice, X3. Staff Crafting Diagram, Purple Wind, X1. Lionheart Empire Noble Etiquette, LV, Max. Thank you for your patronage X822. Premium Card Pool Reward. Forging Arc Breathing. Through the unique breathing rhythms in the subtle nourishment, all-round strengthening of the physical body. The longer the time the more obvious the effect, transformed into a rapid breathing, can be in a short period of time burst out beyond the usual power. But afterwards will have relative side effects. Rewards have been issued. Items have been stored in the system space. Note that the system space is unable to store items other than the rewarded items. Current attribute changes, strength, 1 1, 7, agility, 1 3, mental power, 1 1, 3, the average human attributes are calculated by adding 1 to all of them at 1 year older, and each attribute of an 18 year old adult is 18, and so on, and so on, and it decreases by 0, 5 per year after exceeding the age of 55, it is just the average value and it can't be applied to everyone, the average is just an average, can't be applied to everyone, in the game, adding a point is just adding a point, the value change, but this system is very real, the strength attribute increases, it will forcibly tear his muscle fibers, and then repair, to achieve the same volume of muscle density increase, so as to strengthen the strength, agility reinforcement, on the other hand, focuses on the optimization of the reaction nerves so that they can receive signals and transmit them faster, as for spiritual power, it was a bit more metaphysical, Domi wasn't sure how it operated, all he knew was that he could drive more mana, which should be interpreted as an increase in blue volume, whichever of the three it was, it needed to destroy his body, and the pain made him wail, so the child's cry in the middle of the night became a parent's nightmare, in the pain he fell into a coma without realizing it, and when he woke up it was noon the next day, as soon as he opened his eyes, he was shocked to find a large circle of people around the small crib, his parents, Kelsey, and a bunch of white coats wearing the Sven guy. This kind of battle led him this social horror for a time do not know what to do. Do not know that he thought he was vivisected. Is resting on the operating table for a group of people to visit it. Cherished specimen, the most useless magical scum cub in Blofeld's history. At that moment, a white coat realized that Domi had opened his eyes and immediately shouted. Oi oi oi, young master has woken up. A group of people immediately surrounded him. And Grace even directly came in. A pair of large eyes covered in watery mist as if she would cry out in the next moment, hugging him with tears of joy. God bless. Among the white coats there was a man whose demeanor was clearly different from the other white coats, with a slightly disheveled and fluffy center parting, wearing gold-rimmed glasses, and a serious look with an unparalleled confidence. He was standing beside Carlos, and said blandly, Carlos, I told you it was okay. Carlos, on the other hand, frowned his sword brows and asked in a deep voice, What's going on Garen? Domi was fine before. Why did he stay unconscious after making a scene at night? The man named Garen is Blofeld's royal physician, and used to be a close friend of Carlos. His medical skills are very skillful, but even he didn't have a final conclusion after checking, and held his glasses a bit awkwardly and said, I didn't check for any illnesses, but during the examination I realized that the young master's physical quality is clearly different from that of ordinary children. Take young master Argyle as an example. He has been healthy since birth, and his future physique is expected to be quite robust but even with such talent, with the current physical qualities he can't compare to young master. If we compare Argyle to one, then Dominic is three. A threefold difference? How much will that widen to in the future? Carlos asked curiously. None of us can predict about the future. Maybe it will even out. Or maybe it will widen the gap by six, seven or even ten times. It's too hard to say. The only thing I can tell you is that the young master has a remarkable talent in this area. 
and this coma could be an opportunity to realize his potential. I can't think of any other reason other than that. With that said Galen bid farewell to Carlos and left the castle with his large group of white lab coat students. A superior talent in physical fitness? Carlos relayed Galen's remark to Grace, by which time Kelsey had taken Domi to the bath, leaving the couple alone in the bedroom. That's right, Carlos nodded assuredly, confident that while the gods had closed the door for Domi, they would surely open an extra window for him. Domi doesn't have a talent for magic, so why shouldn't he have a talent for physical arts? That's why I decided to give that department to Domi. Grace undoubtedly thought of something, and instantly lost her color. Even her voice couldn't help but grow a few decibels louder as she spoke. You mean that department that you Blofeld made your fortune off of? Are you kidding? Carlos was jealous of Blofeld's history of making a fortune. It was a dark and bloody history. No, I'm not joking. Gressa stood up violently and looked at Carlos with an angry face. You promised me that you would protect Domi, and now you're letting him hang out with those cold-blooded guys who lick blood from the tip of a knife? I did say that I would protect Duomi, and also give him more resources, and that I wouldn't stop him from taking whichever path he wanted to take in the future, and I will guarantee all of these promises, but who can guarantee that the Blofeld family will not decline for a long time, once we decline and run out of power, who will protect Domi, our children will be the remnants of the Blofelds, seen as thorns in the side and thorns in the flesh by our enemies who will not rest until they are killed, a rich family man, or a young man pursuing his dreams capable of dealing with their pursuit? I just want Domi to practice some hard skills before I'm too weak to do so. To become stronger, so strong that the people who are after him will have to weigh their own weight. So that he, who is not good at magic, can live in this world that belongs to magic. Carlos and Grace didn't argue for long. On the basis of good couple's emotion, they soon reached a compromise. To be precise, it was Grace who acquiesced to Carlos's plan. It was true that they as parents had to protect their children. But no matter how good a parent's protection was, it was still not as good as having the ability to protect oneself, and Carlos had said so much precisely to elucidate this point. There were more important things for them to do today than to argue unnecessarily. The Blofeld family's three children had all turned one-year-old, and today was the time to hold the birthday feast. As the hosts, the two of them had to change into their best spirits to greet all the guests and share with everyone the joy of their own children's safe passage through the year. By then, the most important people in the whole empire would be there, and the whole castle was mobilized. All the maids are under the strict scheduling of the head made to set up the venue, prepare all kinds of details, lights and colors, the kitchen has been busy since early in the morning, Osmond even brought hundreds of thousands of lords jurisdictional army will be the castle layer by layer to protect the castle, do not want to be a little bit of hidden dangers, see the ants nest will be poured with boiling water to smash, the butterflies have to be torn off half of the wings, and even the dog came in to be slapped, in order to prevent the transformation department of the mages sneak in. Festive red silk even from the castle to the territory of the main road. Now all the lords know that the lords of the family child has a week old. And as the main character of this banquet, Domi was actually the last to know. He was changed into an exquisite baby clothes by Kelsey, and then put into the most prominent place in the lobby. And his two brothers became a real mascot, which was called, let the guests who came from afar to have a little bit of joy. Domi wasn't sure what kind of abstract mix of traditions this was, but after all, it was a foreign world so it was good to do as the Romans did. The party didn't start until this evening, and the daytime was mostly spent setting up the grounds. Relying on this opportunity Domi had the chance to see just how the normally godlike headmaid was oppressing the little maids. According to Kelsey's description, the headmaid Catherine was a very serious adult woman, unable to tolerate a bit of sand in her eyes, demanding perfection in everything, an uncompromising obsessive compulsive and perfectionist. The fact is also true, Catherine stood in the center of the entire venue holding a thick document in her arms, pointing out to each maid to set up the task, the time pinpointed every second, each maid just finished the work in hand, the next second, the head maid will immediately send her to the next task, Jenny, is the wine ready, if not, hurry to the cellar and fetch it, you've got a champagne tower to build, so hurry up, Maggie, where are the favors for each guest, the numbers don't add up, are you sure your math wasn't taught by a gym teacher, recheck it for me, at this moment, Domi immersed herself in the oppressive feeling from the head maid, as if she was facing her former homeroom teacher, but if we don't talk about the previous stereotypes, Catherine was actually a solid beauty, she didn't need to wear a maid's outfit, and her daily routine was always a set of vests just like the butler's, which was tight but also reflected her shapely figure to the fullest extent, long legs water snake waist, not inferior to Kelsey's voluptuous peaks, as well as a face as cold and proud as an iceberg, a head of long black and straight hair falling down to her waist, if she changed clothes and makeup, put on a blue and white gown and crystal high heels, and said that she was a princess from the Republic of the North, 
Domi would also choose to believe it. It's so condescending to be a little head made here with us. Domi sighed as she did. And then look around. The three soaring exclusive maids now only need to take care of their brother in three. Nothing to do and even stoned melon seeds, drinking afternoon tea, chatting happily and even giggled out. So leisurely, and shrewd and capable head made in stark contrast, Duomi can not help but for Catherine to hold up. It is really a god with a bunch of pits ah. Time flies, Domi dozed off and the effort of the sky is dark, but the entire lobby is still shining brightly. Outside the lights and colors, will be as dark as day. Luxury carriages are lined up in front of the castle as if they don't need any money. And well-dressed men and women walk down from the carriages in twos and twos, wearing polite smiles, throwing greetings to acquaintances, and stepping on the red carpet with their expensive boots and shoes, they slowly enter the castle interior, and their family is definitely the brightest star of the day. And this is the strongest lord's family's brand name. Domi's young mind was strongly shocked. Since he was a child he had never seen this kind of gathering of high-class people. This was the first time, when the big shots crossed the threshold. The doorman acted as a lackey who shouted out his identity at ancient banquets. The Greenville family head has arrived. Master of House Triple X has arrived. Prince Carpe has arrived. As Blofeld's house lord, Carlos was at the door to receive all the guests at the beginning. And after Domi's observation, Carlos's attitude towards the Greenville house lord and Prince Carpe was more than a little bit better and a little bit more cordial. And it looked like he had a good relationship with his own family. At that moment, Carlos led the two men toward them. And the three exclusive maids who were stoned next to them had long since put away their stalls and stood next to them in a serious manner to serve. Mitchell, Carpe, come see my three sons, Mitchell said with interest. Carlos, I've heard that two of your three sons have awakened quite a good talent. Are you interested in getting a baby marriage? Prince Carpe also chimed in. Then I can be a witness. Mitchell Greenville, has a head of flowing azure hair, looks are also top, the second largest noble family in the South Greenville's head of the family. In the South status are second only to Blofeld. In order to express cordiality, friends generally call him Mitch. More smooth point. And Prince Carpe's head is bigger. Is the brother of the current emperor of the empire? The hands of the power of the heavens. No matter who came to have to give him a face. To see his people is see the emperor in person. This time is also because of the emperor's busy official business before letting his brother to help out. According to the identity of the three. Should not have such intimate conversation. But who called them since childhood to play together? The relationship ironed to a stroke. Completely not as rumored as the outside world is incompatible. Talk about marriage is unusual. Carlos laughed. There is no hurry yet. The children's lifelong matters are still left for them to decide on their own. Let's do it. It would look like we're too heartless if we have to break up the lovebirds at that time. That's true. In the middle of the conversation they had already arrived in front of Domi. Carlos introduced the two one by one. When he introduced his two older brothers, they were obviously satisfied. But when it was Domi's turn their expressions became odd. Carlos hugged Domi and put on a look of pity. Although little Domi's magical talent isn't obvious. I'll still treat him well. Come on. Say hello to the two uncles. With that, Domi was handed by Carlos into Carpe's arms. The relationship between the three was indeed iron. Regardless of the child's talent. As long as it was his Carlos's child. Carpe treated it just as if it was his own. Being extra careful when holding him. And teasing him from time to time but he definitely didn't know what kind of medicine was hidden in Domi's stomach. Dang imperial prince ah, his status was higher than even his father's. How much villainous value could he give if he could screw him a little bit? Thinking about it could make his hands tremble and his little heart thump. So in full view of the public, Domi held back a pile of yellow-green snot. Puff 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 to Prince Carpe's expensive collar wipe. You have severely humiliated the prince of the empire. Villain value plus 1000. I blanch. So much. The first time to see four digits. Domi also flabbergasted for a moment, and then ruthlessly a moment. Snot tears spit collectively to the hole. If not just after the release of water, high and low have to come to a sh asterisk t all out. Only to see more than rice in the carpe body that is sticky and crying and hilarious. Coaxing and coaxing is not good. Tug and tug not to open. Make the three a burst of big head. Just kidding. A second is a thousand income ah. Uh, not in his body to rely on a few hours is not a big loss. Domi felt that he couldn't persecute carpe anymore or how diabolical it would be to grow up with one more prince-level character who hated him. So Domi stopped after taking 5,000 villain values, and was put back on the mat by Carlos, and was taught a lesson, although Domi didn't think he should have understood it, which translates to, next time, don't you dare. After his lecture Carlos went off to drink and brag with his two sworn brothers, leaving him and his two spiteful brothers to waste time where they were. After a while, the guests had almost arrived. The spacious lobby was filled with people, and the sound of their conversations was like a wave of voices. 
It was quite lively. They wore colorful dresses that made people dizzy. And what's even more fucked up is that almost everyone had to walk around in front of them, either pretending to say hello or touching his head. Hey look, the duke's kid is so nice and cute. Let me touch him. Let me touch him. Don't squeeze. Don't squeeze. I haven't touched it yet. I'm so damn tired of these guys. Don't be complained. Just come. Just bring some gifts. But also put here to pretend to touch. What do you want? Where Carlos couldn't see. Domi could see and hear. The group of aristocrats are not a few good things. Talking about all inseparable from the interests and transactions. The mouth of benevolence and morality. Doing net oppression and exploitation. And even use them as a capital to show off and compare. Domi from the bottom of his heart to feel disgusted. His previous life was also oppressed not light. But they are in the center of the vortex. And the aristocrats to deal with is necessary. The future he also have to learn to deal with the aristocrats. Every time he thought of this point of anorexia came up, and on the high math class want to go to sleep is the same reason. It was a good thing the nobles didn't have more time to continue to spoil him. As the lights slowly dimmed, Carlos appeared in the center of the lobby, on top of the steps connecting to the second floor, and began his speech to the guests, which consisted of nothing more than thanking them for coming and celebrating the child's first birthday, something that everyone was used to hearing, and which was the same for every family. After the speeches came the round dance, which many people were looking forward to, at such a high-end venue, where networking opportunities are everywhere. It's no wonder that most people are so enthusiastic. The women were holding the men's shoulders, the men were holding the women's waists, and they were dancing to a melodious and rhythmic concerto, a waltz that was uniform throughout the country. As far as Domi could see, even the champagne waiters were able to twirl around and deliver the wine to those who needed it, as if they were enjoying themselves. Indeed. It was hard to resist the urge to join in on the fun in such a colorful atmosphere. But unfortunately he couldn't dance. And this body wouldn't allow him to. But Kelsey could. The ball was an extremely inclusive social event. And as long as the host didn't mind. Anyone could join in on principle. And the maid was no exception. The plan passed. So Domi crawled aside to Kelsey and held out her hand for a cuddle. Kelsey understands in a second and quickly transfers Domi into her arms. Ah. It's a familiar feeling. The smell of home. What's wrong Domi? Are you hungry? Or do you want to shush? Kelsey said in a light tone. Like a safe word or training a dog. Whenever a person uttered a word, the other person would subconsciously think of something. And the same operation applied to babies. In Kelsey's eyes, Domi was already a child who could hear what eating and shushing meant. But that wasn't what he was doing. As he turned his head, kept his eyes on the dance floor, and made the occasional uh-uh sound, making it clear that he wanted to join in the fun. Can you hear me? Shouldn't you be able to hear me? I've made it so obvious. He wasn't running to earn villain value this time, but simply wanted to get on the dance floor with Kelsey. Maybe he wouldn't get this chance when he grew up, so he had to grab it while he could. Kelsey didn't fail him, and said with a thoughtful oh, so Domi wants to dance too. How is a baby going to dance? Argyle's exclusive maid wondered. He can't, but I can ah. Uh, just hold him like this. Today Domi is my male companion. Waltzing with a little baby? What a novel experience. Are you crazy, letting young Master Dominic be your date? If the master finds out about this, you'll be in big trouble. Edwards made kindly advised. Like this? Kelsey pondered for a while. Then it's good to ask the Lord and Lady first. Hey. As soon as the words left her mouth Kelsey carried Domi in her arms in the direction of Carlos. No matter how much the two maids tried to stop them they couldn't. Argyle's maid. A more robust maid. Sighed. I really don't know why Catherine chose such a bubbly little girl as her exclusive maid. Edwards maid. On the other hand covered her mouth and laughed. I do think she's quite a good match for young Master Domi. After saying that, she took an extra glance at this colleague beside her. You and young Master Argyle are also a good match. Dancing with Domi? Carlos took a sip of his red wine before looking over at Domi and Kelsey. Domi was staring at the dance floor in disbelief and Kelsey had an expectant look on her face. He smiled softly. Sure, why not? Go and have a good time. And be careful not to bump into anyone. Thank you, Master. After receiving permission, Kelsey was elated and bounced into the dance floor. Her long black and white dress fluttered in the wind, transforming into her wings and carrying her through the crowd like a lightweight elf. Her long pink hair was like silk, and the twirling dance steps drove the hair, wrapping her in Domi in a small world where there was only her and the not yet grown up young man in front of her. And when the four eyes met, it was as if Kelsey saw a touch of relief in Domi's deep, ice blue pupils. How can a child have such emotions? She shook her head darkly and put the matter behind her. The more important thing at the moment was to enjoy the time. Waltzing was taught in the school curriculum. It was a skill that every properly educated student knew. And even if she wasn't that proficient at it, it didn't stop her from enjoying the pleasure of dancing in the round, especially with a child that was very close to her own. 
Looking at the bright smile on the girl's face, Domi couldn't help but look away. Sweet and cute was one aspect. More importantly she had touched a deep chord in her heart, a place that had been bruised by the play of emotions, but was now slowly soothing the wounds with Kelsey's gentleness. How could someone who grew up without the love and care of a mom or dad ever feel this way? Although Carlos and Grace were good to him as well, it was Kelsey who truly gave him the love and healing he needed. A mere maid? No, no, no. She had become Domi's anchor, a presence that could never be replaced. After this song, this waltz, the clouds of the past and the bitterness of yesteryear were no longer his concern, for in the present moment, someone had already pushed open the door to a brand new life for him. Kelsey's waltz was very well danced, and was no match for the group of aristocrats. The most distinctive feature of the waltz was the agile dance steps, which did not follow the rules and regulations, but danced according to her own intentions. Each step fell on the beat of the background music. Even wearing high heels did not make her movements awkward. Everything was so natural. The school certainly didn't teach her that well, and Domi favored Kelsey's hard work and talent. In Kelsey's arms, Domi spun with her, looking up to see her confident eyes. Confident, elegant and aesthetic dance steps coupled with that unique beauty soon made her gain a lot of attention on the dance floor. The nobles who had practiced waltzes and ballroom dances since they were young marveled at her ability. A little maid was just a little maid, what made her better than all of them? However, the more envious and jealous people were, the more proud Domi was, and that was called honor and glory. Her hairy little head couldn't help but raise a little higher, her chin almost reaching the sky. Seemingly sensing Domi's mood, Kelsey also revealed a cheerful smile. Oh no, this Kelsey was so bright, the light directly overshadowed everyone. By now they had finished the inner circle. Dom had no regrets. Kelsey was a little tired after her fun, and it was time to leave. However, if they left, they still had to turn out slowly, or else they would disrupt the rhythm of the others, and it would be bad if they led to some trouble at that time. But just as Kelsey slowed down her rhythm and prepared to pass by a pair of men and women, her ankle suddenly wrenched, the heel of her shoe poking inward, and she lost her balance as her entire body fell to one side, taking Domi with her. The field of view shifted and tilted rapidly. Bang! With a muffled thud, Kelsey fell heavily to the ground, without any semblance of cushioning since the floor was smooth, and the sound was loud enough for everyone to look over. But even after her own fall, she hadn't let go of Domi in her arms. It was resting on Kelsey's arm that he wasn't hurt, but Kelsey couldn't say the same thing, having been in the rhythm of the waltz, there was inertia in the movements, and with such a fall, that inertia would have been applied to the injuries brought about by the impact, giving shock to the whole body, in addition to this there was the over amplitude breaking of the foot, and a certain amount of shattering of her elbow in order to protect Domi, all of this pain combined was enough to make a 16 year old girl lose her voice and cry out, but Kelsey knew that she couldn't cry out on such an occasion and could only shiver and curl up on the cold floor, holding her voice hard, the high heels came off her feet and fell on the floor not far away, while the other one was still there, but it looked more like she was in a mess, and her long, light pink silky hair was scattered all over the place, and compared to the previous splendor, it was like a swan that had fallen into the water in a panic, who, is it, Domi crawled out of Kelsey's arms and looked around with wide eyes, where was the closest pair, someone had definitely tripped Kelsey earlier to cause her to fall, he could vouch for that, the feeling couldn't have been more pronounced, soon enough, he locked on to the two people in the noisy crowd, both wearing evening gowns in dark grey hues, the woman's face, had deeper lines and an overly thin face that made her look like a bamboo pole, and the man was even more thievish looking, and had been glancing up Kelsey's legs so far, still edging upwards, and the basis for convincing him that these two were the culprits was this, he saw a bit of redness on the woman's ankle, that was obviously left after a collision of some intensity, boom, Seeing this scene after scene, Domi only felt a buzzing in his brain, as if a thousand-year-old volcano had suddenly erupted, and his anger could not be suppressed at all. Breathing also became rapid. The undeveloped chest drummed back and forth, a large amount of oxygen entered the body, but formed a magical cycle that was not at all different from the past. It was this marvelous and powerful feeling that made Duomi feel like he could even run. Forging method breathing, a term came to mind. It was a premium card pool reward sent once before from drawing a thousand and now it seemed that the premium prefix really lived up to its name. When a week-old half-baby who had just learned to walk appeared in the eyes of an adult, no one would think that such a little guy could run, but as soon as he did, everyone would be shocked by it, and that's how Domi thundered everyone around him. Just to see him struggling with his two short legs, his speed was not slow at all, and soon reached the feet of the two men. This is a three-year-old level of agility ah. Until then that man tried to crouch down, with a pleasant face, and tried to touch his head as if everything had nothing to do with him. The more he pretended like this the angrier Domi became, and although he wanted to rip his head off and play, 
it as a basketball. He couldn't t beat him yet, and the man was wearing long pants and boots, so he couldn't t bite it. So Domi then turned his target to the woman next to him. Her whole leg can be exposed to the outside world. Ah, at the moment, the moment of blacking out. Oh my God, he actually bit it with his mouth. Demon, a demon has possessed him. God help the boy. Somebody, someone pull the young master away. Amidst the gales of shock and screams from the onlookers, Domi actually hugged the woman's calf, then opened his mouth towards the calf belly with the most meat and bit it. At once, blood splattered everywhere. Of course, the teeth used to gnaw were not the incisors that had just grown out, but a set of magical teeth that he had coalesced in his mouth using the shadow mana in his body, modeled after the shape of a megalodon, with the shape of a jagged tooth, and each of his teeth was a triangular pointed cone. With such a physics compliant shape and the temporary strengthening of the bite brought about by the breathing method, Domi was still able to rip a piece of flesh from her leg with some force. Blood soared out as the muscle fibers tore apart one by one, finally leaving the body completely. The sensation of stripped flesh and blood made the woman almost faint from the pain, and when she subconsciously tried to fling the little guile on her leg out of the way she was stiffly stopped by her husband, the man at her side. Are you crazy? This is the duke's child. So bear with me. You can't touch a hair on his head even if he bites you half to death today. When the woman heard this, the mask of pain on her face grew even more, and together with her face it was almost too much to look at. It was then that the clamor of the grounds finally drew Carlos, Grace and the others in. What's going on? A calm and familiar voice came from outside the circle of spectators, and people consciously made a path so that Carlos could enter the scene, while Gressa, the two exclusive maids, and Mitch and Kate followed behind. The first thing Carlos saw was Kelsey who was lying on the ground in constant tears, his eyes jumped and his heart slowed down by half a beat, one of the better connected nobles stepped out and came up to Carlos's ear to tell him the story of what happened, though he obviously didn't find out any more details, what about my son, the friend pointed in another direction, young master Dominic ran towards there for some reason, run, a weak old can already run, Mitch's face was full of disbelief, because he also had a little daughter, only a few days younger than the three doms, and only just able to stand up until now, how come his friend's family's child could already run? Duke Greenville, I can assure you that I am not mistaken. Young Master Dominic did run on two legs, quite fast. And, and what? Carlos couldn't see his son. His patience was about to reach its limit. The nobleman's face showed some fear, and there was uncertainty in his tone. And, I also seem to have seen a violent anger from the young master's face, an expression of anger to the extreme. You have caused fear to spread. 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 Villain value plus 2150. You have caused a collective panic. Villain value plus 1W. The system's record swiped wildly, in total bringing Domi a total of 3W out of the gate. But he couldn't care less about that right now. He even bit out blood rage. Either this Jane Marker would be bitten to death or he'd be pulled away today. Eat Jack. This tone of voice was probably the one that appeared the most frequently. The woman's entire calf was now a bloody mess from the bite and the onlookers wanted to vomit when they saw it. Just then, Carlos and the others finally arrived at the scene, and while Grace covered her mouth at the sight of the gruesome sight, Carlos immediately stepped forward and pulled Domi away, looking at his son's bloodstained little face, eyes filled with tyranny and hostility, as well as the shadow magic braces in his mouth that had not yet faded. Carlos' first reaction was actually horror. Still, he kept this odd emotion to himself for now, it was more important to check on his son's well-being at the moment. He touched Domi up and down once and didn't see any injuries, then he let go of his heart, and directly picked up Domi and handed him over to Grace to bring him down, and didn't allow the perpetrator to stay for a second longer in such a crowded and crowded occasion. Kelsey is the same. The two maid colleagues for her after checking her injuries will carry her out of the lobby, back to the staff dormitory and then do the treatment. But even after the two parties had left, the gourds were still whispering. Cecil Cecil's voice was incessant, so Carlos just stood in place, sat with a batch face, and anyone in their right mind would know that Carlos was in a bad mood. Very bad. The maid of the family was injured. His son entered the moment of hunting. Six relatives. No one can be in a good mood. Gradually, no one dared to speak anymore. And this awkward atmosphere continued until the mood of the scene cooled down a little. And now was when the whole incident really needed to be resolved. Carlos recognized the couple. A rich merchant from out of town. With no noble background in his ancestry. A pure grassroots rebel able to be invited here still because he had a not-so-small investment in Blofeld Collar. However, their family's reputation is not good, and his wife is said to be an extremely narrow-minded person who can't see the slightest bit of good in others, and in her case, this point has reached a level of near paranoia. Although people do not look good, 
but everything must be better than others. Use, food, clothing, housing. As long as there is one thing not to the liking, she will drive her omnipotent husband to use the ability of money. He looked at the two men coldly, but maintained a certain politeness in his tone. You too, can you tell me what's going on? The man looked at his wife, who was already in too much pain to speak, and had no choice but to let him make up. Yuck, statement was made. The crowd of onlookers also eagerly awaited, wanting to understand exactly what kind of a thing to lead to this kind of tragedy. It's like this. The man opened his mouth to explain. My wife and I were dancing, and right at this moment, that made holding young master Dominic suddenly crashed over, probably because of carelessness and lack of control, and the two of us were lucky enough to dodge, but the maid unfortunately twisted her arm, the maid unfortunately twisted her foot and fell to the ground, later on, young master Dominic somehow came up and disliked my wife and not on her, I think it might be because he didn't understand the situation clearly and mistook my wife as the culprit, when the man finished stating everything, a large portion of the audience nodded their heads in recognition of his statement. The other party was just a small maid, while the man was a wealthy man on one side. No matter if it was a preemptive strike or a sense of class identity, it allowed the man to stand in a more favorable position, and more people chose to believe him. Is that all? Yes my lord, I can assure you that everything I say is true, and if anyone is around they can corroborate it for me as well. The man said this without his eyes fluttering or his heart skipping a beat. A veteran. All right. Even if he couldn't see the truth, Carlos had other means, then everyone has already heard the confession. Next, I will use a short period of retroactive magic to restore the scene all over again, so please join me in witnessing it. Hearing this, the man was almost so scared that shit came out of his anus, but the words had been put out, and there was no way there could be any room for retraction. At this moment, he could only pray to the gods that this trace magic wasn't that amazing, but what he didn't know was that Carlos was more powerful than just a duke title. As an Archmage class powerhouse, Carlos was even more famous for his rare time-based spell proficiency, which alone was enough for him to single-handedly take on the forbidden spellcasters without losing out. The district traceability scene was not as difficult for him as peeling a tea egg without injury. The crowd followed Carlos to the place where the accident happened. It was empty, and the diligent maids quickly cleaned up the scene, but that didn't bother them. In Carlos' memory, he clearly remembered where Kelsey was lying just now, and the more accurate the location was, the easier it was to trace back, and the clearer the picture became. Only Carlos slowly raised his right hand, and no one saw the process of his chanting. In the next second, gusts of silver shavings scattered from his palm, drifting down like large dandelions to the place where Kelsey had fallen. The silver shavings coalesced together, outlining the true impressions of four people, none other than Kelsey, who was holding Domi, and the two who were dancing next door. I've long heard that Duke Carlos' hand of time magic is very good. Now that I've seen it, it's really true now. Nah. The time system could be said to be a national treasure treasured magic system. Most people couldn't even see it once in their entire lives. So it was no wonder that some people would let out a gasp of amazement. Kabur. With a snap of Carlos's finger, the originally frozen image moved in the next second. Now everyone could see Kelsey. Even though she was holding Domi and wearing six centimeters heels, her posture was still stable and graceful. How could she have broken her foot with such a solid foundation? The man's confession was grossly inconsistent by this point, when everyone was wondering what exactly caused the maid to fall, someone suddenly pointed at Kelsey's ankle and shouted, look there, it seems like there's another leg intertwined hey, so saying everyone looked there, indeed, Kelsey's white ankle had an extra leg on the darker side behind it, which created the visual effect of interlocking, people's desire to explore was at its peak at this moment, and some people even switched angles to look at it, a nobleman purposely went around to the back, after seeing the scene in front of him he froze, then opened his mouth and let out a long and sympathetic fourth sound oh, Carlos immediately paused the scene and walked over to the noble's position, the other nobles were waiting in anticipation, they didn't know what was going on, but they wanted to know, it seems that the facts don't match what sir described, the tone of his voice was like a cold wind, and the simple few words seemed to contain magic power, causing everyone who heard it to feel their souls tremble, kaboom, another ringing finger. He turned the back of the screen in the direction of the crowd, and now everyone could see it, a dark leg deliberately kicking at Kelsey's ankle, and the area the woman used to strike the kick just happened to be where Domi saw the redness. As time flowed again, it became clear that it was that kick that caused Kelsey to lose her balance, even the buyers. I didn't expect them to be like this, looks like the rumors weren't wrong, I should have seen their ugly faces long ago, I want my investment back, now, now, the moment the truth came out. Countless pairs of eyes looked at the couple in unison. Contempt, disgust, disdain. That was people's silent crusade, and the real cruel crusade was still to come. 
Things like talk of suspending cooperation in economic endeavors and sanctions were all over the place. Whether they were just paying lip service or really wanted to do so, Carlos didn't care. He had his own measures. Carlos looked coldly at the man who fell to the ground. As if he was looking at a pile of trash, I'll give you one day to get out of Blofeld collar and confiscate all the property that you can't take with you. The full confiscation of what he couldn't take away meant that he could only choose to take away things like jewelry and gold coins. It didn't matter how many wagons he loaded up, but those real estate properties, such as land deeds, stores, and mansions, were included in the list of confiscated properties. This sentence from the Lord's mouth, that weight can be extraordinary, let you get out, you have to get out. The man immediately became anxious upon hearing this. He was a merchant from out of town yes, but he had made his fortune by relying on his business in Blofeld and now telling him to get out of here was equivalent to asking for his life. Half of his life's hard work had gone down the drain, since selling misery would never work, he would bring out the weapons of the law. The man's tone turned impassioned. Lord Lord, what you are doing is not permitted by the laws of the empire. His majesty the emperor has issued a decree to protect the legitimate interests of merchants throughout the empire. Personal property is sacred and inviolable. If Carlos tried to stiffen the law, it would be disregarding the legality of the property of everyone present and would be tantamount to offending everyone at once. He secretly snickered. No matter how powerful Blofeld was it was still a subordinate of the empire. How could a lord stand up to the emperor and the law? The masses would also be on his side once again. As long as he could keep his property here, he would have plenty of time to move elsewhere. So why worry about not having a day to rise again? Just as he was gloating, Carlos called for the butler. Subaru, go to the archive room and bring out all the black information about their family. I'd like to see just how much property is on the table in such a huge asset, and those that aren't, naturally, are considered confiscated. Carlos walked up to the man. The pressure belonging to the lord of a collar completely erupted at this moment, as if it was as terrifying as a flood beast. Sir, you seem to have underestimated the Blofeld family's dominance in their own territory. Our family has been rooted here for hundreds of years. Nothing can escape my eyes. I gave you face before, but unfortunately you didn't cherish it. How much of his own family's property was unseen? Others didn't know. Could the man himself not know? Almost seven out of ten were. Originally letting some blood, he could still take about half of it away. Now he could take a third of it all counted as the old gods opening their eyes. The man finally broke the defense. He only understood at this moment. A small businessman, want to get an inch in front of the behemoth, do not know good or bad, is an ant trying to shake the tree, do not know what to do. He lowered his head like a defeated captive lost his soul as if he recognized all, then turned around and wanted to leave with this wife who had accomplished more than she had done. Stop. At that moment, Carlos once again raised his voice to stop them. Those just now were only the punishments I gave to the despicable people from the perspective of a lord. In addition to that, you, along with your wife, intentionally hurt my family's maids, and even intentionally hurt my sons during their weekly feast. As the head of the house as well as a father, I am not that merciful, not waiting for the man to say anything else. Carlos' ice blue pupils instantly changed to a grayish color, and the long stream of time seemed to flow within them. At that moment, almost everyone felt that time slowed down, the gears of the pocket watch stopped turning, and the dust floating in the air slowed down to a crawl. Only the voice of Carlos speaking still echoed in the ears, like a heavenly punishment sent down by the gods, so solemn and irresistible. I grant you ten years of solitude to pay for the sins owed, the endless desert, the lightless sky, let you perch, and return at the end of the period. As the words fell, with the man at the center, time seemed to fall into a black hole, a prison, for the man, a second of time was lengthened to as long as ten years, while for everyone around him, ten years was reduced to as short as a second, the moment passes, everything is back to normal, the second hand on the clock is once again moving normally, the dust is drifting where it belongs, and the people once again feel in control, the man, on the other hand, was kneeling on the ground, his eyes as dull as a salted fish, his mouth slightly open, his saliva flowing down into a long river, forming a puddle on the floor. This appearance, as if just returned from Professor Yang's treatment of internet addicts, his wife did not know what was happening, just struggling to come to her husband. No matter how much she waved and shouted did not work. The man was like a vegetable, losing his ability to respond to all external stimuli. Carlos pronounced a dying sentence, for his punishment is over. He will regain consciousness in the morning, and when that happens, take him and get the hell out of here. With that said, he left the couple alone and turned to the others to apologize. Due to this accident causing everyone to spoil the fun, this banquet would have to end early. However, this group of nobles didn't think so. Originally they only came to socialize, but they didn't expect to eat such a big melon. 
and they were also fortunate enough to see Carlos make a move, so they could blow for a while, and the most important thing is, about the Blofeld family as third son, that look, TSK, they can add some fuel to the fire, may be able to cause widespread concern it, the topic of the afternoon tea is also there, everyone has something small hidden in their hearts, that is something that even Carlos cannot control, just let them go, a big tree invites the wind, and a tree that invites the wind is naturally strong, one by one, the guests returned to their carriages at the entrance, as much as they were in a hurry when they arrived, they were also in a hurry when they left, the maids began to clean up the grounds, and the troops led by Osman were ready to go to bed, so the curtain came down on a half-successful and slightly ridiculous feast, Prince Carpe had business to attend to and left the castle after bidding Carlos farewell, Mitchell, on the other hand, had plenty of time to be able to stay a little longer, and with his years of tacit understanding, he knew that Carlos now needed someone who could advise and confide in him, and so he was unquestionably that person, Gracie has checked and Domi is not possessed or cursed by a demon or a wraith, Carlos grimaced, but that's not a bad thing, Mitchell saw this and hastened to add, how so, you see, Domi can run at the age of one and can use magic flexibly, what does that mean, Domi is a great emperor, and think about it, what on earth did Domi bite that woman for, when Mitchell enlightened him like this, Carlos immediately reacted, why did he bite that woman, wasn't it because she deliberately kicked Kelsey, Domi is taking revenge on that woman, correct, isn't this exactly the spirit that the Blofeld family has always honored, family is always above all else, Domi is merely practicing that in his own way, the next day, the woman in question left Blofeld with three carriages of belongings and her unfortunate husband in tow, the wagons were loaded with clear gold dragon coins as well as jewelry, not much compared to the entire family's belongings, but still a considerable amount of property, the woman herself has little ability, now only want to leave here after the husband to find a place to settle, and then use this money barely mixed life, be a small rich woman is also a good choice, at this time, the caravan had already driven into the dense forest some distance away from the territory, just when the woman also fantasized about the future, do not have to care about public opinion, you can casually adopt a white boy, live a life without shame, the coachman suddenly stopped the carriage, stiffly interrupting the woman's thoughts, she was thinking about what kind of tricks she should change to make herself more comfortable. Just as her head poked out of the car window was a torrent of curses. How do you drive? Don't know how to drive. Don't take my money and do nothing with it. The driver still had his back to her. I don't know how to drive? Yes. I just don't know how to drive. So I'm leaving. You find yourself someone else. After saying that, the car driver ran away on the spot. A flash drilled into the dense forest and could no longer see the trace. Before the woman could react. The drivers of the two carriages behind them also disappeared together, and soon, the entire caravan was left with only her, her husband, and a group of hired guards. What's the situation? What's the situation? You're just going to throw in the towel and quit? I've paid for this. A bunch of damn swordsmen, human underlings, don't you have any professional ethics? Swine. She was still cursing, and was now abandoning her fake nobleman's reserve, completely reverting to her grassroots, and completely unaware of the situation she was in. At that moment, there was a sound of movement coming from the grass around her. The woman immediately closed her mouth. She began to panic, fearing that some beast or robber had taken a liking to her and her property. Immediately afterward, several men in black stepped out, wearing pure black hooded cloaks, black boots, black gloves, and not a trace of a signature on their entire bodies. So perhaps the clothes were their trademark. Who are you guys? What do you want? The black clothed man in the lead didn't speak. He just walked towards the woman. Behind them, a group of black-clothed men scurried out, like vicious wolves burrowing into a sheepfold. Sharp daggers continuously slashed the carotid arteries of every guard, and in a short while, none of the hired guards were left dead. How had the pampered woman ever seen such bloodshed? She was so scared that she got down from the car and just wanted to run, but because she hadn't exercised for a long time, she accidentally fell to the ground. After falling to the ground, she also saw the head of one of the guards rolled in front of her, the kind of death that doesn't rest in peace. Again. He was startled, and his mournful screams scared a bunch of birds to fly away from the branches. In just this moment's effort, the man in black came to the front and drew his stabbing sword from his waist. The cold light pierced the eyes, and through the reflection of the sword, the woman in a trance seemed to see the tragic situation of her own head being separated and splattered with blood. She donned her mask of pain once more, and her constant pleas for mercy were followed by resigned curses. It was that backstabbing bastard Carlos who sent you to kill everyone, wasn't it? I knew it. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it, you're a bunch of self-proclaimed pure aristocrats, and none of you are any good, but didn't you also often label yourself as a noble, learning skimpy noble etiquette, wearing clothes better than some minor nobles, 
And now you're doing this instead? Oh, the man in black finally spoke, listening to the voice, probably an adult male. When you're dying, at least show some backbone, okay? Then again, didn't the family head let you go when he said he'd let you go? I didn't see any guards stopping you when you left the city gates. Just the master of the family and did not promise. Let you go after you do not do anything to you. You say it is not so. Ha! The woman laughed helplessly. No wonder you guys are so good at playing word games. No, it's simply that you're so stupid. Sir, your chatterbox is at it again. Another man in black warned, coming up to his ear. Gat! The man in black didn't want to talk to a dead man anymore. And in the shadows, his eyes, which had just raised their interest, resumed their cold and merciless look, and raised his bayonet and said, By the order of, Duke Carlos Blofeld, intercept and kill you sinners, execute immediately. This matter was perhaps only clear to the parties involved in Carlos. The others didn't even know it yet, those two guys who dared to move earth at the weekly feast yesterday had already gone to meet the king of hell. Domi hadn't known either, until Carlos himself came to his room. He picked Domi up from his crib, using the same maneuver that the old Lion King had used to hold Simba, and looked at him from left to right. But in the end, he couldn't make out what was going on. Then Carlos told him to run a few more steps and see. Wouldn't it look bad for him to do whatever he said himself? So as soon as Carlos helped Domi up, he immediately sat down, mainlining a rebellion, ignoring Duke Blofeld's order. Villainous value plus 800. He was not wanting to run. And in reality, he couldn't run even if he wanted to. When he drew the forging method, breathing, it was clearly written on the description that after using rapid breathing, the body's functions would be strengthened tremendously, but it would also fall into a state of side effects afterwards. This state was similar to electronic impotence in terms of Domi's own experience. Not only are the muscles exhausted, even the brain and mind are all out of whack, and like assaulted fish they don't want to do anything. Well little Domi, I can see you're really tired, so I won't force you. Carlos carefully placed Domi back in his crib and leaned down to give him a kiss on the forehead before leaving. Rest well. Before leaving, Carlos himself, not knowing what was going through his head, actually said to Domi, Kelsey isn't in any serious trouble, I guess I'll be able to come and continue to take care of you in three days, and also, I've already sent someone to take care of those two guys yesterday, so you can rest assured, it doesn't matter if Domi can understand or not, Carlos finished and left, by the time he reached the doorframe, Domi could still faintly hear his last words, family is always above everything, with his eyes closed, Domi kept mulling over the words, Blofeld's ancestral family motto? It's kinda warming. Unconsciously, he seemed to have integrated into this large family, experiencing a kinship that he had never experienced in his previous life. The mother who looked out for them in every way. The father who protected his family against all odds. The maids who help each other. The head maid who was cold on the outside and hot on the inside. The head guard who seems to be very bad but is actually a bit sandy. And, the undisguised love from Kelsey. Everyone in the family seems to abide by this family motto which is what makes people from all over the world form a big family. It was as if he understood something and didn't understand it very well. The only thing that was clear was this, the people to protect. In addition to Kelsey, might have to add a whole bunch more. If a person only has power, but not the things they are obsessed with in their heart, then Domi feels that the power is wasted if they have it. They should be used where they are needed, such as to protect the people they want to protect. Before, Domi didn't have much of a concept, but at this point, he had this clear and firm thought. And speaking of power, he hadn't done much research on the forging art breathing, a secret art that had given him a huge increase. At the moment he acquired it, the system seemed to have made him learn this breathing style directly to the point that he didn't feel much of it. In reality, it worked every moment of every day. Domi wasn't sure exactly how it worked. All he knew was that ever since he had used this form of breathing, it was hard for him to feel tired, and even his mind thought about things a lot faster and more clearly. I guess it makes the utilization of oxygen higher. Domi guessed so, but soon he felt he was wrong. The system sent a prompt saying that the strength and agility attributes had each been increased by zero. Zero zero one points. Like a fly in the ointment. The increase would definitely not attract Domi's attention in normal times. But there was a prefix in front of these two prompts showing the source. And these increases actually came from this body forging method. That's right. After all, it's called the forging method. Not being able to add attributes isn't hanging a duck's neck to sell a rat's head. Just this amplitude is a bit subtle ah. Can we get stuck with a bug again to make it add faster? A bold idea took shape in Domi's mind. He exhaled all the air in his lungs, then held his breath for a while, to the point where he couldn't hold it in before breathing hard, at a frequency more than a few times faster than before. After cycling like this a few times, the system's prompting screen was still silent. Until that night, the system only again prompted two attributes each added zero, 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 0001. 
it was almost zero, zero zero two a day, tops, he finally gave up this practice of destroying himself, it is clear that the way to refine the body of the forging arc breathing is based on one word, gradual, long and long, relying on card bugs to achieve quick results was impossible, one had to breathe with a certain frequency to do so, however, it also has significant advantages, rely on breathing forging, equivalent to breathing can become stronger, this who do not love ah, simply squatting at home the gospel of fat house, if there were several body forging methods placed in front of Domi for him to choose from, he would still choose this one, after all, he is still a baby, the other forging techniques no matter how powerful is not a baby can practice, then the arm will be funny, all things considered, the body forging art breathing should be the most suitable for him, unlike in the past, he now had his entire childhood to go through the whole gradual progression thing, and believed that as long as the cost of time went down, sooner or later, he would be able to make quantitative changes into qualitative changes, at this time just into the night, eat a good dinner, fought to eat and drink enough to be able to sleep beautifully, did not expect the temporary maid did not take him back to the room, but took another road, that road Domi had never seen before, and looking behind him, his two brothers were following, this was clearly not normal, where was the maid taking them, they entered a long corridor inside the castle from a side hall, expensive red carpets lined the entrance to the end, and the corridor was flanked by, the walls of the corridor were covered with frosted wallpaper, engraved with a large number of patterns that resembled the emblem of the French scented iris, on top of the wallpaper, there is an oil painting of a portrait framed with a gold border, the magical lamps emitted a dim light, adding a touch of historical heaviness to these oil paintings, Domi stared wide-eyed at the bottom of one of the oil paintings, where the gilded plaque bore a line that read, Sebastian, in honor of the first steward of the Blofeld family, who served the family with great dedication and had saved the building from collapse, and then look at this temporary maid holding herself, since she came here, her face was full of respect and yearning, for them, it seems to be an accomplishment to have their portrait mounted here, come to think of it, the long corridors of some nobles homes were hung with the headshots of successive heads of families or members of the family, and no one had ever seen any of them put up portraits of their servants and underlings, no wonder the Blofeld's family motto has always been followed by the descendants, so it was the ancestors who made a good start and put the concept into practice, the characters in the long corridor, in addition to some of the ancient maids, housekeepers and even cooks, the rest is the family's direct lineage of characters, his seven aunts and eight aunts almost cannot see one, can only see the direct lineage of family members, when he came to the end, he could even see the portrait of Blofeld's first family head, extraordinarily large, placed right above the exit door, as if watching everyone who went out through this door, it was like being watched, oppressive, passing through the corridor, they entered a place similar to a shrine, there wasn't a single magical lamp in the place, all that glowed were white candles, their ghostly flames spreading over every corner, barely illuminating the shrine's appearance, Domi entered almost with his mouth open, if he had to find a word to describe this place, the only thing he could think of was the pantheon of ancient Rome, several massive pillars held up the huge dome shrine, extremely well-made coffins were set inside the circular walls, just like the sacrificial niches in the pantheon, with nine pairs of coffins on each floor, and by a rough count, there were about seven layers stacked on top of each other, this is a fucking shrine, whose family shrine looks like this, as so it's your own family's, that's fine, it's doubly overbearing, to tell others that one's family has a shrine like a god's temple, that's a great honor, in the center of the shrine is a round empty space where nothing is placed, when people stand in it, they will magically realize that all the coffins are tilted downward, and the ancestors inside are like watching their descendants through the coffin boards, this is similar to the statue of the first family head at the entrance, at this moment, Carlos and Grace had already waited well in the clearing and were arranging something, a beige blanket with all sorts of things on it, daggers, slingshots, mini shields, history books that weren't too thick, goggles, crystal balls, vials of blood, toy carriages, decks of cards, gold dragon coins, and a black cloak, seeing such an arrangement, Domi immediately understood what was to come next, folklore commonly known as, catch the weak, in his previous life, Adults would usually organize this kind of ceremony when the child turned one year old, placing some things where the child could reach them, and each item had its own special meaning, what the child grasped would be what he would become in the future, maybe his parents would believe in these things, but Domi himself certainly wouldn't, it was just a function of the human subconscious, believe it or not, the look still has to be done, the key lies in what kind of benefit he can get for himself from it, after observing it in advance he made a decision, at this time, Carlos and Gressa were already ready, and the three maids also carried their brother in three over, received by their parents, and placed at the end of the blanket, opposite a large pile of items, 
Greta crouched down and kissed them one after the other. Argyle, Edward, Domi, choose well the path that lies ahead. The ancestors of Blofeld will bless you. I heard Carlos tell us earlier that of his three sons, only the eldest is a perfected earth talent. A voice of unknown origin rang out, which could only be heard as a man. A bit flippant. Another mesmerizing voice responded. And what are the ingredients of the remaining two? Second son. Oh, that little yellow hair. Advanced fire system. Third son. Third son is just a beginner shadow system loser. Another voice directly grabbed to say. The tone is very direct. Heard him very dissatisfied. To death can only be a stinking worm living in the shadows. Can't get on the stage. Hey old man. Don't say that. Maybe he still has some alternative talent? The flippant man said in defense of Domi. I'll wash my hair upside down if I can. Despite their heated arguments, the interior of the shrine was so quiet that even a mosquito could be heard. It was in this atmosphere that Domi and his two older brothers began their respective catching ceremonies. Domi didn't really want to crawl around with them. It would look like he was a retarded brat too. Being the oldest being mentally, it would be a good idea to honor the oldest and the youngest, and let them choose first. It took a while before the older brothers chose, two items each. Argyle picked the mini shield, and the crystal ball. Edward, on the other hand, chose the shiny golden dragon coins as well as the goggles. Seeing the two children's choices, the mesmerizing voices yelled again. It seems that Argyle does have a talent in magic and a strong physique. He has a promising future no matter if he's studying the magic section or the night section the future is bright. Edward this little brat, could not choose not choose the golden dragon coins, this thing as much as you want. What's the use of the bird? Also explorer. For money to explore? Then I don't look at him favorably. Why is this old three still not moving? Isn't it a bit silly? The few who spoke this time were not the previous three. Or rather, it was only their turn when the previous three didn't speak. Oh quick look, old three is moving. Crap he's actually walking. The staggering movement immediately attracted the attention of all the spirits. And under the gaze of all the seniors, Domi moved. Through the system's villain value obtaining hints. He had long ago discovered that there were more than just these people in this space. There were also people. No, it should be said that the souls still remain. Since there are still so many people surrounded, then one does not do anything. To do a little bit of thriller, a one-time fishing enough, so he chose to stand and walk. Not a twisted walk, but the lower plate of the thief walked steadily, as if an emperor to his own treasury to select treasures. This aura immediately caught Carlos' attention, and he narrowed his eyes, not wanting to miss a single detail of Domi. There was a wide array of items that had been given special meanings, but Domi had already chosen them long ago. The first thing he saw was that he walked towards the unbladed dagger, grabbing it with both hands and playing with it for a few moments before dropping it back onto the blanket, which was considered to be the same choice. Then he pretended to hesitate for a moment, and then pretended to see a fun toy, and with a big grin he pounced on the black cloak, and as he pounced he kicked the little, blood vial kicked, shadow magic instantly wrapped him and the black color blended with the cloak without any sense of contradiction. The small blood vial also rolled in the direction of the dagger's tip due to the force exerted by Domi, and when it came to a stop, the vial was just against the tip of the dagger, and the sub-dragon blood inside was even still churning. He was going to go with the most ferocious and paranoid thing he could find, the dagger, the black robe, and the blood bottle. These were the most ferocious contraptions he guessed, and naturally, Carlos knew exactly the meanings behind them. The dagger represented the path of assassination. The blood vials represented killing and gore. And of course could have something to do with the blood magic used by demons and the doctor profession. The final black robe was a bit more special. It didn't represent mundane things, but specifically stood in for a department, an organization behind Blofeld. It was also the place where Carlos and Gressa said they wanted Domi to go at that time, specializing in serving the Blofeld family. The business covers a wide range of areas, including assassination, intelligence gathering, surveillance, inter-intelligence operations, transportation, money laundering, managing underground forces, etc. The founders of the Blofeld family gave it a romantic name, the Northfall Division. It was originally the name of a star constellation. North refers to the direction. Fall refers to those fences and other defense facilities on the battlefield. And Division Gate refers to the military gate. It is said that when Blofeld made his fortune, he came south from the north and fought with the emperor. At that time the war was chaotic. The northern fall of the division since the formation of the escort all the way. What dirty work all take over. Which preserved most of the family's strength. Safe landing in the south. Or, when the emperor restored to the customs also dipped into the benefits of the north drop division. The most notable feature of this department is that there is no feature. From head to tail all black. Hard to point out the difference to. Is the manpower a. Black degree of pure. 
with a special angle of the hood of the black robe. The texture of this black robe is flexible. Ordinary swords and knives can't even pierce it. There is also a strong resistance to magic. A high fireball smashed up. Inside the people don't have to deduct blood. At most suffer a little impact damage. However, that is the top members can only wear. Because of the lack of materials, the following members can wear the cloak at most block low magic. Note, is completely resist, and the market those only resist a few percent of the demonic cheap goods is not the same level. Carlos and the other spirits were shocked when Domi lifted his camouflage and poked his head out of his black robe. If he only chose the dagger, then fine, learn a little about assassination. At least in the future can have a little sense of defense. If he only chose the vial of blood, that's fine. It shows a little bit of that kind of tendency. Anyway, the family is big, so it's not a big problem. But if you choose the black robe, the probability is that you can't escape the relationship with the Northfall sect, and three are selected. Then congratulations, absolutely is a prison department talent. A few olding have been flexible for several lifetimes, and have seen several generations of children catching the weak, but have never seen such an abstract result. Even the most straight-talking yingling was silent, and after a while, he suddenly spoke. Good, Blofeld needs such a talent. The slightly flippant man bristled, seemingly disdaining this guy's face. That's not what you just said. Eh, in that case you, still have to wash your hair upside down, did I? I'm a little hard to remember in my old age. The old man didn't bother with the frivolous man anymore and went straight to Carlos. Hey Carlos. Carlos was startled and quickly adjusted his state before communicating with the old man with his divine sense. Elder Sebastian, what are the instructions? You, the third old man, can you see anything special yet? Carlos recalled a bit. There, is more than one meter of him magic talent is only elementary. But Sebastian didn't believe Carlos's witticisms at all, and knocked him on the head with a hand that couldn't even touch him. What kind of virtue do I not know about you little pussy? Tell the truth and hurry up. Carlos sighed. To be honest, he roughly guessed what this old timer was up to, but couldn't argue with him, so he could only truthfully say, Domi he's physically strong. How strong? More talented than Argyle. Just walking and running, where no one could see. Sebastian's eyes lit up. Then said, Remember that secret book I left behind? I remember hiding it in a corner of the library, the book that Sebastian was talking about Carlos had discovered long ago, and had wanted to transfer it to the valuable book storage room, but this old timers will said that it was to be placed casually in the library where everyone could go, just waiting for a person with a destiny, unfortunately, he hadn't met a kindred spirit until today, but Carlos had still been sending someone to guard the book, not only was it a relic of his predecessor, it also contained a special technique, it was said that after practicing it, the attack could cause huge damage to the magic user and could also immunize magic to a certain extent, making it the natural enemy of magicians. Sebastian Sr. practiced this technique. He is not the founder, and did not cultivate it to perfection. Even so, he also rely on this skill among the family's hall of fame, and even among the top, which is sufficient to see its power. But because of its mage natural enemy characteristics, in today's society is doomed to not survive. Once the world will be mercilessly strangled, which is perennial in the Blofeld family library in the dust. Sebastian also understands this, so there is no thought of letting it circulate widely. The only thing that can be done is to let Blofeld's descendants to learn. Used for self-defense or attack is excellent. However, the conditions for practicing this technique are extremely harsh, requiring huge financial support as well as practicing a physique that is loathed by all the elements. The future generations were all geniuses in the field of magic. Asking them to give up the magic they were so proud of to practice this thing wasn't putting the cart before the horse? Even if someone does go, the success rate is pitifully low. Only one came out in several hundred years, and his whereabouts are still unknown because he was hunted down by all the rival magicians. Sebastian would have been depressed when he thought that there wouldn't be another successor. Domi appeared, a magical fool with only a beginner's shadow system talent, who also had an extremely strong physical body talent. Wasn't this the best candidate to cultivate the devouring scroll? This kind of opening was no better than that person back then. If you don't want Dominic to learn, I won't force you, Sebastian said after seeing Carlos' hesitant expression. With the previous lesson, learning the secret method would be as good as asking for death. How could a father let his child go to his death? Sebastian wasn't a stubborn person either. He respected the will of every clan member. Just when he thought this inheritor would have to run away as well, Carlos unexpectedly agreed. I had planned to send Domi to the Northfall Division. There, no outsiders will pay attention to what he really knows, and everyone who knows he can devour demonic scrolls will be buried by him personally. What if someone escapes and informs the public of the secret? Carlos seemed to be in a very conflicted mental struggle, and it was a long time before he replied. Then it will be that his kung fu is not up to scratch, 
At that time, I will let him break away from the family, because we can't keep the world's public enemy, and the only way to let him live longer alone is to remove the ties. Elder, we all know what kind of person is the strongest. Sebastian smiled knowingly. Of course, someone without a soft spot is the strongest, especially someone who went out from our family. Therefore, no matter what the situation is, I will let Domi learn the devouring scroll. Senior, you have a successor. His long-time wish seemed to be fulfilled, and he nodded reassuringly. Then the next step is up to you. Blofeld will continue to prosper due to your efforts. After saying that, his consciousness fell back into a deep sleep, and the voices of the other ancestors also disappeared like a stone into the sea. That was the end of the catch of the week ceremony. Grace and Carlos seemed to have something more to say, but that had nothing to do with him anymore. After the temporary maid returned him to his crib, it was time for him to count his harvest. It was time. This wave had gained a total of 6 W villain value, because it was only bringing fine emotions to the bystanders. The villain value contributed wasn't much, but it was mainly the identity of those ancestors that gave a large amount of villain value bonus, with titles that could connect to a large string of characters, all of which were more bullish and generous than Prince Carpe. It wasn't in vain that he had taken the trouble to perform. Now he had saved up 23, 68 W of villain value. However, it was still close to filling the whole of the shadow department talent to raise the perfect level, so Domi wasn't in a hurry to draw cards. He who often played in scrupulous card draw games knew one thing well, if you gamble on everything after not saving much, you'll end up with absolutely nothing. The same applies here. Long-term investment can bring stable income, while the income of the card draw is not controllable. Weighing the pros and cons of a good decision. Domi's decision is to be a qualified ton-ton rat, and this ton is six years. During the six years, he worked hard every day, never slacking off, and spent more than half a million villain value to raise his shadow talent to the perfect level, and accomplished the goal he set for himself. The only regret is that he is getting older. Many things that can only be done in baby form cannot be done, and the amount of villainous value that can be harvested is greatly reduced. But no matter what, Tundin Mouse still lives safely until the age of seven. Seven years old, a youthful age, then the lower too childish, then the upper not mature enough. In his previous life at this time he was still an elementary school student who had just started elementary school, although he was still quite young, but he could at least move freely, right? This was the first cross-generational progress he had made since coming to the other world. Hoo hoo. Greeting the first rays of the morning sun, Domi took a deep breath, paused slightly for a few seconds, and then slowly exhaled, as if drawing water from a pump, the feeling of power filling up immediately swept through his entire body. There was no activity more refreshing than this not even in bed. Years and years of utilizing the body forging technique breathing had finally paid off. It was through prolonged experimentation that he realized that breathing at the time of day and night, at dawn, was particularly effective. So he ran to the highest tower of the castle every day and sat on the tower, rain or shine. So he insisted for six years, seeing the rising sun rise more than 2,000 times, but also step by step to witness the course of his own become stronger. Dominic Blofeld slowly opened his eyes. At this time the sun has already crossed the distant hillock, to the earth to sprinkle its light. The sun shines on the grass in front of the castle. Bright green can always make people feel happy. The fresh wind whipped through his hair, bringing with it the scent of flowers in the distance. After enjoying himself, he looked at the system panel. Strength 12, 0, 8, agility 13, 38, mental strength 7, 3, a 7-year-old has grown into a 13-year-old. Very good compared to the attribute points directly given to him by the system. It was still more fulfilling to have practiced it himself. Just as he was gloating, across the stairs and wooden door leading to the top of the spire, a familiar voice came from underneath. Domi, breakfast. It was Kelsey calling him to come eat. With that voice every day, not only was Domi used to it, but even Kelsey herself was used to the strange and healthy pet peeve of her young master. Coming, he echoed back with the same tug of his voice. This conversation, rather, gave him a sense of living in the countryside, and every time his family called for dinner they did the same thing across the room, he was glad that Kelsey didn't treat him with deference because he had grown up, still acting like a mother or a sister as she had when he was a child, I do feel a little hungry, Domi pushed open the wooden door and down the revolving staircase, every time he finished the last step he looked forward to it, because if he looked up, he could see Kelsey smiling at him, a wry smile and beautiful eyes, what's wrong? Staring at me all the time? Is there something dirty on my face? Kelsey cocked her head in slight confusion. Her light pink hair slipping down her neck like a willow branch hanging low. Domi blushed and skimmed her head, muttering, Nah, just like to look. Okay, you're too young to learn how to flirt with little girls. Kelsey revealed a bad expression. 
Be honest, with which old rogue learned. He he, I won't betray my comrades. Domi was a fledgling who had never been in love in his previous life, and besides the bucket full of bad water in his stomach, he didn't know a single word about flirting with girls. Obviously, this was something he learned from someone else, and Kelsey could tell at a glance. Oh, she purposely trailed off. If Domi tells me honestly, come to my room tonight, and my sister will show you something good. Hmm, was this something he could see without paying? In an instant, a mephitic brain thought and brainstormed frantically, and finally came to the conclusion that a comrade in arms counts as a chicken neck. Bobby from the defense section. Can't be blamed for all of it though, it was Edward who introduced it to me. As a result, the good things did not see. After dinner, he and Edward too hard to be sent by Greta to the castle entrance to the garden weeding. Already seven years old, Edward already had the mold of the future. With his blonde hair and a fluffy, slightly parted hairstyle, and his small, white face and high nose, he looked like a young littlest in his infancy. And Domi herself had changed dramatically. Compared to Edward's round face and Argyle's knife-like lines, Domi's face looked like a hybrid sandwiched between them, thin where it should be and fleshy where it should be, with perfect proportions. He also deliberately left his hair long. Long gray hair at the back of the head can still tie a high ponytail to, bangs at the hair was allowed to fall naturally, the overall trend towards the back, with that pair of deep and icy blue eyes, that kind of uninviting, high cold temperament directly. At this moment, Edward was wearing two white gloves picking the grass with one hand and hoeing with the other, lying on his back on the grass, the hoeing knife full of his tears and condemnation with every fall. Dominic, I was a fool, really, to believe a villain like you? who is not a man of his word. I should never have introduced my lifelong friend to you in the first place. Domi, on the other hand, in the same pose and configuration as Edward, responded with a smile. For the sake of my brother's happiness, I can only betray you. Don't blame. His eyes turned, and then continued. How about this Edward? You go to rest first, and then your share will be contracted by me together, counting me as compensation for you. When Edward heard this, a high light returned to his eyes. Wouldn't there be no loss in this round trip? Why not? He immediately stood up and patted Domi's shoulder trustingly, patting it loudly. Good, then brother will rest first and go. Remember to call out to me when mom comes. Domi gave him a thumbs up and gave him an encouraging look. Don't worry, leave it to me. Ah, uh, beside them, Bobby from the defense section, who was also being punished, froze for a moment when he saw the situation and advised, the two young masters, I suggest that it's better not to engage in any small actions. If the madam discovers it, it might. Before Bobby could finish his words, he realized that Domi was staring at him with a look full of threats. Underweighing his rights and disadvantages, he decided that it was better not to provoke this third young master, and immediately shut up and didn't talk about it. In the end, Edward still, at Domi's instigation, he chose the lazy option, leaning right next door, by the shrub that had been trimmed into an oval shape by the gardener, just under the shadow and not exposed to the sun. Needless to say, the guy could be lazy. Upon seeing this scene, a sly, evil smile finally appeared at the corner of Domi's mouth, and this smile was unsurprisingly captured by Bobby. Pitt even his own brother? The world of the nobles was truly terrifying. With a shiver in his body, he buried his head in his own work once again. After hoeing for almost two hours, Grace came to check the results. In fact, Domi has long counted the time. This moment his mom will definitely come to acceptance, but he just do not go to call Edward and Edward's piece of grass he is a piece of grass did not move. Ha, ha, ha. Domi laughed wickedly twice, I fish lips of Oni Sasio, I do so as for your good, otherwise you do not know the world has so many evil. At that moment, Grace arrived as promised, and coming up to see the three patches of grass where the disparity was obvious, and with only Domi and Bobby in her sights, she asked suspiciously, where's Edward, didn't he hoe with you? Mom, Edward's sitting there being lazy. Bobby, on the other hand, didn't say a word. His eyes were fixed on his toes. He just wanted to get out of this place of deceit. Grace looked in the direction of Domi's finger and saw Edward hiding in the shadows and slacking off. Then she was furious and quickly walked up. Mom. Ha, huh, old mom. Lazing around here? Ah, uh, not. Seems to be. But listen to my explanation. Hey mom don't. Don't. Ah, uh, screams. Grace didn't even give Edward a chance to explain because his actions said it all. Any more hidden agendas would be for nothing. She set Edward up on her lap and reached out to slap Edward's ass with her hand, slapping it loudly. At that moment, a message from the system popped up. You have viciously victimized your second brother. Villain value plus 500. Domi laughed, a heartless and happy laugh, but his purpose was achieved. When Edward's punishment was over, 
Domi went to the torture chamber and directly revealed the truth of the incident to Grace. After all, it's not hard to get back into the pit. Although Grace appreciated Domi's honesty, but because of the pit brother, but still cannot avoid a beating. Afterwards, the two brothers went back to the castle together, covering their asses, and laying flat on the couch set in the lobby, asses in the air. Edward let out a breathless whisper. Dominic, why are you, punking me? Domi also responded breathlessly. Fun. There was a moment of silence. Fark the squid. Tethered squid. You guys, are you stupid? Sitting on the sidelines, Argyle flipped up the title page of the book and let out a soulful question. Argyle from a young age has shown a well-learned and mature side. A small age, a big pie, as if those precocious full-grade children in the previous world. In the past, Domino would have had to choke him with his rich cultural heritage, but now it's better to forget about it. Grace's hand is not usually heavy. Even his 13-year-old body is also a little difficult to bear. I do not know what support Edward through the torture. Argyle also ignored their grumbling little eyes and jumped off the couch, clutching the book in his hand. Before leaving, Dad told me to tell you guys that tomorrow, our tutor is coming, part-time mage, and from the palace. Any more information? Like what class of mage is he? There are also class divisions within mages. Apprentice, most of the primary magic is skillfully utilized. Only for their own family of magic. Full mage, all primary magic skillfully utilized. And some intermediate magic learned. Medium mage, all intermediate magic skill. And at least one or more advanced magic. High mage, have acquired two or more spells and have attained proficiency in all of them at the intermediate mage level. Archmage, have acquired three or more spell systems and have reached high mage proficiency. One of which has realized the great Tao and touched the forbidden. The magic will be significantly different. Forbidden Mage, an Archmage who has mastered one or more forbidden spells and whose abilities are recognized by the public. Legendary Mage. It was known that Gressa was a High Mage, and Carlos was an Archmage specializing in time. He was curious to know what the composition of the mage who could be their teacher was, and with a part-time job, the level probably wouldn't be too high, would it? M. Argyle recalled for a moment and said, His name is Connery Riviera, an Archmage specializing in the Ice Attribute, and it is said that he was once also the Emperor's royal teacher. Back in time to the day before, inside Carlos' study, he had just finished his last correspondence with Connor Richards, who was far away in the imperial capital. In his letter, Carlos told Connor that he didn't intend to squeeze too much of his children's free time until they were seven years old, but that he would have to change his strategy after that, and wanted to hire him to be his children's tutor. Connor Riviera was already 79 years old this year, and in his middle age he was also the imperial teacher of the current emperor so there was no doubt that both his personal strength and teaching ability were top-notch. Compared to the so-called aristocratic schools, Carlos still preferred to have a high-ranking person to teach one-on-one. -on -one. However, it was still not easy to invite such a pushy master like Connor. He didn't need a heavy amount of money, but rather it depended on the person to be taught. If the student was no good, he wouldn't teach even if he was given more money. After learning that two out of the three children in Carlos' family were magically gifted, and one of them was even at the perfect level, Connor reluctantly agreed to Carlos' request. Dear Carlos, I would be happy to teach your eldest son. Whether it's a studious personality or a perfect level earth talent, it's all worth teaching me. As for the second and third sons, I've heard that they are very mischievous, so I'm not sure if I can teach them well. Honorable Connor, I am satisfied that you have accepted my request, and I believe that Argyle will become an excellent child under your tutelage. The other two children are a bit naughty, but they are both very smart and have a lot of respect for their teacher so they definitely won't mess up in your classroom, so please don't worry about it. Dear Carlos, I think I'm clear about the general situation of your sons. Other subjects are fine, but when it comes to the field of magic, are your three sons going to be a problem? It is said that young master Dominic only has a beginner's talent in the shadow department? At this, Carlos was prepared and quickly replied, For Domi, I have other plans, so I don't intend to let him take magic lessons. Sir's teaching progress will not be slowed down, please don't worry. Obviously, Carlos, this old fart, had eliminated all the hidden dangers in advance. Now Connor couldn't think of a reason not to come. Worthy of being a Blofeld family member, things are really dripping with water. After the letter was read, Connor Rivals reached out his fingers and set the letter on fire, watching it turn into ashes before he removed his gaze. Then he opened his mouth towards a random place in the empty room. Help me pack up my traveling gifts. I'm going on a long trip this time. In the next second. A skeleton silhouette in a horrifying form floated behind Connor, with pitch black eyes, floating in midair like a ghost spirit, only to see it floating towards the closet, and then straightened up the clothes, from the closet to pull out a variety of clothes, the suitcase from the bottom of the bed, clothes folded up neatly stuffed in, 
there are a variety of daily necessities. Until the suitcase and obsessive-compulsive disorder patient's box is the same before dissipating, the whole process of the line of clouds and flow, I can see that it has done it a lot of times. Connor himself, on the other hand, sat back and enjoyed the ride, taking the suitcase and heading out. A solid man of action. The imperial capital was situated right in the center of the Lionheart Empire, quite a distance from Blofeld in the south. It would also take a week by carriage, but Connor had no worries about that. After he left the house, he cast a wind spell on his giant suitcase, and sat on it as a flying machine, which was much faster than a carriage, and there were not so many bumps, and the original seven-day journey was finished in two days. Of course, if he doesn't eat or sleep he can get there in a day. Shrinking into the ground, the power of an archmage, terrifying as it is, Connor had never been to Blofeld Collar before, looking at the map and asking countless residents before he managed to find the Lord's Castle. The old castle with a long history stands on an abrupt hill which rises high in the center of the territory, and the castle built on it can look down on everything underneath, while those below will be shocked and longed for when they look up and see it, such a layout was still unique in the entire empire, ho ho, it's really grand, facing the sunlight, the castle on the hill was as remote as a heavenly deity, it was impossible to imagine what a genius designer could have made such a magnificent building, Connor stopped at the foot of the hill for a while to look around and see enough before walking up the rotating stone steps, the mountain road 18 curves, Rotating staircase is like a hula hoop like the whole mountain wrapped around and around. I do not know how long to walk. He finally came to the end. The first thing that caught his eyes was the huge gate like a triumphal arch. Two stone statues of the strongest warriors in Blofeld's history stood on both sides. The gate was open, and there was not even a single guard on duty, as if he didn't put any thief in his eyes. Passing through the gates, one enters the gardens, where cobblestone paths wind their way to the castle's entrance. On both sides of the path is by a number of famous horticulturists pruned out of the plant community. White marble made pavilion and fountain interspersed with the period. Halfway to the end you can also see the unknown end of the grapevine. A hundred years of age of the old trees. As if the civilization hidden in nature monuments. But does not look desolate. As the Garden of Eden in the myth. Connor felt that these arrangements at the entrance alone were better than the palace. If this place was described as an organic combination of nature and luxury. Then he felt that the palace was just like that. Except for the vulgar and extreme luxury, there was nothing more that could attract people's eyes. After walking all the way, the only thing that made him feel puzzled was the open space next door to the garden. The open space as a whole was paved with green bricks and covered a fairly large area. Yet nothing was put there. Why was that? Just when Connor was doubly puzzled, a place on the flat ground suddenly lit up with the pattern of a magic array. For the aura of the magic array, Connor was very familiar with it. It was a kind of ultra-short distance teleportation spell formation. Although this kind of spell formation consumes very little, the distance that can be transmitted is also extremely short, almost from here to the foot of the mountain. Wait, the distance from the top of the mountain to the foot of the mountain? The scene that appeared next just confirmed his guess, only to see that a carriage with the family's exclusive emblem suddenly appeared at the place where the magic array was lit up, and there was also an aura similar to that of the magic array on the emblem, connecting the top of the mountain to the foot of the mountain with a magic array so that the carriage can be quickly delivered to the top or the foot of the mountain and in order to prevent other people or vehicles from using this convenience, there's also an exclusive validation process. What an excellent and adapted idea this is. If he hadn't originally been happy to uproot his life to come here and become a governess, he wasn't now. Just poking at his aesthetically pleasing design, the ingenious layout, the long history, the unknown family talent, studying this uniquely charismatic family in passing while researching Carlos's sons would not be a bad thing. Connor carried his large suitcase to the door of the castle. This door is much smaller. It looks like it is for people to walk. The large suitcase. The person who came from a long journey. The brown hair color. The 70 or 80 years old man. All the characteristics match. The maid who sweeps the floor at the door immediately recognizes his identity. Puts the broom in the corner. And rushes to welcome him. Excuse me. Is it Mr. Connor Riviera? Connor nodded. It's me. After receiving an affirmative answer. The maid then took Connor's suitcase and warmly entertained. Welcome to Blofeld Castle. Please rest for a few moments in the lobby. I will go and inform his lordship. The maid took him to the sofa set in the lobby, poured him a cup of black tea and served him pastries before leaving. He picked up the cup of tea and took a few sips while surveying his surroundings. There were many details in the lobby that revealed the wealth of their family, such as the dragon's head on the fireplace, the carpet made of high-quality animal furs, and the children's graffiti on the coffee table. Aha, uh -huh, graffiti? Seems the maid didn't have time to clean it up, and it's still warm. He picked it up and examined it. The three drawings claimed to be different. One depicted a rough sea and a large ship riding the waves. 
With a blonde-haired child wearing a larger-than-life pirate's hat standing at the bow of the ship, a half-moon-shaped smile on his face, one had a bunch of abstract patterns painted with several types of paint, and although it was a bit abstract, Connor was able to recognize with the stream of consciousness identification method that these were actually magic systems that existed in nature. For example, the red clumps represent the fire system, and the yellow clumps represent the earth system. What looked like a drawing was more like memorizing knowledge about how many magic families there were in total, and the last one was a bit confusing for Connor. It was actually a set of clothes he had never seen before, short to the root of the thigh of the plaid pattern skirt, a bit of college-style shirt and jacket, very tight. Bottom right corner also has two letters written, JK. JK? Is that the name of the outfit? Unlike the previous two, this one used a pencil sketch. A kid can sketch at this level? Didn't Carlo say he didn't train them until they were seven? He couldn't believe that a seven-year-old already had this level of drawing skills. Could it be Argyle? Based on the letter Carlos had written, it seemed like Argyle was the only one who had that possibility, and Edward was just as naughty as the little explorer, and even more of a brush-off as far as Dominic was concerned. He couldn't be faulted for thinking so. Just as he was speculating, the sound of small children talking came from the steps leading down to the lobby. I heard our teacher seems to be here. Whether he's here or not, keep your mouth shut and don't disgrace our family. Don't worry. Don't worry. Wait a minute. I think I left my doodle on the table. Edward's words helped the other two remember as well. Crap. Domi said darkly. His JK design was most likely seen by their new teacher. In today's society where dress is relatively conservative. Massively revealing clothes like JK would definitely be resisted by most people. It would be considered synonymous with seduction, immodesty, and YD. If the teacher thought he was a womanizer, his first impression would be minimized, and that would be a big problem. He still wanted to learn more about the world through his tutor. He unconsciously accelerated his pace, and ended up almost running and rushing towards the lobby. Not only him, but Edward also followed closely behind him, mumbling the daredevil's plan must not be exposed. But when they arrived at the lobby, they found an old man already sitting there, holding the three of them's graffiti drawings. Edward immediately faced like ashes, finished. My sailing dream. Broken. The treasure is still waiting for me ah. Domi was pretty much the same. After all, this is the little punishment he prepared for Kelsey. If Connor gave the painting to Carlos or Grace, then he wouldn't be able to get Kelsey to wear the JK for him. Hiss. Seeing his two younger brothers as if they were Sima, Argyle doubled his head. I told you not to lose face. He sighed. There is no way. Oh Dododo -do -do does not compete. Have to go on their own. Recalling in his mind the little tidbits of etiquette that Grace had taught them, Argyle puffed out his chest in style and walked in long, consistent strides towards Connor and gave him a greeting salute. Argyle Blofeld. Greetings to you. Connor put down his drawing paper and looked over at the child in front of him, who was wearing a small size vest, but learning to look like an adult. Argyle. Argyle. Oh, wasn't that Carlos' oldest son? He scrutinized him some more, and as the letter said he was a good-looking, precocious, and quite polite. Seeing his elder brother like this, Edward and Domi did not dare to be slow. But Edward does not know how to salute. Never even thought he would have salute that day. The brain also does not have a process. Can only draw a tiger? Finally made out of the appearance of not to mention how awkward. Let Connor cry and laugh. And when he got to Domi, he was truly amazed. It was pretty much the most standard imperial etiquette he'd ever seen. If there had been a ruler, he thought it would have been accurate to the nanometer scale, feet together without a gap, straight back tilted slightly by the waist, left hand back to the waist and right hand stroking the chest, while the head was tilted slightly upwards, and if possible, to look at the salutatorian with a confident gaze, that is the most popular look, just ask, if the eyes of the person who salutes you are full of cowardice, it would be uncomfortable to look at yourself, normally, and Domi did all of the above points well by relying on her full level, Lionheart Empire etiquette, with a gray and white high ponytail paired with such a confident and cold face, Connor didn't dare to imagine what a scourge such a child would be when he grew up, a little more handsome than his father. Connor exclaimed from the bottom of his heart. He had never been to Blofeld Collar, but Carlos had been to the Imperial Capital, and they had known each other since then, and he was sure that Domi would definitely look better than his father when he grew up. Wait, the focus seems to be off. It was just then that he seemed to realize something was wrong. The first child is sure to be Argyle and the yellow hair must be Edward. Then this last one, could it be the third son Dominic Blofeld that Carlos never just made a passing reference to? Sword eyebrows, extraordinary confidence, and perhaps a willpower that surpassed most, without the willpower to back it up. How could one possibly learn manners at the age of seven that would take at least five or six years of practice? How could such a child be ordinary? It's too late to hide it and enjoy it. Right. Connor came to a realization. 
A man in charge of a big family like Carlos must, must, must not believe everything he says. Maybe this Dominic is the real genius. Okay, he didn't want him to pay attention to Dominic, so he wanted to see what else Dominic was hiding, and what kind of drugs Carlos was selling in his pocket. As he struggled with his own thoughts, Connor had unconsciously forgotten about Domi's sketches of JK. He thought that as the future teacher of these three children, he needed to get a feel for them and cultivate a relationship with them before he started teaching. After all, this tutor will be teaching for six years. Connor acknowledged himself and motioned for the three doms to sit across from him. Your father hired me to teach you, but I don't know anything about you yet. So in order to better teach you according to your abilities, I'm going to ask you a few questions. If you can answer them, then say so. If you can't, it doesn't matter. You'll all be taught later. The three of them nodded their heads like chickens pecking at rice. No one wanted to make a fool of themselves in front of the class teacher of the next six years. Ahem. Connor cleared his throat before asking the first question. Three people use three buckets of water in three days. How many buckets of water do nine people use in nine days? Great. It was a math question. The test was probably a basic level of oral math as well as the ability to make sharp logical turns. Domi, being the man he was, quickly figured out the answer. But he didn't rush to answer. Instead watching Edward and Argyle for a moment. He didn't want to make a bad impression in Connor's mind. But he also didn't want to get any special attention from him. Which wouldn't be conducive to his own god knows what pitfalls. So he could snatch the questions. But not steal too many opportunities. The first one he was better off taking though. After all neither brother seemed to be very good at math Yako. Edward. In particular. Hated to use his toes after using his fingers. All three together being looked down upon by Connor would be even worse. With that in mind, he immediately raised his hand and shouted, 27 buckets. Connor cast an approving glance. Correct answer. It was actually a less than rigorous question, but the answer was 27 no matter what way you thought about it. The question could be interpreted as, one person uses a bucket of water for three days, three people use a bucket of water for one day, or one person uses one third of a bucket of water a day. It's not really easy to figure out if you get caught up in the misguided thinking. A problem like this might be a little difficult for a college student, but it's just right for a preschooler. Mental note to Dominic. Followed by the next question. A wagon was traveling at great speed through a dense forest, but then two forked roads appeared in front of it, on one of which lay nine innocent civilians, while on the other fork lay only one civilian. Also innocent, the ordinary cart driver has a life of his own, and he doesn't want to just crash into a tree trunk and die in vain so he has to choose a fork in the road, and going through either fork in the road will require him to run over the civilians lying on the road. What would you choose to do if you were the car driver? This is an open-ended question, and open-ended means that there is no fixed answer to this question. What you have in mind is the answer. Speak freely. While they were meditating, they didn't even notice that Carlos had already come to the lobby and hid quietly after hearing the whole question. He was also curious to know what his three children would choose. Such a dilemma often reflects a person's moral philosophy. It had plagued generations of people since its inception, and countless thinkers had fought their heads off over it, but had come up with nothing. But it was a topic that could make people scratch their hair out that didn't trap Edward in the slightest. For the first time in his life, he was the first brave man to answer. I'd jump on top of the wagon, then jump upwards before the wagon hit a tree, grab a branch and then duck into the canopy so no one has to die. Oh, except the poor horse. Both Carlos and Connor gave good-natured smiles at this reply. Such a reply showed that Edward didn't want anyone to die, showing exactly his kind nature. How are the two of you thinking? Argyle frowned tightly. He didn't have the outrageous imagination that Edward had and was caught in the same dilemma as everyone else. It could be said that maturity had given him both the adult way of thinking and shed the rottenness of a child. He finally gives his answer. I'll let the wagon drive to the fork in the road where there's only one person. I guess. Nine civilians are far more valuable to society than one. I am sorry to have made this choice, precisely because the coachman I play is also a civilian, and has no right to conclude that he is worth more than that civilian, so why should it not be me who dies? He fell back into deep thought as he said this, and it was a distressing moment when it seemed as if all that he had learned before had been rendered useless. Argyle lowered his head in frustration. Mr. Connor, I may not be able to give a proper answer right now. The imagined chastisement didn't come. Connor patted him on the shoulder and comforted him. It's all right. No one has been able to give a standard answer so far. Or rather, there never was a standard answer. You don't have to beat yourself up. Although Argyle was quite disappointed with his answer, Carlos agreed. With Edward aspiring to be a man of the world, and Dominic better off living in the shadows, it was only natural that Argyle would be his preferred choice of successor. For a lord, preserving the greater good was the most important aspect to consider when certain people had to be sacrificed. 
unless there were other factors interspersed. A lord who could look out for the majority was a qualified lord. It seems like we can let Argyle develop towards this aspect of governance in the future. Just as Carlos was immersed in his imagination, Connor's words immediately brought him back to reality. So Dominic, what's your insight? Your two brothers can answer it all. Domi was well aware that this question was an otherworldly version of the previous life's trolley puzzle, and like the situation here, no one could solve it, and naturally, he didn't know a reasonable explanation, but he was clear about Connor's purpose. Since he wanted to understand his heart, he could not do as he wished. One of the rules of survival in the other world never let others see into the heart. Therefore, he would not give any of the answers. Instead he would analyze some of the possibilities with absolute rationality. Let's hope this gets Connor to drop his cross-examination of me. He rearranged the possibilities in his mind, organized his words, and finally spoke after taking a deep breath. If I think it's better to die one than nine, that's utilitarianism. Conversely, if I choose to fork in the road of nine people and therefore run over nine people, that is moralistic. So I will spend all my time trying to figure out which solution is more virtuous. But the wagon has run over nine people, which is virtue ethics. So I weigh which way will not violate the rights of the other person which is rights-based ethics. Then if I put that one civilian on the fork in the road of the nine, and then let myself lie down on it as well, and let the wagon run over the last eleven people, this is deathism. The room fell silent at Domi's statement. In the silence, he met Connor's pale eyes without avoidance. As you said before, there is no one standard answer to this question. What I have said are but some of the possibilities, and all the possibilities are the result of an extension of the human ethical reasoning developed today, moral skepticism, moral nihilism, surrealism, mechanistic ethics, self-interested hedonism, and so on, all of which have their counterparts in innumerable answers and innumerable variations on them, until a new human ethics emerges. All the answers I have described are subordinate to one of these possibilities, so you may take it that I have not made any of these answers, or that I have made all of them. At this point, Domi suddenly thought of something and added, if I were forced to choose one, I think I would follow the ethics of relationships and save someone close to me, even if it's only one. Thank you for the 10. 000, 000 coins rewarded by where's was wa. The boss is bullish. The boss is atmospheric. Wish the boss good health and all the best. Hard. You make adults several rounds older than you feel inferior. Villain value plus 2500. When Domi gave this reply, even they, the adults, didn't know what to say. Saying he was wrong, it seemed like he couldn't find a point to refute. And saying he was right, he didn't have a concrete idea. What was this? Connor raised more interest than Carlos' bewilderment. Dominic, I recognize your answer. It shows that you are a rational person to the extreme, knowing that you can avoid a definite answer with this method. I'm curious though, where did you learn these technical terms? Kindergarten teachers and parents don't teach you that. To this, Domi replied without blushing. Introduction to Philosophy, a book from the library that was sitting on the table. I happened to read it for a while and just memorized some of the words in passing. The grudging excuse barely got by. Who would suspect a cute seven-year-old? Now, they looked at Domi with nothing but amazement in their eyes, including Connor Reeves and Carlos. Well, it's time to keep a low profile again. What goes around comes around, and he had to do it in order to adhere to one of the rules of otherworldly survival. In fact, he could have played dumb and given a ridiculous and popular answer. The only difference is that he has lowered his self-esteem and lost the villain value. Is he playing hard to get for those villain values? Yes, there was a suspicion of that. The only thing that was beyond his expectations was that Connor had only asked those two questions? Really no more questions? Domi eyed Connor, hoping beyond hope that he would come up with a few more easy questions for his brothers. If not, wouldn't he be the most conspicuous boy? But Connor just stroked Domi's head and gave him an encouraging look. Well done. Domi wanted to cry. Just then, Carlos walked out as well, and several people got up from the couch. Carlos came first and bowed in front of Sir Connery. That was a sign of respect for the respected man. Sir has finally arrived. Please forgive me for my absence. Because he had flown over on his own, his trajectory and speed had never been revealed to anyone. Even if Carlos had wanted to welcome him from afar, he would not have had the direction or time to do so. Connor thought that this was actually his own problem. And to be honest, he was kinda glad to be able to come over on his own. So he shook his head and said, You don't have to apologize Carlos, it's my problem, and I've picked up quite a few things along the way like your family's ancestral home and the design of the inside, with magic skillfully embedded in it. Can I know who built it? It wasn't something to hide. On the contrary, Carlos was a little proud when he said it. The design was drawn by my great-grandfather's brother, 
and it took nearly a hundred years as well as several generations of people in the territory to build it, so it can be said that it is the product of all the people in the entire Blofeld territory. Connor also didn't expect it to have such a spiritual connotation behind it, and after that, he didn't mince words of praise at all. Domi did see that this teacher of theirs really loved architecture and magic, especially designs that poked at his aesthetics. He would be, be as interested in all of it as a child. A purist, was how he summed it up. Of course, since they had known each other for so little time, this assessment was still too one-sided, and Domi only tucked it away in the back of his mind, waiting for the future to slowly refine it. The topic has unknowingly gone far. Sorry. Connor coughed a few times, his expression regaining its seriousness, and said, Carlos, I have already gained a certain understanding of your son through a few questions before you came, so I think that today we'll be able to officially start teaching. Carlos was overjoyed at his words. As the saying goes, a child's childhood is incredibly precious. While you are resting from fishing, other people's children are lined up for tutorial classes 24 hours a day, culture classes after etiquette classes, physical education classes after culture classes. It's a race against time. It couldn't be better to be able to start teaching on the same day. That's great. Carlos agreed instantly. But I need to have a word with Domi first. Clam? What was there to say to himself? He followed Carlos to the next room and sat opposite each other. Domi, there's something I think it's about time I told you. Wait, that tone? Domi always had a feeling that the next line out of his mouth was going to be something like you were actually picked up from the trash or charge your phone bill to get your son. In fact, after you were born, your mother and I realized that you had a unique physical talent. And from a young age, you had physical qualities that far exceeded those of your age group. For this reason I considered a lot and finally decided to send you into the Northfall Division to exercise. You should know what the Northfall Division is, right? The hidden division of our family that does almost everything. Domi replied dryly. That's right, the future is treacherous. Even I don't have absolute certainty that I can protect everyone in the family. You are my son. Naturally I don't want you to die in an accident, so I want you to grow up quickly. Perhaps these words are too early for a child like you, but time waits for no one. You must know. Domi thought about the reason. It was nothing more than that. Is it because my magical talent is only elementary? Carlos nodded after a moment's hesitation. In today's world where magic is the name of the game, not having a skill to fall back on is dangerous for those in high positions. I just thought that since I can't make a mark in magic, I should utilize my innate talent and develop it in the direction of the body. And it just so happens that the Northfall Division is full of such killers, which is quite suitable for you. But if you really don't have any thoughts in this regard, before he finished speaking, Domi directly agreed. Uh, I can. It almost dried Carlos out. Ever since he'd learned that there was another assassination organization in his own family, he'd known that he'd never be able to get out of their way, and that his best bet would be to join up. Thinking about it with his toes, he knew how much villainous value output that would give him. Nay, there was no such opportunity. And now, didn't the opportunity come to him on its own? Carlos froze for a moment. He was originally going to say, if Domi is really unwilling, his big deal is to spend a little more cost send people to protect it at all times, and then be more thorough, then go incognito, big hidden in the city, but how could he not expect that Domi would agree to be so dry, a little uncertain, look again, only to see Domi's eyes are flashing a kind of emotion called eager to try, now he could be completely sure that Duomi didn't have the mentality of rejection, however, at the thought of the brutal exercise in the northern fall division falling on his own son, Carlos still couldn't bear to do it, and even his tone of voice became much softer, I spoke with Mr. Connor, one day, in the morning, cultural knowledge will be taught, while in the afternoon, practical magic will be practiced. You don't have to go to the afternoon class. I'll arrange for someone to specialize in training. Domi, the training in the future will be bitter and hard, but once you step on this path there is no turning back. Are you ready for the realization? Before making his final choice, Domi asked, Dad, your reason for letting me go to the Northern Fall Division to train is to give me the ability to defend myself right? Carlos nodded. Then, once I've finished my studies, will I be able to choose my own life? At this point, Carlos recalled the agreement he had made with Gressa and nodded once more. Of course there's no problem. That's the agreement between your mother and I. If that's the case, then I guess I'm ready for the realization. The living room of the side hall was transformed into a small classroom. As early as the day Connor agreed to come over, the maids began to set up. Three small-sized desks and chairs, a podium with a magic blackboard. The so-called magic blackboard is a blackboard with a matching magic pen that can be used to scribble on it at will, and it is very practical to input a trace of any attribute of magic power into the blackboard and maneuver it to the place where it needs to be deleted to realize the deletion operation. However, 
The cost of such a blackboard is not small at all. Usually only large colleges and nobles can afford it. Connor had early experience in using it and quickly got back on board, drawing a timeline in the black space and writing down a big event. The predecessor of the Lionheart Empire, civil unrest, setting things right, the new emperor ascends to the throne. He didn't even need a textbook to lecture. As long as the students had their notebooks ready, slightly one tier higher, Domi and his two older brothers were already seated in rows under the podium, looking at the three young children eagerly waiting for the knowledge to be poured into them. Connor couldn't help but think back to his past teaching experiences, and every time he did, his desire to share that knowledge would spurt out. It's great to be a teacher, he sighed secretly, but with the new students, he would become serious, as if he had a split personality. Now, let's review the history of the Lionheart Empire. Starting with the predecessor of the empire, take notes for easy recall, they will be checked at the end of the semester and credited to the usual points. The classroom immediately resounded with the voice of the teacher, the weight of history was spoken from his mouth and thus passed on to the memories of the next generation. The warm sunlight shone on the students' notebooks, and the tender fonts accompanied by the rustling sound of pencils formed the most youthful picture, occasionally looking out of the window while fuming, the bird resting on the edge of the window was tilting its head. It's green bean pupils mapping out a schoolboy who was diligently writing as well as two touchy-feely boys. Connor's veins popped, his eyebrows raised, and he snapped. Edward, don't wander off in class. And you, Dominic, there's nothing to see in the maid outside the window. The morning's class was over quickly. And why quickly? Because if you dawdle thoroughly enough, it's a matter of moments. No matter how long it is, Dom thought he was still listening a bit. But Edward was really swinging for the fences. Not only did he daze frequently but he couldn't stop fighting between his upper and lower eyelids, and he only had a few trick drawings jotted down in his notebook. Argyle was the only one of the three brothers who had listened carefully from the beginning to the end, and remembered his notes in super detail, so as soon as the class was over, the two of them saw the timing of Connor leaving the classroom, and directly madly robbed Argyle's notes. In the end, of course, it was the stronger Dom who grabbed it and waved the notebook around as if showing off. Sorry Edward, I don't have time to wait until the evening to make up for it. Edward, who hadn't grabbed it, was depressed throughout and said in disbelief, Dad told you not to come in the afternoon, there's plenty of time, why are you grabbing it from me? Domi naturally wouldn't tell him the truth, it was a secret between him and Carlos, so he made a random excuse, late, I still have to go on a date with Kelsey, so don't get involved with the notes or anything else that's it, I'll go copy first, call me when we eat, fuck you, asshole, recess, lunch, and nap, time flew by. When Edward and the others started their afternoon classes, Domi would also be heading to the castle underground to report. Gollum. He stood in front of one of the doorways to the basement and gulped. Done. And when it really came time to start he panicked. It was the same thing as going to cram school for the first time. There were people he didn't know, unfamiliar surroundings, and unknown challenges. He always couldn't help but brainstorm all those magical and weird trainings in movies and TV shows that hurt just looking at them. What with forcibly bending bones, Stepping on spikes with bare palms and the like, and just thinking about it made his legs shake. No no no, going in like this will surely be laughed at. When can we be subjected to this kind of aggravation? Drum up your confidence. In order to fill himself back up with self-confidence and confidence, Domi had a thousand consecutive draws on the spot. At this time, only the almighty Goldfinger father can give him a sense of security. One thousand consecutive draws. Being drawn. Energy Potion X71. Inspiration Potion X6. Night Vision Potion X3, Trauma Salve X68, Strength Enhancement plus 0, 2, Agility Enhancement plus 0, 6, Mental Strength Enhancement plus 1, 1, Assassination Technique, Beginner, Note, Staff Designs Probability Up Years has expired and is now Tips Probability Up Years, Siddhartha Kane, Shadow Stream Scythe, from LOL Universe X2 Pieces of Know-How, X1 Cultivation Know-How, X1 Killing Know-How, can be opened at any time. Kohei Setsunas, from Spirit of the Halberd, Tips Fragment X1, Super Wild and Cool Invincible Wind and Fire Will Omelette Making Tips X1. Thank you for your patronage X802. Premium Pool Reward. Ikimoku, literally. I mean, you can literally ingest 10 lines of characters at a glance. Understand the meaning and deposit the corresponding memories into the hippocampus normally. So it doesn't mean you can forget everything. The mechanism of the first two premium jackpots for newbies is no longer valid. I mean, the next time you're greeted with a thank you for your patronage. Current attribute changes, strength, 12, 0 8 12, 28, agility, 13, 38 13, 98, mental strength, 7, 3 8, 4, nowadays. Unlike back then, Domi already had a certain physical foundation, 
Even if he suddenly increased his attribute points by a small amount, he wouldn't have an overreaction. At most his whole body would be parched, plus a bit of sweating, as if it was a warm-up in advance. On top of that, some tips about assassination were also stuffed into his head. For example, where to stab someone to make them immediately cool, and the techniques of GA waste, backstabbing, and throat slitting. At first glance it looks quite a lot and quite complete, but in reality they are all very superficial, and there is still an indefinable rawness that reaches the hands. Beginners. Assassination art level? The description is quite vivid and graphic. Let's put it this way, if he was given a dagger, he would be able to come up with dozens of killing techniques in half a second, only with a low success rate, but in any case, the assassination technique came at just the right time to be a blessing in disguise. Domi took stock of the harvest, body strengthening, get square root, warming up, get square root, specialization, get it, he was now bursting with confidence, he can't lose face with the Boo family now, right? Pumping up his confidence, Domi finally pushed open the door to the abyss. Harder. Crunch. The gate was very thick and heavy, and it took him quite a bit of strength to push it. And behind the gate, there were countless steps and endless corridors that went straight underground. Cold air blew from the inside out, causing his newly ignited body to cool down a few more points. Gulp. Another large mouthful of spit went down. This time, though, he overcame his trepidation and chose to walk in bravely. The further down Domi went, the fiercer and colder the whistling cold wind became and it was as if the bottom he was heading for was not the headquarters of the Northern Fall Division, but an ice cellar designed to hide corpses. Damn it, Carlos didn't remind me of this. I should have known to wear more clothes. Hoo hoo. Hot air visible to the naked I was exhaled from his mouth. Domi tightened the small vest he wore in the spring, subconsciously applying a tighter breath that would allow him to barely maintain his body temperature. A little further on, the steps finally finished, presenting him with a straight and wide corridor. Rather dated stone bricks were piled up to form the walls on both sides, and every few steps a magical lamp flickered with a light that was on the cooler side, as if it were a blinking light on a shipping lane that stretched all the way to the end of the corridor. Time to get to the place, right? Domi consoled himself, but no designer in his right mind would have built such consumable and laborious steps and galleries underground, but he had underestimated how brain dead the designers were. After walking along the corridor for about five minutes or so he still didn't see anyone, which couldn't help but make Domi fall into contemplation. Was the world crazy or was there something wrong with his perception? Helplessly, he began a review in his head. Creepy hit the wall? It can't be. This is an otherworldly world. If it's not a trick wall, maybe the corridor is round and I'm just circling around in place? That's not right either. He said in immediate self-denial, if it's round, then I've been walking in a straight line and sooner or later I hit a wall. But so far I haven't. So that possibility is ruled out as well. Thinking carefully about the remaining possibilities, Carlos is the head of the family. It's impossible that he doesn't know about this place. And it's also impossible that he would tell me false information. The place to report to the Northfall Division is definitely here. It's not the tricky beating wall. It's not the circle corridor. And it's not Carlos intentionally punking me. So there's only one remaining possibility. That would be that the people from the Northern Fall Division were pitting him. Though he didn't know what means they used to do it. It was probably some magic that he had never touched before. Domi had punked people so many times, but it was the first time he had been punked, which made him bare his teeth, half in anger and half in freezing, but no matter what, there was still a need to break the trap at the moment, after racking his brains for a while, he chose to lie down, that's right, that's literally lying flat, paralyzed like a salted fish on the floor, patiently waiting for redemption, meanwhile, somewhere in the underground room of the castle, sir, the third young master seems to have detected the existence of the illusion, Oh, a man's voice resounded in the room, with a slight shock in his tone. So soon? Didn't the family head say that the third young master doesn't have any magical talent? Also, even if this level is passed, proceed to the intensity, hurry up. At the same time start recording the third young master's behavior. Yes, in the endless corridor illusion realm, Domi continued to lie flat on the stone tiles, sitting back and waiting for the northern fall division to give up the idea of torturing himself, showing weakness. This was an exclusive privilege that belonged exclusively to the Harry not yet full grown boys. However, it seemed that Baylusher men didn't eat this kind of thing. In the next second, his ears twitched in response, and a rumbling sound came from the rear, entering his ears and transmitting into his auditory nerves, shaking the ground from far away. What the hell? He immediately sat up and looked to the rear, only to see a huge iron ball of the same length and width as the long corridor was crushing towards him, like a flood beast with a bloody mouth. This kind of scene could scare Domi to death. He felt that it was impossible for the Northern Fall sect to really screw him over, 
but if he really had to watch the iron ball run over him, Domi still didn't have the guts to do so, that was almost a subconscious human reaction, as Domi stood up at the fastest speed in his life, then scattered his legs and ran, the subordinate acted as a qualified recording officer, scribbling on a piece of paper, the iron ball crushed in, the third young master immediately chose to run away, his speed is as fast as a rabbit, only seen in his life, five minutes later, iron ball trial ends, lasted five minutes without being chased by the iron ball, excellent physical strength, watching the iron ball turn into the sudden fork in the road, the voice fading away, Domi's eyes residual fear, good thing now, he can finally take a rest, he held his hands on his knees, panting heavily, not forgetting to curse under his breath, I fuck, fuck, which goddamned guy designed this, pure torture, ah chew, the man sneezed through the air, sir, the weather has been unpredictable lately, are you catching a cold, possibly, but I'm more inclined to pollen allergy, the man touched his nose, then raised his hand to look at the pocket watch in his palm, pay attention to the time, the five minute break has arrived, start the next test, okay, so, in the next 10 minutes, Domi went through foot stomping, all ground stabbing, forced pull-ups, hidden arrows are hard to guard against, but also hard to hide from the open gun, ow 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 alligator pool log bridge, we'll play the sound tour of the rotating giant axe promenade and other fun mini games, behavioral record, excellent arm strength, excellent reflexes, excellent balance, physical coordination and observation, excellent, rest time, 10 minutes, end of rest time, put the final trial, feeling like he had personally gone through the boys and girls forward once, Domi no longer even had the strength to curse, his recovery speed could not keep up, and his physical strength was not enough to keep up with the demand, so now he was truly exhausted, by now, he could probably guess the meaning behind these fun games, the levels that tested his various abilities one after another were not meant to obtain the most realistic physical data, speed, physical strength, arm strength, reflexes, balance, coordination, observation, there is still a comprehensive battle missing, he sat cross-legged against the wall, looking toward the shadows in the corner not far away, a mocking bitter smile at the corner of his mouth, so, this will be the last level, in the field of vision, a man slowly walked out from the shadows, wearing a pitch black trench coat with a hood covering his face, holding two open bladed daggers, and even having the height of an adult, he came within a short distance of Domi and dropped the dagger held in his left hand in front of him, then assumed a fighting stance, it was clear that he wanted to have a duel with Domi, if placed in the past, Domi would have jumped at the chance, but now, he didn't even bother to move his fingers, let alone fight, however, what Domi didn't expect was that a green light fell from the sky and shone directly on his head, so green that he panicked, gaining technique, stamina recovery, Domi could clearly perceive that his originally depleted stamina was being recharged at an extremely fast speed, it wouldn't take more than 10 seconds before he was once again alive and well, pick it up, the man in black let out a dull voice, and fight, the moment Domi picked up the dagger, the green light on his head disappeared, and at the same time, the man in black moved, the dagger in his hand probed out like a viper, and his figure was as unpredictable as a trickster, Domi's eyes widened as he hurriedly set up his dagger, this height alone was already not a fair duel, was it, to place a big invincible boss to thwart his own vigor, okay, the ruthlessness within Domi was also aroused, since you want to abuse the vegetables, then I'll accompany you to the end, he followed the muscle memory of the assassination technique in his mind, holding the dagger backwards as he flipped his fingers, the left leg stored power, the right leg bent and settled, then rushed out like a spring, countless assassination techniques coalesced into the most efficient killing technique at this moment, a plain dash, coupled with a plain throat wipe, the high ponytail long gray hair fluttered on the way, driven by Domi's extremely fast speed, as if it was a white wolf on the grassland, the gusty wind blowing its fur, as if it was a lightning-like pizzicato, the icy blue pupils flashed with hunting fervor, who is the prey and who is the hunter, the dry heavens and the earth are yet to be determined, you and I are both oxen and horses, June 18th joyful new book the first round of trial push, when I saw the background to the letter short after people are confused, meow only 50, 000 words out of the beginning to recommend, no point to read us can be directly mailed off, the book club has also mentioned, no read after the recommendation, no recommendation will have to send, so seedlings need to love and care ah, sell miserable, the reader's little hand, turn to the last page can add a follow up for me pinch, especially on Tuesdays, according to the number of readers of the day to rank recommendations, Tuesday cannot be raised ah, raised raised may be no one, anyway, catch up reading, please, autumn pear cream, love you all, off topic, first, some readers have reported that 1000 draws is too much thanks for patronizing me, 
In fact, once I set too many rewards, resulting in the protagonist's strength grows too fast, it is easy to lead to the collapse of the power system. The sense of nurturing from childhood will also be weakened a lot. So there are so many thank you patronize, but on second thought, so many thank yous do make people uncomfortable. There is a kind of struggling for most of my life just to grab a mouthful of sure to eat feeling. After careful consideration, I have chosen to make some changes. I will add a mechanism in the later episodes to recycle these thank yous and give them a secondary value while increasing the fun. It shouldn't be so hard to watch at that time. Secondly, card drawing text is not necessarily cool text. I need to emphasize here. In this book, the golden finger is just a legitimate reason to make the protagonist grow faster and cooler. The main body is not the golden finger, but the storyline and worldview that I want to show more. Gold finger choose to draw cards, simply because I play the collapse of the iron guarantee or crook adjust, want to use this to commemorate my fading 5000 or so big ocean. Thirdly, some extremely Chinese words do give the reader a sense of cutthroat. I instinctively bypassed these words since I was writing about a female lead before, but now that I'm writing about a male lead, I didn't hold back for a moment. I'll change it, next time for sure. Fourth, the thing about the family with outstanding status, where the oldest brother and second brother are both top-notch talented while the third son is a loser, is not a setting error. Don't ask. Asking means there is an ambush. Thank you for the feedback given by the book lovers who raised these questions. We will try to change what we can. I'll try to change it if I can. By the way, I'm looking for some small rewards. Eh hey, show hand. In the eyes of the man in black, the sprinting Domi was like a wolf king that hadn't grown up yet, not very old, but the ferocity had already been revealed. The original dagger that stabbed out at a tricky angle was forced to go on the defensive. Ding! Tiny sparks flew as the two daggers intertwined, making a pleasant intertwining sound. The first exchange failed to score, so both of them simultaneously retreated a few steps to pull away. The information gained from the tryst was quickly processed, and Domi was slightly puzzled by the man across from him. He clearly had an adult body and fairly decent combat skills, but after exchanging blows he realized that the man seemed to be a bit out of his depth when attacking, so much so that an attack that could have shaken Domi off with sheer strength could now only go 50-50 with him. An adult could exert the same amount of power as an apparent 7-year-old human cub who was actually 13 years old? That's a lot of jerking off, isn't it? But this was good. At least the difference wasn't so big. He still had the power to fight. System. Use. Siddhartha Kane. Shadow Stream Sides. Killing Insights. As the words fell, the image in front of him flew around, and his vision and perception would be synchronized with Kane's. It was a river in the middle of the forest, meandering and long, stretching from here to the city-state of Noxus. Looking back, countless Noxus soldiers wearing black and red armor and holding swords, spears, and halberds surged up from the lower reaches of the river. A vast swarm. On the other hand, he was surrounded by only a few men in black shadow stream costumes, probably only fifty or so, compared to the legions that could easily be in the thousands, as small as an ant. Just then, another thick and rough voice came from inside his head, Cain, how I miss the taste of blood rolling in the water, only to see Cain stretch out his hand, a two meter out of a hideous giant scythe appeared in his hand, the color of blood, the hilt and blade of the sickle intersection is also embedded with a large eyeball, seems to have biological activity, Domi witnessed it turned down, such a huge scythe in the hands of Cain is like a child's toy, rather easily played a knife flower out, carrying on the shoulder, laughing at the bottom of a thousand male soldiers, eyes full of disdain, with a debauched voice line said, then this is the day to relive it, lay asked, and wait by the river, and the enemy will be as good as dead, that's right, let's dye the river red, Domi could clearly appreciate the way Kane was firing, the majestic power coursing through his body, traveling methodically to wherever they were needed, first, the soles of his feet, Kane led his men against the Noxians, the gusts of wind in front of him being cleaved by his scythe as he took the lead. Soon, blades met blades. Then came the arm and the core, driven by both. The giant scythe that spun up was like a meat grinder, removing the heads of the Noxians one by one. The whistling of the blades interspersed with Kai Yin's maniacal laughter. He was like an artist, performing the art of killing that belonged to the dead. Blades separated flesh and skin. Heads flew into the sky. Viscera smeared the ground, killing one and then the next. There was almost no pause and the scythe wouldn't cut twice on a person. When more than one enemy surrounded him, he would turn into a black shadow and merge into the ground, then burrow out from another place and continue the giant side sweeping and sharp blade slashing, reaching a precise and efficient slaughter. Domi didn't have the physical prowess and skill in wielding a scythe that Kain had, and the only thing he could feel was Kain's absolute mastery of his power and the battlefield. Not an ounce of power was wasted, not a single person died outside of a plan. 
Just like every neurological move played in a game of go to kill a way out of a predicament. As for those mind-boggling skill effects, perhaps it was another reliance on which he was able to remain at ease in the midst of a thousand people surrounding and blocking him. He was bold and careful. He dared to maneuver. And even though he was in a difficult situation, he still stood on the heights of his spirit and madly taunted his enemies. Domi felt that he comprehended the essence. The power of Noxus is a joke. He laughed out loud. With Kane's shadow swiping steps cast once more, the commander of the Noxians lost his target once more double time. He looked around in panic, trying to find Kai Yin's trail, but the next second, the bloodstained scythe was on his neck, and demonic murmurs resounded in his ears. Darkness has fallen. The scene cut off at this point, and the crystal of insight made a cracking sound. The flow of time returned to normal, and he returned to his body. After experiencing a battle that lasted several hours, slaughtering thousands of people, even the slightly rusty assassination technique underwent a glorious progression under the baptism of blood. Both are born to kill, and share the same path. Assassination technique, beginner's technique small achievement, weighing the dagger in his hand, its shape, its weight, all made himself feel incredibly familiar, as if it was an extension of his hand. A hint of incomprehension appeared in the man in black's cloudy eyes. He didn't understand why his still harmless opponent had turned into a demon that had killed countless people in the blink of an eye. The air seemed to be permeated with the smell of blood, and just as the man was doubly puzzled, Domi suddenly stormed into action. Powers wandered where they were needed. Yes, that's what it felt like. The power was born from the mind and then moved with the body. In this moment, he became the master of his own body. The force on the dagger even doubled, so fast that the man barely reacted. The open-bladed dagger sliced through the skin tissue of his face, and rather dark-colored blood splattered out, and almost, the spot where the blood spilled was his neck. Domi, who came to the man's back, didn't give him any time to react, relying on the advantage of his back, he launched another attack. This time, he even aimed for the heart. Kai In as well as the knowledge of assassination techniques told him the location of the heart, as if pointing an invisible finger to a place for him, and whispered in a compelling tone. See, here is the heart, send the dagger in, thrust it in hard, then listen to the sound of life passing away, to the last groan of the poor wretch, that will be the spoils of the victor. Put. Bright red flowers of the other side bloomed grandly on the man's back, and the cold liquid soaked Domi's hands that held the dagger tightly, without any semblance of life's warmth. Plop, withdrawing the dagger, the man who had lost his heart fell down with a resounding sound. At the same time, everything around him was like a mirror, water and moon as illusory, brighter, warmer lighting, decor like that of a dwarven bar. There was a great deal of drinking and cheering, and several men in black stood up at the round tables holding up glasses made of wood and steel bars and chanting his name. Dominic, Dominic, Dominic Blofeld. Let's celebrate the new member's success in passing the test and joining the Honorable Northfall Division. Cheers. Tons and tons and tons and tons. What's this? About? In the environment of red lights, full of alcohol and festivities, he was the only one who was mortared in place, looking so out of place. This sudden celebration left him simply puzzled for a moment. He wasn't sure if he had returned to reality or if he was still in an illusion. It was not an unreasonable concern, because, the dagger was still held in his hand, the corpse that he had stabbed through the heart was still lying in front of him, the hood was lifted at one corner, revealing the human face inside, with a pale face, protruding eyeballs, and four big words of incredulity written all over his face, gradually darkening blood was even still flowing out from his corpse, pooling into a pool of blood that dyed his toes a bloody color, just as he was plunged into endless doubt, a man came before him and waved his hand, third young master, do you have any more questions? I can answer them all for you. Domi slowly raised his head, his icy blue pupils still retaining the murderous aura from earlier, causing the man to flinch for a moment, as if he would be the next to die. The slightly childish voice came out softly from Domi's mouth, but it brought the cheers of the entire bar to a screeching halt. So, you're my next prey? What? The man felt as if he had heard wrong. He was the lifelong shadow of countless nobles and powerful men, and no one had dared to talk to him like that since the moment he became famous but Domi wouldn't give him a chance to explain, and the dagger probed once more, only to be easily dodged by the man in front of him and slapped away. It fell out of his palm and slid all the way to the foot of the table, propelled by a huge force. The force was so great that it even made his tiger's mouth go numb. This can just be the force of a casual slap off. Domi immediately recognized the difference in strength between each other, which was not even on the same level, so he immediately collected his hostility and became obedient again. The man was very surprised to look at Domi recognize the goose so fast. Ha! Huh? The final big boss had failed to thwart him, and had wanted to use this opportunity to make up for it, but he hadn't expected Domi to be so ungrateful. Not resisting a bit? 
Surrender, surrender, is really can't beat you ah, I don't want this point, please let me go. The man showed a bitter smile, the test is over, I am not your enemy, just as well. The man thought of himself as a Buddhist, what he failed to do, for the time being, he didn't force himself, sooner or later, he would have the opportunity. He ushered Domi away from the noisy tavern and into his own office, where his subordinate, the Sven fellow with the monocle, was organizing information. Hearing someone come in, the Sven loser lock immediately turned back. Ah sir, about the third young master's achievement. Just halfway through his words, Locke suddenly realized that the third young master Dominic was right behind the officer Adel, so he immediately shut up and didn't talk about it. He didn't know if these were something he could say to the person in question. A tell motioned for Domi to take a seat at his desk, and sat himself in the large, comfortable leather chair, with his crony, Locke, standing just behind him. He posed himself comfortably before speaking. Locke, tell us what you were about to say, so as to assuage the concerns of our little detective. Ha! Huh? who just now thought of me as an enemy, understood, he concluded as he opened his notebook, third young master, we have made a comprehensive evaluation of your performance in the illusionary realm, your physical quality is described as top-notch, and all the aspects that were subjected to the test were impeccably perfect, especially the final hurdle, that was originally not counted as part of the overall score, and was simply used to extinguish the newcomer's sharpness, but since you killed him all, it naturally had to be counted in the overall evaluation, According to the records of the Northern Fall sect, your score is the highest. Speaking of this, Locke's tone had risen, as if he was also as proud of it. You have set a new record. We are all proud of you. Atelier also clapped his hands in congratulations. It's a blessing to be able to see a child as talented as you in my lifetime. And to get back to the point, third young master, there's something I have to confess to you. Domi cocked his head. It was obvious that the adults were hiding something from him. The chief prefect of the Northern Fall Division. Oh. That's me, and the current head of the family are actually about the same in terms of status, in front of the others, they see me as if I were the head of the family, but in front of Carlos, I still have to listen to him, but that's just what the others in the family think, in fact, there aren't that many rules between Carlos and I, no, I even made a bet with Carlos before sending you for the test, a bet on what, a bet on what your final score could be, Carlos seems to be very confident in your talent, he bet that you could be among the top tier. And what about you? Ah, uh, pardon my rudeness. I don't know your name yet. Just call me Atelier. He said casually. Okay Atel. You have taunted the Empire's strongest assassin, the chief prefect of the Northern Fall Division, and the noble nightmare, Atel, with a villainous value of plus 800. Atel's brow furrowed hard, but chose to forgive him for the sake of him being Carlos' son. Ahem. Show some respect. Back to the point. Your father thinks highly of you, but I don't. So I lost. As per the bet. I will cover the cost of making your first weapon. That doesn't cost much so it's just a small bet. Atelier's tone remained relaxed and didn't seem to be that needy. First weapon? Domi asked curiously. Yes. The Northfall Division made its fortune on assassination. And often magic is not used in assassination. But rather cold weapons. And magic is used to assist at best. So knowing a weapon is important. As is an excellent weapon with excellent craftsmanship. In your future training, you will try out various weapons and then you will be able to choose the most suitable one from among them to be your main weapon. And in the meantime, I will have a blacksmith craft a weapon of this type, and finally give it to you as a gift when you graduate. In the history of the Northfall Division, this weapon is known as the Graduation Gift, also called the Slayer's First Weapon. Domi seemed to understand the implications and nodded in agreement. Sounds significant. It is. Streams of light wheeled in Atelier's eyes. The words seemed to speak to his memories, but they quickly returned to normal. The bet is just that. You know it. Let's leave it at that for today. You should be tired after tossing and turning for half a day. Go home first, and come over to report tomorrow at 1 p.m. M. Sharp. On the way home, Domi kept thinking, what kind of weapon is suitable for himself? Is it the dagger that is used the most, or is it the scythe that Kain used in the inside experience? The dagger is lightweight and versatile. The scythe is a bit bulky, but powerful. Killing people like cutting leeks, both have their advantages, and he has both of them. It's hard to choose between them. After thinking for a while or to no avail, he decided to let time give him the answer. Pushing open the heavy door, he stepped out of the underground passage. By the time Domi was back in the castle again, it was already mostly dark outside, and in a few moments it would be dinner time. So thinking that there wasn't much to do, Domi got up and headed for the dining room. He was the first to arrive, and after sitting in his seat for a while, boredom finally broke out. There was no food to be had, 
and not even anyone to talk to. There were only maids like worker ants placing dishes on the table. He jumped down from the chair and wandered around the castle with nothing to do. Even though this huge castle had already been strolled by him he was still enjoying himself. After a few turns, he actually came to the kitchen. The kitchen was particularly busy before dinner time. The cooks and maids, everyone's feet and hands never stopped. When they saw that Domi had actually arrived here, they all stopped what they were doing and saluted him. AI, excuse me, excuse me, I just came over to take a look. Everyone just continue to do their own thing. There's no need to take me to heart. The maids and cooks were already uncomfortable. After hearing this it was both awkward and uncomfortable. They always squinted their eyes, attempting to use their afterimages to observe Domi's actions so that they could be prepared before something unexpected happened. Yet right in front of everyone's eyes, Domi actually moved a chair over and stood on it to observe the chef cooking? Everyone was dumbfounded. They thought he was here to fool around, but they didn't expect this. So you're here to observe how a meal is created, right? I'm sure it's a child's idea. What's this? Dragonfish bone oil. A chef who was cooking replied in a shaky voice. Scoop some for me to taste. The order of the third young master. A tiny chef like him didn't dare to disobey at all, and took out the fastest hand speed in his life to scoop a spoonful of dragon bonefish oil for Domi. Duomi received the small silver spoon and passed it to his mouth to take a sip. In a flash, an extremely familiar taste blossomed on his taste buds. His eyes lit up violently. This, this, is actually soy sauce. If most of the condiments from his previous life could find substitutes in this other world, in the other world, wouldn't he be able to taste the flavor of his hometown as well? Seven years, more than seven years of being here. Even though every day was filled with mountainous delicacies, he would still get tired of it after a long time. And in the end, it wasn't as delicious as a bowl of egg fried rice. Thinking of this, his desire to eat a bowl of egg fried rice reached its peak. So he struck while the iron was hot and tasted almost all the condiments on the seasoning table. The keel fish oil was soy sauce, the white crystal powder was salt, and the sage fruit sauce was ketchup. With these things, a fried bowl of egg fried rice was already enough. The only regret was that he didn't find the same plant as the scallion, and had to use chopped bok choy leaves instead. Looking at Domi not knowing what to pound on the stovetop, the maids didn't know what to do. They couldn't kick him out, could they? So the head maid Catherine was called in to deal with it. The aura pulling black long straight head made immediately rush to the scene, standing behind Duomi in an extremely standard standing posture, her hands overlapping in front of the small of her back, her tone softly asking, Dominic young master, may I ask what are you doing? This voice is familiar to him. Catherine, these years have not dealt with her a lot, and have long been familiar with her, so his head did not return and said, cooking, suddenly want to eat, if you have any needs, you can inform the head chef about the dishes. I think they will make delicious dishes for you. Other than that, it is beneath the dignity of a son of a thousand dollars to sit in the kitchen. The kitchen is not where you need to be. It would be beneath your dignity to do so. But Domi didn't even pick up on her words. Just raised her arm and wiped the sweat from her forehead as she stirred the eggs. Would you like one? I can make more. As for the rest of you, don't just stand there. Do what you need to do. It's your own fault if you're late with the food. Forced by Carlos and Grace's intimidation, the cooks and maids got busy again. Only Catherine was filled with helplessness written all over her face. Her own words were ignored again. Domi had fought with her for many years. And how had she not dealt with Domi? Too well aware of this kid's temperament. Is simply the spokesman for debauchery and intermittent madness. In her here to make all kinds of moths. In front of the parents but put on a good behavior. Superb acting really sickening. Oh, there is also Kelsey in front of. The corner of Catherine's mouth twitched before she replied. Thanks, but no need. Then don't regret it later oh. I don't do this kind of stuff very often, Catherine secretly sneered, a kid who was a little bit too big to make something that can be eaten has to be on a high incense, but still want it to be delicious, pure bullshit, she was tempted to walk away and leave Dominic to his intermittent madness, she wanted to walk away and let Dominic go crazy here intermittently, but she needed to ensure Domi's personal safety while cooking, after all, there was still a certain risk factor for children to cook, so she just waited on the side, when she was bored, she finally couldn't help but take a look at Duomi's operation, and this time, she couldn't take her eyes off it anymore, only to see him rapidly wielding a kitchen knife, like a juggling act to complete the processing of a large number of ingredients, both fancy and not losing efficiency. The skillful technique was not at all like someone who was new to cooking. Chopped green vegetable leaves, ham sausage, high-grade diced beef, unknown green beans, corn kernels, were packed in the basin like a box of colorful candies, greens, reds, yellows. Catherine had never seen so many unrelated shades of color in one dish. Could a meal with such colors really be eaten? With that skepticism, she continued to watch.
Domi poured the cooked rice into the pan again and stir-fried it. It wasn't the first time he had turned the spoon upside down, but this time it was a little different. After turning on Kohei Ganjin's Super Berserk and Cool Invincible Wind and Fire Will Omelette Rice Making Tips, it was like having a master spoon bender standing by his side to personally guide him. Who says that the omelette making tips can't be used for egg fried rice? The heat, the amount of spices, when to add the most appropriate ingredients, and even the force of stir frying are all done with absolute precision and without the slightest deviation. After the seemingly ordinary ingredients were stir fried in the wok, a marvelous chemical reaction seemed to have occurred, and a head turning aroma immediately wafted out of the wok. The odor particles spread rapidly, entering the noses of everyone in the kitchen, and Catherine was no exception. The tip of her nose shrugged and her eyes couldn't help but look towards the source of the aroma Dominic's pot of inedible food. I can't believe it smells so good. At that moment, Domi was tilting the cauldron to dump egg fried rice onto a plate, the black bottom of the pan just obscuring Catherine's view. It wasn't until after dividing the egg fried rice inside into two portions that Domi placed the pan back on the stovetop. It was at this time that Catherine finally saw what the dish looked like. The rice was dyed the color of gold by the egg yolk, and the color was so bright that it could even emit light. Those brightly colored ingredients from before didn't overpower the main dish, but rather volunteered to be the flowery dress that set off the rice, giving the originally monotonous piece of golden yellow a little more embellishment, and it was obvious that doing so would undoubtedly make people more appetizing. Gulp, gulp, the sounds of swallowing saliva around them suddenly rose and fell. Countless pairs of eyes stared over unanimously, and the head chef, Mickelson, even came right up to the closer point. Like a treasure, he scrutinized this magical plate of egg fried rice, his mouth slurping, awesome, awesome, obviously only used the most common ingredients and condiments, but still managed to achieve the full color and flavor, this kind of power is no less than a master who has been deeply cultivating this path for many years, young master, did you make this, locking eyes with Mickelson's expectant gaze, Domi blurted out, ha, of course, that's how he was, he didn't even blush a little when he lied, but if he really looked deeper, it was really his own doing, accepting someone else's appreciation of himself, no problem, geez, Mickison was so surprised that even the two mustaches on his mouth shook three times, it seems that everyone has overlooked your true talent, if you walk on the path of food, I, Mickison, dare to be certain that you will become the greatest gourmet and chef in history, Mickison's desire for food was even higher than his reverence for worldly power, so much so that he realized something was wrong only a few seconds after uttering the words and hastily remedied the situation, oh no no no, I'm not urging you to become a cook, young master is golden, how can he be a cook such a lowly job? Wait, they all said that cooking is a lowly job, but wasn't the young master just cooking? Isn't that a disguised way of calling Dominic cheap? That's not true, young master can do whatever he wants, whatever the young master does is noble. So, this dish, can I have a bite? Just a small bite. In the end, Mickison's true intentions were revealed. Domi watched the man in front of him out of the corner of his eye. Head chef Mickison's quest for good food was truly marvelous, but this time it wasn't his turn. I'm sorry, Uncle Mickison, this time I only made two servings, and Sister Catherine had already pre-ordered one. You see, she's been standing here for quite a while. Now, not only did Mickison freeze, even Catherine froze. She had thought that she wouldn't be able to eat it, but she didn't realize that this moment actually came as a peak, and Domi still made an extra one for her, even though she despised it at the time. Thinking about it, Catherine felt so wrong. She had silently taunted Domi and Domi had returned the favor with a hearty helping of food. Thanks. Catherine took a plate of egg fried rice from Domi, and the warmth from the egg fried rice reached her hands through the porcelain bowl, warming her heart as well. Domi was carrying a bowl of his own, two spoons in his hands, and didn't forget to share one with Catherine when he was about to eat one himself. Before they left, Domi also said goodbye to Mickison. Uncle Mickison, that's the way it is, but don't be discouraged. There will be another time. Thus, under the gaze of Michelin and a group of chefs full of reluctance, Domi and Catherine left the kitchen. You make a crowd of top chefs envious with envy. Villain value plus 200. Afterward, the two of them were walking down the corridor with a bowl of steaming fried rice in each of their hands. Such a scene couldn't have appeared in a noble family with strict rules. Yet it did. And one of the main characters was also the headmaid, who was known for her rule-abiding behavior. But in front of the temptation of food in Domi's heart, even the rules didn't seem so important. So young master, where should we go to enjoy it? There doesn't seem to be anywhere nearby for us to eat. Catherine looked a little embarrassed, a pair of beautiful eyes observing the surroundings warily, her slender eyelashes blinking as if she was afraid someone would see them. It was like a little squirrel protecting its food. This is quite pretty. Why do you usually act so cold? What did you say? Perhaps too nervous? 
Catherine didn't hear what Domi said. Nothing. At that moment, a refreshing evening breeze blew through the door at the end of the corridor, and in the twilight, the birds of the forest chanted a melodious nocturne, the notes of nature guiding them on their way. Who says there is no place? Come with me sister Catherine. It was as if there was a magic in his words that could make himself trust him without question. Obviously just a child. Catherine muttered to herself. Following Domi's short legs, they walked towards where the light was glowing, and after a few moments the view opened up before them. Out the back door of the kitchen was a small, remote and secluded corner at the back of the large garden. A small pavilion with a white jade roof stood in the garden not far away, surrounded by flowers and trees, and there was also a man-made stream that was flowing with gurgling water, hitting the pebbles with a tinkling sound. No one will come here on weekdays, which makes this place seem like a paradise, isolated and undisturbed. I'm not going to be able to get a good look at this place. Sitting on the chairs in the small pavilion, the two of them can look at the scenery while enjoying a meal. Memories of his hometown and the company of a beautiful woman. His life was really getting better and better. It was only now that Catherine truly lowered her guard and breathed a long sigh of relief. She looked at the deliciously eating Domi, and then looked at the bowl of fried rice in her hand, and her desire to savor it could no longer be suppressed. She twisted the spoon in her delicate hand and dug into the egg fried rice, sending the plump, golden rice along with all the side dishes into her slightly open mouth. When the rice collided with the lips and teeth, the oil and saliva melted. The unspeakable flavor instantly exploded in the mouth. The tenderness of the rice, the mellowness of the keel fish oil, the smoothness of the grease, and the ingredients bringing the flavors of the season seemed to bounce back and forth on the taste buds. One bite brought nothing less than a cranial high tide. Spoon after spoon, Catherine ate faster and faster. She didn't know why, but she always felt that her body was very hot, as if a powerful energy had been poured into her body, and was about to come out of her body with nowhere to vent it. Originally thought that this was just an illusion, but as time passed, this feeling became more and more obvious and stronger. Along with her swallowing the last grain of rice, the endurance value finally reached its peak. Tear. The sound of the cloth that made up the underwear tearing was incomparably loud, and with it came a shockwave so powerful that it even blew up the white hairs at the ends of Domi's hair. He stared daggers at the alien Catherine. The original iceberg-like cold and proud face had long been covered by a full blush, and her charming eyes were filled with glistening tears as she seemed to be trying very hard to suppress something. Wrapped in 30D black stockings fleshy legs tightly clamped together, slowly friction, constantly issued a hissing sound. She was biting her lower lip lightly with her teeth. The hands resting on her thighs were so hard that they were about to break the stockings. She didn't want to make a fool of herself in front of the young master. But the more she suppressed it, the more the energy in her belly, as hot as the sun, had no place to be released. Even Domi herself did not expect that the egg fried rice that was instructed by Master Kohei actually possessed the power to make people's clothes explode. It is true that people cannot look like. Red-haired hedgehog had big brother still has some strength. As for how he wasn't affected, perhaps it was because the law of the creator won't get his clothes blown off by his own cooking was in effect. So he was fine. But the problem now was how to relieve Catherine's pain. Although it would be good to release all of her body and mind, and it might also have a detoxifying effect but the scene and the time are not right now. The only thing he could be thankful for was that the maid's costume was made of solid material, and at most, it would shred a bit of underwear and not be unseemly. Ah, uh, Domi tentatively opened his mouth and asked, Sister Catherine, really can't hold it in, why don't you just shout it out? There's nothing unseemly, I'll help you block it. However, Catherine shook her head vigorously, and her expression returned to her previous vigilant appearance, fearing that her appearance would be discovered by a third person. Only a few words could be poured out of her mouth with a trembling voice. No, it's too loud. It'll be heard. There was no one as far as the eye could see, but there was no guarantee that no one would hear the sound after it penetrated the wall. In case someone followed the sound to find them, this was indeed a problem. Domi forced himself to calmly think of a response. Seeing Catherine in this state, Domi was worried and blamed himself. After all, this was caused by him, so it was necessary for him to take responsibility. This way, Domi suddenly said, then came to Catherine, climbed onto her lap and sat on it. Sister Catherine, I have an idea. There is not much time for me to explain, so just go ahead and release it. She was tempted to inquire as to what kind of solution, but her body had reached its limit and couldn't hold back for another second. In desperate times, just trust Domi for once. Ah, ah. A moan similar to a petulant gasp was just halfway out before it was blocked hard by some kind of soft contraption. And the sound, along with the exhaled air, went into another mouth. Her cheeks were cupped by a pair of hands so hard that her lips were in the shape of a funnel, and her eyes stared in disbelief at the child in front of her who was in zero contact with her. 
Bursting clothes is a traditional art ability in spirit of the predator, referring to the fact that a person will burst their clothes because they ate a particularly tasty delicacy. That's why this chapter doesn't use hyperbole, whether it's the reaction or the presentation. It's all koans out. While Catherine was still in extreme shock plus disbelief, Domi had already skimmed her head and was breathing hard with her mouth wide open. His face was red and he coughed every now and then. Although Catherine was eager to make an accusation against Duomi, as a servant serving the family, she still had to put Duomi's safety in the first place. Not caring that her first kiss was taken away like this, she was the first to ask Domi how he was doing and gently patted his back with her hand until Domi recovered. At that time, Catherine's voice along with the exhaled breath all stuffed into his mouth. If it wasn't that he was in a hurry and vigorously operated his breathing method, otherwise he would have to spit out as much as went in. Not to mention making a fool of himself, the noise he made might also attract people over. However, the results have already explained everything. The fact proves that this approach can really, even a little bit of unexpected harvest, not, is a whole lot of harvest. You took Catherine's precious first kiss, villain value plus one W. No, the first time I saw the villain value in tens of thousands was when I shocked those old ancestors. Why would I give so much for getting some color? This B system designation has some unique hobbies, and he kind of figured out the pattern. Want large amount of villain value, should not focus on those dignitaries, bullish big brother, when the scum is the right way ah, but the words are so, but the pot that should be carried also have to consciously carry on. Afterwards, the two men sat opposite each other, neither speaking. After a long while of silence, Catherine sighed and changed back into that frosty mask. I know that you didn't do it on purpose, young master, and since you didn't do it on purpose, let's leave this matter at that. Thank you for your fried rice and help. It's getting late. I still have some things I must go. Please allow me to leave first. Looking at Catherine's far away back, Domi did not know for a moment what to say to keep her, to say something nice to keep her from being sad. However, just like in his previous life, he was a pure-hearted little boy until his death, and had never talked to a girlfriend at all. Not to mention that he didn't know what to say to preserve their feelings for each other after making a mistake. He also secretly sighed, a woman's heart under the sea needle. It's true that I'm not that piece of material. In the future it's better not to be so reckless. At that moment, it was as if he had grown and as if he hadn't grown. Just summarizing one experience after another and getting along with girls. But in the end, a thousand words could only converge into one sentence, it's all your fault. Red-haired lion head. If it wasn't for the egg fried rice with computer parts, this wouldn't have happened. So it was purely the fault of the egg fried rice being too potent. Dom walked out of the pavilion and looked up. 45 degrees up at the sky covered in flaming clouds his eyes filled with despondency. How should I face Catherine the next time I see her? That was the first kiss. He left the garden as if he'd lost his mind, not realizing that Catherine was hiding in a small corner and came out only when she saw Domi leave. Her back was against the wall, one arm wedged between her body and the wall. A little habit of hers, the pressure on the blood in her arm forcing her to regain her composure. Fingers covered her lips, feeling the tenderness on them, and was looking at her toes with both resignation and a bit of relief in her eyes. Resigned that her first kiss was actually taken by a seven-year-old boy, and relieved that it had faded, and that at least her first kiss was pure and not offered to some future negative man, though she wasn't planning on falling in love, and naturally she wasn't planning on getting married. It would be better to just serve the Blofeld family in the castle for the rest of her life. Obviously in her heart, she had already thought it out clearly that she and Domi wouldn't have a future at all either, because one's last name was Blofeld, and the other one was just a commoner's daughter, and there was still an age gap between the two of them. But just for some reason, it felt like her chest was stuffy, her heart was pounding, and her mind couldn't help but go back to the scene she had just witnessed, and it wouldn't go away. What's wrong with me? She asked herself repeatedly and silently. Gotta snap out of it. There's still a long day ahead. Should I just face Domi with this look? Thinking about this, Catherine finally found herself an excuse, the future. Whether it was her or Domi, there was still a long time to spend with each other. And what happened now would always be forgotten in the passage of a decade or so for a small child like Domi. Let it be a nice, fuzzy impression, Domi wouldn't remember exactly who she had kissed at that time, and she herself wouldn't bring it up again. This is quite good. Getting up, he turned his back on the setting sun and walked into the hallway from which he had come. There were two of them when they came, and she was alone when they came back. The thin shadow was pulled along. Long time, this lonely, who will understand it? At dinner. Carlos unsuspectingly asked his three rebellious sons about the day's learning. Usually, if a parent is willing to ask, the teacher is sure to tell the parent what the child has learned. Connor wasn't having it though. He told Carlos that if he told them everything, wouldn't it be like taking a dimension down in terms of difficulty for the parents to understand their children? 
It has to be challenging to be more immersive and rewarding. Sometimes Carlos had to marvel at Connor's teaching talent, so he just did as he was told. Connor didn't tell him how the specifics went, but gave a general idea of what he was teaching today to make it easier for Carlos to ask questions. M. What smart kid can tell me the history of the Lionheart Empire? Argyle, who was a serious student, quickly gave the correct answer in a single breath, as if he didn't need to think. It was evident that even after the lesson, Argyle would do a review alone to deepen his memory. Very good. Argyle learned well today oh, then let's leave the remaining few questions to Edward and Domi. When Carlos uttered these words, the two were instantly as if they had been killed, sat with a kitten batch face. The degree of it was nothing less than the death-defying feeling of a teacher in class drawing someone and constantly chanting that when they don't get drawn, they just get drawn. Not only were the two of them groping fish and looking at their maid sisters in class, but after class, they were either out getting high or engaged in special training. So who could tell them who the third emperor was? At that moment, Argyle received two extraordinarily strong signals for help. However, he could only incline his head in love. Carlos' eyes grew dangerous. So, you two don't pay attention in class, right? The notebooks you turned in were copied from Argyle too, right? Nope. The two hard-boiled brothers shook their heads in unison, with sink values so high they could drive an armor in the Pacific Rim. That's right. After class Carlos would also make them turn in their notebooks, the equivalent of a homework check. Edward. Domi. Be honest children. Gressa also smiled and persuaded, the meaning of which wasn't really hard to understand. Translated, it meant confessing to leniency and resisting to severity. Just this smiling face looked a little seeping. In the end, the two couldn't bear the pressure and still confessed their reasons for touching the fish. Okay, on the first day of school year like this, what's going to happen later? Carlos was filled with hatred. You too, copy all the notes you made today ten times. You're not allowed to go to bed until you finish. The predecessor of the Lionheart Empire, civil unrest, setting things right, a new emperor on the throne. The third emperor, Armstrong N. Augustus. Augustus. Sto. 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 Zzz. The eyes are closed. The head is shaking. Only the work in his hands never stops. That was his living will of fire. But right at the ceremony of crowning the seventh generation cloak, he suddenly felt a shaking of the earth, as if even the sky was about to collapse. Is it the end of the world? At that moment, a faint shout came from his ears, pulling his consciousness back. Domi Domi, wake up, wake up nah. In the castle library, the dimly lit space was lit with only two faint lights, as if they were two lighthouses on the sea. In front of one of the lighted desks, Kelsey was sitting beside Domi, accompanying him in his penalty copying. Seeing that Domi was going to hang himself again, Kelsey hurriedly woke him up. There were still three times. If he didn't finish copying, he wouldn't be allowed to go to sleep. Ha, huh? he sleepily raised his head. The corner of his mouth is still a bit of dragon saliva flashing crystal points, flying down 3,000 feet. Kelsey took out her handkerchief with a doting face and wiped the saliva off the corners of Domi's mouth. Encouraging, don't give up. Domi, there are still three more times to finish copying. Persistence is victory. It had to be said that Kelsey's cheering look was really encouraging. The little pink dorky hair was the finishing touch. Domi instantly stopped feeling sleepy. It was as if he had downed a whole dozen Red Bulls and gotten a ton of buffs. Now he was like a god of war. Burying his head was a burst of writing. His hand speed did not know how much faster than Edward next door. In fact, Edward also wanted to speed up his hand speed, but he didn't have a cute Pinkford mate to cheer him on. His own mate had long ago run off to bed. Not everyone like Kelsey spoiled Domi. Maid. When he thought about this, he was angry. And the more he thought about it, the more angry he became. Unconsciously, the hand speed also raised up. And even once can and Domi in neck and neck, this drew sideways glances from Domi and Kelsey. Edward was looking crazy. The work in his hands was fast out of the stump. The original delicate micro-minute yellow hair gradually messy under the violent shaking, and finally became unkempt, as if he was a barker on the street. What in the world prompted him to be so involuted? Was it love? No, it was jealousy. Extreme jealousy. He hated ah. Then let this hatred be transformed into his motivation to become stronger blah. Ah ah. It was as if a burst of aura plus a peerless flame of light appeared on his body and his aura was actually so powerful. If he compared Domi to a war god, then Edward at this moment was the well-deserved liver emperor. In fact, it was quite good for Edward to roll some and then go to bed early. Domi didn't want his stupid OU do do come villain value perpetual motion machine to fall apart in the middle of the road, but he had the audacity to make Kelsey gawk, and that was just wrong of him. In fact, Kelsey was only lamenting the fact that a salted fish actually had such powerful potential. Nothing more. It was entirely in Domi's own head. However, this did not stop Domi from seeing Edward as a thorn in his side. Alright, 
Since you issued a challenge, then I'll take it. Up. Taking advantage of Kelsey's inattention, Domi quietly took out three bottles of energy potion plus one bottle of night vision potion from the system space and clipped them into the cracks of four fingers respectively. The potion was a very small bottle, the same as a test tube, but the size was only the size of a blue vial of calcium. So even if he secretly drank it, he wouldn't be discovered, and the quantity had been saved up, so it didn't hurt at all to use it. Boo-hoo! Biting off all four rubber stoppers, the turquoise and ink-colored potion seemed like a demon's whisper, and it looked hard to drink, but it really wasn't. But Domi didn't care at all. He tilted his head back and took a mouthful. The corner of his mouth even raised a weird smile after drinking it. With a gulp, the potion took effect at the speed of light. The originally dim vision instantly became bright and the drowsiness was swept away. Very good. Now whether it was mentally or physically he had reached the top state. Just by Edward's return of light, how could he fight with him? Seemingly sensing a strange movement around her, Kelsey curiously moved her gaze back, and then saw a scene that was enough to shock her all day long. Only to see Domi holding a feather pen in one hand, as if each head was in control, pressing the notebook as a up and down. Not only did his hand speed beat Edward's, but his efficiency was more than twice as high. The noise was so great that it directly covered up Edward's glory. He opened his mouth as if he had seen a trick, so big that he could stuff down a duck egg. No old man, are you in such a hurry to sleep? There's no need to be so desperate. Is there? Domi didn't answer. Just slightly inclined his head with a panda black eye and gave Edward a provocative look. The meaning of which was self-evident, not convinced. Come and fight. Scum. Reverse thumbs up. Ha to a. Looking at this hand speed. This divine operation. Edward admitted that he was defeated. Okay. He was intentionally trying to attract Kelsey's attention. But he couldn't be blamed. Was it wrong to let a pretty girl notice him? Soon enough. Domi had finished her punishment. And Edward still had a pathetic two times left. He gathered his things and prepared to leave the library. And on his way he had to pass by the desk where Edward was the only one with a light on. It was at that point where the two brushed shoulders that Dom stopped and leaned down to whisper something in Edward's ear. Kelsey still hasn't learned what Domi said at that moment. All she knows is that by the time Domi was gone, Edward's whole body trembled and slumped over his desk like a bereaved dog, completely becoming a salted fish with no dreams. Snapped. Little feet wrapped in white socks stepped on slippers, chasing after them from behind and making a sound reserved for slippers sliding on the floor. Unlike usual, Kelsey, who always followed her, actually came to her side this time for the first time. Domi gave a slight sideways glance. In the middle of the night, in order to accompany him to do the penalty copying, Kelsey wore a nightgown and came over. The thick color of the night was like a veil, enveloping her head, as if she was the bride of the moon, adding a touch of purity and mystery. In a word, tonight's Kelsey, extraordinarily seductive. She made a point of lowering her voice to ask softly, Domi, what did you say to young Master Edward? He looks quite frustrated, calling him by his nickname. It was good that calling Edward also used honorifics. It showed that he was far more dear to Kelsey's heart than Edward. Domi shook her head in slight amusement. Nah, just stating some facts to him. If you want to blame him, you can only blame him for having too little tolerance and having his moral heart damaged. After listening to Domi's confession, Kelsey searched for a moment, then said without warning as if firing a nerve gun. So, is it about me? Gah. Domi's entire body flinched, and such an action reinforced Kelsey's suspicions. Hmm. Kelsey narrowed her eyes again curiously and with a bit of compulsion. She probably didn't know that narrowing her eyes was like doing natural eyeliner. The graceful curves made Domi unable to take her eyes off them. Domi felt a little ashamed of those words and was tempted to lie. However, his previous experience with Catherine still made his heart palpitate, and he was afraid that Kelsey would distance herself from him because of it. And even more so, he was afraid of saying the wrong thing, which would lead to a repeat of the tragedy of the male silence and female tears. Under heavy pressure. Domi confessed. I just can't stand to see Edward flamboyant in front of you. It makes me a little hard. Not being able to lie. He decided to state his feelings completely and accurately. Sincerity, more often than not, was a surefire way to get the point across. In fact, there was one sentence left out in the middle of the two paragraphs. And that was seeing the look of someone else in your eyes. Leaving a sentence out isn't really a lie is it? But it was as if Kelsey had guessed the sentence out of thin air. Taking a few quick steps, light-footed and bouncing. She came to Domi and crouched down so that she could meet the shorter Domi's eyes. The two looked into each other's eyes, their starry pupils reflecting each other's likeness. Domi, look, what's in my pupils? Next time you feel bad, do this, and when you look at me, you will always be the only one in my eyes. Aha! Having said that, Kelsey pressed her skirts together and rose to follow Domi again. Only, looking at Domi slowly growing back as if glimpsing the future where Domi couldn't hear her. 
she gently lifted her lips, said a word that no one could hear forget me not ah, Domi. The next day, Domi got up early as usual and climbed through the still dimly lit corridors to the topmost floor of the castle, where he pulled his own little mat out of the corner and sat down on the ground, and began to work on the forging technique, breathing. The first rays of the purest violet light had shone on the earth long before the sun had risen, and he had always gotten into position before that, sitting back and waiting for the violet light to envelop him with full vitality. A double plus of 004 in strength and speed ate up the day's bonuses, rising and stretching, his bones cackled and crunched, his entire body stretched and refreshed. The only thing out of place with this incredibly healthy body were the dark circles around his eyes, as noticeable as panda eyes. Which brings us to Carlos's punishment, which amounted to human torture. After copying his notes ten times that night, he went back to bed with Kelsey, who, as the exclusive maid, had the room next to Domi's, who, of course, never slept in his room. Please don't think wrongly, he treats Kelsey as his mom, and Kelsey treats Domi as her son. So naturally, there won't be any drama beyond ethics. As for why he did so, it was because sleeping in Kelsey's arms was more comfortable. Yesterday's situation was a bit special. Domi, who had violently consumed three bottles of energy potion and one bottle of night vision potion, was not only as energetic as a bull, but when he closed his eyelids, everything outside was as clear as day, even if it was only the outline. The principle of the night vision potion was to cover the cornea with a film that had a night vision effect, so closing the eyelids also had some effect. In this way, he stayed up until 3 a.m. M. before he was able to sleep. However, after a two-hour nap, he had to get up again. With that kind of routine, if he didn't have dark circles under his eyes, who did? Kelsey? Unfortunately she didn't. So the only clown was Domi. Domi. Breakfast. At that moment, the familiar call rang out again as usual. Coming. A beautiful day still has to start with Kelsey's shouts for food. Ha. Huh? After breakfast, it was time to head to the classroom and the side hall. One of the benefits of studying at home was that you didn't have to painstakingly walk around with a massively heavy book bag. The only thing you had to carry was a notebook. The three brothers walked together with their respective notebooks in their elbows. A triangle to be exact. Argyle, who often fell into self-isolation because he didn't fit in with his two younger brothers, walked at the front of the pack, while Domi walked side by side with Edward. Edward had dark circles where his eyes were as well, but wasn't lethargic, and was in a similar state of mind as Domi who had finished practicing his breathing. This was obviously not right. Yesterday, he had given Edward a hard emotional psychological shadow and earned 1500 villain value. Now why is it like nothing? Domi couldn't help but ask. Edward, are you, okay? HM, what can I do? It's just that last night well. Domi thought about it. At that time really said a little decisive. Put him dashing bad. Now or to apologize to him. I admit that those words said heavy. So I want to say sorry to you. I didn't think so. Edward was not taking it to heart at all and casually waved his hand. Hey don't say that. After all, it was me who was in the wrong first. Now I do know. You kid really likes Kelsey. Also yes, such a lovely girl. Age is just slightly older than us. Who can not like it? Your brother I was also bizarrely obsessed at the time. Wanting to pick up your horse. I'm the one who has to say sorry to you. Saying this, Edward grinned greatly and hooked shoulders with Domi. And the two were as good as blood brothers. Hearing these words. Even Domi couldn't help but admire this Edward guy. For so many years, even after being punked by himself over and over again, he always laughed it off and didn't remember. That and the fact that Domi had aftercare for him every time he pitched a fit was also important. Just like the last time he would turn himself in after a pitfall. And whenever he was emotionally frustrated, he was fine the next day and never hung onto one tree. Domi didn't believe in such things as nerves. Edward must have buried all his resentments deep inside. Definitely a hidden lover. Edward. I am going to be impressed with you. You may. Be kinda great. Edward was like a man in two feet. Puzzled and confused. Clam? You're my hero. This time in class. Domi was not as idle as before. In order not to be punished at night. He not only paid attention to the lesson. But even took exhaustive notes. With a level of seriousness that rivaled Argyle's. Making Connor uncomfortable for a while. Luckily. Edward was the only one who still gave him a familiar formula. A familiar flavor. And that's why he didn't associate it with dehumanizing personality modification. As soon as it was time for class to end, Connor was the first to find Domi and ask about him. He was curious too. Ah, what could make such a major change in a good horny brat's attitude to learning in one day? Ah, uh, facing Connor's inquisitive eyes, Dom had to come up with a plausible excuse. He couldn't expose the special training. That was his agreement with Carlos. And he couldn't say he had nothing to do all afternoon. Then 90% of Connor would go straight to confront Carlos. 
The remaining 10% was forcing him to stay here for the class, so this reasoning of his had to fit his situation. From a concrete and practical point of view, review his past behavior with professionalism to actually carry out his persona and attribute Connor's purpose. Finding triggers by modeling the possibilities of diverse cases as a way to precipitate the underlying logic of the industry model. Clearly, Connor needs to know this student of his to ensure that the child's precious childhood is not wasted. Since he knew the deeper purpose of the other party and there was no way to break through from the front, a curved approach was also desirable. After a moment of contemplation, Domi finally replied, It's like this teacher. As you know, father has arranged other trips for me, so that I can't attend your magic class in the afternoon. But I actually have the idea of learning magic. But because I was lazy yesterday, I was punished by my father by copying the day's notes ten times, which is why I didn't have the chance to go to the library to borrow magic books to study on my own. Therefore I learned a lesson the hard way. That's why I decided to listen to the lessons well and make enough time for myself to study on my own. Dominic, this kid spoke in a set of logical theories, and Connor had gotten used to it. But more than that, he was more concerned about the fact that Domi actually had the idea of learning magic. He was Dominic, the Blofeld family's once-in-a-century genius. Just because it was him, it was even more precious to have this kind of heart. Connor is also a person who has been there, knows how difficult it is to study when the conditions are not good, and immediately empathizes with him, and almost in tears, pats Domi's shoulder, and is quite touched, saying, This way, since your father won't allow you to take formal magic lessons in the afternoon, Come find me in the library after dinner and I'll instruct you alone. Don't look at the old man's scruffiness. I'm one of the few archmages in the empire. I can definitely teach you well. Ha ha ha, ha ha ha. Looking at Domi's shocked eyes, Connor felt even more that he had done the right thing. He saved a child who was obsessed with magic, even if the child's talent was not obvious. I, no need to say anything, the teacher understands. I won't see you tonight. Watching Connor leave, Domi's heart was 10,000 grass mud horses galloping past shouting MMP while spitting, you know a hammer I'll understand, when was he going to get high with Kelsey when the evening was gone, all thoughts were lost, who says kids don't have problems, Domi looked up at the sky at 45 degrees again after a day, it's still good to be an adult, PS, recommendations are going to be ranked according to catch up reads today, it's up to you guys to keep recommending it, please stay on the reading page for 30s before turning to the last page, so that you can add a valuable catch up read for me, catch up reading, please, Heimheim would like to thank you. By the way, the book is updated at 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. The Young World Update Time is more suitable for China's satiated body O. For lunch that day, a lot of extra protein-rich foods were made over in the kitchen, which, along with the original menu, filled the table. Domi also took in more food than usual, especially those added extra. It could be said that this was specially prepared for Domi. There was no other reason for the original reason. It was because today was the first day that Duomi passed the examination and had his first magic guile training. It was well known that strenuous and prolonged exercise would lead to muscle tearing, and replenishing enough nutrients during this period would allow the muscles to regrow, thus becoming bigger and tougher. That was why he needed to ingest the essentials in advance. Once again, he came to the entrance into the underground, pushed open the heavy door, and walked down the downward steps. Without the hallucinogenic effects of his magic, he didn't have to walk down the steps for long and soon arrived at the tavern he had been in in the first place. The tavern didn't seem to have any free time, and there were always a few black-robed men piling up here in twos and threes to drink and brag. This was the base of the Northern Fall Division, equivalent to one's old home. It was normal not to make any disguises at home. Not one of the few people Domi saw wore a hood. Everyone revealed their true faces, and normal people like well, which is rumored to be so horrible. There was a rumor in the circle of nobles. It is said that in that assassination organization of Blofeld's family, Every member is a thug licking blood on the tip of the knife. Everyone looks fierce and vicious, just one face can scare the six little children to pee, and putting one out alone can scourge the society for several years. But as long as you go deeper into this place, you will find that those rumors are simply bullshit. A nose, a mouth, a pair of eyes and two ears, clearly the appearance of a normal person. When the team members saw Domi coming, they would even wave their hands and greet him cordially, smiling as if they were the big brother of the family next door. Yo, if it isn't young Master Dominic, how about a drink? Domi also politely smiled and politely declined their kind offer. No, I'm about to start training. If I let Ty know that I'm drinking with you guys, the result may not be too good. He realized that as long as the name of Atelier was in his words, these vicious guys who lick blood from the tip of the knife would be as good as Hakimi, not daring to breathe a breath, and would be silent. As it turns out, bringing Ty out to block the drinks is a very good move, and will have to be written down in a book 
so that it can be used next time you can't hold your own in a drink fight. Ah, uh, if we're going to train, then naturally we can't drink. That team member who had invited Domi to get high together said with regret and fear. Young master, since you're going to officially start training, we'll give you a piece of advice. Don't ever trust Officer Atelier's words. What does that mean? It means to always remain skeptical. At that moment, Atel had just come in through the doorway of the tavern. Having come here to pick up Domi as he had timed it, and the team's advice came to an abrupt end. Instead of the pitch black cloak he had worn earlier, today he was wearing a tight black training suit, and underneath it a pair of baggy shorts and shorts a third of the way down his thighs, paired with his inches of hair and angular face. It was a lean look at just a glance. He flung the shirt he held in his right hand to Domi. I've had training clothes like these given to your exclusive maid. Ten in total. So in the future, bring a clean one before you come. Change here. And I'll pick you up like this when it's time. Got it? Domi answered back without thinking. Then go change in the booth now. And don't keep me waiting too long. The training clothes given to him, both in terms of material and fit, were the same as Atelier's. And when he put them on he would feel the tight fit from the special material, which was also a bit icy. It is that his muscles are not yet too obvious. Unlike Atelier, after wearing it, the muscles of all parts of the body can be expressed. Looking fierce batch, as if he can tear the Tyrannosaurus Rex with his hands. Decidedly, he would also train to become that kind of body, and then charm thousands of sisters. The clothes were comfortable, and the only problem was why were there no shoes? Stepping barefoot on the floor felt quite diabolical. Want to know why it didn't come with shoes? Atelier seemed to read Domi's thoughts and explained. Before an assassin has developed subconscious perception, the presence of shoes will only allow you to ignore the slight vibrations coming from the ground or the air, while we, on the other hand, are able to sense our surroundings through these vibrations. Let's say for example, I turn around, and then you compare a number. Without having to see me can know how many numbers you compare. Is it really that magical? For this kind of thing without magic, Domi generally held a scientific and rigorous attitude, so he immediately compared with Atelier. The fact is really like what he said. No matter what number he compared and what posture he used, he was able to immediately say the correct answer. Domi now completely believe. The original world has been someone will flesh mortal body developed to this extent. Very well, then this skill he would definitely learn. After learning it, it must be very cool to use it to pretend to be a bully. Then, Domi followed Atelier to the training grounds further down. It wasn't until he traveled deeper that Domi realized just how big this place was. While the tavern above was at best an entrance, on the lower level, not only were there dormitories for the team members, but there was even a cafeteria, separate granaries, countless cul-de-sacs connecting to the territory, a wide variety of training grounds, gymnasiums, smithies, warehouses, and intelligence processing offices. It can be said that if the outside world falls, Blofeld can realize self-circulation by relying on these facilities underneath the castle, and living for two or three months is not a problem. The designers have really thought about many situations. The first purpose was to prioritize the safety of their families. And the Northfall Division's headquarters was located here and so many dark passages were built to serve that purpose. Thinking about this, Domi once again stood in awe of Carlos' great-grandfather's brother. His great-great-grandfather. As they walked and toured, before they knew it they were at the place. It was a small, confined room that was rather dimly lit. The only bright light in the entire space shining downward from a spot in the center of the ceiling the only light in the darkness. When Domi walked in, Atelier entered even more on his hind feet, bringing the door closed with his hand, and said with his mouth, Young master, this should be the last time I address you as young master during the training period. For the sake of convenience, from now on, I will directly refer to you as waste. Understand? Unlike the other team members, Domi was trained one-on-one -on -one by Atelier himself, and a bit of rules must have been acquiesced by Carlos. He had no right to refute. Understood. Good loser. Now, stand under that light. Domi did as he was told. The feeling of standing under the only pillar of light was magical, for one could no longer see one's surroundings, the inner white and outer blackness in front of one's eyes, as if the lights under the stage were shining on him alone. It seemed conducive to mental focus. At that moment, Atelier hid in the darkness, without a trace, while voices came from all directions. Training has officially begun. Let's warm up first. 100 standard push-ups. Begin. 100 push-ups. Sounds like a lot, but it's actually not a lot at all to do. Just the kind of stuff that could make a 7-year-old push-up kid do it? If it wasn't for the fact that he exercised regularly, managed to pit Edward, and didn't forget his breathing exercises every day, he wouldn't have been able to do those 100 push-ups. But when he was done he was numb with exhaustion and slumped to the ground like a little puddle of soaking water. The beam of light shone on his head, like the main character in a tragic comedy. 
seeing that Domi actually did put down a hundred push-ups, Atelier was also very surprised. To be honest, he had initially just wanted to give Duomi a seemingly impossible goal and then mercifully lowered the difficulty for him a little bit so that he would see hope and then put his best foot forward to reach that goal, subsequently raising the quantitative requirements in successive steps at the end to increase his mental capacity. But now it seemed like that middle step could be dispensed with. Very good waste. It seems that you do have some strength. Then such a small amount is not enough. Add another 50. Last 50. Come on. Dom struggled to get up. He had no strength left. But Atel's request could not be disobeyed or Carlos would have to release Kelsey to go home on vacation. He couldn't live without Kelsey. Just like the West couldn't live without Jerusalem. G Bond couldn't live without his red fall pants. For Kelsey. Spell. He finally used the backup hidden energy source of sharp breathing, energy that continued to fill his parched torso through his breath. One, two, three, bean-sized drops of sweat fell, unknowingly leaving a small puddle on the smooth floor. On top of that, he felt like every muscle in his body was burning, his whole body was going to burn. Fifty, as he silently counted the last number, applause rang out in the darkness as well. Clap, scratch that, for a seven-year-old, you've done pretty well but I think your limit is much more than that. Add another 50. Clam? Domi's eyes widened as three huge question marks seemed to flash across his dorky hair, and he was just about to open his mouth to greet Atelier when he was heckled to a halt. Shut your mouth. Punks don't have the right to speak. All you have to do is to perform absolutely. 50 push-ups. Continue. Line. Good you a tie. Looks thick eyebrows and eyes strange naive. Did not expect bad very much. Full of MMP actually nowhere to vent. Domi only have to break teeth to the stomach. Gentlemen revenge. Ten years is not too late. To see him learn to return to Storm Hammer tie, taking advantage of the increase brought about by breathing is not yet over. Duomi gritted his teeth and continued to do 50. The movements were already deformed. Both arms were already visibly trembling due to the high intensity of exertion. This time he really couldn't do it anymore. Lying on the ground panting heavily. His mind was completely empty. His soul seemed to be running out of his body to elope. He was simply floating in the air. Finally. He welcomed a short break. Rest for 30 minutes. Here's some salt water to drink. Domi took the bottle of water handed to him by Atelier and poured it directly into his mouth in staccato bursts, the knot in his underdeveloped throat moving up and down enough to see how thirsty he was at this point. Ha! He let out a satisfied sound. Hydrated. The fatigue seemed to have eased a bit, and at least his brain could function again. And as if anticipating this, Atel, who was still hiding in the shadows and hadn't revealed half of his body so far, instantly began to talk about his rambling theoretical knowledge. We don't take stupid killers, so theoretical knowledge is just as important. Now we start. All killing techniques are based on a strong body. Without a strong body, learning more is just a show. Push-ups, practicing is the core. Arms, pectoral muscles, triceps, can greatly enhance your strength, even if you are accidentally stabbed a few times. It will be blocked by the muscles some, not to immediately warp. This went on for half an hour and Domi's head was spinning from listening, but because his brain was forced to turn on, the knowledge was poured from high to low like an osmotic reaction, Atelier he really, I cried my eyes out, even during his rest time, he didn't forget to spread the knowledge to him, what a great person nah, the light in his eyes gradually dimmed, it was a blessing for him to be in the presence of such a coach, time's up, get up, punk, 100 sit-ups, planks for 2 minutes, 50 supine knee bends and hip lifts, 50 supine alternating ankle touches, Start. After those upper body muscle groups then it's the core isn't it? And then isn't it the leg muscles? If you don't train all the muscles of your entire body in one day, you really won't be allowed to leave. Do only inner that called a tearless awe. Good dead why run here? Flirting with the big sister. Pitting Edward. Earning some villain value every day. And drawing cards for leisure. Isn't it good? I came here purely to be abused. The most irritating thing is the sudden overtime. Whenever he finished a set of movements are very fearful awe. Afraid of Atelier let him come to 50, and then 50, see you have not reached the limit, and then 50, he now finally understood what that team member's admonition really meant. Then, unsurprisingly, during the half hour break after practicing the core, Atelier started another long speech, and was about to start practicing the legs right after that. He directly called in the team members who were good at illusion magic and space magic, and froze in such a small room to create a simulated running scene for him coupled with constant reset space magic forcibly creating an otherworldly version of a treadmill, and Atel himself wasn't idle either, using his part-time magic to add light and shadow and sunflowers to the environment. That's right, in addition to being an assassin, Adel also practiced light and plant magic on the side, nicknamed the photosynthesis assassin, and especially liked sunflowers as a plant. 
It is said that all the sunflower seeds in the castle are supplied by him, and the melon flesh is not only large, but also has the flavor of sunshine, which is praised by all the people in the house it. So there was light in his treadmill, and every hundred meters there was another sunflower blossoming towards him. Whenever you pass a hundred sunflowers, physical fitness training is over. Listening to Atelier's voice, Domi seemed to be able to see that he was grinning a big, heartless grin. So what could he do? He couldn't fight back against the resistance. He'd be discouraged from bussing. He'd be choked back when he tried to spit. And who in the family understands? It's too hard for him. Practicing here. Dominic is already a qualified walking corpse. His eyes are white. And his brain has been disconnected from his body. When he tried to move his fingers, an error popped up. Sorry. Unable to connect to external device. He was in such a state after running 10 kilometers that not a single piece of flesh on his body belonged to him. After an hour of just laying flat, Atelier finally, for the first time, showed himself, though only coming over to kick the sleeping doms. Hey, get up loser. Cheer up. Next up is the actual combat session. Get ready. Half asleep he was forcibly pulled up. A dagger shoved in his hand before his mind was clear. Shaking his head, he shook off the sleepiness. When he lifted his eyes again, there was already another scene before him, it was no longer him standing under the sole beam of light, but Atelier, it was as if the identities of each other had been rotated. Now, Atel was the protagonist in the spotlight, while he himself was the audience hidden in the darkness. Atel's form was fully revealed in the light and was looking down at him with a smile on his lips. You use a dagger. I use my bare hands. Attack me with all your strength. If you can hit me once today's training will end early. Of course, if you can't touch me, I can't say when it will end. To be fair, I'll suppress my senses. Give it your best shot. You have a chance to win. As soon as the words left his mouth, Atelier saw a swift and short figure traveling quickly through the darkness. Feel free to come over. He didn't even move a bit, and every now and then he uttered words of guidance. The enemy is in the light and I am in the dark. Not hiding your figure well is the same as giving up that advantage. Tell the other party that I am here. Domi gripped his dagger tightly, burrowing out of the darkness from behind and pointing the tip of the blade straight at Atelier's liver. It was the body's blood bank there, and once the liver ruptured, there was enough bleeding in a short time to send a strong adult to God, just as the blade was about to touch him. However, he dodged in an unexpected direction for Domi as if he had eyes in his back, and then kicked Domi in the ass, sending him sprawling. Good angle and good choice of where you want to attack, that's good, but the intention of trying to attack is too obvious. The so-called assassin, not only do you have to hide your whereabouts, your scent, but you also have to hide your killing intent as well as your intentions. You have to make the other party not know what you're going to do next, and thus fall into a panic in order to do so. The sharp attack came once more, and Atelier reached out with just two fingers and easily pinched the dagger, casually flinging it away along with Domi. He re-entered the darkness and mentally began to think about what Atel had just said. He knew that if he relied on brute force to fight hard, it was purely asking for trouble. He had to find the trick, and where the trick lay was the hint that Atelier had just given. Domi's eyes tightly staring at the spotlight atelier, his loose appearance looks like the whole body is full of holes, but only after close to find that those holes are actually just camouflage. His defense, can be said to be as solid as a golden soup, but his goal is not to break through this layer of defense, but to leave a little trace on this layer of defense. Purpose determined. The next step is the actual action. Hide the tracks. He immediately thought of the catch the week ceremony back then, when he had wrapped and hidden himself in his cloak using shadow system magic. After so many years of precipitation, his magic was only strong, even if he would only be able to apply it in the most basic way, that would be enough. Feeling the magic flowing through his body, Domi channeled them out of his body with a single thought, forming a camouflage layer around him. Shadow system magic had an innate fit with darkness, and then, together with a perfect level of shadow department talent, it was enough to achieve the effect of 1 plus 1 being greater than 2. At first glance, it did seem to blend in with the environment. Next hiding breath and killing intent, this one he was quite good at, slowly adjusting the frequency of his breathing, relying on years and years of special breathing, he had long been familiar with how to adjust his breathing to a calm and long state, as for killing intent, could that be killing intent, it was clearly his desire to get the hell out of there, as well as his desire to see Kelsey soon, soon, he realized the full meaning of Atel's words, and all the hiding was in place, Atelier also sensed the disappearance of Domi's figure as well as his aura, he finally revealed a genuine smile, to say a few words and be able to do this, what a treasure to pick up, come on Domi, let me see just how much of your potential remains untapped, but after waiting for a while, the expected attack didn't come, strange, Atelier was a bit puzzled, are kids so subdued nowadays, but he was an assassin himself, 
So naturally he was calm. Patience was a must. Domi wanted to hibernate. So he waited. There was no boredom. Even a little anticipation. The boy had surprised him so much in the afternoon's training that he knew it was unlikely he'd ever want to be surprised again. But what if there was a chance? Atelier crossed his fingers. And Domi wasn't idle. In fact, he wasn't hibernating. But he was quietly using Siddhartha Kane's cultivation insights. After using Kai Yin's last insight, he already knew that this big brother was a professional assassin come ninja. The combination of these two professions, what kind of cultivation should he have could be figured out with his fingers? It must be similar to him. So this was the most appropriate time to use it. A good thing is only good if it has to be utilized as it should be, not hidden away until the new year. Time was infinitely delayed, and he entered the realm of insight. The white light dispersed, and what met his eyes was a peach blossom forest. To be precise, a peach blossom forest valley, filled with delicate pink, petals falling like rain. The fissure in the center of the valley was covered by a waterfall that was pouring clear water downward with a crash, and the pool of water that converged out from below was the source of an entire stream. All kinds of colorful and unknown flowers grew naturally around the area. Birdsong chirped indistinctly in the forest, and occasional passers-by rested here, with clear sunshine and cloudless sky, just like a fairyland, and just on the gentle hillside by the waterfall. A silhouette wearing only half a robe sat on the green grass, seemingly melting into nature, completely unable to feel the brutality and viciousness of the previous, as calm as a seated monk, even without relying on his aura, Domi instantly recognized that it was the much younger Kain, and this was a completely different place, just as he was wondering what the hell Kain was doing, the guy snapped his eyes open and stood up directly from his state of sitting in a coiled position, as quiet as a rabbit moving like a rabbit, it was at this point that Domi's perspective shifted into his body, from the core of his entire body, power began to flow, and the way it was used was different again, before it was wherever the power was needed, they went there, but now it was flowing all the power throughout his body, so that every place was filled with power, in the next moment, he was seen probing out his feet, seemingly light but actually quite calm, landing and standing firm before punching out, the strong wind from the punch could even blow the petals of flowers in the distance, after a punch is a succession of moves, throat locks, bone breaks, Tendon breaks, jiu-jitsu, takedowns, each move is incomparably crisp, harsh and deadly, because the whole body was flowed by power, the attack from each part could hit tons of damage, paired with the maneuver that was enough to kill, Domi did not dare to imagine how many gold belts such a person could get if he came to the boxing matches in the previous life, oh no, you can't use those tactics on a match like that, after all, those are real killing moves, and those flowery fist fist is not a universe at all. It was only then that Domi realized that it wasn't the scythe that Cain had used in the beginning, but rather his fists and feet. For some reason, it was very comfortable for him to watch, compared to scythes and daggers, the damage done by his own body gave him a sense of groundedness, how strong he was, and how high his attacks were, was very real, and very much in line with his usual pragmatism. At this point, then remember the question of whether to choose a dagger or a scythe, Domi felt that he should have an answer in his heart. The action continued and at the same time, the system didn't let him down. Through observation and the phasing of the stance, he actually gained a new skill from it. Shadow Stream Stance, Beginner's Practice, Description, Attacking and Defending, Advancing and Retreating Freely, with vicious moves that either maim or kill. It is an all-around stance that every Shadow Stream sect member can practice after joining the sect, and it is said that practicing it until it reaches its full completion will enable him to comprehend some of the truths of the world. Domi immediately rejoiced when he saw it. He really did have a talent for practicing body techniques. The only regret was that this insightful adventure was about to end. If only he could have read it for a little while longer, he might have gained more understanding. And as if the system had heard Domi's humble wish, a prompt popped up. Insight memory is about to end. This insight type is paid repeatable. You can choose to spend 1000 villain values to watch it again, with no upper limit on the number of times. Nanny, Domi was directly dumbfounded. What does it mean to give a pillow to a sleepy person, crosses his arms. Don't say anything. He was usurping about 350,000 villain values in his hand. Let Kai Yin die of exhaustion here. He waved his hand and angrily smashed 1,000 villain values down. You have spent 1,000 villain values to conduct an insight memory retracement. In an instant, it was as if the axis of time was silently dialed back by a pair of invisible hands, and everything was going backwards according to the original trajectory. It was soon back to the very beginning. Kane was still sitting cross-legged on the grass, then violently stormed up, a punch began to be thrown, despite being able to watch it countless times, Domi still prized every opportunity, for the first 10 times, he memorized all the moves in the stance, he then began to mentally meditate on replicating the moves, 
which, in the state of his soul's upper body, seemed to achieve the effect of practicing them firsthand with the help of Kaiten's body data, which was like a lingering shadow making the standard moves from the sidelines, keeping the other quantities the same, controlling the only variable, and just imitating it like a cat and mouse. For the fifteenth time in total, the proficiency level was raised to slightly accomplished. For the sixtieth time, the furnace was perfected. For the one hundred and fortieth time, out of the blue, by this point, Domi realized that his level was already on par with Kain. But of course, this was with the same physical qualities. It was just a memory inscribed down. Kane's limits were right here. He couldn't teach himself anything more. Domi also felt that imitating him wouldn't raise his proficiency any further. Glancing at the consumption, 140 retraces, a total of 14 W of villain value was used. A whole 14 W ah, it hurt to look at it. But being able to make the Yi Shadow Stream body technique pull hard to a level like Exodus was worth the price of admission. This is probably a great success. According to the system's grading system, there were only three more grades above that, Master of the Generation, Shocking the Ancient World, and Ascending to the Peak of Excellence. The part of the world's truth mentioned in the description could be seen when one reached the level of godly enlightenment. Domi carefully felt the changes within his body. If he sank his heart, he realized that a concentrated power was wandering in the location of his dantian, that is, a little bit down from his navel. What in the world was this? A concentrated power? Before, he was this, thought, but until he possessed it himself, Domi didn't think it was that, as he detected the same source in other things, animals, flowers, birds, insects and plants, and even gurgling water. It was as if everything in the world was connected by the same, unseen, inner energy, whether organic or inorganic, he himself had originally had it, and the shadow stream body technique was a medium to enhance it and allow himself to see it. If everything was there, what word should be used to summarize it? Domi thought for a long time, and finally decided to use the word chi to name it. Chi, flowing in all parts of the world, circulating in heaven and earth. Domi couldn't think of a better word in a short period of time, and there was even a moment when he thought that magic also originated from chi, but on second thought it wasn't quite accurate. Compared to Qi, a force close to its origin, the magic that supports magic is more like a delicate imitation of it, more regular, more controllable, more visualized, yet still based on Qi, only improved upon. However the guessing came to a screeching halt here, after all his understanding of magic was rather shallow, and this had reached its limit. But that didn't mean he would give up on his research in this area. If the truth was true as thought, and Qi could be transformed into magic, or magic could be transformed into Qi. It would be a leap forward for him personally. He collected his thoughts that were gradually drifting away. Thinking about this now was still too far away. She was only such a small lump in his body, flowing within a fist at best, completely unable to be used as material for research. In the future, he would have to intentionally increase its size. He planned like this. There were more important things to address right now than long-term planning. Domi never forgot. Now that he finally had a confident and lethal means of attack, daggers and the like were weak gotta get Atelier to open his eyes properly. Returning to reality, there was a blanket of white in front of him. Just now it was a clear sky with white clouds, and the next second it was boundless darkness. This feeling was like standing up after squatting in a pit with low blood pressure for a long time, as if there were countless earthworms crawling in his eyeballs. However, he quickly adjusted his state and hid himself, and under the driving force of his intention, his chi coalesced in his left foot that was about to stomp out. Atelier's form appeared in Domi's field of vision gathering his killing intent, aiming for his prey, and then fully exploding the moment he struck. This time, Atel finally moved his feet, but froze just as he took a stance in response to the dagger attack. Sense told him that it wasn't a dagger, but reason told him that what else could Domi use besides a dagger? Bare hands? Then what was the difference between hitting him and scratching an itch? However it was this day's coupled with carelessness that allowed Domi to take advantage of the situation. With the chi boost, coupled with a smaller stature and higher muscle density, Domi's explosive speed was fast to the extreme. In the blink of an eye, he broke through the darkness and stepped into the circle of light. Positive? Because of the specially suppressed perception, even he didn't expect that Domi would be attacking from the front. What he didn't expect even more was that he actually rushed to a position quite close in front of him, and the distance between the two was only the size of a fist. Atelier's eyes widened as he took a closer look. Domi had actually thrown away his dagger, literally with his bare hands, but even in close physical combat he was equally good at it. He gathered a bit of strength and leaned his body sideways, trying to knock Domi out of close range with the front of his knee. In fact, he had better options, like letting Domi throw a punch. Then strongman Lockman connects with a strong hand cracking cranium, and Domi dies violently on the spot. 
while he just takes a punch himself, blood money, but he couldn't do that after all, in his eyes, to have this kind of courage, Domi had already had enough for today, almost ready, just when he wanted to call a halt and end today's training, the next moment, he swallowed back the words that were about to come out, only to see Domi leap up as if he had anticipated the situation, and as if he had dodged the sight up by pure reflexes, using both hands to press down on his knees, and using that support, a whiplash in the air was thrown at Atel's head like a spear, Atel manages to be stunned, once again voicing that question, what the hell is this seven-year-old kid, forced to do so, he had no choice but to liberate another portion of his strength and forcefully raise his arm and bend his arm to resist, bang, the force was so great that it even hit a circle of dust waves, the kick hadn't done any substantial damage to Atel, but it had qualified as an early end to training, Atel rubbed his head as he looked at the kid who wasn't even a teenager standing in front of him, how could he look at him and how could he think about it, maybe, this is a gifted player, he comforted himself with this, ahem, he cleared his throat and said, you've done well for a waste, keep up the good work, wait for me to take you tomorrow at the usual time and place, don't forget and don't look for it without permission, understand, until now Domi had no right to speak, understood, Atelier finally honored his promise and put Domi back, speaking of which, this was still the only promise he had honored since the training, it really made Domi feel a lot of emotions, back home, Domi first went to his room and removed his training clothes in the bathroom, during the high intensity training, a large amount of sweat had precipitated from his entire body, and these secretions had nowhere to go under the wrapping of the tights, and all of them ended up settling in the clothes, so much so that as soon as he took it off, the acrid odor hit him, eek jaw, that sourness was what was strong enough, taking a change of clothes and heading to the bathtub, just as he passed by the gold-rimmed full-body mirror, he suddenly paused in his steps and turned his head to look at himself in the mirror, his mouth opening in surprise, only to see that he actually grew muscles in the mirror, not Schwarzenegger's kind of mammoth muscles, but rather more superficial yet contoured and not so exaggerated muscles, their presence filled out Domi's body instantly, with the beginnings of a nine-pack, straight-angled shoulders, slightly bulging obliques and latissimus dorsi muscles that were lean in and out of clothing, he flexed his arms and let his biceps bulge, and also reached out and squeezed, a hard stroke, it was the real thing roaring, could it be that the fruits of working out in the realm of insight will still carry over into reality, he quickly rejected this conjecture, because only the soul entered the realm of insights, and the body remained outside, so the only possibility was the bonus from the upgrade of the shadow stream body technique, thinking like this, he felt even more that the 140, 000 was worth spending, after taking a comfortable bath in the bathtub, his whole body was refreshed, drying his long wet hair, tying it into a high ponytail and tying it with a blue hairband, before going out, he changed into a washed black shirt and gray suit pants, originally, he was already very handsome, face value belongs to the level of God's food, when the body full up, it will add a touch of self-confidence and pressure from the strong, putting him in a crowd of children of the same age, he was an existence that stood out from the rest, I wonder how Kelsey and Catherine will react, he was inexplicably a bit excited and couldn't wait to let's see them earlier, he even hummed a little song from home on the way to the restaurant, once summer is gone, it's winter again na 710 one warm cup chocolate, the second hand turns, did Ida, a little jet lag, did Ida, I morning teen moonlight sprinkled in your hair, singing the original song, it's just that every note is out of tune, anyway now, he was in a pretty good mood, and he could probably eat another three or four bowls of rice in the evening, with his hands resting on the back of his head, he hung back and continued to walk down the hallway when suddenly, a soulful voice came from in front of him, yay Domi, I've finally found you, as soon as he heard the voice, Domi immediately returned to his normal posture, Kelsey, what's the hurry, she did look a little flustered, and probably couldn't be bothered to observe the change in Domi, but that's okay, there's plenty of time to wait until nightfall when she gets into bed, go on down to the lobby there, his lordship and lady and Edward and Master Argyle are all there, just waiting for you, wait, 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 what on earth has happened, didn't they tell you, Kelsey shook her head, at that time the head maid found me and then told me to hurry up and get you back, it wasn't clear what exactly happened, alright then, let's hurry over there, Domi's footsteps quickened more and more, and he had a nagging feeling that something shocking was about to happen, when he arrived in front of one of the lobby's doorways, he saw that there were already quite a number of maids surrounding the place, all hiding behind the wall waiting to eat their melon, Domi couldn't help but laugh, in any other noble's house, how would the maids dare to gossip like this, dare to do so the next day will have to be hanged for public display, in order to prevent them from hearing what they shouldn't hear, let him dismiss them, what are the sisters doing gathered here, seeing that it was Domi who had arrived, 
The maids instantly aligned themselves, but said nothing. If there's nothing to do then disperse, if my father finds out, everyone will suffer. This was also a step down for the girls, a softer dismissal of sorts. In fact, Carlos in the lobby had sensed that the maids were hiding behind the door and eavesdropping, and he would have been the one to step in. But when he thought that Domi hadn't arrived yet, he wanted to see how Domi handled the situation. Judging by the results, it wasn't bad, at least there was no arrogance, and that was enough. Entering the lobby, he went over to the couch group, where his two brothers were sitting side by side, while Carlos and Gracie each had a single couch. Domi, come over here. Argyle waved Domi over, and without ceremony, he snapped and sat down next to Argyle, not forgetting to pry for information at this point. What happened, big brother? Argyle looked at Carlos, then whispered in Domi's ear. Father said something he wanted to talk to us about, including mother, but I think mother knew about it earlier and came over just to see how we'd react. Domi, whatever you hear next, don't show an expression that makes mother uncomfortable, okay? Domi gave Argyle a deep look, always feeling that he should have picked up on something in some small, everyday detail, but just wasn't sure enough to say so. Domi nodded vaguely, joining his big brother's united front. He surveyed his surroundings some more, besides a few of his own family. Present were Catherine, the head guard Osmond, the man masked with a sack, but Domi recognized the guy instantly as Locke, Atelier's adjutant, and a common maid who was usually quite honest and proper. No one said a word, but they all waited patiently. At that moment, Carlos finally spoke, since everyone is here, I'll get straight to the point. Isn't everyone curious as to who is reserved for the first seat on my right that has been empty? He paused, then continued, actually, that seat is reserved for my other wife. Domi's expression instantly froze, but remembering Argyle's instructions, he forced himself to keep his face unchanged, but inside he had already turned over big waves. God damn the other lady, engaging in polygamy huh? Wait, it seems like it's not impossible here eh, especially for nobles. Looking at the reactions of the people around me, it doesn't seem like it's a big deal. Okay, in that case it's fine, everyone else doesn't care, so what's he, a kid, got to worry about? Domi was relieved and at the same time looked at Greta's reaction, only to see that his rightful old mom's face was expressionless. The truth was probably as Argyle had said, Carlos must have given it to Gressa earlier before he confessed to everyone, and to be able to say it here now would have had Gressa's consent as well. As for why they agreed, I guess only they themselves know. Take your time to listen to it. Her name is Sophia, and she once saved my life, just before I married Gressa, only to make a little mistake in a misadventure. He sighed. Carlos and Greta's marriage came with a bit of an element of union, which was usually mandatory, and after what he'd said, Dom always felt like there was still a bit of doggone drama in there. Actually, you have a sister, said Carlos, twisting his head to a corner and calling out, Rosa, come out so everyone can meet you. Domi and his two brothers looked over almost simultaneously, only to see a petite figure step out of the shadows. The long beige hair that seemed to have been inherited from her mother was tied up in a cute pill head black pupils that were not identical to those of the three brothers, a perky nose, a face as white and tender as a peeled egg that seemed to be blowing, and a small family appearance that was as delicate as a doll. Just looking at it made one's heart feel sorry for her. She was wearing a pure white dress with a bit of lace trim at the sleeves and hem, further emphasizing her purity and flawlessness. Carlos sat Rosa and the three brothers on a couch that happened to be right next to Domi. In such close proximity, Domi could clearly see the nervousness and shyness on Rosa's face with his afterglow as well as her tampering hands, clenched into small fists resting on her legs, at a loss for words as if she had gone to a class reunion herself but didn't fit in with them. Maybe she didn't fit in with the family either. After all, her mother is just Carlos S. Lover, not explicitly married. The child born naturally will not have a name. But Carlos' move seemed to be to let Rosa return to the family. He continued to speak, although Sophia was pregnant earlier, but Rosa was born later than all of you. After being outside for so long, I think it's also time for you to accept her. So, Argyle, Edward and Domi, treat your sister well oh. These words were not only spoken to the three brothers, but also to the others who were present, meaning that Rosa should be treated on the same level as Domi and the others. After all, she was also Carlos' biological child. Everyone was silent, as they didn't have the need or right to refute it. This matter has also been discussed between Gressa and I, in the way of the world. Rosa cannot rightfully reside with us. For this reason, I will have MS. Marianne act as Rosa's mother, claiming to the public that Rosa is MS. Marianne's child, and that MS. Marianne will come to live in the castle because of her broken rank, thus achieving the same effect. Marianne, that is, the only other maid in the room, with brown hair and black pupils, 
matching Rosa in pupil color, and MS. Marianne is the absolute transparent person among the maids, and she keeps her mouth shut, so it is just right to make use of it. It is said to be utilized, but in fact it is also a two-way mutual benefit. After all, she can also be promoted and stationed in the castle to get a higher salary. So Marianne herself is very happy. He looked to Rosa. The only thing that I'll have to commit you a bit is that you have to go out to school to be able to do so. The castle is full of people. I can't guarantee that no one will give away your identity. Of course, I'll also arrange the best schools and teachers for you, and there's absolutely no shortage of money or anything, is that okay? Rosa gently nodded her head. It was already good enough that Carlos didn't turn his back on her, and had treated her and her mother like family for so many years, so what could she possibly have to be upset about? That's good then. In the future, when the time is right, I will do right by you. Trust me. It was. Argyle suddenly raised her hand. Argyle, you say. What about Aunt Sophia? Won't she come along? At these words, whether it was Carlos or Rosa, their expressions dimmed a little, and even Gress's eyes showed a touch of sadness, and such an expression was naturally taken in by Domi's eyes, his old mom and Aunt Sophia, definitely knew each other, and the relationship was not shallow, there must be a hidden agenda in it, even Carlos, also rare pause for a long time before saying, Sophia she, passed away two years ago, when you guys were five, at that time, you were all still ignorant and uninformed. I was also afraid that you would not treat Rosa well after knowing the truth, so I waited until this time to let you recognize each other. Please also understand my bitter feelings. Their stern and powerful dad was actually showing weakness like this? Argyle was all confused, not knowing what to do all of a sudden, and waving her hands around. Ah, uh, I didn't mean to offend. Really, you don't have to apologize for that. Father, we'll definitely treat Rosa like our own sister. Please also rest assured. Hearing his eldest son being so understanding, Carlos was also quite relieved. When he looked at his other two sons, Argyle immediately gave Edward a quick elbow to the waist, and he and Domi immediately understood, nodding their heads repeatedly as if they were pecking at a chicken. Right, right, Lord Father doesn't have to worry. That's right, from now on, Rosa is my sister. My sister is Rosa. Whoever dares to touch her I'll blow his dog's head off. At this time, Gressa also stood up, came to Rosa in front of her and hugged her small body. I don't know what she whispered in her ear. Domi only saw that after Gressa finished whispering, Rosa's eyes suddenly widened, and then hugged Gressa as if she was running in both directions, as if she was crying as if she was buried in Gressa's arms with a twitch, as the mistress of the house. This move by Gressa was tantamount to accepting Rosa's existence and instantly drawing closer to Rosa. Now, Carlos had no problem with it, Grace had no problem with it, Domi's three rebellious sons had no problem with it, and there was no need to say anything about the others, so Rosa returned to Blofeld without any problems. As Carlos had said, Rosa was pretty much free to move around the castle except for classes where she couldn't join them. Marianne had risen to the position of deputy head maid, second only to Catherine, and there was no excuse for her daughter to be brought over to live with her, and it was even no problem for her to eat at the table with everyone else. Just like Catherine, the Blofelds were already known for their tolerance and relative equality in the aristocratic circle, and even this would not be a problem, and it was practiced exactly at tonight's dinner. The maids who came to serve the food were curious about this new little girl, but no one would suspect her identity. Rosa just appeared in the public eye in a dignified manner, as Marianne's daughter. After dinner, it was free time for every kid, except for a certain unlucky one who had to go to the library for an appointment. He actually kinda wanted to talk to his cheap sister. They'd have to live together for quite some time to come. He would have liked Rosa to have a good time with the three of them tumors. How could they do that without getting to know each other? Unfortunately, the conditions didn't allow it so Domi had to leave with a grudge. But just as he turned back to leave, he didn't realize that Rosa was also peeking at him. To be precise, Rosa had observed each of her brothers, and she too wanted to fit in with them. But brother and sister, male and female, were two rather difficult divides to break through by nature, and it wasn't difficult for Rosa to try and close the distance, but she still wanted to try. Her first target had originally selected the somewhat comical Domi, because he was the one who had just said that he would blow someone's dog's head off and Rosa subconsciously felt that such a person should get along a little better. Moreover, Domi looks more that. Rosa cannot think of the appropriate adjectives. In short, it is that kind of slightly badass temperament that attracts her. Unfortunately, Domi seemed to have something urgent as if he had just finished eating and then hoofed it out of the restaurant, not knowing what to do. She was just about to follow when she heard someone calling her from behind, and when she turned around, it turned out to be Argyle and Edward. Rosa. Do you want to go to the stage show together? Mom said she could take us there. Argyle was very enthusiastic in extending the invitation. 
Rosa nodded her head without hesitation, but on second thought, it seemed like something wasn't quite right. What about, Dominic him? Rosa's voice was soft and sticky, and also very light. Without listening carefully it was really not clear. Eh, yeah oh, I haven't seen him since just now. I guess there's something going on. Edward said, Domi this guy is always very busy lately. I don't know what he's really busy with. Ask dad and he'll just muddle through. He's definitely hiding something from us. All right, give others some privacy. Since Domi can't come then let's go together. What do you think Rosa? After the stage show we can still visit the fair and do some shopping. Yes, we can also try those roadside snacks. There's one I've been thinking about for a long time. Rosa herself hadn't even realized that she had followed the two of them while listening to Argyle's pie painting. Only when she looked back did she realize that she was almost on the carriage. It couldn't be helped. As a child she hardly socialized with other children her age because of her sensitive identity, let alone hanging out together. Being able to watch a stage play with her two brothers was like a dream to her. Let's go. Argyle extended his hand and gentlemanly pulled Rosa onto the carriage. Opera house? Let's go. Edward wailed. The entire carriage was filled with cheerfulness. A stark contrast to the dead library. Ask, what kind of situation would be most likely to break one's defenses? Then Domi would answer without hesitation, when others were getting high while they had to study hard. Weren't you quite serious in class? Why are you distracted now? Connor asked, putting down the book in his hands. Ha, huh? Domi had just come back to. Over. Sorry teacher. My mind was thinking about other things just now. Not only was he thinking about Kelsey right now, he was also thinking about Rosa. How exciting to have a budding smattering of more. He had never had the experience of being a big brother before. It felt fresh. Connor didn't pursue it too much. Children's thoughts were already many. Just pull back in time. He picked up the thick magic book and continued to explain. Listen well, we will be practicing later. Let's start with the principle of casting magic. To cast magic, having magic power with the appropriate attributes is the foundation. And then, one needs to align the magic power in a specific form. For example, for minor flame magic, one needs to chant the incantation, sincerity, warmth, flame is my heart, blazing and burning. After chanting the incantation, a small flame appeared in Connor's hand, and Domi got serious. Each word in the incantation followed by a word represents a sequence of magical alignments. And because these sequences are difficult to memorize, we'll start by labeling each sequence with a musical note. Each long sequence is a melody when it's connected. And then we look for a word that's almost the same based on that melody, and it becomes the spell. Memorizing the sequence according to the spell while letting the magic be released according to the sequence is the process of using magic. Of course, if you understand magic a little deeper, and line up the sequence more accurately and quickly, you can skip this step, and just line up the whole sequence in your mind, and you can do an instantaneous release, just like this, only to see Connor say nothing. A small flame appeared with his hand open. Instantaneous magic which surprised Domi. He always thought it would be troublesome if he had to chant before releasing the magic. Not to mention the long forward swing, it would also be easy for old Six to steal it. But with instantaneous that was different. According to Connor, as long as the sequence was memorized well enough and could be ordered precisely, it could be done. And in what ways is the level of magical talent reflected? Is there a correlation with instantaneous hair? Domi asked curiously. Of course, Connor nodded. The higher the talent, the faster you produce magic, and the more natural and precise you will be when arranging it, which manifests itself in a faster release. Saying this, Connor couldn't help but look at Domi again. It wasn't that people with bad talent couldn't instantly release, it was that they had to put in geometrically increased effort than others to do so, and as the magic level increases, without some talent, one can't even learn it, let alone instantaneous hair. Poor Domi, let's hope he won't give up in the future because of this. After a few minutes, after Domi had thoroughly digested this knowledge, Connor continued speaking, Duo me you are a shadow system talent, right? So let's start learning from the simplest beginner's shadow system magic. Turn the book of shadows to the second page. Elementary shadow magic, stealth. The book recorded the sequence of invisibility magic, and according to the arrangement of the notes, the incantation should be into the darkness. Yes, that wavy sign at the end was part of it, and without that tone of voice, it was the equivalent of omitting part of the sequence and the magic couldn't be cast. Domi's head was spinning. He was just about to say that this was a good method, and now it slapped him in the face. What kind of shenanigans was a spell with a wave sign? Asshole. Just as well. Look on the bright side. At least the invisibility spell was much shorter than the little flames. A few minutes of memorization would be about right. Come try it. Practice is the best teacher. Connor encouraged. Domi stood up from his position, recalling the incantation in his mind and chanting softly under his breath. 
into the darkness. The right sequence was like the right password, successfully opening the inventory of magic power. Shadow system magic power gushed out, covering Domi's whole body according to the magically designed effect, reflecting all the colors with the special nature of the shadow system magic power. It became invisible in the eyes of others. Not bad, not bad, Connor applauded with relief. It was considered good to be able to perform it on the first try, and it wasn't much better than his two older brothers. Only that the invisibility technique was designed based on the characteristics of the magic itself. The difficulty was not high, so Connor still held a pessimistic attitude inside. Looking at the time, it seemed like it was almost time. Connor packed up his things and suddenly thought of something before leaving, reminding Domi. By the way Domi, do you know the Blofeld family's famous talent? What's that? Looking at Domi's dumbfounded look, Connor knew that Carlos had never mentioned this to his sons at all. Gotta. That had to be explained again. Know the Greenville family next door to you? Hearing the name, Domi immediately recalled Mitchell Greenville, who had even been here at the time of the weekly feast, a close friend of Carlos to be sure. Every direct descendant of the Greenville family has an intermediate bottoming wind talent, and the wind magic they cast comes with all sorts of special effects. This kind of extra bonus is the family talent, and it is also the root of the magic nobility's ability to stand for a long time. Like Greenville, Blofeld, as one of the strongest magic nobles, naturally has a family talent, nicknamed Magic Hand. It has no direct magical bonuses, but rather acts on a more underlying logic. Sequence? Speaking of the underlying logic, sequence was the first thing that came to Domi's mind. That's right. The reason why it's called a magician is because the first line of the Blofeld family can combine sequences of magic at will and make them workable, making it work no matter what. That's the point. Regardless of the attributes, regardless of the gap in rank, as long as it's magic it can be rubbed together to achieve unpredictable effects. It's like conjuring, doesn't that fit the name? Domi nodded blankly, and had to say, this talent was too strong, wasn't it? If studied and sifted through, wouldn't it be so many more stronger magics than anyone else? And being unable to predict this point, it was even more advantageous to put oneself in the dark, with the enemy in the light and me in the dark. No wonder Blofeld dared to be so unique, so there is a strong backing. Then wouldn't our family have made a great contribution to the expansion of the Magic Atlas? One can say yes or no. Connor spoke ambiguously. The main thing about the gift of magician is a randomness. Not only the magical attributes of the offspring may randomize out of a wide variety, even the fusion sequences are randomized. Let's say that you, and your brother, both of whom are full-blooded, then fuse two of the same magic in the same way. It's all like that there's still the possibility of synthesizing two very different magics. The non-recombination is extremely high. So those innovated magics are basically the only ones that the Blofeld can use it, and no one else can use it at all. So what's the point of adding these magic to the All Magic Atlas? But there are still people who collect these oddball magic specifically for a hobby, and that's what magicians are often talked about, right? With that said, the originally agreed upon time had been exceeded. Connor also stopped taking up Domi's time, and the two said their goodbyes before going their separate ways, agreeing to meet again tomorrow. After Connor left, Domi was left alone in the library. He wasn't in a hurry to leave. The matter of the magic hand had raised a great deal of interest in him. He was seen taking out a brand new notebook and flipping through the title page to record the knowledge he had combed through. Since Blofeld's direct line can use magic hands, then I should be able to as well. Thinking of this, Domi flipped through the Book of Shadows again to the third page and began to teach himself the second shadow system magic, Shadow Escape. The effect of Shadow Escape was to merge oneself into a shadow and then come out from the other side of the connected shadow. All Domi needed to do was to write two different fusion sequences by randomly summarizing the sequences of shadow evasion and invisibility. The incantations for the two sequences were, you can't see me, woohoo, slippery. It's easier to say incantations and stuff in your native language. And the most you can do is line them up like this. According to the phonetics, Domi rubbed his hands together with gusto, as if he were a green-headed fly. He couldn't wait to try out the new magic that had been fused together. Armed with his notebook, quill, and book of shadows. Domi went to the back garden of the castle and found a spacious clearing, setting the things aside. He began his formal attempt. Take a deep breath, empty your mind, and concentrate a little. He slowly opened his mouth and said, You can't see me. In the next second, the shadow magic covered his whole body. He became a pile of shadows floating in midair, which could also be said to be a thin black fog. The shadow three-dimensionally might look like this. This pile of stuff can walk, but it can't blend into the shadow anymore and it obviously doesn't meet the standards of an old six magic. Then try the next one. Woohoo! Slippery cluck. Bang! The magic declared. Domi opened his eyes again, and he actually looked the same as he did just now. 
Two spells of different arrangements actually displayed the same effect? Could it be that the prerequisite for fusion to work is synthetic uniqueness? That should make sense. Otherwise it would be too unbalanced. Well, at least he tried out one possibility. Shadow Vanish plus Invisibility spell equals a thin cloud of black mist. The magic consumption was quite small. Equivalent to five-fourths of what it would be after Shadow Evasion plus Stealth. And it only overflowed by a drop, which was still within an acceptable range. At that moment, another idea surfaced in his little melon. Two magic spells can be fused with each other. And the fused spell counts as one magic. So can the fused spell be fused with another? Connor hadn't said so. So he would have to try it himself. Or as the saying goes, practice makes perfect. In the Book of Shadows he found another victim. Ah no, it's a volunteer, fear. This was also an elementary shadow magic. A bit on the side of the illusionism department. The effect is that it can instill fear in the heart. The effect is minimal for those who are not afraid. But for those who are already afraid, it can constantly reinforce the fear in their hearts. Serious ones could even leave a lifelong psychological shadow, and it was especially effective when used on children. This time he pinched a spell out, adjusting his state once again. He controlled his magic bit by bit against the long sequence on the notebook, and finally recited the spell. The end is coming. March towards the end. Recommendations have advanced to the second round. Thanks for all the support. More handfuls on Monday and Tuesday. You and I will work together to create another glorious day. Fear seemed to spread. The invisible field formed a circle around them that only Domi herself could see. That was the area where the fear effect took effect. Shadow magic piled up. Still the same pile of black mist, but this time it was much more solid. And Domi seemed to be able to control it. The black mist followed Domi's will and took on various shapes, a ball, a scythe, a sunny rainbow pony, or the familiar shape of a ghost. After many tries, his favorite was the shape of a scarecrow, but it was a scarecrow with a few finishing touches. He added a small arm that naturally hung down underneath each of his two parallel outstretched arms, holding a hanging lantern in one hand and a scythe for cutting grass in the other. The whole body consists of simple mechanical parts, supported by broken wooden poles. The head is hatless, the entire head being shrouded in a mask painted with horrific expressions. As long as the casual movement, the whole body will follow the violent shaking up. The amplitude is very great, as if the next second will all fall apart. Looks both grotesque and bizarre. From a little distance, such a scarecrow looks like a scythe-wielding, black-robed god of death. When you get closer, you can see its non-physical body and enter the realm of fear. It was even more effective when paired with a mask that could scare children to death. Quite satisfied, Domi transformed back to his original form, his mind still recalling what he had just looked like as he chanted the incantation. The end is coming, towards the end. Scary and grotesque scarecrow, impose a field of fear. Let's call this spell scarecrow. He recorded the entire sequence along with the incantation in his notebook to easily continue practicing later. And when he was proficient, instantaneous scarecrow was something he just didn't dare to think about. Charging into a pile of people and unfolding the domain was a wave of all fear. If he added some domain damage magic in the future, the picture would be too beautiful. Moreover, he also possessed a perfect grade shadow system talent. So no matter what kind of magic it was, the effect and power would be greatly enhanced. At the current level, there was also no need to worry about running out of magic power at all. It could be said that the current him could utilize the power of synthetic magic 2.5 times, the extra 0.5 times relied on renewal. The power of the magic hand, strong from the early stage to the late stage, terrifying as it is. After successfully synthesizing a magic, Domi's confidence skyrocketed, and there were quite a few more ideas cascading in his mind, just waiting for him to try them over one by one. But one bite doesn't make a fat man, and it was getting late. Domi packed up and returned to the castle, walking towards his room, but halfway there, he subconsciously observed his surroundings. Ancient castle, long and full of history corridor, quiet without a sound, walk a few steps only a magic lamp, cannot light up a lot of places, shadows everywhere. Isn't this kind of atmosphere the best condition for him to practice scarecrow? Practice makes perfect nah. Moreover, at this time of the day, the maids who had labored all day had already gone back to rest, and in the old castle. Only the big men from the defense section were still patrolling around, so scaring them shouldn't be too much of a problem. Domi's playfulness came up all of a sudden, quietly hiding in the shadows. He opened his notebook and began to chant an incantation. A few moments later, the scarecrow was once again born. Maneuvering the scarecrow, Domi quickly traveled through the corridors within the castle at floating speed, searching for every volunteer. Soon, he found a target. It was still an old acquaintance. Bobby, this guy is really destined to be with me. Since we are destined to be together, I'll let you enjoy this beautiful thing first. At first, Edward was the one who learned the flirting technique from Bobby. 
Then Edward passed on what he learned to Domi, and the karmic bond between each other couldn't be summarized in a sentence or two. He predicted Bobby S patrol route, and then hid in the shadows, quietly and quietly hiding in his path of passage, waiting for volunteers to take the bait. On the other side, Bobby, carrying a magic lantern in his hand and lighting up half of his face, was continuing along his patrol route, muttering something to himself. The first rule of the secret code of flirting with girls, money is for women to see, not for women to spend. Article 2. A woman who doesn't spend money on you is not a good woman. Article 3. So it's memorizing a textbook. No wonder he could be the master of Edward, the hidden lover, whose own strength was not weak nah. He continued to walk forward. His mind was filled with that secret girl teasing textbook, and he didn't even notice old Six who was hiding in the shadows. Until he came to a fork in the road, he looked to the right. There was originally a path leading to a small balcony, but now there was a pile of unknown black stuff standing in the middle of the path. Its body was so huge that it even covered everything behind it. Left hand carrying a dim lamp, right hand holding a black scythe, as if to come to the messenger of life. Bobby after seeing the whole person is flaxen frozen, stupidly stood in place, as if he is the real scarecrow, not moving at all. It's not that he didn't want to move, but he didn't dare to move at all, fearing that his footsteps would startle this pitch black monster. However, according to Murphy's law, the more you fear something, the more it comes, only to see the monster's head slowly twisted over, or fucking 360 degrees. As soon as he saw its front, Bobby's soul was scared out of three. What an abstract, scribbled and horrible face it was. He was so scared that he immediately ran away. Your appearance puts Bobby in a deep state of fear. Villain value plus 300. Oh ho, you're giving me villain value? So much so that Domi was even more energized spitting out a half-meter long tongue from his mouth, letting out gusts of evil laughter, his whole body as if it was about to fall apart like a skeleton chasing hard towards Bobby, I don't have a head, but soon you will not have one either, sharp and mournful voice resounded in the long corridor, frightening Bobby to run even harder, hating to use his milk, bursting out more and more villainous values, ah ah ah, spare me big brother, I have an old man and a young man, the meat is not delicious, and my but is still growing hemorrhoids, you're lying, you don't even have a girlfriend. Where did you get a child? This you know. I am your nightmare run. I will always follow you. The laughter actually drifted away. All finally actually disappeared. Bobby also slowly slowed down the footsteps. Was continuously chased a few floors after he was also tired of a batch. Is breathing heavily. At the same time twisted his head to the back to look. Want to see that the monsters still have not come after. Luckily. There wasn't any more of it chasing him from behind. Phew. He let out a sharp sigh of relief. This was a little too scary for an adult. I'll have to catch up on that when I get back. However, just as he turned back again to go back for his shift, the monster unexpectedly appeared directly in front of him, grinning a big, deep, bottomless mouth, as if in silent mockery. Found you la. Bobby's shout pierced right through the ceiling. The tonsils in his throat were shaking so much they were falling out. At 9 p.m. M. Some of those who had laid down early were also jolted awake by the scream. Sitting up startled in his sleepy dying sickness, he realized that the clown was actually himself and lay down again. But there are still people who can't sleep again, like a little maid in her nightgown, because often sleep together pillow has not come back, a little worried about the pillow to run away, so wearing pajama slippers out of the room. On the other hand, after Bobby screamed, she ran around in a panic, reciting prayers, asking the gods to help her. And Domi looked at the villain value that kept brushing in the system panel, almost gleaned 5,000 down, and laughed so hard that his mouth couldn't close. He saw the good things, otherwise it would not be good to leave a psychological shadow on Bobby. However, just as Domi wanted to find a corner to change back to his original appearance, a figure coincidentally appeared from around the corner, and glanced toward him again by some strange coincidence. When they met, the scene froze for a moment. It became clear to Domi exactly who the visitor was, and it was actually Kelsey. She stood frozen, disheveled in the wind, her eyes glazed over with horror as she stared at Domi. Oh no, the scarecrow, oh my god. Before Domi could change back to her original form, Kelsey actually fainted directly in shock, her body slumping straight forward. Seeing this, Domi cancelled his spell casting and immediately went forward to hug Kelsey, who was about to fall to the ground, with his human form and the speed of a hundred meter sprint. Fortunately, the shadow stream body technique had greatly strengthened his body's reaction speed or else he really wouldn't have been able to catch her. Feeling the warmth emanating from the delicate body in his arms, Domi simply couldn't wait to enjoy himself, and immediately checked Kelsey's condition. Kelsey, hello, quickly wake up, it's me ah. There was no response to patting her face, 
She seemed to be so scared that she fainted and didn't respond in the slightest no matter how much Domi shouted. Finished, this time he had to take the blame. With no choice but to carry Kelsey back to her room, Domi added insult to injury by catching a cold outside, even though the room wasn't very far away. It took Domi a lot of effort to carry Kelsey back, put her on the bed, and tuck her in. At the same time he himself changed into his pajamas and got in together, curling up on Kelsey's side. Because of his weakness, he didn't fall asleep, but waited for Kelsey to wake up. After waiting like this for about half an hour, Kelsey's long, slender eyelashes fluttered, immediately attracting Domi's attention. However, at the thought that Kelsey would be waking up soon, Domi's heart became even weaker. But no matter what, he still had to confess the truth to Kelsey. It was fine to let Bobby be scared every night, but if Kelsey was like this, then Domi's conscience would be strongly condemned. He didn't want Kelsey to be trembling all day. With such thoughts, Domi's mind kept organizing his words, thinking about how to explain to her later. When Kelsey's eyes opened completely, looking at the familiar ceiling in front of her, Kelsey was a little unresponsive for a moment. She remembered that after a shriek, she had left the away from the room and was about to go to the library to find Domi when seemed to see something horrible around the corner. What was it? She subconsciously recalled. The scarecrow's face suddenly appeared in her mind, scared her body jolted, and her head shrank a little toward the quilt. And with that shrinkage, contact occurred between the limbs, warm and hard. It was very much like the touch of an exclusive pillow, but it was a bit off. She remembered that Domi's arms weren't that hard, twisting her head around. She happened to lock eyes with Domi, who had half her face buried in the covers. Domi, what am I doing here? I think I remember fainting in the hallway. Did you bring me back? The monster was right in front of her. And if Domi had brought her back, wouldn't Domi have seen the monster as well? She instantly thought carefully and nervously said, Wait, where is that monster? Did it do anything to you? She immediately sat up, not even caring about the white lace halter that had slipped down one side of her shoulder, and looked around nervously. That's when she felt Domi tugging gently on her skirt. Ah, uh, that Kelsey you listen to me. The windows in the room weren't closed all the way. The evening spring breeze was blowing in kinda cold, and Domi looked like she had something she wanted to say. With all the buffs added, Kelsey burrowed back under the covers, turned on her side, and met Domi on all fours. On the nightstand, the warm light illuminated each other's faces more softly, and Domi didn't find those words so hard to say. You say, the monster, you remember it, right? Aha, uh -huh. it was super scary. That thing was actually changed by me. Question mark. Domi saw the question mark on Kelsey's expression exactly, and told the story from the beginning. Kelsey then heaved a sigh of relief patted her chest and said, great, I thought there were monsters in the castle, it scared me, then reaching out, she gave Domi a headbutt, Domi, you can't just scare people with magic, it's rude and unsafe behavior, what if someone else doesn't realize that this monster is you and a spell hits them, even if it's Bobby, that's someone who can enter the defense section, don't look at him as timid and horny, but he's at least a full-fledged mage, once he is pushed to the edge, if a middle-ranked magic hits your small body, you will be crippled if not killed, at that time, not only will your life be at stake, even the innocent Bobby will be implicated. Kelsey's expression was serious, more serious than ever. At least Domi had never seen such a Kelsey, and he reflected on himself for it. Indeed, although it was cool for him to do so, he hadn't considered the consequences, and in his position as well as in the context of today's society, the repercussions that arose were not at all something he could have predicted. It would be fine if he himself was punished, but if innocent people were implicated as a result, it would be more than worth it. All things considered, it would be better to scare his resentful brethren in the future. Looking at Domi's appearance, he seemed to have realized that he had made a mistake and was reflecting on himself. Kelsey reverted to her gentle form, using him as a cuddle pillow as usual and gently stroking the back of his head. If you know your mistakes, then Domi is still a good baby. Just as Domi was comfortably enjoying the cleanser, Kelsey suddenly pulled away from him a bit, and her starry eyes were gleaming at him. By the way, Domi are you using the magic hand talent? I've never seen shadow based magic like that eh? Domi nodded and said. Yes, I fused stealth, invisibility and fear together to get that look. A magic I call scarecrow. There would have been nothing wrong with saying that. Since anyone who was a magician knew that magicians could fuse magic. But Domi saw shock in Kelsey's eyes. Her tone was a little shaky. And she said with great uncertainty. Domi, you did add three kinds of magic together? Yeah, what's wrong? Don't you know? A magician can only fuse a maximum of two types of magic ah. Until the big morning the next day, Domi hadn't figured out why only he could fuse three magic spells, while the other Blofelders were capped at two. Could it be the so-called randomness? 
Domi entered the washroom and started brushing his teeth with a simple toothbrush with toothpaste of unknown ingredients while looking at himself in the mirror. Recalling the conversation he had with Connor earlier, he had said something about this randomness thing. Other magical nobles, their children's natural attributes were cleanly inherited from the previous generation, with an occasional genetic mutation. And them? Carlos main time system, Gressa main light system, three suns earth system, fire system, and shadow system, froze, none of them were the same. Who said the son of a mouse can make holes? Randomness isn't reflected here. If one continues to think in this logic, then his specialness can also be a manifestation of randomness. While Argyle and Edward were born with perfect, advanced talents, he broke the lower bounds of history and was given a beginner's talent. As a price, he then had a special talent that all Blofelders did not have. It was equivalent to an equal exchange. If he didn't have the system's golden finger, his special magic hand talent would have been a joy at best. But what Carlos hadn't anticipated, what no one had anticipated, was that he could forcefully raise the upper limit of his magic talent through the villain value. It was even possible to have high-level talents from multiple magic systems in the future. At that time, the magic fused out would consist of how awesome he himself didn't dare to think. Just thinking about this Domi's heart was much more balanced. At least his original body wasn't a blank slate number. The fewer people who know about this matter the better. Domi said silently to himself. After freshening up, he left the house refreshed. It was five in the morning. The sky was still cloudy outside the window. There was still a bit of frost on the glass that hadn't melted off. And it seemed unusually cold this morning. But it didn't matter. Even if it hailed outside. As long as there was a mouthful of the purest air around. He would weather the storm. For the sake of zero. Zero zero four four speed double up per day. As per usual. He headed directly to the spire. However. Unlike usual. Just after he entered the corner. A small head poked out from behind and quickly shrunk back. The very top of the castle. On a windy day, the higher up you go the more windy it gets. Domi tugged the blanket out. It was blowing and hunting in her hands. And when she sat down, her ponytail was blowing everywhere. But how could the small wind stop him from taking a breath of Tianshan's good air? Light to come. Calculating the time, the sun rose from the east as expected. Thermal radiation across 1.500 million kilometers. Sending the temperature to his head. Even the cold wind warmed up a lot. Even if it was still a little cool. The forge breath kicked into full gear. The freshest air of the day was inhaled by Domi as much as he could, bringing in energy and taking out impurities. To his surprise, the chi within his dantian, which was only the size of a fist, expanded by a hair as a result. The body forging technique could actually create a linkage with chi. In other words, his daily morning exercises could also increase the total amount of chi in addition to the force and speed double ups, killing two birds with one stone. In this way, the idea of insisting on morning exercises every day became more and more firm. Before, he didn't care if it hailed. But now, even if it rained in a huge rainstorm with lightning and thunder, he would still go out to practice in the morning. Nature could no longer stop him from getting stronger. Wahahaha. Just as his inner ambition was rising, unfamiliar footsteps suddenly came from behind him. He had memorized the footsteps of everyone else. But this was the only sound he was not very familiar with. He quickly got up and added his combat stance like a frightened wolf, as if he was facing a great enemy, but when he saw the visitor, the air that had already coalesced to the paws of his feet was hardened and held back. That, brother, was I the one who scared you? Sorry, I really didn't mean it. Soft voice, beige hair color pill head, black pupils, wearing a white home dress. The visitor was actually the cheap sister he just recognized yesterday. So it's Rosa Ah, it's okay Ow. It's just that I hadn't familiarized myself with the sound of your footsteps and thought there was an assassin. Sorry, brother was actually really frightened by her. She lowered her head like a small animal that had done something wrong and looked at her toes, afraid that Domi would scold her. Domi laughed bitterly for a moment, and only after repeatedly stating that she really wasn't angry did she let her heart drop. This, here, ha, huh? Domi received the small beige blanket handed over by Rosa with a dumbfounded expression. There was still a gust of residual warmth after she put her hands on it so it was probably carried in Rosa's arms for a long time. The weather is a little cold. I see that my brother also went to the roof of the building, for fear that you catch a cold. I blanch. Hearing this, Domi directly exploded in place plus Armstrong's spiral ascension. His sister is super cute and super considerate. She is simply his brother's little cotton coat. Then I'll take it with full gratitude. Aha! Seeing that Domi didn't refuse, Rosa was happy. But she couldn't help but wonder why Duomi had to get up so early and come to the roof of the building in such a cold day. This ah, follow me. Domi took Rosa's hand and guided her to sit on the blanket, and the small blanket he had brought with him spread out to wrap the two together. 
He reached out and pointed toward the sun, which was just halfway up in the distance, not even noticing that Rose's face was already red as an apple. Look, if you come to this place, with clear weather, you can see such a beautiful sunrise every day, as well as the freshest air. With that, he took a deep breath, and Rosa followed her brother's example and took a sharp breath, stuffing her cheeks, finally choking out. Ha ha, it's just a deep breath, no need to hold it in your mouth. Domi simply thought that Rosa's blush was just from holding it in from sucking hard. Only after she adjusted her state and took a serious deep breath did Domi continue. Doesn't it make you feel a little better all around? Someone once said that a year's plan lies in the spring and a day's plan lies in the morning. If a day has a good start, I believe that the whole day behind will have a good mood. Looking at Domi's expression of enjoyment, Rosa also fell deeply into the state described by Domi, and when it was over, she realized that it was quite nice, especially with her gentle brothers. All three brothers are very good to get along with yet. When the white sun was in the sky, it was time for the morning exercise to end. Kelsey's voice calling for dinner rang out as it should. Domi stood up and gathered up the blankets to replace them with Rosa. Thanks for the blanket. It's warm. No. You're welcome. It seemed like Rosa's sister wasn't very good at socializing with people. Even these polite words were a bit raw. But he felt that this kind of Rosa was even more adorable. With a kind of beauty that was not yet deep in the world. He would smile and said. Let's go. Kelsey is waiting for us downstairs. Let's go have breakfast together. Just as Domi was about to leave. Rosa suddenly called out to him only to see that she seemed a bit embarrassed. Brother Domi, when we finish breakfast, can you come to my room? Ha! Huh? Domi's pupils felt as if a magnitude 9 earthquake had occurred. Progressing like this? Isn't it a bit too fast? Ah, uh, can I ask, is there something wrong? Rosa nodded her head repeatedly, but just wouldn't say what exactly was the matter. It was very mysterious. Rosa had a very small appetite and left the restaurant first without eating much. Domi also casually picked up a couple bites and pretended to wait for a short while then followed when the others weren't paying attention. The maids' rooms were usually arranged on the first floor, and only maids with higher positions such as Catherine and Marianne were arranged on the second floor. As Marianne's relative, Rosa was also assigned a separate room, right next to Marianne. Don't ask why even Rosa has one. Ask is that there are many rooms, so many that they are simply not enough to live in. Knock off handbags. Standing in front of the door of the room, Domi gulped before finally mustering up the courage to knock on the door. Please, come in. Domi pushed open the door of the room, only to see Rosa sitting on the edge of the bed. On the sheet, a set of school uniform-like clothes and some trinkets were scattered. As for herself, she was holding a white mass of an unknown silky object in her small hands, as if she didn't know what to do with it. The corner of Domi's mouth twitched. What is this, a thief in the house, or a thief who specializes in raiding girls' boudoirs? So, can you tell me what's going on now? Rosa, this is humiliating, but it's almost time to go to school. Ah. If we don't get it right again, we'll be late for the first day. And Domi-san is so gentle. He'll definitely help himself. After some mental struggle, Rosa also gathered courage just like Domi and whispered. Brother, this. The voice was as light as a mosquito. And Domi had to get closer to hear it. He came in front of Rosa and took what she handed him, which was the white unknown object. What is this? He unfolded it and looked at it. Well, over his knee. Feeling the silky touch in his palm. Coupled with the evocative color. One word immediately jumped out at him, white silk. Now even his face was red. Ah, uh, aren't these socks? What's wrong? His head couldn't help but tilt over a bit. A little afraid to look directly at this treasure. My mother used to help me put them on. I tried them on myself. And although I could put them on, they were always very uncomfortable. Just how much Aunt Sophia spoiled her. You always have to learn to do things like clothes on your own, don't you? He himself had only been served by Kelsey until he was five years old to wear it himself yet. But it was explainable considering Rosa's situation, black bastard. Unable to go to school, Carlos had hired her a tutor, so she stayed at home all year round. And Sophia also basically do not have to work. A company Rosa's time is even more. Has been to help her wear socks combing hair and so on is not a difficult task. Not to mention what socks to wear at home. Hmm, makes sense. Without Rosa having to explain, Domi talked herself out of it. But now that Aunt Sophia was gone, Rosa would have to learn to be independent on her own as a good older brother should. Try it on again and I'll see what's wrong. Rosa nodded and took the white stockings assigned by the school, unfolded them, and shoved her feet right into the mouth of the stockings. In the end it was wearable, but there were wrinkles everywhere, across the collapsed. No wonder it was uncomfortable. Domi shook her head and got down on one knee on the floor in front of Rosa to help her take them off. Stockings don't go on like that. Watch and learn. I'm only going to teach you once, 
Domi started by clasping her thumbs around the mouth of the stocking and then contracting them up until she felt both the mouth and the tip of the stocking at the same time. This goes over your toes later. Too preoccupied with teaching. He didn't come back to his senses until he grabbed Rose's little Jojo with his hand, suddenly realizing that Rose's feet were so white and tender, and each toe was as lovely as a diamond in the rough, as if it were a work of art finely crafted by the gods. Kyer Car. Villainous value plus 1000. Kyer Car. Villainous value plus 1000. Even the system has swiped the screen. It seems that the system also feels that this move can be called perverted ah, very much in line with the style of the villain. Fart ah. He only wanted to help his sister ah. Domi was flabbergasted and raised his head slightly, only to see that Rosa had skimmed her head and was biting her lip, very shy, so scared that Domi didn't dare to take another look, because one more look and he might explode, better hurry up and finish the job at hand, once the toes were pressed against the toe of the sock it was time to slip it up the leg, which was the correct way to put it on, perfectly snug against the skin, not only without the slightest discomfort, but also tight and comfortable, ha, huh? why is he so clear, then hurrying into the heat of the moment, he slipped the other stocking on as well. This would make Domi's hands shake, and it was hard to imagine just what kind of blissful yet torturous ordeal he had just gone through. Even so he pretended to be proper and calm, stood up and said, that's enough, learned? Well, next time I can do it myself. Aha, the atmosphere between the two was awkward to the extreme. Domi couldn't take it anymore. Since it's fine, I'll leave first. However, when he was just about to leave, the corner of his coat was tugged, and when he looked back, it was still Rosa's pathetic little face, looking at him blearily. Don't even have to think about it. I guess there's still some kind of bane left over from Aunt Sophia. The hair. Won't tie. Okay. Okay. But I'll only do a high ponytail oh. Aha. Just have the same hairstyle as your brother. It had to be said that Rosa's base was extremely good. Before tying her hair, her long beige hair fell to her waist, like a genie lost in the forest. After tying her hair in a high ponytail, she was instantly much more energetic leaving only two strands of hair hanging down on the side of her melon face, revealing her white forehead, looking full of vigor, shyness is a kind of neighbor girl feeling, a little older would be better, okay, Rosa looked at her never before seen self in the mirror and was satisfied, at that moment, Domi noticed another base school uniform on the bed, a small skirt that was knee length, it was rather fluffy, not slimming like a dress, and the style was quite cute, not bad for a school uniform for elementary school students in this era, Seemingly noticing Domi's little look, Rosa immediately waved her hand and said, I can wear the clothes. Thank you brother, it's already fine. All right, then I'm leaving oh. This time, Rosa didn't stop her. She just watched Domi leave the room and brought the door with her. And then she put her school uniform on as fast as she could. After that, she put on her school uniform as fast as she could. It only took two minutes to put them all on. And then she grabbed the door and went out. In the corridor. Just as Domi was still reminiscing about what he had just experienced, the sound of Rosa's rapid footsteps suddenly came from behind him, this time he could recognize it, he immediately stopped reminiscing and turned back to find that Rosa had already caught up behind him, so fast, don't underestimate people now, nah. he didn't know why Rosa was catching up so fast, was there something else going on, it doesn't seem like it, he just couldn't figure it out even if he thought about it, he really didn't understand, until he realized that Rosa looked pretty good in her school uniform, then he suddenly realized, everyone loves beauty, but what's more important is that the people they value can see that beauty as well, Domi didn't know what to do for a moment, and after pondering for a while, he said, Rosa, today is your first day of school right, brother will walk you out the door, Rosa's eyes seemed to brighten a little, but she still put Domi's own business first, it won't delay brother's other business, will it, no delay, no delay, just send my sister to school, if not for the fact that it is not convenient for me to go out now, High and low have to send you to the entrance of the school. Just like that, the two of them walked together to the entrance of the castle. On the open space engraved with a short distance teleportation magic array, there was already an ordinary carriage parked. It was the transportation that Carlos had arranged to send Rosa to school, and the driver was already in place. Domi escorted Rosa up and handed her her bag. Through the window, Domi waved at her. Don't stress too much about your first school day out. Sleep if you want to. Your body is important. Don't tire yourself out. On the carriage that was about to leave, because she was leaving here in Domi already, Rosa was still a little sad and scared, but as soon as she heard this sentence from Domi, she snorted out a smile, the bright smile seemed to be able to melt all the hard ice, smiling like a flower, for the second time, Domi thought that this word was damn apt, sending Rosa away, it was time to take care of his own business next, Domi returned to the castle, 
and as he passed the doorway he saw a group of defense section men gathered together, seemingly talking about something, a little curious, blend into the darkness, applying an invisibility spell to himself before creeping over and eavesdropping, ha, huh? ran into a familiar face again, pothead Bobby, who was being surrounded by his co-workers, listening to him talk there, I'm really not wrong, that monster is pitch black, except for its mouth and eyes, which are blood red, and the voice was mournful, just like a wildcat screaming in the mountains, at that time he was chasing me right there on the third floor gallery, and it knew everything about me, and said that it was my nightmare, and that it would always haunt me, no no no, I've got to go find the lady to de-evilize me, Bobby's vocal description made most of the people think deeply, really thinking that something dirty had gotten into the castle, and the fear infected them, but being in the defense section, they had a face to live up to, otherwise what was the point of having them? Bobby, if we tell the lady about this, won't we look useless? We are the castle's guards, and in the end, we have to let the lord and lady protect us? Do you think this is reasonable? When his colleague said this Bobby also felt that it made sense, he couldn't lose this high-paying job because he was useless. Without money, what would he do to flirt with women? Although money is for women to look at, not for women to spend, then the premise has to be that you have money ah, otherwise look what? Look a lonely. Bobby grabbed a colleague's shoulder. What should I do then? No. What should we do? Everyone present knows that this matter is an honor and a loss. A grasshopper on a boat. Naturally have to work together. A few big old men were silent and thought for a while. Finally someone proposed. Wait until 9 o'clock at night. Why don't we take the initiative to go find that monster? I'll call up some colleagues who specialize in light magic. I think it's fine, since that monster is as dark as a shadow. It might be of the shadow system, and the light system can just restrain it. With a word from you and a word from me, the several people finalized the entire plan. But unluckily, the plan was all given to the originator to hear it outgoing. Domi secretly snickered. Tonight Bobby and the others were destined to work for nothing, because he had promised Kelsey that he wouldn't scare people with scarecrows anymore. Let's just let this matter become a weird story, and maybe it will continue to produce villain value. Just like just now when Bobby spread this matter, when everyone else was scared by what Bobby said, their fear would also be converted into villain value credited to Domi. This gave Domi another way to earn villain value, or a continuous output. Just because you couldn't pull wool over your own people didn't mean you couldn't pull wool over other people. For example, some vicious guys would be perfect. Domi left with satisfaction, thinking in his heart when to find some victims. Bah! Volunteers. To be his villain value perpetual motion machine it. Bandits? Black gangs? Those people are too high level and crowded. It is not suitable for him to paint alone. Let's forget about it. People are there and won't run. It's not too late to wait for him to return from his studies. He was not going to run away. It would not be too late for him to return from his studies. The break after breakfast ended quickly. In the classroom, Connor's speed of speech was getting faster and faster, and he was talking more and more. It was obvious that in the past few days of teaching routine, he had gradually found the feeling of teaching and educating people. Under such intense learning pressure, even a school bully like Argyle had to fight his way through, and Edward didn't dare to doze off anymore. In one lesson, the notes were enough for him to copy for a long time, not to mention familiarizing himself with all of them. It could be said that Connor and Carlos had teamed up to save a salted fish's academic career, however it wasn't so difficult for Domi. Anything more on the magic blackboard, with the, one eye, ten lines, enchantment, he could take it all in with just a glance, and then just focus on memorizing and reciting, which was more than a little more efficient, so he still swims with ease, but still pretends to be struggling, afraid that Connor will give himself intensity in the evening cramming. It was hard to get through the morning's culture class before going through the afternoon's magic trick training that didn't treat him like a human being. His muscles ached vaguely just thinking about yesterday's training, but the pain was not without joy, and he was able to improve his shadow stream stance, proficiency in sparring with Atelier, and with every punch, he felt the chi in his body vibrate, and the total amount of chi was slowly increasing. Morning breathing, practicing the shadow stream stance, two ways to increase chi. He had a premonition that as long as the total amount of chi went up, and then he ran the chi throughout his body like Kain, the shadow stream stance would be able to move to the next stage. As Domi's stance became more and more skillful and his movements became more and more severe, Atelier was marveling at Domi's progress, and he had to liberate more and more of his power to deal with it. But even then, Atel only used 20% of his strength, heavy and concentrated power at one point, agility like a cheetah in the wilderness, and eyes like hunting prey. This is good, Atelier said while parrying Domi's punches and kicks with ease but do you know what you are lacking? Domi didn't answer, as he kept in mind the point that you can't talk without permission, and if he didn't follow the rules, 
He would be beaten up by Atelier in the beautiful name of strengthening his resistance to blows. Atel gave a cruel smile. You still lack a determination to fight for your life, like a moth to a flame that is not easy to spare. But your identity, your family, is not destined to give you such an opportunity. Waste, do you know what such a you will end up becoming? A vase that only knows how to fight with flowery fists. But in reality, it will fall apart once you hit it, without the slightest ability to fight in real life. When others are aggressive you can only lose ground. When others put up a fight, you're destined to be a stepping stone. Carlos' expectations will be reduced to an accomplishment that only you relish. What should I do? Domi finally couldn't help but say before he was kicked hard into the wall by a release whip kick from Atelier. Luckily, the moment he was kicked he gathered what little breath he had into the spot where he was kicked, or he would have had to do more than just gasp for a few breaths. Atelier had also figured out that Domi was very resistant to being punched, which was why he hit him a little harder. He walked slowly over to Domi, who had dropped to the floor against the wall, and looked down on the little rookie. Domi looked up and saw only the murderous but unmistakably cold eyes of Atelier, the kind of eyes that only came after killing countless people. How? I'll tell you what to do. Atel crouched down and leaned in close to Domi, his beast-like pupils staring straight at him. Death, to face it, to overcome it, to triumph over it, fight for your life, fight against the odds, and then you can make a name for yourself. Transform, sublimate. After saying those words, Atel called his man and took a document from him and tossed it to Domi. Domi picked up the document and looked at it. It detailed all sorts of information about several people, almost to the point of emptying their pants. Privacy was not at all at stake. There were three adult men, two adult women, one older man, and the last name was the same, Kingsley. A family? That's right, the Kingsleys, rooted in Blofeld collar in your grandfather's generation, a sort of minor noble with a slight heritage. Before that, they were all very peaceful, paying yearly offerings and doing whatever they were told. However, during the period when your grandfather retired and Carlos was in charge of the family, they fell in with another big leg, or our rivals. In fact, this group of eaters have been planning to move away from Blofeld for a long time. If that was all it was fine. Their mistake was to make some time bombs and collect money in defiance of Blofeld law here before they left. Domi was a bit puzzled. Then why don't you clean them up? This hidden danger should have been going on for quite a while, right? Atel nodded in acknowledgement. Honestly, it would only take one dinner to clean them out. But who's going to get ahead of themselves with the reserve food? The family slaughters them whenever they need money. And the descendants take them when they need a millstone. That's the reason why the reserve grain still exists. Your lucky waste, there's still reserve grain to be your enlightened mentor. So you want me to kill them? Exterminate the whole family? That's right, to be precise. Only kill their head of the family, Vincent Kingsley, the others will be dealt with by us. Atelier's tone was relaxed, as if killing the whole family was not a matter worth mentioning. The spirit of treating human life as grass was carried out to the extreme with him. Don't worry, their child was arranged to die young in an accident the day before you came to train and is probably still mourning, it won't keep you from getting down, the others deserved what they got, what about their kids, deserved it too, Domi wasn't having a sudden fit of sanctimoniousness, but wanted to know how Attel, the Northfall Division, or Blofelds will considered such matters involving morality, Attel paused, seemingly surprised that Domi would ask this question, unlike ah, uh, but he responded anyway, no snowflake is innocent under the avalanche, even if we spare their children, will their children forget this hatred? In the business of being an assassin, the most taboo is mercy, the second is cutting the grass without removing the roots, and the third is carelessness. What about trust? What is trust to a killer? Trust is a virtue among killers, only from a distance. You can trust your companions to a certain extent, but don't leave no stone unturned. Always remain cautious. You can live longer. After listening and thinking for a moment, Domi said, I think I understand. Vincent Kingsley right. When do we do it? Since it's a lesson for your initiation, naturally it has to take place during teaching time, pick a day. This afternoon, get ready, the stuff I've put in that corner. He pointed to a corner of the room, and as the light shone through, it could be seen that it was a set of civilian clothes, a common dagger from the market, and a pair of black gloves with spiked knuckles. I'll send you down the mountain when you're ready, the rest of the way you're on your own. Say, does my father approve? He said it all the moment he sent you into the Northfall Division. Dominic. In the training room, Domi shed his training clothes and changed into the clothes Atelier had prepared for him, a tan linen vest and a pair of toe pants. The shirt was originally white but a little yellowed from sweat stains. From top to bottom, nothing revealed the word poverty. Wearing these clothes he could blend in with the civilians without any difficulty. It was just that his looks and his hair were too conspicuous, so he would probably have to maneuver when he went out. The dagger with a leather sheath was tied to his back with a belt, 
and his gloves were tucked into his pocket, so he was completely prepared. He made his way to the tavern and was led out of the castle through an underground passageway by atelier. The exit is the toilet of a women's branch hospital. The toilet corner of the special place for cleaning tools. Lift one of the floor tiles to get out. Before leaving, Atel just patted Domi's shoulder and said one last thing to him always be cautious. Watching Atel's back gradually disappear at the end of the passage, Domi took a deep breath. Well well well. It's just killing someone. Nothing hard. He knew that the next step was the real reality. Not the training ground that the family had woven for him. Seeming to have made up his mind about something. He finally lifted the floor and drilled out of the passageway. The entry was dim, and the pungent stench inhaled from the tip of his nose straight to the sky, mixed with the smell of hormones, was honestly inhospitable. With the sounds of vomiting and sex coming from the stalls, Domi didn't want to stay here for another second, so he walked out of the restroom and into the hallway, flipped out the window, and entered an alley. The smell from inside still lingered on his clothes though, much to his disgust. Just then, three more people walked into the alley. It was classic street bullying. They were all pretty young though, just a few years older than Dom. I think. The two bullies were a tall skinny guy and a short fat guy. The bully was a skinny little white boy. Quite good looking. And seemed to be a good target for bullying. And Domi cast a stealth spell and just watched from the side. Not wanting to make a move. He didn't want to cause trouble. But he suddenly realized that the skinny guy's clothes seemed to fit him quite well. They were still loose on the skinny guy. But they were probably just right for him. Looks like you're pretty lucky. He approached the brother and sister in a state of invisibility, which would reveal his silhouette in the event of violent movement. It didn't matter though, as long as they didn't see his face. Domi stepped a little closer, grabbed the fat man's wrist, and went up for an over-the-shoulder slam. It hit the ground with a muffled thud. Another kick trips the skinny guy, yanking the fat guy up and slamming him. Domi quickly took care of the two little karamis. In Mori's view, only a shadow suddenly appeared, clanked and tackled the two bullies twice and then stripped the skinny guy's clothes as if no one else was there. A small few actions yet gave his young mind a great shock. He stared with wide eyes, incredulously watching the whole process. The previously unrivaled bullies were settled just like that? But soon, it became clear to him that his current situation, a big man who suddenly appeared helped him out. But it didn't seem like he was a good person. Ah, uh, I didn't see anything. I really can't. Or I'd better pass out myself? Mo lay backed up two steps, barely pulled out a bitter smile and said, suddenly remembered that tomorrow also have final exams, plus more have to summer vacation to return on, temporary clasp ing, do not miss, Domi had changed into one of the thin man's light blue civilian clothes, as for the original clothes, he drew his dagger and cut the clothes into continuous fabric, wrapping his hair and most of his face as if he were a middle eastern hummer, this way, even if the invisibility spell failed his true appearance would not be exposed, always remain discreet, of course, the clothes were stripped, so naturally the things on these two gangsters could not be spared. Domi scavenged six copper eagles from them, and all of them went into his pocket. Just in case, you robbed two punks and finished scavenging all their money. Villain value plus 200. After doing all the work, he realized that there was someone else behind him, and had witnessed his entire crime process. It couldn't be helped. The guy was weak and had no presence. There was really no need to pay attention to him. Seeing that Domi seemed to be focusing on him, Mori's legs shook like a sieve and he didn't even dare to look directly at Domi. Even Domi himself didn't expect it. So was his oppressive power already this strong? Before he could wait for Domi to speak, Moray plopped down and knelt in front of Domi, pleading, please, let me go. The money I have on me is to buy some food for my sick mother. Without this food, my mother won't be able to survive. Domi didn't believe him, but judging by Moray's figure, it did look like he had been starving for five meals in two days, and Domi knew deep down that he needed a guy to help him carry out his plan since he had hardly ever left the castle and was a stranger to many parts of town. So it seemed that this little Moray friend was the best choice at the moment. You said your mother is sick and needs food right? Moray nodded his head vigorously one by one. Then how much food do you have enough money in your pocket to buy? Moray calculated and said, half, half a loaf of bread. Only to hear Domi let out a snort. Half a loaf of bread? How is that enough for the two of you? And the medicine? If there is no medicine, how will your mother get well? That's why you need more money. And right now, there's this opportunity to make a quick buck right in front of you. Domi pulled the six copper eagles out of his pocket and spread them out on the palm of his hand, displaying them graciously for Moray to see, and the desire to want them did explode in his eyes. Six copper eagles, and here's the deposit. Do something for me, and I'll give you ten more silver wolves after it's done. How's that? Ten silver wolves, equivalent to a hundred copper eagles. A loaf of bread as long as an adult's arm costs only three copper eagles. 
and 100. It was enough to pay for his and his mother's meals for a long time, and there would be money left over to pay for his mother's medical care. The heartless man had left them behind, his mother had fallen ill, and now the whole family depended on him to hold it together, even if it was dangerous, he had to go. Moray immediately took the coins and put them in his pocket, his eyes firm. I'll do it. The corners of Domi's mouth lifted slightly. Good. Now, stand up. Those who work for me don't have to kneel on the ground. To conserve his magic, Domi ended his invisibility spell. Standing up, Moray was once again shocked. Although he couldn't see his face, he could tell from his stature that the big man wasn't older than him, or even younger than him. The only thing that didn't match the guest age was the eyes that were exposed. Steady, cold, as if there were meticulous thoughts running through them, revealing confidence all the time. He certainly had the ability to pay ten silver wolves. Before he could ask any questions, Domi was the first to gag him. You only need to do things. Nothing else is allowed to be asked unless I ask you. Understand? Aha! Know where Kingsley's mansion is. 23, Garden Avenue. Here's the address. Garden Avenue? That's a place where only dignitaries and big businessmen can live. And Kingsley is a big aristocrat who lives there. My question was whether I know how to get there. I don't need you to give me a description of what's in Garden Avenue. Domi looked at him coldly. Murray shuddered and immediately lowered his head not daring to meet his eyes and changed his words. Although I have never been there. I know where it is. My mother was a servant there before she got sick. Please follow me. Following Mori out of the alley. Domi finally made it to the street outside where the traffic was flowing and saw the world beyond the city's entertainment district. The houses on both sides of the street were masonry houses with no wall finishes. A far cry from the high-rise, finely finished lofts of the prosperous district. Large pieces of cloth, either yellow or green, were attached to the houses to block direct sunlight. Beneath the created shadows, most of the owners of these houses were setting up stalls, selling fruits as well as various household items. Yells rose and fell, crowds came and went, and it still looked like a downtown area. It was quite fresh, similar to those otherworldly towns in the anime of his previous life. You may not feel it from the screen, but when you come here yourself, you will feel the flavor of it. Quaint, lively, as if in a period of living history. Shuttle in the crowd. Shoulder to shoulder. Domi after many years and experience a crowded people crowded people. Remember the last time people crowded people crowded people or in the last. After walking for about half an hour or so, he finally entered the confines of the Garden Avenue. There were luxurious mansions and mansions everywhere. And even more so, they were equipped with a large piece of garden. Moray pointed to the largest of them with exquisite walls, wide mansions, and watchdogs whose rice bowls were filled with fresh meat. Only now they had the door wide open, and one could see that there were quite a few other people inside the house dressed in black morning clothes, and there were even two small-sized coffins in the middle of them. This was what Atelier called an early death arranged in advance, right? My lord, up ahead is Kingsley's mansion, Murray said respectfully. Domi verified the door number and it was indeed 23, Garden Avenue. Very well, stay here for the rest of the day and come out to you when I'm done. In Murray's field of vision, Domi was once again out of sight, and the next second, the lawn in front of the mansion seemed to take on the shape of a trampled foot. Is this, going to be a thief? The Moray people were shocked, so Big Brother came over to rob the big nobles? While he was still being bullied by his peers, kids around his age were already hitting the reckoning on the banknotes in the nobles' pockets? Where does that leave his dignity? No, poor people like him had no dignity at all. When he thought about it, Moray was instantly relieved, and just as he was sitting and waiting for Domi to pay off the final payment, he suddenly realized that a familiar to unfamiliar silhouette had appeared in his field of vision. The long twisted whip was draped in front of one shoulder, wearing a dress that he could not afford to wear his best on weekdays, and his face was haggard. Wasn't that precisely his mother? At this moment, his mother was standing in front of the door of the Kingsley mansion, seemingly begging for something, but was stopped by the guards. The former employer looked at the sick woman with eyes like garbage disgusted and contemptuous. Get her out of here before the disease spreads. Mrs. Kingsley, please, please let me stay. I can't lose this job and I have a child. But no matter how much Maury's mother hissed, the mean woman behind the door stopped paying attention. Really, there's been enough trouble in the house lately. What's adding to it? Guards, she's too annoying. Throw her out. Two large men in light armor immediately stepped forward, one on the left and the other on the right to hold up the arms of Maury's mother. Because of the disparity in height, the guards almost had to take her off the ground when they straightened their bodies. How could a woman weakened by illness withstand such rough maneuvers? She let out a few severe coughs, almost on the verge of coughing her lungs out. But the next moment, her originally pale face suddenly turned red. An unexplained strength seemed to be a last hurrah. 
supporting her as she continued to struggle in the hands of the two guards. Mrs. Kingsley, make me do anything. I can do twice as much work alone, as long as you let me stay here. My son's tuition for school isn't paid in full, and I can work as a cow or a horse, but I still want my son to make a name for himself. He needs this salary. Please. Clang. Murray saw the scene and rushed straight to the outside of the fence grabbing the railing with his hands, his eyes reddened with rage. No. Mother. Stop it. Let's go home. How could he not see his mother's current state? Obviously before he left the house, she was still lying in bed, weak beyond recognition, and now she is tossing and turning like this. How can her body eat ah? Domi, who had already climbed to the outside of the mansion's second floor, also saw the commotion occurring at the entrance. Ha! This lady's appearance in Moray seems a bit similar ah. Good thing. The more chaotic the scene is, the easier it is for me to play. He circled around the eaves of the second floor and finally found a window that could be opened, from which he sneaked into the mansion. It was a normal guest room, probably a guest of Kingsley's who had come to the funeral, and had presumably forgotten to close the window when he left. It ended up being convenient for him anyway, leaving the guest room. He followed the map and the intel to find Vincent Kingsley's study. The guy was either in his study, his bedroom, or on the first floor conducting funerals, and wasn't hard to find. Domi slipped in front of his study first. The door was locked, but that was hard for a shadow wizard to beat. He murmured the incantation. Darkness is my disguise that allows me to travel the world. Shadow escape. Unleashed. His entire body directly merged into the shadows under the study's door, bypassing the physical obstacles through the shadows and smoothly sneaking into the study. However, just as Domi successfully sneaked in, the Vincent Kingsley family head who was presiding over the funerals of his two sons on the first floor seemed to have sensed something, and casually looked for an attendant. I have to leave for a while. If anyone asks, just tell them I've gone to facilitate. Yes, my lord. After the explanation, Vince headed for the stairs, his eyes shadowy, not knowing what he was thinking. In Domi's point of view, compared to his own study, this place is quite ordinary. A few bookshelves and a desk. Domi didn't dare to move the documents inside, for fear of touching any organs. He wanted to find that Vince guy. He wanted to find that Vince guy now. I don't think he's here. Let's search the bedroom again. However, the moment he left the study, he acutely sensed the movement of chi in the hallway. It was a more powerful chi compared to his, conservatively estimated to be a full-fledged mage, and it was coming this way. Comparing the information on the combat strength of each person, there was a high probability that this guy was Vincent. The Kingsley family was not a magical aristocracy. Their main business was still commerce and real estate, and it was enough for the head of the family to be a somewhat powerful mage. A little more powerful. Atelier wouldn't have let himself be assassinated. Domi immediately went back to the study and hid in the dead center of the view behind the door. It seems that there is some kind of sensing magic in the study. Once someone comes in, the caster will sense it, next time I have to remember longer. He didn't forget to reflect on himself during his hiding, purely as a pastime while waiting. Tada, 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 outside the door. The sound of leather shoes on the floor came closer. If this were in the past, Domi's heart would have been beating faster from nervousness. But this was a different time and now he knew how loud this heartbeat really was, and he simply couldn't carry out an assassination in this state. He used his breathing to actively control the frequency of his heartbeat, lowering it to a minimum, tightening the amplitude of his breathing, and then hiding himself completely in the darkness. It was as if a beast had hibernated. He had gotten used to this state when he practiced against Atelier, and now he was just putting it into practice. Creak. The moment the door of the room was pushed open, only a ball of light was thrown in through the door. It rolled to the center of the study with a grunt, and then exploded into view with a thud, blooming with enough flash to fill the entire room. A flashbang. Having never been exposed to such a thing before, Domi ate a full flash, his eyes going white. However, this state did not prevent him from sensing the movements in his surroundings. Chi existed in everything, and every movement must carry the fluctuation of chi, which was similar to the perception field practiced by Atelier. Even Atelier didn't know that Domi already knew this craft. Otherwise, the difficulty of this enlightenment task would have been a little higher, but he just would. In the perception of Chi, a thrusting sword came face to face, and the wind around him turned into a sword's aid at this moment, constantly increasing the speed of this sword. Vince looked at the little thief with a sneer on his face. Flashbang plus wind boost, it's categorically impossible for you to dodge it. Go to hell. In your next life, don't mess with people you can't mess with. However, just as the stabbing sword was about to poke Domi, Domi deviously inclined his head even though he was still in the flash-blinding state. Under Vince's expression as if he had seen a trick, he only saw Domi quickly draw his dagger from his back. Chi condensed under his feet, and he stomped. 
The tip of the blade was pointed straight at Vince's neck. What? He couldn't believe that this little thief not only dodged the attack, but also stabbed him in return? Gale at my command. Bang bang. The windows of the study were directly smashed open by the rising wind, pouring into the room and converging into a wall of wind to block between him and Domi, while Vince himself quickly retreated backward, pulling away a large distance. The best way to deal with an assassin was to pull away immediately and then go on a rampage with the spells he specialized in. Atelier had mentioned this in training, so Domi wasn't going to let him get what he wanted. The end is coming. Towards the end, Domi transformed into a scarecrow. His fear field unfolding as he bypassed the wall of wind and charged straight at Vince proper. His spliced limbs and half-meter-long tongue stretched wantonly, and he walked with the pace of a six parent. The whole thing was like a running oddball species. Vince was visibly flabbergasted. He had never seen such an abstract monster before, and for a moment he didn't even know how to react. Domi immediately accelerated his speed. The corners of his mouth lifting madly. Caught me a break. Didn't you? Vince was worthy of being a full-fledged mage with a drop of professional training. Even when faced with the rapid approach of the oddball species he didn't disorganize himself but calmly analyzed it. Blinding doesn't work on him. His agility is completely out of proportion to his size. How could he send such a child to assassinate me? He is quite confident. I have to be careful of the gutter. Quickly think for a while. Vince decisively choose not and Domi hard to get high. Directly Gale at my command. Knocked out a hole in the wall next to me. Drilled out. Domi immediately followed. Running after Vince also did not forget to insert the dagger back into the sheath. From the pocket pulled out boxing gloves to wear. After switching to a handy weapon Domi was much more comfortable. With a sense of security that his power was in his hands. Breathing patterns shifted and his lungs gradually warmed up as if they were imperial engines. Rolling gears yielding immense amounts of energy then losing it to all parts of his body. Every cell cheered as the energy frenzy swept through it. Everything in his eyes slowed down. Even the dust became visible. Turbulent streams of air flowed around the corners of his mouth as he slowly bent down and prepared for a sprint. This was the first time he had used this mode since he had acquired the shadow stream body technique to the point of exaltation, and he had never imagined that there would actually be such a remarkable evolution. He even felt like he could catch up with most of the distance with a single stomp of his feet. The vision locked onto Vincent in front of him, and then burst out with all his power in a split second. Swish! A cracking sound rang out behind him. Vince subconsciously sensed the danger but he had already run to the building. The first and second floors of their house were connected, and standing in the corridor of the second floor one could jump directly onto the floor of the first floor. Boundless wind. Pull up the ground. As soon as the words fell, a column of wind was generated on the floor of the first floor and blew upwards, just enough for the jumping Vincent to land safely on the ground. However, just in the moment he took a deep leap, Domi in the back had already chased after him, seeing that Vince was going to run away. He jumped together without hesitation, holding his waist in mid-air. The two of them smashed into the first floor like a meteor. Bang! The weight of the two people directly smashed the wooden antique escalator. The wood shavings shattered all over the place, and with inertia, they directly smashed on the marble floor. Only then did the two spread out. Do only before the fall will only be dispersed on the falling surface of the air. To minimize the fall damage, before the complete landing is even used to roll to unload the force, in the ground rolled a few times almost all right. At most, he suffered a few superficial abrasions, and was Domi as the back of the Vincent is not so lucky, can only silently bear all the damage, sometimes middle-aged people's bodies are not very healthy, like Vincent's pale face, running a few steps and then panting, it seems to be overworked, such a fall almost did not back to the air, it took a while before he was able to speak, and the first words he said were, guards, where are the guards, there are killers, originally, the crowd at the bottom was shocked to see the two men fall down, and then the word killer came out. The shock turned into panic. Everyone scattered like frightened sheep, screaming. At this moment, no one cared about how the deceased was. If they didn't run earlier, they might have to do the funeral together. After all, that can. It's a killer. What? A seven-year-old? That's a killer too. The world of magic is never short of talent. While the ordinary people were dispersed, Kingsley's guards poured in from the corners of the venue. The sound of armor rubbing against each other was like a death wish. Seeing that they were about to encircle all of his retreat, Domi decided that he couldn't delay any longer. Atelier had taught him that the mission, to be accomplished, but more important than the mission was his own little life, always leave yourself a way out. While there was still some time left, Domi chose to take both the mission and his life. Vince was still unable to climb up in the pit at this moment. His whole body was numbed from the fall, and he didn't know how many bones were broken. Not only the body does not allow, he also does not have the willpower to stand up again. He was just a man whose will had been sapped by power and money. Domi redrew his dagger from his back, 
squeezing the bottom of the handle with just his fingers. Taking a deep breath, he focused all his strength and chi into his small arms and waist, visualizing the action of throwing a javelin in his mind. That was exactly what he was currently doing, using the rotation of the waist limbs to convey the force to the lower arms, and then all of it coming together to power the dagger and strike. Look at me. The first dagger of shocking Chang'an. Swoosh. The dagger's flying speed exceeded the range of human visual capture in an instant, cutting through the air. Just a moment ago it was in Domi's hand, and in the next second it appeared on Vince's head. Hot blood mixed with brain matter flowed down from the breach in his forehead, dyeing half of his face blood red, his vision drenched in the color of blood, his body gradually broke away from his control. Weakness, weightlessness, as if drowning in the deep sea, and finally falling into eternal sleep, with his head tilted and his hands splayed out. The titular Kingsley's family head died in the pit just like that. He, he killed the family head. Catch him. Don't let him escape. Seeing that the family head was killed, their group of guards could not escape the blame. In order to be able to find an underling, they had to give an account to the Kingsley family. And that account was the killer's head. It was as if they had shot chicken blood. And the encirclement formed faster. This is hard to do ah. Domi bared his teeth. It seems that we can only kill our way out. For small green potions appeared in his hand the very same energy potions that didn't cost anything, acting as a substitute for adrenaline and relieving the side effects of tight breathing patterns, popping the cork with a boop, he poured tons and tons of it into his mouth, wiping his mouth with his sleeve afterwards, he became alive again, looking around, by this time, the guards, wearing only light armor, had gathered around, light armor, in theory, was sufficient, but the beauty of it was that they didn't have helmets, it was the equivalent of exposing the most vulnerable neck and head, which made even adults no different from children. With a leap, Domi jumped in front of the nearest guard and slammed his fist right into his neck, spikes coming out through his body. A flick of his arm followed, spilling blood over the eyes of the surrounding guards, taking advantage of the moment their vision was clouded. Domi circled directly behind them, not choosing to kill them, but running straight for the gate. Stop him, stop him, don't be afraid, he's just a little kid. Kingsley's chief of guards yelled anxiously. The guards also formed layer after layer of human walls to block Domi's necessary path. Long sword swung at him without hesitation, and those who came after him from behind even poked him in the back with their spears and halberds, but all of them were dodged by him one by one, and he continued to advance as if he were in no man's land. Seeing that Domi was almost running to the gate, the chief guard finally couldn't hold back any longer and burst into a fit of cursing. A bunch of waste things, you still need to see me in person, only to see him pulling out a parchment scroll from his pocket with a face of flesh and pain which was engraved with magic sequences and exuded a strong aura of fire magic. If Connor was there, he could tell at a glance that it was a scroll that contained medium magic. As long as a drop of magic power was applied to trigger it, the magic stored inside could be used. A smug and cruel smile appeared on the face of the fat man guard chief. Go to hell. Intermediate fire magic wall of fire serpents. As the fat guard captain injected his magic, the scroll lit up with deep red flame patterns that were as animated as real creatures. When he pointed to the location where the spell was cast, the scroll immediately turned into ashes. In the next moment, a blazing high wall with extremely high temperatures directly blocked the gate, and the wall consisted of countless twisting flaming spirit snakes. They coiled together. Once someone approached the firewall, the fire snakes that made up the wall would frantically pounce on the person who approached, and a few of the guards who blocked the gate couldn't escape in time and even lost their lives as a result. The snakes also brought out a wave of heat as they gulped and spat and the entire hall was like a boiling furnace, baking everyone inside at high temperatures. Under the strenuous exercise, Domi was sweating like a pig, and his physical strength was rapidly depleting. He looked at the wall of fire serpents blocking the entrance as he snapped a man's neck. It was good. The gate was definitely not going anywhere. He saw clearly what happened to those unlucky guards just now. Such a big living person. Under the gnawing of the fire snake instantly not even crumbs left, he dared to break through definitely also this end. Where else can I escape? Looking around, he targeted the rectangular window there on the side, seemingly noticing Domi's intentions. The head guard commanded with a wave of his hand, he's going to escape through the window, stop it and stop it, don't let him, as bad as it was for Domi. It was even worse for their group of adults who were at a higher altitude and still wearing armor. Not only was their physical strength mostly depleted, but most of them were also exhibiting symptoms of carbon monoxide poisoning. Breathing difficulties rose up, causing the brain's reaction to slow down by half a beat. When Fatty's words fell into his ears, it took about two seconds before he reacted, and he was able to rush over to intercept them. However, this two-second delay helped Domi, who was only a step away from the window. A sliding shovel plus a small package of punches to the chest took care of the last two blockers. 
and Domi crossed his arms in front of his head and leapt forward. Vishnu bang, blast shattered to pieces on the grass. After jumping out Domi managed to escape the fire with a roll, compared to the scene inside the house, which was a flaming inferno, the air outside was simply too fresh, he breathed in greedily, and his body forging technique subconsciously spewed out the impurities he had just inhaled, returning the host to a clean body, however, before he could rest for long, the guards also chased him out from the broken window, seeing that Domi had already fled the house, the fat guard chief revoked the wall of fire serpents. Otherwise it would be bad if the fire was so big that it directly burned down the old host's home. Without the wall of fire, the guards split into two, one in front of the other to attack Domi. There are pursuers in front and behind, next to the towering fence plus burglar bars, and there is also a steady stream of reinforcements coming from outside the compound, has formed an impenetrable human wall in the open space in front of the mansion. It was neither a good idea to enter nor retreat. Perhaps if he was given a few more years of growth time, he could rub a spiral maru with his key and clear them out in one go, but this could only be a fantasy, he was still a small rookie, this was a reality that could not be changed, hiss, Domi felt a little bit of despair, but more than that, it was exhilaration, in the past, he had often seen people doing the feat of fighting one against a thousand in movies and television, and how dashing and humongous it was, it made his blood boil every time, and now, he also had such an opportunity, telling people how to refuse it, Little thief, after killing the Kingsley family head, there's no way you can get away with it anymore. Gird your loins, we won't kill you right away. If you wait for Mrs. Kingsley to hand down punishment on you, you can still live a little longer. Domi didn't even listen to that fat dead man's fart, but looked around out of habit. In addition to the bewildering number of guards, the gentlemen and ladies from the hall just now were hiding there in the doorway of the enclosure, and were patting their feet and looking here with great curiosity, pressed out of the panic they had felt a moment ago. Also, with so many guards, who would still panic, continue to look over. Howl coincidentally, he actually also saw Moray and the woman who had a seven-point resemblance to him in the beginning, but also really his old mom. Mother and son were snuggling together, watching the place like everyone else. Though Mori was still hoping Domi would escape, the enemy was in place, the dilemma was in place, the audience who wanted him to win was in place, and next, please, let him put on a one-against-one show as well. Ignoring the even more violent side effects, Domi shifted his breathing pattern once again, downing eight consecutive energy potions. How dare a little Kingsley dictate my life and death? I think you're completely missing the point. His emperor's engine went into overdrive once again, and his face turned red as a result as the last of the squeezed power rushed through his body. The end is coming. Towards the end. This time he didn't change into his scarecrow form, but his own original form, and jumped into the pile of guards to fully unleash the fear field. Compared to releasing fear alone, Scarecrow would put him in a state of levitation, with faster movement speed and a greater range of fear, the more dangerous it was, the more important it was to count all the power and maximize every drop of it, the moment he jumped into the pile, the circle of guards around him were flabbergasted, having no idea what this pitch black thing was, before they could react, the spiked fist had already been sent into their bodies with a powerful impact that churned their soft and fragile internal organs to pieces, black fists went in and red fists came out, each strike could completely incapacitate or even kill a guard. The only thing worth celebrating during this period was that the chi within his dantian had doubled after some foothold battles. It was now enough to cover two of his fists. Just like that, Domi relied on his short body and shadowy stance to move in and out of the guards like nobody's business. His entire body became a tool for killing his enemies. A trip with a whip leg and a blow to the neck with a hand slash can cause him to hiccup immediately. In addition to this, twisting off heads, breaking leg bones hard churning out internal organs, quick points of death, choke holds and choking, dislocating bones in jiu-jitsu. The little accomplished assassination technique was also being used more and more skillfully by Domi. Assassination technique proficiency up. Assassination technique proficiency up. You're on a killing spree. Villain value plus 3000. Plus 3000. Plus 3000. Soon, the originally emerald green grass was dyed blood red by the corpses all over the ground. The guards fell one by one like wheat on a rice paddy and such a fast killing speed didn't stop more guards from being scared out of their wits. When did even a child become so fierce? Just as the guards were demoralized and retreating, that fat man couldn't stand to watch and went straight for the jugular. No need to capture him alive. Kill him. Whoever can kill this little thief will be rewarded with 10 golden dragons. Anyone who assists will get a golden dragon. When he said this, the eyes of the guards who had originally retreated brightened. That was a golden dragon. Enough to pay their salaries for a few months. They copied their weapons and counterattacked Domi as if they had chicken blood. Rushing over like they didn't want to die, they made his fear field lose most of its effect. 
the narrow aisle became a meat grinder for one side's passage. And even though people kept dying in front of them, there were still those who fell into the money's eye who came forward. Gradually, Domi's movements became more and more sluggish, his body more and more riddled with stab wounds and gunshot wounds, not to mention the blunt force concussions that came with greater frequency. His vision began to blur, his eyes became heavier and heavier, fighting up and down, and his brain gradually gave up on thinking. Are the side effects coming so soon? This time, the side effect was the superposition of two side effects, and its reverse effect was enough to make him faint and die on the spot. The reason why he was still holding on until now was still that passion of fighting one against a thousand was supporting him, but it was soon going to be unable to hold on as well. As if seeing hope, Fatty shouted, This kid can't hold on much longer. Ten golden dragons are just around the corner. Charge, charge me hard. The guard's swords and spears zoomed and slowed infinitely in their eyes. Domi didn't want to be a sitting duck if death was coming the next moment. Once again he raised his long exhausted arm, clenched it into a fist and met it like a mantis. However, the imagined collision did not happen. At that moment, only countless figures in black robes were seen falling from the roof of the building at the same time, their robes hunting, and the cold light on their wrists startling. They landed noiselessly on the guards' heads, and the sleeve swords hidden in their wrists slashed through their necks without delay. A life was lost with a single stroke of the sword. When everyone was unclear about what was happening, there was no longer a single standing guard in that narrow passageway, and the light blue light armor was replaced by clear black robes, shielding the soon-to-be unconscious Domi in the very center. The black-robed man closest to him well show his chin to Domi. It was the comrade who had given him the advice in the first place. His lips opened and closed, and although he did not make a sound, Domi could tell what he had said through his lips. Young master, we've come to fetch you. As soon as these words came out, an unexplained sense of security took over Domi's heart, and he finally closed his eyes in peace, finally muttering something under his breath. Count on you guys having some conscience. Then with a poof, he collapsed on the grass, in front of the gate of the mansion. More guards who had come in support still didn't know what had happened, only to see a group of black-robed people falling from the sky, killing their companions all at once, as easily as slaughtering chickens. The black-robed assassins are the North Fall Division. It's Blofeld slaughtering us. They are going to go after Kingsley. The fat man had seen a lot and quickly recognized them, shouting in panic. The group of guards instantly sprang to flee. But by the time they retreated to the entrance of the enclosure they realized that there was another black-robed man blocking the path they had to take. The black robe on his body couldn't see any obvious difference compared to the others. But if it was put on a white paper for comparison, it would be realized that his black robe was even purer in deeper black, like a bottomless abyss that devoured everything. But the guards who had become birds of prey didn't care that much. One of them, an iron-headed waif, couldn't wait to get out of this place of wrongdoing in a hurry, copied his long sword, and rushed up with a yell, get out of the way, get out of my way, coming on strong, but it was a deserter who cowered before fighting, oh, Atelier drew a plane, slender bayonet from his belt and angled it in front of him to examine it, it's been a long time since I've been looked down upon like this, you're a warrior, so, grant you a decent funeral. Advanced like magic, lance of eternal night's end. In a flash, the light on his stabbing sword shone brightly until the sky. The brightness even exceeded the afternoon daylight, piercing one's eyes. This, this, iron-headed wa dropped to the ground, not caring about the pain coming from his buttocks. His eyes were now filled with the blossoming lightsaber. In the next second, Atelier disappeared in place, while the arc trailed by the lightsaber had passed through his head and kept folding back like a ray through the remaining guards. One could not even make out his back. Only the light that passed through every individual's neck was still faintly visible to this day. When the light completely disappeared, all the guards, along with the melon-eating Kingsleys, all fell to the ground in response. If one examined the way they died, one would find that there was an additional burnt hole there in their necks, and through the hole one could see the view behind them from the front. It couldn't have been cooler. Of course, Attell didn't kill indiscriminately, he only killed the Kingsleys. As for their relatives, friends and guests didn't suffer miserably. Murray and his mother were also spared, the Kingsleys had been cleared of all danger, and with a gesture from Atelier, all the black-robed men left in an organized and disciplined manner, leaving only a messy battlefield behind. When Moray ran over to look for Domi, he found nothing but the bodies of the guards and the bodies of the Kingsleys, where once it was impossible to set foot, now not even dogs came. He returned helplessly to his mother's side, wanting to cry, what's wrong? The frail mother was still watching her son's every move as if she wanted to witness his growth for a little while longer in the last moments of his life. Mori assisted his mother as she took one step at a time in the direction of her home. His eyes dimmed a bit as he passed the spot where he had agreed to meet Domi, but he managed to hold on to a smile. Well it's fine. By the way mother, 
I picked up six copper eagles on the road today. Let's go back and have something nice to eat. You child. The woman looked at Moray with a scolding and doting expression. You have to return the money you found to the owner. It may be quite important to them as well. These six copper eagles were the deposit that Domi had searched off the two punks to give him. Were those two guys also considered the owners? Mori didn't bother to return the money to them, and just responded perfunctorily. The woman also just smiled and didn't say much. Yes, with their current living situation, what else to be three good citizens? On that day, after sending his mother home, Moray went to the bazaar to buy a fresh piece of brisket and vegetables, brought it home, and made a brisket casserole, for the poor woman who had worked hard for him for most of her life. Two days later, a villa located on the outskirts of the city, on the spacious bed, Domi, who had just recovered, slowly opened his eyes and saw an unfamiliar ceiling as soon as his eyes opened. Sitting up from the bed and looking out, there was a balcony just outside his room that offered a delightful view of the outside landscape, with lush, green plants growing. The door leading to the balcony was open and a fresh breeze poured into the room. The temperature was comforting. Except why did the breeze smell like tobacco? After a while, a tall figure walked back into the room from off the balcony, and as soon as he entered, he saw the awakened Domi, sitting on the bed and staring at him. Atel was holding a pipe in his hand, and the choking smell of smoke was coming from him. Yo punk, waking up, a tear, here, Domi looked around. It was more minimalist and lived in compared to the old-fashioned extravagance of the castle. Oh here ah, it's one of Blofeld's villas in his own territory. Don't you know? Why is this a bit subtle coming from someone else's mouth? It's obviously his own home. Well I didn't really know that. Domi asked curiously as she thought back to that time. By the way, what happened after that? Atel just shrugged. You finished the mission. Then I brought someone to pick you up and killed all the rest of the remnants on the way. And that was that. Then he sat down on the chair next to Domi's bed, looked at Domi with an expressionless face, and said, This enlightenment mission is over as of now, so do you want to know my evaluation of your mission? As far as the end goal is concerned, you succeeded in assassinating Vincent Kingsley without revealing your true colors throughout, and for that I give you credit. But the blunders you made in the process are also proper demerits, none more so than your lack of knowledge of all types of magic which led to ignoring the trap in the study. Didn't Connery Riviera teach you magic at will at night? Learn more. As for the history of his valiant struggle to fight one against 100, Atelier is not talking about it at all ah. Domi this is not happy. His own high moment is not worthy of praise place? Seemingly seeing Domi's mind, Atelier continued, although your current combat prowess alone is already objective, being able to kill your way through a group of hundreds of guards with your own strength, this is not what assassins do. Listen up punk. The so-called assassin's way is either to kill everyone and walk away in one piece without a single person knowing, or to kill all of them in order to achieve the same result, and you deviated from it without realizing it. That's your problem. Well, then I'll pay attention next time. Well, Atelier stood up and walked over to the bedroom closet, from which he pulled out a pitch black cloak folded into tofu blocks and handed it to Domi. All assassins of the Northfall Division will receive their first cloak upon initiation. Take it. It is an honor and a responsibility in the darkness of Blofeld. I've already briefed Carlos about you. Get well here and enjoy the hard-earned vacation by the way. What about a month? A whole month without having to do anything. How nice. After saying that, Atelier left the room, leaving Domi alone. He was still holding the pitch black cloak in his hand, soft and silky to the touch, but it was still a lot worse than the one from the Catch the Week ceremony, which was said to be immune to all primary attack type magic. But even so, it was something he had earned through his own efforts, and he felt doubly accomplished and couldn't wait to change into it. A few moments later, Domi put it on and stood in front of the full-length mirror, as if he were a paperboy coming out of a pyramid scheme, with no sense of compulsion at all, with a dark look on his face. Domi shoved the cloak into his suitcase, if he didn't have to, he could wait until he was taller to wear it. He rummaged through his closet for another set of clothes, a plain white shirt, dark gray vest, and jacket made up the top half of the outfit, while straight pants in the same color with high-top black leather boots made up the bottom half. The mission had ended, so he didn't need to hide his identity anymore and could reveal his true appearance with honor. The high ponytail still had a blue ribbon on it, tying it around his hair and dropping it down wantonly, adding a touch of debauchery to the overall seriousness of the situation. With the addition of a tall bowler hat and an oversized cane, this was the outfit he should normally wear when going out. It wasn't that he wanted to go to all that trouble, he would have loved to walk out in a pair of pants and short sleeves if he could, but if he did, even if he walked down the street, He'd soon be forced to be taken back by his family for a couple of days of schooling, and it would be like having the loss outweighed the gain. It was precisely because Domi had suffered this loss that he had developed the habit of dressing properly. Habit of dressing properly. 
He stepped out of his room and the maid cleaning in the aisle immediately saluted him. Good morning, young master Dominic. Are you going out? I can go prepare the carriage. Well, then I'll trouble you. Duty calls. The good thing about nobles is that there are people to do everything for you, and one only needs to wait and enjoy the service. Sitting in the luxurious carriage, the cushions were as soft as a bed, allowing him to give his ass a break whenever and wherever he wanted. To the downtown area, the outskirts of town were a bit of a distance from the downtown area, and Domi even slept for a while in the carriage, but it was hard to really relax your body after a bumpy ride. By the time the carriage driver told him he had arrived at the place, he was still in a half-asleep mental state, but it quickly adjusted. Young master, where are we going next? The coachman came down and inquired. Just drop me off here. You can go back. He had a guilty look on his face. Then when should I come to pick you up? No surprise. You can give yourself a vacation now. The implication was that the coachman wouldn't even have to come pick himself up today, even though Domi was only a small child. His thoughts were not something that a coachman could inquire about or change, simply by virtue of the power he currently possessed. The rather sensible coachman saluted and then drove away from the place. Looking at the downtown streets, Domi couldn't help but think back to the time when Murray had taken him through these streets for the first time. The streets were still the same, but the original guide had disappeared. He had come on this trip to find Mori to fulfill the promise he had made at that time. Since Mori would be in this area, it meant that the place where he lived wouldn't be too far away. And reasoning a little deeper, Mori was poor, so poor that the probability was that he would be living in the slums nearby. It would be good to inquire there. Based on Domi's clothing alone, no one on the road would dare treat him disrespectfully, and questions would have to be answered unless they really didn't know. Soon he found out where Moray lived, and it was in the slums. He stood in front of a shabby wooden door and stretched out his hand to knock. Knock knock. Who? A wary voice came out of the house. It's me, M.O. Lay. Remember the agreement between us. Hearing this familiar voice again, M.O. Lay almost didn't react. And when he reacted, his surprise was uncontrollable. And the helplessness and desire to cry at first had long been thrown to the clouds. He couldn't wait to open the door to his room, but saw the incomparably well-dressed Domi. Handsome face, long flowing gray hair, like a refined gentleman, which still has the appearance of the original wretched little thief. My lord, you, he flinched fiercely, a friend has come from afar, don't you invite me in first? Domi maintained his usual smile, being polite without appearing awkward. As soon as he entered the door, Domi could clearly feel the rich dead aura that was filling the hut. At the tip of his nose, the odor of decay like a dead corpse lingered for a long time. Cough cough cough, more is anyone here? At that moment, an incomparably weak cough came from the only room there. It's my friend's mother. No need to worry. That's good. Cough. Moray. Take your friend out first. Cough cough cough. It's not good to spread the disease. Moray was silent. Just looking at Domi with a look of help. Domi was a complete big shot to him. And he wasn't even good enough to be his friend. After spreading such a big panic. But also let the already in Domi go out again. That is not purely left and right is difficult to do it. However. Domi who was well versed in human affairs, quickly understood what he meant, and the person had already walked towards the door, then why don't we go out to talk about it, I know a restaurant, the flavor is not bad, after eating can also bring some to ante, night wish, a nighttime tavern in the center of the city, literally, the tavern was a tavern only at night, and a proper restaurant the rest of the time, only far less crowded than at night, the restaurant Domi was talking about was exactly this one, he had come here for a meal before by chance, and just that one meal had left a deep impression on him. Not only was the food delicious, but the interior decorations were also very elaborate. Pioneering the starry sky as the theme, replacing the entire ceiling with a dark night curtain, embellished with a bit of starlight. It looks like there's no room for magic lights, but those stars are lights. At night, they would emit extraordinarily dazzling lights, illuminating the entire tavern as if it were a disco. Disco under the stars. How romantic. Quickly bring your horse to Nightwish to bounce. This is what makes Nightwish very popular among young people. But during the daytime, this charm is greatly reduced. Daylight hit the basalt floor, and there were only a few people sitting in the store. Domi and Murray were in the window seat for two. Looking at the exquisite food in front of him, Mori didn't even know how to eat. From time to time, his eyes glanced at Domi, wanting to learn how he ate, but also afraid that his own rustic appearance was seen by him to make a joke. Domi did not pay too much attention to this, and did not poke Mori's last bit of pride but just ate slowly and methodically. He knew that Mori was hungry, seven times in three days, so he waited for him to get full while giving him a demonstration. It was only when a person was full that they had the energy to think about things other than filling their stomach. 
Moray was not used to cutting food with a fork in one hand and a knife in the other, normally he only used a spoon, and the stiffness of his movements made it difficult for him to eat a piece of meat, but when the carefully cooked roast was stuffed into his mouth and melted on his tongue, the aroma of the meat bouncing repeatedly between his lips and teeth, he felt sublimated, and slow eating was nothing, after that, he became more and more skillful, wolfing down the food, and soon settled all the food in front of him, although he didn't care about the way he ate. This look of Moray's was really like a gourmand's reincarnation ah. Domi lost a laugh and beckoned for a waiter. Other than the ones you just served, serve one of the other dishes on the menu. Looking at Domi's appearance that regards money as dirt, the Moray people are shocked. Who orders food directly ordering the entire menu ah. My lord, I'm almost full. I don't need you to break the bank again. The more Domi gave him, the more he felt that he owed more and more. Just the ones he ate before had already exceeded ten silver wolves. If he continued to eat like this, he was afraid that he wouldn't get the ten silver wolves and would have to lose a few gold dragons, he couldn't even afford to sell them. Ha! How big of a deal. I'm treating you so feel free to eat with an open belly. When you finish eating and then pick something from it that you think is delicious to bring to your mother. Listening to Domi's words, not only did M. Ole not do as he said, instead he put down his cutlery and sat upright, his eyes filled with inferiority but still bravely looking at him. My lord, I just led the way for you. You actually just need to give me the ten silver wolves. No, it just doesn't matter if you don't give it, there's no need to even bring me here to eat at all, I'm just an inferior person, however, the more Moray is like this, the more Domi feels that this kid is a moldable talent, at a young age, he knows how to advance and retreat, knows honor and disgrace, and seems to be quite filial, so isn't cultivating him a few times better than those beasts of burden, it would be a waste to bury such a talent in the slums, so Domi couldn't help but cherish his talent, aha you're right, Domi picked up the red wine bottle and poured it for Moray as well as himself. The fine wine liquid blossomed into a translucent luster under the sunlight. He shook the goblet and gazed at the shaking of the liquid as he said, It's true that my engagement with you stops here, but in the meantime, I've seen flashes of brilliance in you, and just to put it bluntly Murray, working with me will lead to a future that goes far beyond that trash heap, perhaps soaring to great heights, possessing unimagined wealth and power, eating food like this every day. Being able to walk down the street scantily clad and enjoying the envy from your neighbors, or perhaps dying a violent death on the streets, becoming a dead rat for everyone to beat. One thought of heaven and one thought of hell. What the future really is all depends on your own choice and operation. I'm sorry, what I said might be too abstract, because that's at least something that will happen when you grow up to be an adult. For now, you just need to learn everything like a sponge, combat, management, human affairs, cultural knowledge. For my part, I will provide you with all the material support you need, and you will have no more worries. Mori listened and pondered for a while before asking, then who exactly am I going to be for you? Undercover agent. Hitman. Manager. White glove. I have to know my position. Right? Good question. Domi raised the glass of red wine shaking in his hand between him and Murray. The scarlet wine reflecting off the two men's boyish faces. Positioning positioning. If I really had to give a description of that positioning, my answer would be left arm. I need you to be my left arm Mori, to be my most capable assistant. Knowing the answer, Mori only felt his heart flutter hard, just how much high hopes did Domi give him. The identities of the two were so disparate, and he also chose himself in a sea of people. Conspiracy? Utilization? Did these even matter? It was better than crawling around in the slum garbage heap and doing nothing for the rest of his life. He made up his mind and picked up the red wine glass off to the side, containing the expensive red wine Domi had served him. He lifted it up and clinked it against Domi at a slightly lower position. Clink. The cup made a crisp sound. As if the god of contracts had flicked up a gold coin representing loyalty. And until the gold coin hit the ground, the crunch would be eternal. Domi was in a good mood. And the smirk at the corner of his mouth grew even bigger. First time meeting. Introduce yourself. My name is Dominic Blofeld. The son of the owner. Of this territory. Ha ha. At least this tavern belongs to me. Blofeld. Blofeld. What a familiar surname. This territory is damn well called Blofeld territory ah. And this broad young master sitting in front of himself talking eloquently was actually the young master of Blofeld. That's not a rich young master. It's simply a rich emperor. Mori felt that the shock he received this morning was more than the shock he had received in the past eight minutes of his life. However, this was not all. Only to see Domi adding. Oh yeah, as a gift. This knight wish is yours. And all the profits from running it will also belong to you. After all, you know. At my age I can't leave home very often. So let's just say that future monetary support is included in it. Trading a tavern for a right-hand man of good character who can be trusted don't mention how lucrative it is. Even if this tavern was located in the center circle of the city, 
inches of land, and could bring in a considerable amount of golden dragon revenue a year. What did it matter? Born into the Blofeld family, the last thing that was lacking was money. The moment they finished catching the week, Carlos had divided a small portion of the territory's industry among the three brothers. Edward, who seemed to be the most talented in business, got the largest portion of the property, spreading it across various industries, while his own portion was similar to Argyle's, which were all pawn shops that could make money, like taverns, weapon stores, and the like. In addition to the Night Wish, there are still three large taverns under his name, and it doesn't hurt at all to share out one, but for Moray, this weight is not light, even called heavy, loaded with heavy trust from Domi. Moray looked around, this tavern with such a large area, these tables, the staff, everything here, all belonged to him already? It all made him feel as if he were in a dream, pinched himself, hissing, kinda hurt, it wasn't a dream, looking at the Domi in front of him again. He only felt that the Domi at this time was so great. Not only did he give him a full meal and endless amounts of money, but also gave him a future. In the next moment, without warning, he stood up, walked out of the set table, and came to Domi's side, before Domi could react. He only heard him plop down on one knee in front of himself, his head hanging low. Before, no one would have looked at him squarely even if he had buried his head in the dirt. Now then, his bowed head had dignity, and this first dignity, he unreservedly offered to the one who gave him this precious thing. My lord, I shall remember all that you have given me, in the hour of my greatest embarrassment, for all eternity, and hereby offer you my loyalty. Moray had seen a knight enthroned by his master from afar, and remembered not only the sanctity of that moment, but also that knight's oath, sort of living it, a small man, but a bit of a pushover. Domi gently patted his shoulder. All right, get up. Rather than thanking me, why don't you take this time to think about your future plans? After all, from now on you're the owner of this store, and you still have to learn how to run it. There's not much time left for you to keep learning and trying to manage at the same time. Anyway, work hard Moray, I'll come back to you once more at the end of this month, and hopefully by that time, you'll already be somewhat out of the way of the poor boy. After arranging the handover procedure, Domi picked up his bowler hat and cane and left the night wish. It was just afternoon, and the three-lane sidewalk was filled with commuters, all in a hurry, hurrying to fix their midday meal. The carriage drivers who undertook temporary transportation were also busy, carrying the white-collar workers who entered their lunch break to their designated restaurants. The traffic was bustling, because of today's good sunshine, both sides of the street. Quite Victorian-style high-rise attic residents have in their own balconies to dry the clothes bedding, which is full of life atmosphere, to the originally serious. This life-affirming behavior added a lot of vitality to the otherwise serious, crowd-like street. Newspaper boys yelled, selling the newspapers they hadn't been able to sell in the morning. Just a copper eagle to see the strange happenings in Blofeld's collar throughout the day. First, ah uh, sir, would you like one? The newsboy saw Domi and held back the mister he had already said. For Domi was probably younger than he was. But his professionalism still made him immune to the embarrassment. A newspaper from the Loxon Society? Yes sir. The newspaper is sent directly from the newspaper office. It's fair and square. It's fake and absolutely authentic. You can't lose or be fooled if you buy it. Domi pulled the corners of his mouth. In that moment he wondered which talent had come up with such an over-the-top advertisement. All right, have one. It was mainly for the sake of Luo Xinhua being the most authoritative newspaper in the territory, not because it was also owned by the family. Copper Eagle. Getting the newspaper from the newsboy's hand, Domi didn't read it the first time, but rolled it up into a roll, found a bench by the river planted with willows, and read it with his legs crossed while enjoying the coolness before getting comfortable. The black and white newspaper was unrolled with a clatter. Let's see what's new today. Read the front page first. The emperor issued a mobilization meeting and started deploying his troops towards the borderline between the demon and human races. It's no fun. Yo, isn't this carpe? This guy is quite photogenic. This world has printing, but no camera. The so-called photo is actually a kind of magic projection. That is also enough to show the picture of the time to the public. On the raised platform where the emperor was giving his speech, Carlos's good friend Prince Carpe, who was also the emperor's own brother, was standing right behind him, and the photo looked much more majestic than the real thing. Still, Domi wasn't interested. Demons and humans, elves, dwarves, and orcs fought a war every three or four years, and it only lasted for three or four months, so as long as they didn't lose, there was basically nothing to be concerned about. Domi did not hesitate to turn the page. In addition to the front page reports on the whole empire big events, the other pages are all the territory of the matter. Sometimes when Loxon didn't have anything good to report they'd stuff all kinds of brain-dead fun stories on it which was why Domi bought it, simply for fun, 
A man bought two poisonous snakes and used one to bite the other, just wondering if the snake would be poisoned by the other snake's poison and thus die of poisoning. A man who couldn't find food and thus drew a long sword and cut up his mother's boyfriend escaped from prison on the third day after being arrested and jailed just to hang out with his friends. An emerging gang of thieves has appeared in the West, in the Twilight Forest, with a leader suspected to be an apprentice-level mage with powerful physical attributes. It has been added to the local mage association's bounty list, with a bounty of 100 gold dragons. Interested parties should head to the mage tower to pick up the quest. Lord Greenville's wife with her youngest daughter will visit Blofeld Collar in a few days or we'll discuss a marriage with the Blofeld family, ch, to the matter of marriage, Domi just scoffed, including himself, whose little girl looks at them, not to mention himself, Edward is just a small colorful lot, dabbling with women everywhere, even if it's settled, he'll quickly remove it, Argyle looks very serious, in fact, is a stuffy man, living together for so many years, Domi early his two brothers feel through, who married them who bad luck, he himself, not to mention, to fall in love with this kind of thing simply did not touch, and he fell in love with him to say that it is torture is not too much, or do not go to spoil people's little girl good, compared to the marriage, the reward above attracted his attention, a nest of bandits located in the twilight forest, no, that was a group of walking villain values, in the past, he couldn't fight them, but now he had morphed, besides, he still had a balance of 23 w of villain values, it was time to let them shine, he found a random room in his own hotel nearby just to draw cards where no one could see him. The smaller the space, the harder it would be for the bodyguards following him in the shadows to find out what he was doing. He sat cross-legged on the bed and opened the card draw panel, first rubbing his hands together to warm them up before blowing air into them. God and Buddha in the heavens, please grant me good luck blah. He was sure that every time he drew a thousand consecutive cards was the most nervous moment in his life. A whole hundred thousand villain values. He didn't know how long he would have to save up. It would be a waste if he couldn't draw anything good, and there were a whole lot of useless thank you patronage, which kinda made him quite frustrated. Hopefully the number of thank you patronage will fall below the 700 mark this time. 2000 consecutive draws, being drawn, energy potion x212, inspiration potion x26, night vision potion x17, trauma salve x112, strength plus 3, 9, agility enhancement plus 2, 7, mental strength enhancement plus 7, 1, Piano Mastery, Generation Master, Bow and Arrow Mastery, Out of the Blue, Braiding, Fishtail Braid, Pill Head, Advanced Mathematics Mastery, Plus, Advanced Physics Mastery, Packaged for Shipment, Plus, Advanced Chemistry Mastery, Packaged for Shipment, Waltz Mastery, Hearth and Soul, Necromantic Talent, Intermediate, Horsemanship, Assassination Technique, Duplicated, Synthesized into Assassination Technique, Perfected, Uchiha Sasuke's, from Naruto, Tips Fragment X9, synthesized into a 3-star tip, Sasunanashi Usage Tips Adaptive, Adaptation, 3-star effect, can be used even if there is no bloodline, Kaleidoscope, or Chakra, consumes magic power, and is categorized as necromancy, Wavewind Sutman, from Naruto, Tips Fragment X9, synthesized 3-star tips, Flying Thunder God Usage Tips Adaptive, Adaptation, 3-star effect, No Chakra Needed, Customize Use Tools, Consumes Magic Power, Classified as Summoning Magic. Thoughtful Note, Proficiency Level Division, Beginner. Small Success, Pure Fire, Out of the Gods, A Generation of Masters, Ancient and Modern, The Peak of Excellence. Thank you for your patronage x1468. Premium Jackpot Reward, Gold Encrusted Premium Thank You, Converted to Regular Thank You x1000, Total Thank You x4000. Your Blank Template, A Copy of You That Randomly Inherits Some of Your Attributes, With All Customizable Traits with a consciousness that is absolutely at your disposal, can be interconnected with you at any time, and comes with an independent consciousness, and comes with a worldwide placement opportunity. You can place this template to any specific corner of the world and randomly give a normal identity based on the scene. If there is no one nearby, the service is invalid. Detected that you have accumulated more than 4,000 thank you for your patronage, and have now opened the recycling store, with some items randomly refreshed. Recycling store. Thank you for your patronage x1 for villain value x10, no exchange limit. Thank you for your patronage x10 for strengthening essence x1, no exchange limit. Strengthening essence provides a random value of strengthening progress, 1 to 100. Natsum Takashi. Shiki's cat teaser, limited time item powerful attraction to all types of felines, provided you fling it up. Price, 50 thank you for your patronage. False chosen aura, limited time item when used, allows you to experience the treatment of the chosen one for 5 minutes. Effect unknown. Price, 100 thank you for your patronage. Current attribute change, strength, 12, 2816, 18, 
Agility, 13, 9816, 68, Mental Strength, 8, 415, 5, Ah Strength, Filling Up the Body. With this wave of pumping down, he hardened his 7-year-old body and pulled his values up to the level of a 16-year-old, and his mental strength was even directly doubled, which was equivalent to a doubling of his magical power reserves, and his duration broke through to a new peak. A large pile of proficient knowledge was also stuffed into Domi's head at the same time, causing him to instantly feel nothing but a splitting headache, rolling back and forth on the bed while holding his head. In normal times, too little proficient knowledge stuffed into his head wouldn't even be felt. This was the so-called pain and pleasure. A generation of master-level piano proficiency, a perfect waltz, a small amount of writing skills, math and science proficiency, these things took up a large portion of the head. Rather, it was the truly useful stuff that didn't take up his brain CPU. Bow and arrow proficiency was just out of the ordinary level when drawn out, and repeated draws of assassination to ascend to the next level indirectly saved him tens of thousands of villain values. Among the most precious, Domi felt sure to count the intermediate necromancy talent plus Susanu. Both belong to the necromancy system, as long as the enhancement of necromancy talent is equivalent to strengthening Susanu. A coin broken into two halves. Blood money. As for the wave wind water gate flying thunder god, Domi think it can and some magic with a very slutty operation. Later and then properly study research. And it is imperative to learn all of the two three star tips. Good things can only be used to bring out its value. During the pause, Uchiha Sasuke as well as wave wind water gate's experience in using ninjutsu were all passed on to Domi. And meditatively, he was able to use these two ninjutsu without realizing it. As the description said, they no longer consumed chakra and could be used by consuming magic. However, Susanu magic consumption is extremely high, and using it once can siphon off half of his magic power, so it can't be used often. In addition, this time there is also an additional recycling store. Not to see those purely funny limited time goods. If the thank you for your patronage into the essence of strengthening, it should be more profitable than pure use of the villain value to strengthen. But Domi was in no hurry to strengthen his skills now, so he could only say that it was enough, and it wouldn't be too late to upgrade when needed. The things that have been drawn out have been roughly organized, and now only the most special your blank template is left. Domi was just about to pull it out of the system space when a prompt popped up in front of him. Do you want to use your blank template? Once used, it cannot be withdrawn. Then what are we waiting for? Domi directly chose to use it. Subsequently, the scene in front of him quickly changed. A full-body CL stood in the very center of the space. He could inspect himself 360 degrees. Next to him was the virtual panel. The regular face pinching interface was displayed on it. Like gender, height, stature, face and whatever can be pinched. It was as if dreaming back to his previous life. When there were many pinch face games that he could pinch on his own. Games that could pinch faces on their own. And Domi had also enjoyed it. Pinching faces with a very skillful technique. The other me. Can I teleport to any place and obtain a legal identity? Is equivalent to my branch? That is to say, the villain value obtained by Ta can be remitted to my account. My props may be used on Ta? The system gave an affirmative answer. That's good. Domi's excitement was high. He first changed his gender to female, and a little lowly appeared in front of him. He loved pinching faces, especially girls' faces. XP-wise, he preferred imperial sisters over little lolitas. So, he pulled his form up increased his weight appropriately, and pinched it to be 18 years old, but set the age to be 100. After all, the elves had just reached adulthood at 100. Thinking about the location where he would be parachuting later, Domi painstakingly pinched himself a fairy-like imperial face again, with very delicate features that rested appropriately on all parts of the face, and an overall golden proportion front, back, such as sunshine-like radiant waist-length blonde hair, and their own same azure pupils, pointed ears. The big job was done. Domi admired his greatly changed self, a work of art even in a pile of elves. It's not too much of a stretch to call it a masterpiece, is it? Anyway, he was satisfied with himself. You have submitted your form data. Please select your birthplace. Selected, Moroi Elf City, Yaletta, Identity, Aurora Shikoti Manemasine, Daughter of a Commoner, Time, the Night Before the Awakening Ceremony. Inherited attributes and skills are being randomly selected. The consciousness of a blank template is independent and self-contained. Strictly speaking, it's a fabrication of a being with a person and self-awareness, not a replica of Domi's consciousness, so it doesn't count as a spiritual transformation. The main text is a bit vague, but I don't want to change it, so I'll just say it here. He he he. Inherits 50% of the body strength and agility attributes. Current template 3D attributes, 28, 28. Elves only grow 0, 2 strength and agility per year. Adult elves have a normal strength and agility of 20, and mental strength is randomized. 
The following are the inherited skills and specialties. Necromantic talent, intermediate. Breath forging. Bow and arrow mastery, out of this world. Shadow stream stance, out of this world. Horsemanship, little accomplished. Whip tying, fishtail braid. Maruko. Susanu, birth point non-human area. Birth point non-human area. Birth point human area. Birth point human area. Birth point non-human area. Mori elf language, LV, max. Already loaded. Feedback mechanism in effect. You have learned Mori elvish, LV, max. Note that Aurora cannot draw cards on its own, but you can pass the rewards you draw to Aurora. Body generation in progress. Estimated time, 48H. While Aurora's body was still generating, Domi took a shower to wash off the impurities that had precipitated out of his body. And after a few preparations he headed out the door once again. First he went to the costume store and bought a black and white mask with a smiley face painted on it that looked grotesque, as if it was mocking at all times. In addition to this he bought a dark green, oversized cloak with a hood, a small bow from the white woman at the home-owned weapon store, and a quiver of fine arrows. That made him look like an archer. Just right for the bow and arrow mastery he just drew out. He can play an archer. He's a bit short in the cloak, but as long as he's skilled enough, people won't suspect his age, and will probably think Domi has dwarfism. In a world where inbreeding was still quite common, some oddly shaped people were few and far between, and people got used to it. It feels like I'm an adventurer now. It's got an MMORPG feel to it. Domi was inexplicably excited. Since I'm taking on a commission, the next step is to find fellow travelers. He carried his bow and arrows on his back and headed straight towards the Mage Tower. The Mage Tower, equivalent to the legendary Adventurer's Guild, was a gathering place for many hired mages, wild mages, official mages, fighters, archers, and other professionals. They can receive commissions, buy and sell information, and even trade in the Mage Tower. As long as it's a business between mages, the Mage Tower is involved in it, so it's super omnipotent. Almost every city had such a Mage Tower, and compared to the Adventurers Association, the Mage Tower had another important function, which was to protect the city. When the city encountered a threat, the Mage Tower could also unfold a magic boundary to protect the city from destruction. The strength of this boundary was naturally tied to whether the local area had the money to build a better Mage Tower. Like the Mage Tower in Blofeld Main City, it is a top-level magic tower that surpasses all existing levels, and its production drawings have long been lost, and there are only two of them in the entire empire. One was in the royal capital, and the other was here. Domi came in front of the magic tower and raised his head, even though the back of his head was already stuck to his back, he couldn't see the top of it, which showed how high this magic tower was. It would not be an exaggeration to say that it was sticking straight up into the sky. The hole is a conical shape with curvature, using masonry with special. The hole is a conical shape with an arc. Using masonry casting with special effects, the chassis covers a huge area, and the higher it goes, the finer it gets. There are four entrances in the southeast, west, north and west, and as far as the eye can see, there are many people coming in and out of each of the entrances, which is as lively as the high-speed train station in the previous world. Domi entered one of the eastern gates. The floor was gray glossy masonry. The walls were painted dark green, and high brightness magic lights were set up every few steps glowing golden yellow. The rather magical color scheme gave the visual effect of being inside a giant tree. It was also true that the builders had actually designed the inside as a giant tree theme. If you look at the four entrances, and the several side roads after entering, as roots of a tree stretching across the land, then what a magnificent interior it really is. Domi had never been here before in his life, and it was hard to suppress his excitement at the thought of it. Entering through the entrance, looking up, he could see the ceiling projecting a reserved image of a woman guiding the route for the arriving people. After all, this place is too big. There are three forks in the road right in front of him, and it's really possible to get lost without someone guiding the way. The left side of the road leads to the mage rest quarters, the center of the road leads to the commission hall, intelligence trading hall, the right side of the road leads to the exchange, public library, left side of the road leading to the mage rest quarters, center of the road leading to the commissioning hall, intelligence trading hall, right side of the road leading to the exchange, public library. The projections were fixed and repeated at regular intervals, just as Domi had heard. Commissioning hall, take the center. He followed the flow of people through the passageway, and after he didn't know how far he'd gone, the scene opened up in front of him, the ceiling gradually rose, the space gradually opened up, and what had been crowded with people now left a lot of distance between each other. Golden lights like fireflies embedded in the walls, linked together to form a meandering river of starlight along the inner wall of the tree all the way up to the top. In addition to the magical lights on the inner wall of the tree, there was also a treehouse-style private room, 
which could be used for secret exchange of information, and its door was connected to the bottom by a wooden rotating staircase wrapped with turquoise vines. There were also branches with white flowers and green leaves hanging down irregularly from above, exuding vitality everywhere. At the very center was a huge pillar decorated with tree bark, which was both the staircase leading to the highest floor and the pillar of the entire magic tower. Of course, if one's identity was not qualified, one could not go to the top floor. All around the commission hall, there were boards specially set up for posting commissions, and at this time when the season of beasts and magical creatures was reviving, there were extraordinarily many mages or other professions who came here to receive commissions, and all of them gathered in front of the commission boards to look for the commission of their choice. Domi smoothly squeezed into the front of the crowd by virtue of his size and saw all the commissions. There were all kinds of commissions, and they were divided into six grades from E to S according to difficulty, urgency, and bounty. A commission like the search for the lost cat and beast, which had no difficulty and purely required time, was only an E-rank commission, and one that required killing was at least a C grade. Soon, he found the commission published in the newspaper, Purge the Twilight Forest's Emerging Thief Gang, Grade C, Bounty, 100 Gold Dragons. Because the leader of the thieves was only a junior mage and the bounty wasn't high, he could only give it a C rank. However, this is good, it is suitable for him to try his hand. Moreover, he didn't go there for the bounty, he just wanted to have some fun in his boring life, and earn some villain value in the meantime. You can't just tear off the proxy sheet that is attached to the proxy board, but you can write down its number. It is not the title of the proxy that you hear when you pick it up, it is the number. No, 746. Domi turned and looked down the hall, trying to find anyone holding up a sign with the number 746 on it, which meant that person also wanted to take this commission and was looking for someone to team up with but a sweep of the eyes around the room didn't reveal even a single team. Am I to shoulder the responsibility of forming a team? Then I would rather choose to try it alone. Being the captain of a temporary squad had no half benefits except for a larger share of the honorarium and a greater increase in the mage slash adventurer's experience, and one had to coordinate the planning and protect the members of the squad. Of course, if that person really had the talent to be a captain, these relative responsibilities would not seem so heavy. And when it comes to experience, the mage slash adventurer class has to be mentioned. Experience, as the name suggests, is the amount of experience one has had, and in order to evaluate one's experience in a sizable way, the experience rank system was set up. Whenever a commission is completed, according to the difficulty of the commission as well as the various details, which account for a small percentage, the staff of the mage tower will give experience points with a special identifier on their mage slash adventurer certificates. When the experience reaches a certain number, they can be promoted to the next level. Their level coincidentally corresponds to the level of the commission, six levels from E to S. According to the strict rank division, it was stipulated that one could not take a commission across two ranks unless there were a sufficient number of high-ranking members in the team. However, Domi had only just registered a certificate from the staff, and was the lowest level E rank adventurer, which was just two levels away from C rank, so he couldn't take this commission by himself at all. Just when he was at a loss, a hand patted his shoulder, turning back to look. The visitor was a young man wearing light armor, short chestnut hair, and a sunny smile. The other party visibly froze when he saw Domi's outfit, but his enthusiasm did not diminish in the slightest. Brother, are you interested in Commission 746? It's just as well. I'm missing one of the four here. I'm a C-ranked warrior. The other two are D-ranked priests and shield bearers, and I'm worried that I can't find an archer who specializes in long range. Seeing that the bow and arrow you're carrying is quite advanced. Brother, it should be quite strong. Do you want to join us? As soon as Domi heard this, he directly smiled inwardly. This was not a sleepy pillow, and the configuration of this team is quite balanced. A warrior and a tank. The front row is guaranteed, the back row with a nurse, the continuation of Gaga Fierce, and then add an archer. DPS is also enough. Why not? Good brother. Just waiting for your words. The black and white mask was accompanied by transformation magic. At this time, the voice that Domi made should be a stream of uncle voice so that no outsiders would know that he was Dominic. The two of them hit it off and the big sunny boy led Domi to one of the treehouses hanging on the wall inside the hall. Hey guys, look who I've brought with me, a mighty archer. As soon as sunny boy Brandon entered the door, he shouted to the two other. As soon as he entered the door, Brandon, the sunshine boy, exclaimed to his two other companions inside. And to those who didn't know, they would have thought that he had one too. 5W in the lottery. The two companions whipped their heads around at the sound and as they sized up Domi, Domi sized them up. He straightened up and called out good guy. The priest is a girl. The shield bearer is also a girl. Moreover, it's the dainty kind and not a tiger tank. 
Nurse with this kind of setting is also even so. Tank with a chicken hair ah, is not anyone is open up the lucky max shield anti mecha me molo? Hurry up to become King Kong Barbie na asshole. Not waiting for Domi to finish spitting. Wearing a white and gold split nun's uniform of the milkmaid girl first dissatisfied with Domi too. Brandon you have no idea? Find a dwarf archer to be our core output? Can he do it? If he doesn't have some real skills, we'll all be in danger. That's right. This Brandon is also really. This is a serious killing commission. Not to bring you a sister to brush the copy. Nurse girl this time really asked Brandon. In the beginning, in order to find the last team member, he took great pains, and it was not easy to find one, which still cared so much, pulling it to use directly. Brandon looked at Domi with a slightly embarrassed look, his eyes both apologetic and tentative. To be honest, he was also curious to know what kind of level Domi had, and if it didn't work, it would really drag them down. After all, the archers were responsible for not only outputting at the rear, but also serving as scouts, watchers and other important duties, so if they made a mistake, it would be all doom and gloom. Come on, it looks like we have to make some real skill, only to see Duomi took out the exquisite small bow. Lightspeed draw the arrow to take the arrow and pull the string. The moment of aiming, as if there were countless mathematical and physical formulas floating in front of the eyes, extremely accurate and efficient for Duomi calculated the parabola of the arrow, and even referenced the wind speed and the environment into it. The landing point was foolproof and the middle index ring finger was released at the same time. The steel-tipped arrow rushed out of the nest like a falcon, instantly piercing through the apple that the priest girl was munching on, and directly nailing the apple to the wooden wall behind her. Now no one dared to say that Domi could not do it. Even he himself did not expect that the combination of his amazing bow and arrow proficiency with advanced mathematics and science would have such a strange effect. Witnessing Duomi's strength with his own eyes, Brandon was even happier, patting up Duomi's shoulder as if he was a good brother and laughing. I told you. Ah, uh, he's strong. Sorry, I haven't asked your name. No, using a code name is fine. It's okay to use a code name if you don't want to reveal your real name. How about this is the basic culture of this circle? Duomi thought about the code name he had written down on his certificate, and the corners of his mouth rose slightly as he replied, Dead Omen, my code name, Brandon, as well as the two teenage girls, flinched when they heard the murderous code name, and he only reacted to it on the spur of the moment. Oh, can can. Then from now on, we'll call each other by our code names brother Dead Omen. Of course you can just call me by my name. I don't mind. Let's have a formal introduction with you. Our priestess is codenamed Honeyfruit because she likes to eat peaches and apples. And Miss Shield Bearer is using her real name just like me. So it's better for her to introduce herself. I have to go to the front desk to submit a request for a commission pickup first. If I'm late it might be taken by someone else. After saying that Brandon left the treehouse in a hurry, leaving the three of them wide-eyed. And as soon as Brandon, the lubricant, left, the atmosphere between the three of them froze even more. No, it can't be. Gather your courage. Miss Shieldbearer, who was wearing heavy armor that was clearly out of shape, jumped off the stool with a slight strain and came to Domi with a 90 degree bent bow. Hello you, 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 first time meeting, my name is May, please take more, more, care in the future. Domi's face darkened after hearing this. Good lord, it's really from the May Molu lineage. He was beginning to wonder if all people with the surname may like to take a big shield and smash people's brains in. The two teenage girls, May and Miko, seemed to be about the same age, 18 or 19. At the peak of their physical capabilities and growing up rebellious, it was also possible that they were trying to make more money, fame or simply wanted to experience life. As far as Domi's perspective was concerned, May was presumably forced to make a living, while Miko was more like the latter. Face white and clean, long blonde hair and waist, Lips even have a good color lipstick. The staff used is not an unusual commodity. The golden cloth on the nun's uniform is estimated to be encrusted with gold edges. An ordinary little girl can have this kind of equipment? He wouldn't believe it if she didn't have a mine at home. On the contrary, on May's side, she was only about one meter six and a half, slightly taller than Domi, with a slim figure, not like she had muscles, wearing small, heavy armor, whether it was a round shield or armor. It was all mass merchandise from the Mage Tower store, and there was no trace of makeup on her face, plain and unusual, but even with the plainest of plain faces, it was hard to hide her natural beauty. May had short, sleek black hair, and her angled bangs covered half of her eyes and most of her face, but just by looking at the half of her small face that was exposed in that big, watery eye, one could tell that this little girl also had a scourge of awe, if she didn't wear this bloated armor, maybe she was still a childish face that, not bad, not bad. This temporary formation of a small team, although the composition of the team members is slightly complicated, but it is always very eye-catching, 
Stay a little longer may also be able to prolong life. Dolny didn't have much need for anything other than a little spit anyway, and he'd be thankful if it didn't hold him back. Well, Domi responded, giving a little face in the face of a May-style greeting, and please, I'm counting on you to protect me, M.S. Shield Bearer. For some reason, at the mention of the three words Shield Bearer, May's small, white face suddenly flushed. Shy, still time shy? Why the blush? Domi recalled a saying a woman's heart is a needle under the sea. Not to be explored, not to be guessed, not to be looked at. She hurriedly waved up her hand and said, please don't have such high expectations of me mister. Dead mega. I will disappoint you. Why? You look quite professional. I. Just as it seemed like May was about to say something, squad leader Brandon returned to the treehouse at an inopportune moment, jamming the timing so well that it directly caused May to stifle the words that had just reached her mouth. Hey, you guys seem to be chatting well together. That's a good feeling. The atmosphere within the squad needs to be this amicable. Back to the topic. We've already taken on commission 746, so let's hurry up and set out on the crusade without delay. Late is late. Miko jumped off the round tree stump and was the first to follow Brandon, not forgetting to turn around and urge the two before leaving. What are you waiting for? Let's go. Domi locked eyes with May through her mask and said, let's go. Hurry up and do it quickly and enjoy it. Aha. The four-member squad left the mage tower in the city after a little resupply, and traveled west along the countryside roads. Everything that happened on the road was watched by Domi. Miko purposely got so close to Brandon that her body was close to him and when she talked to him her face was always beaming with the sweet sister's exclusive smile. It was obvious that this girl liked Brandon quite a lot, but there was probably more admiration in this liking, similar to the nature of chasing a senior who was a few years older. May, on the other hand, has been following his back, not saying anything, whenever Domi looked backward at her, she would immediately lower her head, which was not raised much, and look at her toes, as if a frightened ostrich. Hey, Domi secretly sighed. After his observation he could come up with a fact, a shield bearer as timid as this was of no use, May couldn't be his front row, and compared to himself and May, Brandon, the warrior, would also surely prioritize the protection of Miko, who was close to him, once there was danger, his front would be empty, and in the end, it would still be up to himself, Sins ah, don't know how many of these three will die inside, from 9 o'clock in the morning, the journey was made without stopping, and at 5 o'clock in the afternoon they encamped on the spot, and after some repairs were made they were on their way again, and soon after this the outline of their destination was seen, the twilight forest, the magical place where it is said that night never falls, spring evening comes extraordinarily fast, by now it is already almost dark, the moonlight pours down, the whole twilight forest is immediately enveloped by a light between dusk and moonlight, Domi at this time also words are poor, he has never seen such a wonderful scenery, also cannot use any kind of color to describe him, that seems to be the true meaning of twilight, like a dream like fantasy, even in the darkness of the night, as long as you enter this forest, the visibility cannot be said to be comparable to the daytime, at least not two eyes, medium distance things can still be seen clearly, Brandon, look, these leaves are glowing, Honey Nut was like a kindergartner on a field trip, seemingly interested in everything, thus, Brandon then knew that the moment for him to build up his image had finally arrived and explained in a serious manner, the reason why the twilight forest can glow so brightly even at night is all because of some special plants growing in the forest, like this yellow-green bush. Their leaves can absorb only the light at twilight, but are sensitive to moonlight, creating a stress reaction to release stored twilight once it is exposed to moonlight. This allows the dusk and moonlight to intertwine, forming this unique spectacle. This guy definitely did his homework in advance. He came prepared. Domi was disdainful. True learning should be stockpiled long ago and not rely on such improvised means. But Miko just ate it up. Secretly, it was worthy of being her favorite man, knowing like he knew everything. Wow. Brandon you're awesome. Who told you all this? Hmph, he gave a secretive smile. Don't look at me as a brown warrior. But I actually go back to the Magic Tower Library every weekend for half a day of study to replenish my knowledge of these magical worlds. Then, he went on to talk to Miko. A set of words. You don't say. This guy seems to really have a pair of brushes. Did Brandon already know all this? It wasn't a temporary fix? Domi's thoughts couldn't help but waver. If that's really the case, even the buyer. What's wrong with people in this world? Why do they have to be so rolled up? Even a single-celled thinking warrior has to dip into a library to get a girl? Bull. Domi was speechless. Soon, they were officially in the outer ring area of the Twilight Forest. Where? According to what the intelligence had described, the up-and-coming gang of thieves was operating. Brandon found Domi in the back. Brother Dead Omen. I'll leave the task of scouting ahead to you. Domi thought about it. This was indeed what an archer, 
or a ranger should do. All right, then you guys wait here. Be safe. We'll wait for your good news. Between the fantastic forests, a figure was passing through them silently. Domi focused his chi on the palms of his feet, and with the shadow stream stance, the power of his feet was completely controlled, thus not making the slightest sound. The only thing that would make a sound would probably be the slightly swaying branches. But if someone sees the branches shaking, but did not see the person and hear the sound, the atmosphere of shock this has not come well. Night vision potion has been tons and tons into the stomach, now in front of the eyes like day. He looked ahead and continued to move forward at an even pace, paying attention to everything around him. Atelier had taught him that when acting as a vanguard, he must keep his eyes and ears open and not miss any details or anomalies. This was a mandatory lesson for scouts and an area that assassins needed to cover. Domi was also doing this dutifully. After scouting forward for some more distance, he suddenly stopped, using branches and leafing to hide himself, only because the bright light of a flame appeared ahead. Still in the twilight forest in the middle of the night, it was either a passing traveler, an unfortunate lost fool, or that upstart gang of thieves that hadn't gotten away. He quietly peeked out half his head to check out the situation. It was a decent-sized semi-permanent camp, presumably in existence for a while, with clothes drying on the poles. Most of the tents were dark, with only two or three still lit. Next to the biggest campfire, five men were dressed differently, holding daggers and swords in their arms, not regular soldiers or mercenaries at a glance, but with good eyes, looking sternly at the fire as if they were going to draw their swords in the next second. Not only next to the campfire, but around the camp. There were about a dozen more spread out, keeping watch with a patrol track that was two circles larger than the camp. Good. That instantly eliminated the first two possible items. This was definitely the camp of the gang of thieves. But there were two things that puzzled Domi. One, patrolling with an excessively large range was completely superfluous. Two, why were there absolutely no thoughts of wanting to sleep in their eyes, but instead a mental state of readiness? That was the kind of professionalism that only an elite army could have. What did a group of thieves have to go on? training? They are all thieves now. Their nature can't be changed. Even the toughest training can only change their appearance, but can't hide their inner desires. The only possibility. Thinking about this, Domi shuddered, and a horrifying thought surfaced in his mind. Something fishy. Let's go back first. Before being clear about their strength, Domi didn't dare to stay longer and withdrew with his head turned around. Because the evacuation route was slightly off by a few degrees from the way he came. So much so that he hadn't run very far before he once again spotted the light flames of a campfire burning just halfway up his side. Approaching it, the camp was makeshift, but the spirit of the group was carved from the exact same template. None had a thought of sleep, all had weapons in their hands, and it seemed as if they would all move at the command of someone. That horrible thought seemed to be coming true. He no longer purposely slowed down his pace because he was trying to muffle the sound, but even sped up, weaving through the dense woods like a flying needle, his eyes filled with suspicion. In the end who is it? Let's go back in time to 20 minutes ago. Brandon. Honey nut. May three people waiting in place. From Domi set off to start counting his past 10 minutes. Not that he is slow. Just do so dry. Always feel bored. The twilight forest was beautiful. But you could still get tired of seeing it too much. Not to mention that the thing still looked better from a distance. It's idle anyway. Why don't we take May to familiarize herself with the profession of a shield bearer? There are quite a lot of small beasts and magical creatures in the vicinity so it's just right to act as a target for practicing. Brandon suggested, having something to do is better than having nothing to do. Miko was the first to raise her hands in agreement. Let's go. I don't know when Uncle Gnome will be back to go. May, what do you say? Looking at the eager anticipation of the two, coupled with the fact that she wasn't good at refusing in the first place, she only nodded her head in agreement. Let's go then. Let's go slightly further in. There are no monsters too far out. The three of them got up and set off once more this time with May, the shield bearer, leading the way. She was seen holding her large round shield in front of her body, constantly alerting her surroundings as if something would jump out of the grass the next second. Just then, a wild boar scurried out, and with a glance, it recognized May and charged up with a whimper. May had never seen such a flooding beast before, and was so frightened that her entire body curled up in her shield. It was obvious that by blocking in such a way, the boar would be able to knock out May's famous sword sigil plus guardian angel with a single slam. Don't be afraid. May. Brandon shouted. Be brave. Be brave and face it. Concentrate on fending it off. We'll protect you in a pinch. That's right. That's right. Miko shouted back. Even if you get hurt I can heal you right away. Don't panic. Encouraged by her teammates encouragement. And with May's hints to herself. She regained her composure and raised her round shield. Her gaze directed towards the charging large brown boar. It's okay it's okay. 
If I can't beat it there will be Captain Brandon to save me, and if I'm injured there will be Miss Miko to heal me. There's nothing to be afraid of. Come on big boar. Whimper. 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 One person and one pig crashed together like two trains, and Miko and Brandon's attention was all over it. Clang. There was a loud bang. The powerful impact seemed to knock the shield out with May in one piece, but miraculously, May only flattened out a throw away under the impact, hardening the attack in its entirety and not suffering a single injury. Instead, the boar hit the steel shield and fainted on its own, foaming at the mouth and looking unconscious. I succeeded? She looked at the piggy on the ground, and at her shield, incredulous. The first moment after her success, May wanted to share her happiness with her teammates. Captain Brandon, Miko, did you see that? But after waiting for a while without getting a reply, May twisted her head around, only to see a scene even more shocking than the boar's own fainting. Miko, what happened to you? Only Hanigo was lying on the ground, unconscious, and Captain Brandon was nowhere to be seen. She immediately ran to Miko's side, checked, and was relieved to find that she had only fainted and her life was not in danger. However, in the very next moment, a familiar handkerchief, carrying an unpleasant odor covered her mouth and nose at once. After struggling a bit she also fainted just like Honey Nut. Plop. The two young girls lay together in unison, while Brandon stood beside them, looking at them with an evil smile on his face. Where was the previous sunshine and integrity between his eyebrows? Not even understanding this world before rushing out to become an adventurer. Then I'll give you two a lesson on what it means for the human heart to be treacherous. Come out and bring the two of them down. As soon as the words fell, several people came out from the bushes and carried honey fruit in May. Golden hair is the noble's young lady. The one the boss wants. What about this dark-haired one? Brandon thought for a moment. This little girl is an orphan of the Light Shield family. There is an ancestor's refuge in her bloodline. Remember to bleed first when you kill her. And then get a few more people to wear out the ink souls that she summons. Oh pay attention to that. Her blood should be collected. And put it in the black market to sell for a good price. Someone has built a punch card building in the book circle. 1000 coins a floor. The ceiling is not capped. Everyone go and laugh at him. The timeline rewinds to 20 minutes later. Domi made quick work of it, returning as fast as he could to the location where he had previously made an appointment with Brandon and the others. Jumping down from the tree, the bottom was empty. Not a single person was there, and there were no traces of a fight at the scene. At this point, if he had time regression magic like Carlos, he would quickly know what happened here. But the problem was that he didn't, so he could only rely on some details to get the information. He didn't mind getting dirty either and he peeled his palms over the dirt, carefully searching for clues, three different footprints, large boots, small high boots, iron small boots, it's the three of them right, then look at the direction and trajectory of the footprints, is it actually going deeper, the uneasiness was growing, thinking back to the conjecture that came out of nowhere when rushing back, the distribution of the thieves camp was like a triangle, with the largest camp in the middle and a small temporary camp on the left and right, once a prey enters this triangle area, the thieves expanding their patrol range can send out a notification at the first time, and the spirited thieves can act immediately, cooperating with their accomplices on both sides to form a three-sided encirclement, and the prey will have no place to run away from. However, with the existence of him as a scout, letting the prey go in by itself is obviously impossible. Then there will definitely be someone driving the prey to enter, and this driver was the traitor in the squad. If this conjecture was still stuck in a state to be verified before, then everything that was discovered now just became a key to verifying it. Brandon, Miko, and May, two of them might be in trouble. Domi stood up and looked deeper into the forest. Whether to save them or not became a question. A few people met each other in passing. Even if they died, they had nothing to do with themselves. It was just that they could not live with their reputation. No one would want an adventurer who lived alone after his teammates died. Even if he told the Mage Tower staff the truth, because there was no evidence, they would not believe it. Oh well. In that case, the codename Dead Omen would come true, and it would stink to high heaven. No one will want an adventurer whose teammates die out and he or she lives on. Big deal. The future is lonely and wandering the world alone. My ass. Dead Omen. But he wanted to run a good identity. And in the future to be put to great use, refers to earning villain value. How can he go out of the division before the first body to die? Even if it's for the sake of the child's face and all that, he has to go through such a journey. Slogan. Save little May May. He made up his mind and directly turned around and rushed back to the forest, once again traveling through the forest. The trajectory is the same, but I didn't see them when I came back, and the footprints are still quite fresh, which means that they have already met with misfortune, but not for a long time, so I guess they are being sent towards the camp. Domi had come down with some reasoning, and directly succeeded in predicting where the thieves were headed. 
This was exactly the case. A few thieves were carrying plums and honey fruits back to the camp, but compared to Domi who was far away in the sky, they had already seen cooking smoke coming out of the camp, and it was also mixed with bursts of roasted meat aroma. After this deal, they will be rich. It's not too much to have a celebration dinner in advance, right? The leader Brandon came to the camp, door and shouted, Where's the boss? Quickly call the boss out. I've captured that big lady back. One of the men gathered around the campfire went to the tent to report, while the others gathered around with hilarious gusto and small fists on Brandon's chest. You kid can ah, said a scarred face, originally thought that your undercover plan was quite outrageous, but did not expect that you really made it. This time the boss will definitely give you a big credit. The other accomplices are a strong blind coaxing. TSK, TSK, look, these two little girls look really chic, especially this black hair. Kill quite a pity. Why don't we wait until we're done giving the brothers a good time before killing them? I agree. What do you agree with? The boss hasn't even said anything yet. Right boss. The phrase boss scared them straight into shutting their mics. Only to see a bald, burly man wearing a black cloak with his chest and breasts bared, carrying a machete, walk out from the automatically separated crowd. Sharp little eyes disliked the honey fruit and looked at it, then took out a portrait from his pocket and compared them one by one. Finally confirming well that this little priest was none other than the eldest miss of a moderately low noble family within the main city of Blofeld. Although she was not valued within the family because there was an older brother. But after all, it was a tool that could be used for marriage. And it was also considered as a bargaining chip for the family to be able to get on the side of the backer. And it could still be exchanged for quite a lot of money. Like this kind of missy, even if she comes out to experience life, her family will still equip her with secret guards. But these people were all discovered by Brandon and have all been designed to kill on the day of departure. It would be too late for the family to come back for Miko when they realized the guards were all dead. Well, you did a good job Brandon. The burly man tore the portrait into pieces, letting it float around as it pleased, and looked to Brandon. I'll reward you with 100 gold dragons. Other than that, what other rewards do you want to be worthy of your months of lurking? Just say it, I'll try to fulfill you. Compared to that noble's ransom, 100 gold dragons was nothing. Brandon understood that. But the good thing was that his boss hadn't gone overboard and had given him a free hand. And he knew that a piece of information that no one else knew about it cost him nearly 100 gold dragons to get in the first place. And as long as he utilized this piece of information well, he would gain much more than thousands of gold dragons. Only to see Brandon bending over to the strong man and stroking his chest, his tone was humble. Boss, truth be told, during these months of impersonating, I couldn't help but fall in love with this May girl. He pointed to the dark-haired May. But I know that the blood of the Lightshield family is worth just as much, and May won't live long, so I want to make the best memories for each other on this last night. The boss was surprised to look at Brandon, but it was quite good, at least he didn't make it difficult for himself by asking for a lion's share of the money. A woman of a fallen magical noble is just a woman, so what if he gives him a good time? So, he directly waved his hand and approved the reward, as if he could still look generous. The others looked at him with a look of having seen a trick, as if to say, that's it? Brandon, this man, is still a fucking infatuation? P.S. Regarding the fact that some bookworms say that the blank template is a shapeshifter plot and a man dressed as a woman. It's not, and I'll be, here briefly say, blank template consciousness is pinch after the self-carrying, not a copy of Domi consciousness, so it is not considered a transformation. Domi is the equivalent of Aurora's creator, and the future positioning is, unsurprisingly, Domi's hidden minions. Over. Catch up reading for tomorrow, please. All the world knew was that once the first sons of the Light Shield family encountered a life-threatening situation, their blood would resonate with the Hall of Valor in the Void, summoning the family's ancestor to save them. Without paying the mysterious man 100 gold dragons, no one would have known that. This secret that only existed within the Light Shield family, even if they knew, they wouldn't be able to find a second pure female Light Shield orphan, because the only one left, was lying in his tent, having stripped away the heavy and bloated armor revealing the beautiful figure and firm biceps inside. Now, only the last layer of covering was left. The thought of the blessing the man portrayed excited Brandon. That feeling was like an enlightenment. Nirvana reborn. This was one of the few divine abilities in the entire world that could rewash your roots and bones. Those with bad talent could open another path for you, and those with good talent could go to the next level. Brandon only had a rudimentary wind talent. His parents hadn't birthed him right, giving him the dream of wanting to touch the sky but not the ability to fly into it so he had to earn it on his own. I'm sorry May, contribute your power for my dream. But in his extremely exuberant state of mind, he completely missed the slight flutter of May's eyelashes. Meanwhile, Domi had returned to the outside of the largest camp. After observing a bit, 
He found that there was a slight change from his first visit. The people patrolling the surrounding area had decreased a lot. There were only like three or four of them, looking weak and presumably used to fill up the numbers. In addition to the patrol of a few small chickens eyes full of sleepiness, the others in the camp seemed to be more energetic. They seemed to be having a bonfire party. The meat of cows, sheep, and pigs were run through with wooden sticks and set up on the campfire. And every now and then a bit of cumin and oil was applied, and the aroma spread throughout the camp. The thieves carried out crate after crate of expensive liquor, and it looked like they had snatched it from the merchants. All in all they ate and drank quite happily, quite good. The more they let their guard down, the more certainty Domi would have in rescuing the two. After circling the camp, there was no sign of the team members outside the tents, so they could only be in these tents, easily maneuvering around the patrolling thieves and over the wooden fence. Domi used the dagger he had with him to cut a slit in the back of the tent so he could see inside. Rip. Nobody. Rip. Nobody. After scratching through five tents in a row, the inside was dark and empty, so it looked like the occupants were out getting high. But Domi didn't give up, but carefully rode over one by one. As for the biggest one, it looked like it was the location of the ringleader, which would be dealt with at the end of the day. He continued to rip tear. Inside Brandon's tent, he had already plucked himself nimbly, both hands already on May's last lining. A fallen noble is also a noble, worthy of being a light shield. The offspring looks just fine child like that and all, skin white and tender, thighs round and still meat, just a bit malnourished, one side can get bestowed with blessings, and at the same time, one can still get high, this should be heaven, just as he was about to help May remove the last of the cloth, May's large purple pupilized eyes suddenly opened, May slightly raised his head and looked, her face turned straight red, an erect shadow shining through the firelight outside the tent, right in the center of her face, quite terrifying, she was scared and just about to scream out but Brandon covered her mouth with his hand. I'm sorry Miss May, commiserate, don't scream or resist or. Saying that, he pulled out a chilling hunting knife from under the pillow, looking similar to a bowie hunting knife, resting right on May's bare neck, just a little further in and it would cut her aorta. May, even in her social terror, knew what she was up against. She helplessly turned her head away, tears sliding down from the corners of her eyes, past the bridge of her nose, soaking the corner of her pillow her eyes filled with despair. If there was one thing one would react to in one's most desperate moments, May simply recalled her difficult yet happy days in the countryside with her parents. She and her father plowed the land together. Her mother sewed and mended at home. And although she was poor, the days were still manageable. And there were always fun things to do in life. So it wasn't uninteresting. But the good times didn't last long. Her mother got seriously ill on the magic side. And a normal doctor couldn't cure her yet. It had to be a doctor who could do medical magic and to hire such a doctor you had to pay more money. 300 gold dragons. The huge financial pressure on the family was like a lump in the throat, and soon her father abandoned them, mother and daughter, and went off to who knows where, never to be heard from again, leaving only her mother and herself in the house. Already an adult, May knew that if she waited for her family's crops to ripen and sell for money, her mother would almost be in the ground, so she resolutely traveled to the main city of Blofeld, temporarily entrusting her mother to a neighbor to take care of her for her. After arriving in the city, she wasted no time in doing hard and dirty work and working as a cow for other squads, finally saving up enough money to buy the cheapest equipment for herself, and then continued to work as cannon fodder for them as a vanguard. She's so useless, she can't even do cannon fodder well, falling down even when walking, exposing our position and scaring away the prey, can't even carry some equipment well, useless trash, it's better to take a shield and go to the front, taking a beating is always a good idea. In the lonely night, Countless expressionless black shadows would always surround her bedside, abusing her, spitting on her, and despising her, but compared to the life of her mother, what can be done with a little beating and scolding, so she continued to stick around, and continued to work as a shield-wielding adventurer, a fast-paying, sack-earning profession, after that, she went round and round, and finally, she met a kind and sunny captain who let her integrate into the squad without complaint, and a young lady who was mean-speaking but had a good heart, together, they did a lot of commissions that a three-person squad could do. Feelings also grew. And even though Brandon might be with Miko, she didn't mind at all. Because having a squad that would tolerate her and grow with her was satisfying. Then the powerful archer mister. Dead Omen joined in. With strength again and a good talker in the squad. She thought this would be an eternity and she would earn enough money to cure her mother. But now this is what she has become. Mother, I'm sorry. Please forgive me for being ungrateful. I may have to leave before you. With the sound of tearing cloth rising and falling, her skin was exposed in large chunks, and the cold of the night wrapped around her. 
A wave of courage and determination that she had never felt before came from her heart. She actually sent her neck directly towards the blade that was like a guillotine. The speed and suddenness of the action made Brandon unable to react at all. No, he also shouted in despair. However, just as May's neck felt the coldness of the blade, the tent was cut open with a tear, and a hand actually poked in from the outside, holding her head still with overwhelming force. Don't think about it, I'm not coming to save you. A familiar older man's voice entered May's ears, and at that moment, Domi's hand also loosened, and she raised her head to see that it was none other than the slightly mocking black and white mask as well as the dark green ranger's cloak. Mr. Dead Omen, she shouted out excitedly, but in the next second she realized the gravity of the situation, and not only did she lose the excitement she had felt a moment ago, but she immediately changed her words. Mr. Dead Omen don't worry about me, run, this is the stronghold of that group of thieves, the outside is full of their people, I'm here to save you, you don't need to care about the rest. As for this person, Domi followed the crack and drilled into the tent, while Brandon took a step back with his hunting knife his expression full of anger and scorn, the donkey's meat that came to hand. Ah, it just flew away, but it didn't matter. As long as he killed this dead omen, Name's body was still his. I don't even know if I should continue to call you Brandon. Domi pulled a blanket from the side and covered May, while addressing the well-acted man in front of him. My original name was. Never mind. I'm not interested in knowing a dead man's name. A leaf with a sharp tip and a string of special symbols flew to Brandon's side with a swift sound. Flying thunder god's art. S.H. Brandon didn't even say a word as the dead omen that was right in front of his eyes suddenly disappeared, and when he reappeared he was already standing at his side, his own blood flowing from the standardized dagger that was held backwards in his hand. Cough, cough, cough. His throat was slit, along with his vocal cords, and he bled profusely and could no longer make a sound. In the end, he could only fall helplessly to the ground, his eyes looking at the ground, gradually losing their luster, until he died. He couldn't understand how this death omen could move so fast. Ch. Unbearable. With a strong shake, Domi swiped away the tainted blood from the dagger and turned back slightly to May. Stay here and don't move. I'll come find you once I've finished with this group outside. With that, he drew his bow and arrow and rattled the door of the tent. The decibel of Brandon's no just now was already high enough, and the noise made later was even more impossible to hide. They had already been discovered by the thieves. It was better to take care of the pursuers here than to run away in a mess with May and Miko, who were both burdensome and inefficient. May watched in awe as Domi faced a gang of nearly a hundred thieves with the strength of one man, unknowingly looking dumbfounded. She had never felt that Mr. Deadly Omen's back was so magnificent, which was still a little bit of a midget who couldn't grow tall enough. I don't know how much better than Brandon, who died on the side. At the same time, she also knew that she could not persuade Domi, and could only silently bless him. Mr. Dead omen, even if you can't fight, you must return safely ah, Brandon's tent was a relatively large one, and it was also relatively close to the main center of the camp, and the campfire could be seen right outside, when Domi stepped out of the tent, the steel tipped arrow was already, hitched to the bow, while the thieves outside were still mortared in place, looking over their shoulders in amazement, whoever was inside pulled out an arrow and aimed it at them as soon as they came out, power of math and science, help me, secret parabola, shoo, the arrow broke through the air and plunged directly into the head of one of the thieves, splashing the person next to him with red and white liquid. As the man fell down with a poof, the thieves reacted, shouting, enemy attack, there is an enemy attack. While there was still some distance left, Domi intended to make good use of it and directly drew four arrows from his quiver in a quadruple shot. With the addition of the Exodus proficiency level and mathematical parry, every time he pulled the bowstring, a person would inevitably fall to the ground in response. As if the roar of a sniper rifle ruled the battlefield, his bowstring was the whisper of death. The alarm of an enemy attack startled the bald leader inside the tent, and he didn't even have time to play with the abducted women, copied his machete and rushed out. As soon as he went out, he saw Domi, who was frantically kiting his own minions, and randomly roared in anger. Bold fanatic, how dare you trespass my territory? Report your name. The boss had already appeared, so it seemed that kiting would not be possible. Duomi unhurriedly put away his bow and arrow and said in a bland tone, My name, Dead Omen. After saying that, he no longer cared about the impotent and furious thief leader, changed into his gloves, turned his head and rushed into the pile of thieves next to the bonfire, and jumped big at Doomsday. As everyone around him fell into a state of fear at the sight of the scarecrow, Domi maintained the fear field and changed back to his own form, whispering softly, Susanu. In an instant, four deep purple ribs and a pair of arm bones emerged from the void and wrapped Domi securely. The rib bones were able to withstand most physical attacks, 
and the large arm bones became the means for him to attack on a large scale, like an arm. With a single thought, Susanoo's arm bone began to wildly sweep from side to side, like a bulldozer, smashing the thieves who were frozen in place like potatoes out of the way, falling to the ground like potatoes, presumably capable of falling into serious injuries, and not able to get up for a while. At once, the wailing sound is endless, the dust on the ground, blood splattered, and even more golden flashes of light flashed in between, raised huge fists seemed to be everywhere, he had the entire battlefield in his hands. The originally cheerful bonfire party had turned into a large funeral scene in just one moment, which was like pressing his Tuso's face on the chopping block, cannot endure, this guy called Dead Omen must die here today, he directly jumped into the battlefield, his robust body was like a small truck, stepping on the yellow soil and splashing a large amount of dust, with a person long machete in his hand, he looked quite imposing, at this time, the small thieves have been cleaned up by Domi, the fish are hiding behind the tent, not even dare to venture out, the stragglers had already been killed by him in fear, the newly gained villain value kept brushing the screen, and this, was the dueling ground he had come up to directly make his full strength and created for himself, Tuso glanced around, there were crushed dead corpses everywhere, and was so angry that he laughed out loud, good, very good, dead omen, right, killing so many of my men, you won't be able to get out alive tonight, it's supposed to be immortal, so let's dispense with the harsh words and whatnot, quite refreshing, then I won't waste more words with you, take it, only to see Tuso carrying the machete on his shoulder, he rushed up with an arrow step and swung the machete towards Domi's neck, the machete flew in mid-air, and it actually looked quite slow from Domi's perspective, while in the next moment, Tuso's mouth grinned widely, elementary fire magic, dance of the inferno wheel, sparks appeared out of nowhere around the downward slashing machete, and then expanded in an instant like a prairie fire, the burning flames wrapped around the entire blade and burned the surrounding air as well, under the pseudo-vacuum environment, the speed of the machete accelerated in disguise, it suddenly shifted speed and slashed head-on, this was the way to fight, Domi's pupils rapidly dilated, and he also responded immediately, imperial engine on, it was actually using the rapid breathing method, it was just that he wanted to use it a little more handsomely, a vague rising airflow surged from the corners of his mouth, and instead of retreating, he swung his fist and rushed forward, Tuso laughed even more wildly, stupid move, Domi also looked like he was ready to fight, completely in the battle mode, the passion was so memorable that even the corners of his mouth lifted up, come on, let's see who has the last laugh, freshly coated, fresh from the oven, just as Domi's fist was about to come into contact with Tuso's machete, Domi, who had been yelling for a showdown just a moment ago, simply disappeared, this sudden change in the bewilderment of losing his target caused a moment of dismay on Tuso's face, and his entire body flinched as he didn't know where he was going to slash with his machete, and at his back, a golden flash of light flickered slightly, and Domi appeared with it, the core sank down, carrying the force of the key, and an inch punch slammed into Tuso's kidneys, the chi penetrated Tuso's body along with the force, wreaking havoc, and in an instant, it twisted half of Tuso's kidney into pieces, and the chi was lost, but the total amount remained the same, and it would soon grow back, put, Tuso's whole body shook, spraying a mist of blood in the air, what have you done to me, he only felt that he was punched just now, and the force wasn't that great, but why did his kidneys explode, his already heavy body, after losing a kidney, it was like being without half a brace, even walking was shaky up, this was the ploy that Domi had plotted as soon as he met Tuso, to take advantage of his intelligence blind spot of not knowing about the existence of the flying thunder god, to hit him by surprise, and then go out of his way to make a fist-sized chi leave his body to inflict the maximum amount of damage on Tuso, originally, he wanted to hit liver, but liver was too high up to be sure, so he chose to explode his kidneys, as far as the result was concerned, for a guy who was already a bit weak in the kidneys, the effect of exploding the kidneys was outstanding nah, it's never too late, is it, looking at Domi's mask full of mockery, and then listening to these words that were purely used to anger him, Tuso immediately got angry, okay, I'm telling you, small moves won't work with me, elementary fire magic, raging fire, first order, the already irascible magic met the even more irascible Tuso, 1 plus 1 was greater than 2, Domi quickly pulled away, only to see Tuso roaring in the sky, his huge body was ablaze with flames, like a full body version of the dance of the inferno wheel, wherever he went, a pseudo vacuum would be burned, and his speed would be further increased, a warrior who focuses on strength and also has an overly agile body, that kind of combat power is quite terrifying, not counting Atelier, probably the most powerful enemy he has ever encountered, must fight with all my might, the flying thunder god on the dagger was ready to strike, soon, 
They launched themselves into another encounter. Tuso ran, leaving a long-lasting flame behind him with every step. Domi was afraid of the flames on his body and could only stay in place, waiting for him to strike first. Natuso then lost his scruples and began a serpentine walk, circling around Domi and letting the flames burn all around him until he had no way back. The firefield finally surrounded the two men, a red shaking before their eyes. The temperature was so high that the scene in front of them was distorting. The smell of ashes was incomparably pungent. The camp at this moment was like a purgatory on earth. Boom! The wood that made up the huge campfire collapsed in the sea of fire with a loud bang. It was like a signal, and the two rushed towards each other at the same time. Dance of the inflaming wheel. Tuso's fire-burning machete kept slashing down as if it was a guillotine, forcing Domi to, dodged repeatedly, and Domi repeated the same trick, taking advantage of the backswing of Tuso's slashes. He once again used flying thunder god to swing to his back, wrapped his hand in key, and slammed his fist down. Susanu's giant fist made of bone also smashed together in the same place. Tuso's body was shaken, almost falling to be exact. However, wrapped in flame magic, Domi didn't cause any substantial damage. At most it caused a bit of an impact. On the contrary, it was the chi that wrapped his fist that was sharpened by a drop, but only a drop. He still had the power to fight. Ha, ha ha ha, ha 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 ha, dead omen. Are you tickling me? Use a little more strength. Underneath the mask, sweat had already soaked his hair. The temperature was just too high, coupled with the drastic movements caused by the emperor's engine. His own heat was constantly increasing and could not be evaporated. He felt like his heart was going to melt away can't go on like this. In the state of exploding kidneys, Tuso's rage burning won't last long, but I can't drag it out for long either, so it has to be a quick battle. Deplete his magic and strength. Domi quickly settled on a battle strategy. Flying Thunder God, the dagger was thrown from his hand, and the runes on it flashed, summoning Domi over to Tuso's immediate surroundings. And at this moment, Tuso was still in a state of laughter, completely not noticing Domi's instantaneous movement. Absolute speed. This was the biggest reliance he had to be able to defeat Tuso. If one blast didn't work, then let's do it a few more times and knock him into the fire he created. In the intervening period when he had just taken to the air and hadn't begun to fall, Duomi used Tuso's arm as a pivot point and leapt up once again, his whole body spinning 180 degrees, and his heel with acceleration slammed down hard on his chin. Put. All the saliva in his mouth was kicked out by this upward kick, and Tuso's body leaned backward. At the same time, Susanu put his hands together and threw them over from the side with stored energy, smashing into Tuso's chest. That wasn't all. With a backward step, he performed Flying Thunder God again and teleported in front of Tuso, and Susanu slammed another punch into his face. After a few stumbles from his already off-balance body coupled with a succession of kung fu strikes from in front of him, he was completely unable to control his body, and collapsed helplessly towards the sea of fire behind him. The heat of the small flames he had created ignited the surrounding tents and the fire that formed the sea of fire was already a natural fire. Crap! Tuso secretly said that it was not good. Although he was a fire magician, the fire burning on his body and the natural fire were not the same thing. His own fire was equivalent to his own magic power, but the natural fire was the purest fire, with a real temperature, a real aura. Even he who was burning with rage may be burned in the fire. History is never short of such people. For example, the water magician who drowned in the sea, the sound magician who was killed in noise, the poison magician who was poisoned in poisonous mist, and so on, he was naturally the same, just as he was completely plunged into the sea of fire, even the magical flames that wrapped around him couldn't lower the temperature for him much, he screamed miserably and kept twisting his body, slapping the natural fire burning on his body with all his strength, while fighting too, he tried to get up at the same time, at this time, not to mention the pressure to get up, Domi is close to the wall of fire will be hundreds of degrees of heat will be forced back, can only wait from afar to watch Tuso in the sea of fire struggle, but not a moment later, a black shadow still came out from the sea of fire, this is not dead, life force is quite tenacious ah, at this time, Tuso, the skin on his body was almost all scorched black, and his face was also, the whole thing was like an old African cousin, hiccup, a black smoke gushed out from his mouth, death omen, today I am dying, but also to die with you, saying that, Tuso directly burned his life, turning the life force that he had exchanged for life reduction into magic power, all of which was put into the raging flame. At that moment, the flames on his body burned to the extreme, just like a demon that walked out of the sea of fire. Bang, 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 bang. He frantically ran towards Domi. His speed was even far higher than last time. The bushy hands were open, clearly intended to give Domi a strong manlock man. TSK, TSK, TSK. A disdainful voice came out from under the mask 
Perseverance is commendable, but that's where your upper limit is. Trash is still trash and can only be impotent and furious. Farewell. The dagger was casually hurled beyond the sea of fire by Domi. Flying Thunder God. With a swish, Tuso was the only one left on the scene, and the fire was trapped like a clown in a fire of his own making. Carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide, long over the limit in the air, were sucked into his lungs without reservation, and as his vision began to blur, he had long known he was hopeless. Plopping to his knees above the earth, his eyes stared blankly in the direction Domi had left. In resignation, helplessness and anger, he let out the last roar of his life, causing the entire mountain to shake. Death Omen, I'll be waiting for you in hell. Then, the huge figure completely lost its breath, and did not fall to his death. Everything that happened in the Twilight Forest as well as in the camp was watched by the assassins from the Northern Fall Division, only to see that every few trees in the forest, there was a guy in black robes crouching somewhere, with a small notebook in his hand, writing something down every now and then. The battle is over. A black-robed man flew over using wind magic and said to his colleague who specialized in taking notes, regarding this shit that young Master Dominic did on his vacation, I think it's necessary to report it to Officer Atelier as well as the head of the house. Is it all recorded? Yes sir. Please read it. The black-robed man known as Sir took the brown leather pamphlet and flipped through it. On the very first day of the vacation, young Master Dominic transferred the Nightwish Tavern under his name to Moray. Moray, a commoner, who used to live in the slums. His mother was seriously ill, and was observed to be on the verge of death. Returning to the world, Moray gladly accepted and offered his loyalty to the young master. Then, young Master Dominic went to the costume store and weapon store, and purchased a black and white taunt mask, a ranger's cloak a bow and arrow, and registered as an adventurer in the giant tree under the codename of Dead Omen, and teamed up with the other three to take on the giant tree, team up with three other people to take on the mission of eliminating the emerging bandit gang in the twilight forest, and was betrayed on the way. In short, this black-robed man who was in charge of recording consolidated all the information together and stated it without any details. Hmm, no problem. After the contents inside were proofread again by the officer, this report was handed over to Atelier as well as Carlos' desk at the first opportunity. During the battle of the leader of the thieves, too so, Domi showed an incredible talent for archery, used necromancy magic to summon a powerful armor of the outer covering type, and used summoning magic frequently to change positions during the battle, ultimately defeating too so. Carlos looked at the report's description of Domi during the battle and was in a bit of a trance. Was this still his son whose shadow department talent was only elementary? How is it that he even knows the necromancy department and the summoning department? The two parochial magic departments? Also, why did he have to go incognito to become an adventurer for good reason? It's hard, tiring and dangerous, and you can only earn a few coins. Carlos was puzzled. Could it be that the talent test was wrong at that time? He suddenly thought of a possibility with a high probability. If that was the case, was Domi actually still a genius in the field of magic? No, we have to hurry and call him back for another test. Carlos was instantly nervous and excited. A child with double A's in strength and speed, as well as a strong magical talent. If he thrived, he would be able to revitalize their family for several generations with the power of one person. The sky is going to revitalize Blofeld. Just at this moment, a knock suddenly sounded outside the door. Come in. He quickly returned to normal. Ha! Changing faces is just a basic skill of nobles. The person who came was actually the head maid Catherine. Today she was still so meticulous and strict it could be seen from her dress. Even the position of the buttons was not even remotely close to the standard. Oh, Catherine it's rare for you to come over. What's the matter? Your lordship, I heard that you arranged for young master Dominic to be on a outside for a vacation. The other two young masters were very curious, so they let me come to ask about the situation. How is young master Dominic he is doing now? Edward and Argyle sent you? Yes, the two young masters are busy with their studies, and recently Mr. Connor Reeves is preparing to arrange midterm exams for them, so he really doesn't have the time to come over and ask in person. Carlos just nodded slowly, not making any comment on this, saying, if you had come over earlier in the day, then the answer you would have gotten would have been that Domi is doing quite well there at the villa on the outskirts of the city. But for now, I will tell you that Domi will have to come back tomorrow, and that the vacation has already been postponed, assuming that he can get through the midterm exams. Why? Catherine was at a loss. This was a vacation that Domi had been looking forward to with great difficulty. Why did it end so hastily? Carlos smiled mysteriously. Are you so ill-informed as the head maid? Our neighbor, the Duchess of Greenville is bringing her precious little daughter to visit. And Mitch told me before that they are coming to talk about marriage. Three choices for future husbands. How can Domi be absent from such an important event? So it was this matter. Catherine had heard about the marriage. 
but it was supposed to be at the end of this month, and Domi came back half a month earlier? Carlos probably didn't tell her the truth. Never mind. It wasn't something she could control. As long as Domi came back earlier, wouldn't it be fine? It was true that she missed the little one quite a bit after not seeing her for a few days, but she didn't miss it nearly as much as Kelsey did. Every night she ran to her room to relieve her loneliness, saying things like she's going to die if she doesn't have a pillow to sleep with. She can't sleep at all. Now it was good that no one had finally come to disturb her restful sleep. I understand. Excuse me for now. Leaving Carlos' office, a few more steps to the fork in the road and a turn in the road. They were met with several large faces, eyeing them. Kelsey, what did his lordship say about what? How is Domi? Edward, when the hell is my stupid brother coming back? I want a vacation too. Mickelson, that. Ah, that young master Domi promised before. I still haven't been told how to make the egg fried rice. Argyle, why are we all in such a hurry? Domi will come back sooner or later. In fact, it's quite good if he doesn't. At least there's one less candidate for AI way. Brother, you're thinking about other little girls now? Hehejia seeing that you're usually a prude. It turns out that you're a womanizer at heart just like me. What? Who are you calling a womanizer? Explain it to me. Ha ha, I can't catch you. Brother, you're old and boring. I think you have itchy skin. Eat my fist. The scene was a mess. Catherine helplessly held her forehead, slightly raised the decibel and said, Stop it all. Do you still want to listen? It was like pressing the mute pause button. Everyone was about to cock their ears to the sky. Ahem. His lordship said that Domi has to come back tomorrow. The reason being that the Duchess of Greenville is about to visit. So he should prepare first and drop his midterm exams on the way. Edward reacted most violently at this statement. Ness, Domi's good days are over I can't stand it when people take vacations and I go to school. Especially my good buddy. Catherine immediately added. His lordship also said that the one month vacation will be extended when he returns. Provided that Domi passes his midterm exams. Clam? In other words, as long as this guy passes the exam. He can leisurely drink coffee and watch the maid sisters while watching us suffer through classes? In theory, yes. Gah. Edward was petrified Sigma, asterisk. In chapters 25 and 35, I set the name of the highest officer of the Northern Falls Division as Terence, but later on it became Atelier, probably because I was taking exams at the time and my mind was a bit confused, and I mixed up the names while preparing for the exams and writing the words. Now it still sounds better to read Atelier, so I changed all Terence to Atelier. I'm sorry for the inconvenience and confusion. The scene of Domi's battle just now was still fresh in May's mind. Superior archery skills, powerful necromancy, a stance like a cheetah, and an instantaneous movement technique that could be called magical. She was dazzled by the sight. That's right. As soon as Tuso set fire to the camp, May grabbed her clothes and ran out the door, and no one gave a damn about her, and witnessed the entire battle from a hill a little higher up behind the camp. She even broke into a cold sweat for Domi when she saw him trapped in the fire but it was good to get out, and without her armor, she ran towards Domi at the top of her lungs, waving and shouting at the same time, Mr. Dead Omen, whom, hearing a voice from behind him, Domi immediately put his mask back on, originally he wanted to get some air, but now it seems it won't work, so he had to continue to play the identity of Dead Omen, saying, it's May, I'm glad to see you're still alive, thanks to Mr. Dead Omen I was able to retrieve my life, in front of the person who saved her life, May didn't even dare to look up at him, as if she owed him a lot. After all, Dead Omen had risked so much alone in order to save her. I really, really thank you. I don't know what to use as repayment. After a pause, she stammered and continued. With, with, with your body. Okay? Ha, ha. Domi felt that his ears seemed to be hallucinating. There were actually girls who threw themselves at him like that? Then he still learned a chicken neck flirting techniques ah. He could have saved her with all his strength and sensitivity. Open a harem or just around the corner. When fantasizing, eyes also unconsciously glanced down. The face with a blushing child face that. Shy look choo choo poor. It is difficult not to be born of protection feelings. Want. In a word. Is this a plot that he can carry out without paying? Domi did not say anything for a long time. May then realized that it was his own words were too direct. And hastily apologized. I'm sorry mister. Dead omen. It's me who didn't make myself clear. May then told Domi about the characteristics of her Light Shield family's first line bloodline, and Domi then realized that what May said was not a promise in exchange for her body, but it was also considered a promise in exchange for her body, and it was included in the promise in exchange for her body anyway. Logic is very clear. She just want to use the bloodline of the power of the essence of the marrow to repay Domi. As for like, not much, more is just admiration. It was because of this clarity that Domi refused dryly. To be honest, he did not come here to save May or Honeynut. 
His purpose was only to build up his reputation and save up two points of villain value. After this battle, the villain value reserve increased by 50, 000, equivalent to 500 consecutive draws, earning a pot full of money. Why would he want to accept a young girl's most precious treasure? He suffered from the shame. Domi shook his head and said in a serious tone, May, there is no need to do so. A girl's first time, it is still necessary to leave it to one's beloved ah. As for repayment, well, I think I've gotten what I wanted. May stared blankly at the mask on Domi's face, the pair of penetrating violet eyes, as if they possessed the power to penetrate, to see the reality beneath his mask. Mr. Dead Omen, he's really, really gentle, and gentle, and considerate, thoughtful, and powerful. It was so many times better than that beast Brandon. Thanks to the fact that she had a crush on him in the past, it was just disgusting to think about it now. At that moment, Domi's words pulled May back to reality. I'm going to cut Tuso's head off. The commission. It should be considered over. Go back to the town early so you can turn in the commission. Ha! Huh? He had just taken a step when something suddenly came to mind in his head. Then he forgot it again because he wasn't impressed. But it always felt kinda important. What exactly did I forget? Mr. Dead Omen. Are you looking for something? Miko-san and I can help you look for it together. Oh right. Domi slapped his head. He seemed to have forgotten about that little girl Miko. She was captured together with Mei. But did not see Miko in that original tent ah. It's hard not to. Domi looked toward the oversized tent that had burned to ashes and belonged exclusively to the chief. And had a foreboding feeling in his heart. Gah. Gah. Suddenly. A chirp similar to that of a crow came from above midair. Looking up. Hua, it was indeed a good-sized crow, as long and wide as a helicopter, and it seemed to be grasping something on its two blood-stained claws, and before he could get a good look at it, the big crow's claws loosened, and a silhouette-like thing was landing. Seeing this, Domi summoned Susanu insufficient energy reduction, with only the right half of his arm, he caught her without any danger and put it on the ground to see that it was actually Miko, who had fallen into a deep sleep, he looked to the sky, the large raven from earlier had disappeared only to bring him the gift he needed most. An answer seemed to surface in his mind. Since the honey fruit had been arranged, those who had slipped through the cracks should have been arranged as well. A few minutes ago, on the branches of the tree, Sir, one of the black-robed men inquired, should those thieves who managed to escape be driven to extinction? And the chief of their squad didn't turn his head back. His eyes continued to stare at the battlefield as he said indifferently, what's the point of killing them? Aren't you clear about the young master's intentions? The young master is not someone who is greedy for beauty, and he risked so much to come back. Is he here to save people? If you think about it with your brain, it must be to make your adventurer reputation higher. Kill those survivors? Who will extol the young master? Oh no. Dead omens prestige? But, why would young master do that? An adventurer's name is not as good as a random word from him. What do you know? This is the superior's foresight. We can only see two or three steps ahead at most. While a heavenly talent like the young master has long planned dozens of steps ahead, this is only part of the plan. All we have to do is to execute and release them. Thank you for your guidance. Sir, I'll do it now. Looking at the thieves who kept fleeing into the distance, this officer revealed a meaningful expression. Young master Dominic, I've helped as much as I can. Make sure you mix it up. I've placed a lot of bets nah. Don't let me lose too much. After finding the honey fruit, they did some repair and then set off on the road. With a burden. Froze a day and a half to go back to the town. Will be of unknown origin honey fruit placed in the giant tree within the adventurer dormitory. The accommodation fees at their own expense. A rich woman like her must have this small amount of money. Domi and May, on the other hand, came together to the front desk to submit their quests. A large, bloodstained head being carried up to the front desk was still a shock to some low-level adventurers. The people around them were all talking about them yet. But Domi felt that most of them were the adventurer squads that May had once served. The front desk staff began to settle the bill. The original amount of the commission was 100 gold dragons. The internal problems of the team do not participate in the bonus. And the strength of the leader of the bandit gang was misjudged. The most I can give you here is 5 percentage points, plus 10 percentage points for the overall performance. For a total of 115 gold dragons, please confirm pro. Look, that black haired one is the one I told you about before. A super drag queen, as long as you team up with her. Something will definitely go wrong during the commission. Around them, the other adventurers and mages were talking about May's arrival. Is it really that evil? I didn't believe it before until I teamed up with her once. It seems like your old bosses used to have a lot of opinions about you Domi teased without fear of trouble. May, on the other hand, was filled with embarrassment. Those are my own problems, and I don't blame them for saying so. You are rather good-tempered. Here, take it. 
After saying that, Domi threw the bag containing 115 golden dragons directly to Mei, and the minted coins engraved with golden dragons clashed against each other, emitting a pleasant ringing sound that represented desire. It's all yours. Mei was shocked as she took the bag with her hands and feet. Ha, huh? all of it? No, 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 all of this money should belong to you. I don't want a penny. I just want Mr. Dead Omen to take me on a commission next time as well. Even if it's only a small share, it's fine. I need money, a lot of money. There was always a sense of deja vu with these words, as if Murray had been this way back then. What, is your mother sick too? Domi just casually said, not realizing that May's eyes widened and looked at him with incredulity. How did you know? It's still true. These two people are simply different people but have the same encounter, but also both for him to run into. With that being the case, May wasn't going to hide it from Domi. The two of them found a treehouse and May told Domi everything that had happened to her and her family. M. So, the reason why you came to be an adventurer boils down to making money right. May bit her lips tightly and nodded. It wasn't really something that was unspeakable. It was just that in front of Domi, May didn't want to show her unpleasantness, but Domi didn't mind and wouldn't mind her. For May, Domi actually defined her as a future type talent like Moray. The Light Shield family, a famous family from a long time ago, began to decline after a demonic frenzy until it withered away, but that didn't mean they were weak. There was still a tall man to hold the sky when it collapsed, and Light Shield was this tall man, which was why they died in front of everyone. Just like affirming the strength of the Light Shield family, Domi was still sure of May's future potential. Since this is the case, why don't you take May under your wing as well? It will undoubtedly be a huge help if it grows up. Anyway, it's all about making money, Domi proposed. Why don't I show you a way out, without risking your life, and still get a bigger paycheck? With that, May was lulled by Domi to the entrance of the Nightwish Tavern, the center of town. May had come to the main city of Blofeld for quite some time, and had heard about the prosperity and extravagance of the center part of the city, where the honorarium paid to the carriage driver was counted in silver wolves, and if she enjoyed a normal level of food, she would have to pay for it with gold dragons, and yet Domi knew an owner who could open such a large tavern here. Yes, I know the owner behind this place quite well. It's perfectly possible to arrange you in, but you'll have to work well too, lest the others look down on you by saying you came in through the back door. Mr. Dead Omen, you're really good. May is still unable to recover from Mr. Dead Omen's interpersonal relationship that is comparable to the sky. She feels that Mr. Dead Omen is definitely not as simple as an adventurer. Maybe he is a prince of some small country or something, right? Don't stare. Let's go. I'll take you in. Saying that, Domi took May's wrist and brought the somewhat dull girl inside, waiting for her to walk on her own. She might even be able to trip over the threshold when entering a door. Once inside, the faint perfume that filled the air was like a fragrance from nature. Not only refreshing, with the surrounding decorations, it also gave people a fantasy of lying on a grassy slope and looking up at the stars. Night wish. What a beautiful name. If you worked here, I think it would become even more beautiful. May's little face instantly reddened again. The two made their way to the front desk. The handsome young bartender didn't recognize the masked Domi and politely asked. Welcome, what can I get you? We don't serve spirits during the day, but we do have smaller wines with lower strengths and a variety of dishes cooked by our chef. Do you need a menu? No, I'm not here to eat. Take me to see Moray and tell him an acquaintance is visiting. The bartender glanced at Domi in disbelief. This masked man. Would he actually know the owner they just parachuted in? All right, please wait a moment. I'll go and inform. It didn't take long for the bartender to step down from the upper floors with a hurried pace, respectfully welcoming Domi and May upstairs. Miss, the shield can be taken off your back and placed here. I can hold it for you. May looked to Domi with a pleading look. Give it to him. It's kind of a pain in the ass to carry around all the time. When Domi also handed out the bow, May was relieved to hand over her personal shield. Her whole body's equipment were all standard road goods, not worth a few bucks. The only thing that was two-thirds as tall as her was this big gray round shield, a shield that had been passed down from her family's ancestors, and it could be said to be the remnants of the light shield family, so she really had to keep an extra eye out for it. After the equipment is unloaded, the body is light, walking feel with the wind. With that, the two of them arrived in Moray's private room. This place originally belonged to the manager of the tavern but now it had been transformed by M.O. Lay into a multifunctional space with a gym, study, office, washroom, and training room. As for the bedroom, since there wasn't enough space, he left the bedroom out and made a floor bed and slept on the ground. Seeing Mori's floor bunk as well as this remodeled room, Domi felt that he really hadn't looked at the wrong person. Mori was working his way up like a sponge now. Hi, what brings you here? 
Mori greeted as he wiped the sweat from his forehead. Mei was also quietly observing the boy who didn't look much older than her. Now with short, crisp, clean-cut black hair, and his originally lean physique now gradually eating its way back, showing the youth and vigor he deserved. It was like a neighborhood brother. Domi also secretly nodded his head. It seemed that Mori had already heard something from the bartender's description and knew that he was hiding his identity. Good. The emotional intelligence was high. Hey Mori, it's been a while. Let's sit down and talk. The three sat facing each other in the office and Domi introduced Mori. This child's name is May. A single word. Arrange a job for her. People earn some money to pay for her mother's illness. When she earns enough money, you can ask her if she wants to stay on. How about it? Her mother is also seriously ill? Yes. Magic side disease. If there are 300 gold dragons there is still salvation. This way. Moray directly stood up and wrote a check amounting to 300 gold dragons and handed it to May. Take this check and go to Blofeld Bank where you can directly withdraw 300 gold dragons. First treat your mother's illness and then come back to work. May didn't dare to take it. She asked. Aren't you afraid that I'll take this money and just leave here? If it was someone else, I wouldn't be able to be that generous. But you were introduced to me by my best friend. It's just a small favor. So just take it. To use a phrase from economics, it's an advanced spending, equivalent to several months of your salary in the future. But don't be afraid. This store includes food and lodging. So you won't starve even if you don't have any money in your pocket. Moray seemed to have arranged a secretary position for May, specializing in helping him organize the tavern's profit and loss situation as well as the market situation report. And the chores that he usually didn't have time to do because of exercise and study were also served by May. It had to be said that Murray was going to be picky. The position of a secretary, who had to do a lot of work in a detailed manner, could best enhance one's ability, and also lighten one's burden at the same time. Saving time. Being the efficiency supremacist that he was, Domi was quite positive about this approach. Now that he had arranged for May, it was time for him to return to the villa to rest. After a most difficult life and death battle, and running around day and night, if it wasn't for the breathing method that continued to support him, I'm afraid that the next second he would have collapsed in exhaustion on the main road. Now he just wanted to make a trip to the big soft bed and sleep for two days first. He returned to the villa around 10 in the morning, couldn't care less about eating, took a shower changed his pajamas, lay down, and then closed his eyes and went to sleep peacefully. This sleep is very dead. To the next day's noon he only managed to wake up, or woke up hungry. The maid thoughtfully brought the meal to his bed. Conveniently, he asked as he stuffed his mouth like a gourmand. By the way Louise, I remember what you instructed me yesterday. I was too tired. Can you please repeat it aside? Louise said honestly and respectfully as she placed her hands overlapping on the small of her back and stood up straight. Yes. His lordship wrote the day before yesterday requesting that you return to the castle yesterday, and I reminded you of that. But you didn't seem to be in very good shape yesterday. Domi's easygoing nature and penchant for admiring girls, from teenage girls to young women, was well known in the circle of maids. It was because of this character and hobby that none of the maids felt that Domi would verbally abuse and beat them, unless they were outrageously wrong. Domi would only stick it out with them and gently correct their mistakes. So there was no need at all to lie in order to avoid chastisement. If Domi dumped the pot on her without saying a word or reason, then she would have to come up with something else to say anyhow, and doing so would inevitably keep the message from being complete and accurate. That was where the personal charm came in, though not quite as decent that is. So I'm oversleeping here? If I remember the date correctly, you did miss it. However, Domi ate and drank as usual, and even slept in, in his words, he was late anyway, so he might as well swing it completely and go back after dinner and get one less discipline from Carlos. He used his toes to think of what Carlos was going to say to him. What time management ah, the most basic integrity between people is to abide by the agreement and so on blah blah blah. It was too much for his ears. That's it then Louise. Help me prepare the carriage and traveling gifts first, and call me after dinner. As you wish. After that, it took until 6 o'clock in the evening, and Domi had already finished dinner at the villa, changed into his everyday clothes, and took a suitcase containing the black cloak of the Northfall division, and rode on the carriage home. The outskirts of town were not far from his family's castle, and with the speed of the carriage and the emptiness of the road, it was an hour and a half away. It was half past seven at night, and there were still many, many rooms were lit. Coming back now wasn't really a disturbance, right? When I entered the hall, except for the absence of a few maids sweet welcome home young master, everything else was the same as before, but it's not a good feeling, how can I say it? Everything has a loss, there must be a gain. Just when he wanted to go back to his room and spend the day peacefully, a figure walked in from the side room, and Domi fixed his eyes to see that it was actually Catherine. 
She should be doing a little beauty and pampering package at this time of the day. Why is she still guarding here in her uniform? Did those guys even record what they were doing in the villa and report it to Carlos? Looking at Domi with the look of a thief. Catherine was furious and went up to look down with a cold face. Domi, welcome home. Come with me to see the master. Ha ha, what a cold welcome home. The heel stepped on the floor and made an extraordinarily crisp echo. Domi followed Catherine and asked cautiously. Catherine, you were waiting for me specifically? Well, his lordship assigned me to keep watch here. Been waiting a long time, have you? She was silent for a long time before she said quietly. Yes, from yesterday morning until now. Apart from sleeping and working, I had to wait for you there whenever I could. That tone, like a little girl with a bit of temper complaining in front of her boyfriend. Domi's heart was like being scratched by a cat's claws. Not to mention how itchy, cute, wanting to. I'm really sorry, but you know, the card. Father is really scary when he gets angry. I'm actually not afraid of it. I'm just worried that his old man's blood pressure will come up and make some kind of disease. But these reasons are so pale. Well, Catherine I'm sorry. Find a time to compensate you. Hey, forget it. It's not like I'm really blaming you. Silence fell between the two again. Walking, not realizing that they had arrived at the place. Domi, what should be faced is ultimately to be faced. Escaping can't solve the problem. Hey, I'll leave first. Don't come to me if something happens. He is still the first time to see Catherine continuously sigh so many times. It seems that she is at the door as a lookout stone. When it is genuinely force haggard. Let's make it up to her when we get something good from the card draw. Domi thought so. Then forced herself to calm down and knocked on the door of Carlos' office. Come in. Crunch. Father, I'm back. Only to see Carlos' grade papers while not raising his head. You still know to come back? Ah, uh, this is not what you told me to come back. He put down his pen and made Domi sit in front of him and started the tutoring mode. I understand that you're tired and want to rest a little longer. But what are you doing dawdling until evening? I always tell you three brothers that the most basic integrity between people is to keep appointments and learn time management. Soon, half an hour had passed. Carlos himself was talking a little bit dry, picking up the cup next to him, drinking the perishable water inside in a single gulp. Back to the topic. This time I temporarily called you back. Mainly because I arranged another talent testing ceremony for you. And wanted to test your talent again. My magical talent? Domi froze. I'm not just a beginner's talent in the shadow department. What else is there to test? Don't play dumb. A beginner's shadow department talent can use powerful necromancy and summoning magic? Are you a super genius? Don't worry. I'll personally help you test this time, and the new results will not be known to anyone but you and I. The test of talent is to allow the user to inject mana into the magic orb, and indirectly determine a person's magical talent by calculating the total amount of mana. Therefore, it has become standard for human cubs to be tested on the seventh day after birth and it is also an indicator of magical talent recognized by the public. However, there were some parents who believed that their children had the talent, but just hadn't grown up yet. This gave birth to the new late measurement magic orb. Take a large number of magicians of this age group to take the average of the total capacity of magic power, and then find out a large number of advanced talent people to take the value. Calculate this age group, how much magic power is considered to be what talent, but the magic talent measured in this way is not recognized by society at large. Only the parents themselves know to understand. This is where the late measuring ball comes into play. Domi was up early in the morning the next day. And after taking in the first breath of morning air and completing his breathing rotation cycle he was immediately found by Carlos and taken into the testing room. The same one he had used in the first place. Put your hand on it. Put it on. Then loosen the gates that you control the magic with and let them all out. Domi was careful with his control. In essence, he was after all a perfect level shadow system talent and the magic power stored in his body had long since come to a rather terrifying amount. How to describe it? For example, Susanoo and Flying Thunder God, one of which was necromancy magic and the other summoning magic, didn't use chakra and the corresponding necromancy magic and summoning magic, but used all shadow system magic. And even if all of it drew its power from shadow system magic, after fighting Tuso with a staff, with Susanoo and Flying Thunder God online the entire time, he still had a small amount of shadow system magic left. As soon as he stopped to rest, it would automatically clunk and clank back, like it was its own blue pill. It was like it simply couldn't be used up, with such a total amount. All of it was cathartic. Carlos must have gone crazy with laughter. Guile knew what he would do when he realized he had such an awesome talent. Show an intermediate level talent. Just muddle through. Dami thought so, exerting himself everywhere in his body, afraid that if he didn't pay attention, the control board wouldn't be able to control the gate. Ink-like magic power flowed out from Domi's palms and merged into this bigger magic ball. It's past the beginner level. Good. 
One more push and it'll be intermediate. Ah. Uh, Domi acted strained, as if he was desperately squeezing what was left of his body's power. Intermediate level now. Continue. Father, I can't. The magic power is going to bottom out. However, Carlos just casually glanced at him and said, Although I can't see your magic power reserves, I can sense your magic power aura. It's still strong. Don't pretend. Continue. Ha, huh? can you do it like this? Domi was directly dumbfounded. Okay, then giving a high level is always satisfactory. Right. So he continued his output, and finally raised the total amount to the advanced level. The joy in Carlos' eyes was already overflowing. If no one else was around, he would have pressed Gressa against the wall and kissed her hard. This time, I really can't, I'm about to be, being drained. At this time, inside the large magic sphere, the rich shadow-based magic had long since filled the space within it, and any further sinking into it would only cause it to continue to condense and blacken deeper and deeper. Carlos suspiciously monitored Domi for a while, but still found that the magic aura on his body remained at a relatively high level. It was unusual for magicians with only advanced talent to have their aura shriveled by this point. Where did Domi look like this? It wasn't like Carlos was inexperienced. He often visited other nobles' homes, and due to his status as a great mage and a great noble, he was always invited by other great nobles to be the instructor for their children's talent test at the cost of a favor. He had seen many situations like this one. Dominic, if you don't use all your skills, you won't be able to stay here tomorrow. Carlos used the threat of mandatory running away from home as a threat. For a child, this should be considered capital punishment. But instead of being scared, Domi became more excited. That didn't sit well with Carlos, and with his brain spinning frantically, he finally came up with another capital punishment in short order. By the time you come back, almost all of those maids you like will be rolled up and gone. Kelsey, ah, Catherine, without my permission, I'm afraid you'll never see them again. Click, Domi gritted her teeth. Okay, count yourself out. With his own understanding of Carlos, if things didn't go as Carlos wished, the extremely overbearing character he was hiding would be revealed. At that time, not to mention dismissing the maids, it was even possible to send them to the Northern Republic to dig potatoes. This was not without precedent. I remembered that when he was even younger, there was a big noble in the court who intentionally messed with Carlos because of conflict of interest, and after he tried the emperor again and again and realized that the emperor turned a blind eye, he was ready to mess with him, or the kind of mess that would lead to his death. In any case, they are all members of the rival nobles. It does not matter if they are killed. Then, Carlos first sent the northwestern branch of the North Fall Division to arrange for all of that family's nobility's collateral. Accidental deaths, car accidents, falling from a height, choking to death or whatever. No matter what, there is no repetition. After the collateral lineages were all dead, no effort was spared to cut off their wings. Commercial blockade, industry destruction, creating public opinion, cutting off their children and grandchildren. When they were pushed to the point of desperation, ha, the net opened up. So there was a scene in the imperial palace court. In the face of the other party's compromise and atonement, Carlos waved his hand, chose to forgive and said, recently, the potato reserves in the empire are stretched to the limit. Why don't you go to the northern border to dig some back? Add to the treasury? He was, after all, a spokesman for a rival noble faction. And this was an example and a clear-cut humiliation. No one would protect a useless outcast. So in the end, that earl really did go to the north to dig up potatoes, along with the rest of his direct family. Although Carlos couldn't possibly do the same to Domi, he would definitely arrange the maids in a proper way. Since you want to see it, don't be shocked when you do. Domi wasn't hiding anymore, and couldn't afford to anymore. So why not unleash the pain? Carlos was the only one who knew anyway. Boom. The gates inside him completely released, and the frenzy of magical power was like water breaking through a dike. Over halfway, only halfway to perfection, Carlos couldn't take his eyes off the ball, and his tone of voice became urgent. From the outside, the magic sphere had been dyed incomparably black, and the raging magic power in it was raging against the inner walls, making thumping noises. Finally, the last bit of magic power was stuffed inside. It's actually a shadow department perfect talent. The words just fell, only to hear a click sound. The magic ball used for testing, cracked, inside the castle shrine. What is it? Carlos stood alone in the dimly lit shrine, facing one of the many coffins, doing nothing and saying nothing, as if he was talking to the air void with his spirit. Elder Sebastian, there is something I must inform you of. Speak. This old timer woke up from his long sleep once again, looking in a bad mood. It's about Domi. Oh, it's that devouring scroll heir you chose in the first place. My third son, the one with the worst magical talent in the first place. Do you still have any memory of it? Go on. 
he recently went off to become an adventurer, and in the course of doing a commission, the Northern Fall Division scouts who followed him sent back a report stating that Domi had used a variety of powerful magics in battle and was already proficient in the use of magic hands. So what, if you can't do it with talent, you can do it just as well with more practice. I was originally thinking the same thing, but considering the amount of time Domi has been practicing magic, I then felt that there was something else fishy going on here. At this time, Carlos' eyes no longer had that ecstasy in them. To be precise, it was just hidden by him, not daring to show it. So I immediately recalled him and arranged another magic talent test for him, using a seven-year-old child's version of a magic ball. And guess what? The ball gave out. The shadow system magic power in Domi's body directly burst the ball. According to the indicators, the talent has reached the perfect level. Speaking of this, Carlos suddenly felt the air around him freeze a bit, and the air pressure went a bit lower. The silhouette of Elder Sebastian hung his head low and remained silent, but in Carlos' eyes, this silent old man was no different from an active volcano about to erupt. So what you're saying is that the perfect air I managed to find is gone again? Senior calm down. It's just gone? At that moment, the domain of forbidden magic unfolded with a bang, and Carlos only felt that the blood in his entire body had stopped flowing in general. Tremendously uncomfortable, as if he was being strangled. The more powerful a mage was, the more they suffered under such a domain, and if it got any worse, it was possible to die violently on the spot with difficulty breathing. But soon, the movement disappeared. A bit of a wake-up call and poor emotional control. He eased his own blood pressure, though he wasn't sure if the remnant had a blood pressure as such. So, any more farts to go? Hurry up if you have any. Ah, uh, with the current situation, it would be a bit of a waste to have Domi learn the devouring scroll again. Why don't you wait a bit longer, senpai, and see what happens when Domi's baby is born? If Sebastian still had eyes, he would have rolled his eyes violently at Carlos, in a bad mood, he said, give birth to a junior gifted pup, let me sleep over in joy, and then tell me in a few years that that test result was actually wrong, and that it was actually perfect giftedness, I'm so sick of this, go to sleep and don't come to me if you need anything, don't look at Sebastian so desperate, in fact, he still respected Carlos as well as Domi's own choices, and not a stubborn little old man, why force others, hey hey senior stay back, Carlos suddenly voiced out, Actually I can tell Domi about the existence of the devouring. Magic scroll's existence. As for whether he's willing to learn it or not, that's his own business. We all respect his choice. How about it? The words that came out of his mouth did help a bit, and Sebastian turned back and looked deeply at Carlos. It's worthy of being the Blofeld family's greatest believer in fate since the beginning of time. You're the one who has studied the randomness of the magic hands the most thoroughly. Fine. Since you want to leave the future to Domi's own choices, go ahead and do it using the perfect talent to learn the demon-eating scroll. Ha, huh, I'm really looking forward to it. After saying that, Sebastian also no longer in Carlos more nonsense, turned his head and went back to continue the long sleep, leaving Carlos alone to stand in the original place. On one side is the family's mainstay that will surely grow up to be an archmage, and on the other side is a brand new combination that has never been tried before. Will it be able to put together a future that no one has ever envisioned? Magic hands ah, I've never doubted your greatness. So much so that it makes me kind of hope that Domi picks the devouring scroll. On the other hand, the temporarily liberated Domi greeted his family and told them he was back before dipping his head into the library. Taking Argyle's notes and starting to cram them, Carlos had already told him personally that if he wanted to continue his vacation, he could, but only if he passed his midterm exams. Otherwise, not only would he lose his vacation, but he'd have to continue cramming during the mini vacation after the exams. So I don't care if I can continue to defer. The two vacations have to overlap. Carlos, you have deep calculations. He turned his grief into strength, the quill in his hand never stopping. The power of Ikimoku also played its most powerful role ever at this point in time, a temporary fix. Domi may not be able to remember so much at once, but at least there is an impression. And in the exam, as long as you can have an impression when you see the question, the answer is not so difficult to recall. You can have a direction even if you make it up. Relying on this kind of plug-in, Duomi learned from morning to 4.30 in the afternoon, and froze to make up for all the missed lessons, this learning ability is still there, he was so tired that he directly paralyzed on the table, books and such things, he will never touch once today, a touch of nausea, at this time, a maid who was quite familiar with him walked into the library with a dinner tray, placing a cup of black tea brewed with good tea leaves and a few pieces of cupcakes on Domi's side, young master, the afternoon tea you ordered is here, thank you, just put it there, if there was anything that could revitalize him after exhaustion, it would definitely be good food, preferably accompanied by a small drink of any kind, 
he was leisurely enjoying the afternoon tea culture only available to aristocrats, and his relaxed mind suddenly thought, ha, huh, isn't Aurora's form shaping up to come? Crap, it's been more than two days. At that moment, the system sent a dialog box. Yes, after Aurora finished shaping her form, it was placed according to the set position. Warm reminder, due to the remoteness of the elven settlements from here, the rules regarding time are different. Converting to human timekeeping, your blank template Aurora is now about to undergo the elven race's unique regular activity the awakening ceremony, the awakening ceremony, which is a unique event for the elven race. Awakening ceremony. You can watch Aurora's behavior in real time through the system. Prompt. About the operation. Aurora is aware of your existence, and you can communicate with her in real time without delay through your consciousness. Aurora may not independently use the system's card drawing mechanism or store, while you may give her items obtained from the system. About villain values. You can obtain villain values through Aurora, but you cannot obtain villain values from Aurora herself. Is it tracked in real time from a third person perspective? Enjoying afternoon tea while watching another person's life and adventures? It's not a live broadcast there's such a good thing? Thanks to the system, he was able to experience the benefits of the internet era once again. Yes, the world of the elves, how refreshing nah. Initializing the video, is adjusting the perspective. After a moment of black screen, located in front of Domi suddenly appeared a rectangular screen that no one could see except him, and the picture gradually became clearer. What met his eyes was a huge forest. Each tree was as thick as three or five people encircling it, sticking straight up into the sky, like a tall building, full of refreshing emerald green. The dense canopy of the trees were connected together, blocking the scorching sunlight from the outside world, leaving a coolness below. And among them, there was one tree that was exceptionally large. If the other trees were only described as sticking straight up into the sky, then this giant tree was literally stuck into the clouds. People standing on the ground couldn't see the top of it at all. They could only see its branches hanging down from the clouds. Nature's ingenious workmanship, Domi couldn't help but let out a heartfelt sigh. Beneath the giant tree, the forest elves who had been living here for generations and were known as the forest, built a huge and exquisite palace called the Palace of the Forest, which was the most spectacular man-made structure in the king city of Yuleta apart from the giant tree. Below the royal palace was a large area of elves' towns. Unlike human towns that were well organized, the elves' homes were generally built according to their own needs, with mountains, water, and trees, high and low. Familiar homes would be connected by suspension bridges, and over time, a stunning scenery was formed. The main idea is to follow the laws of nature. It's late afternoon here in Yaletta now. The sky is fading and the stars and the huge moon are beginning to give off their charm. Homes are lit up with orange and yellow lights and the starlight on the ground mirrors the starlight in the sky. Another unique sight here, but the coming of night does not bring silence to this place, for today there is a great annual ceremony that will take place. It was the momentous occasion for the newly adult elves to leap through the dragon gate, and it was also a day for all the Mori elves to worship their ancestors and revel in the festivities. Carrying glowing grasses, they marched through the streets in groups, singing mellifluous elven ballads as they made their way to the central square. Their various performances would be held there for entertainment. And then in the midst of the entertainment they would wait for the warbler of the awakening ceremony to appear and offer his best wishes to that warbler. Yes, the stage for the young elves was not in the central square, but inside the palace of Mori. Below the palace, in the town, inside a small, unassuming treehouse, Aurora managed to open her eyes that were as bright as the stars. She had purposely slept in the morning today just to refresh herself and be in better spirits for the night. Sitting up from the straw mat, she changed into a pure white plain robe. Every adult elf about to perform a ritual had that one, regardless of gender. Knock knock knock. After a while, a knock sounded on the door. Aurora, are you ready? It was a slightly gruff man's voice, as if you wouldn't find such a brown man in the elven race. Actually, no, there were blacksmiths everywhere. There would be blacksmiths, so there would be rough men everywhere. Outside the door, a short but muscular man with a short blonde haircut looked anxious. His mustache, the same color as his hair, standing up a bit. Soon, soon, don't rush Uncle Eggy, he's putting on his makeup. After waiting for a while longer, Aurora finally got dressed up. In the mirror herself, goose egg small face, skin white and tender, a little lip red like in the pure added a few silk flirtation, blue eyes spiritually seemed to be able to say words, golden and smooth waist length hair in the bangs divided into two small petals, such as fringe like a casual fall in front of the chest, the back of a large pile of long hair with a hair tie tied a simple small ponytail, youthful but not lose vitality, paired with the golden ratio tall figure that Domi had designed for her. Such an aurora, even among the elf clan whose face value was generally very high, was also the top of the handful. Iggy was equally dumbfounded. In his impression, 
This little girl except now, usually are greatly grinning, do not pay attention to dress up, while childlike, who had thought that just one dress up could actually look this good, he was suddenly overwhelmed with emotion inside, leading Aurora to sit on the edge of the bed with him, he looked towards a finely crafted crystal longbow as clear as an emerald placed beside the dresser, there in the corner, his eyes filled with memories, your parents must be proud to see you like this, a daughter who was just a little one before, but in the blink of an eye, she's already at the age to participate in the awakening ceremony, at this time, outside the window, the fireworks of the festival were lit up, bustling with activity, which was in stark contrast to the silence in the room, soon, you will be embarking on your own path Aurora, the awakening ceremony was not only a strengthening method unique to the Mori elf clan, it was also a watershed in life, just like the college entrance exams in the previous world, if one didn't obtain the gift of the ancestors, but had the ability to manage, one could enter the palace of Mori as a minor civil servant, if you have obtained the gift of ancestors, according to the ideology of the people here, go to the front line to defend against foreign enemies in order to afford this power, hunkering down in the rear is going to be despised by the people of the 10 miles and 8 villages, now the frontline war is tense, after the awakening ceremony is over, no matter whether you go to be a big head soldier or in politics, you have to come back often to see AO, Aurora gently patted Iggy's broad shoulders, don't worry uncle, no matter what, I won't forget you, I will come back to see you as soon as I have time, ah, it's almost time, I have to rush over to report first, slow down on the road, don't fall, got it, looking at Aurora's figure as she grabbed the door and walked out, Iggy was both worried and relieved, when Aurora's parents handed little Aurora over to him, he only hoped that Aurora would hurry up and grow up and get the hell out of there, taking care of a child was troublesome as hell, but now, he just wanted to let time pass a little slower, or even run backwards, so that Aurora can continue to stay by his side, selfishness, is a bit, but the fledgling bird will one day grow into a 10, 000 mile rock and fly to an even more distant world ah, uh, it's time for me to let go, he stood up and was just about to walk out of the treehouse when his eyes somehow caught a glimpse of the turquoise crystal longbow again, in that case, let's give you a parting gift, with that, he picked up the bow, slung it over his back, and left the treehouse turning toward his smithy, a few minutes later, the panting Aurora finally ran to the entrance of the palace of Mori, the evening breeze from the forest blew on her face, which was exceptionally cool at this time, unlike her, the others of her age who had come of age this year had already been waiting here in the same dress, the elves believed that when meeting their ancestors, they must show their best side in order to gain their favor, no sooner had she arrived than the staff from the palace of Mori began to call the names, one by one, Aurora happened to be last in line, Aurora Shikoti Manemasine, present, well everyone's here, follow me, stay close, Mori no Mia is huge, don't get lost, Aurora Shikoti Manemasine, the first name is her own, representing the presence of self, the second name was that of the oldest member of the family, using her mother's first name, the third name goes back even further, to the last name of that most powerful and famous ancestor, the various families of the Mori elf clan, often thought to have originated in those still barbaric times, such a rooted Mori elf was about to perform her awakening ceremony, but Aurora knew that none of her ancestors would have blessed her with their powers, she was well aware that she had been created by the one named Dominic Blofeld, and in her eyes, Dominic was nothing less than the creator and the master she had to serve unconditionally, but it is this very identity that dooms her to an end that no ancestor would have blessed her with, appearing out of thin air, along with the memories of those around her were forcibly altered and stuffed in, ms, Shikoti and her husband died on the battlefield before they could even give birth to a child, with the identity brought by her family name, but without the reality of her bloodline, the countless ancestors named Main Mashwan would only consider her a stranger when they saw her, there was no ancestor at all, so how could one talk about a blessing from an ancestor? But she didn't get discouraged. It wasn't like she couldn't live without the blessing. What couldn't she do in the future? So she still put on her best makeup and just wanted to enjoy today's universal festival. The altar where the ceremony was held was located inside the sacred tree. After following the tour guide around the Mori's palace and through the magnificent gate guarded by two huge stone statues, one could finally catch a glimpse of the ancient altar located inside the trunk of the tree, right in the center. The golden light emanating from it illuminated the space like a fairyland. Between the giant gate and the altar was a deep ravine, between which was a stone bridge powered by elven magic, as if it was suspended in midair. According to the ancient records, this giant gate and stone bridge were older than even the palace of Mori. Everyone who walked on the stone bridge let out a gasp, and Aurora was no exception. Since she was born, this was the first time she had seen such a gorgeous and spectacular scenery. She even thought that this should not come from the elves' hands but was built by giants for them, it was no wonder that she thought so, 
After all, everything in front of her, the sacred tree, the palace of Mori, the gargoyle giant gate, the enchanted bridge, every single one of them was so exaggeratedly large that she might actually suffer from a phobia of giants while walking through it. When they came to the end of the magic bridge, the male civil official who acted as a tour guide told them to line up in the order in which they had signed up. There were only about 200 people in total, so even if they lined up in a long line, it was only as small as a caterpillar in front of the altar. Now, the awakening ceremony officially begins. The ten elder council will be responsible for monitoring from the sidelines. Please do not make any untimely moves. Once discovered, you will be disqualified from this awakening ceremony. Aurora looked to the side. At the side of the altar, ten elderly people wearing white and gold robes with flowing beards were sitting in a row, and were looking at the altar with a serious expression. Their presence represented the absolute fairness and impartiality, openness and transparency of this ceremony. The first one, please come up, forward, the others crowded around. When he arrived at the center of the altar, the circle of giant elf statues located around the altar suddenly lit up, emitting a faint golden light. Boom! In the next second. A golden spell that was about the same size as the altar suddenly appeared on the ceiling, followed by a man's silhouette looming in midair. He had long golden hair and wore a crown made from sacred tree branches and gold alabaster. Very handsome. The civil official nodded darkly and jotted down the results of the bestowal in a small notebook while proclaiming the results. Obtaining the magic gain blessing from the third generation elf king Thuvalo, the bestowal blessings obtained by several people immediately behind were all from this elf king. Worthy of being the elf king who has taken the most wives. If it wasn't for him, there wouldn't be so many Mori elves today. The clerical officer gave his sincere and respectful thanks to His Highness Thuvalo. The elf king, wearing a laurel crown and blessed by the sacred tree, is strengthened in every way? So what's wrong with taking more wives when the race's numbers are declining? So much so, that at least one-sixth of these two hundred or so people possessed the bloodline of Shivalo. Not only that, the blessings from him were extraordinarily generous. It seemed that as long as it was his bloodline, there was a one-third probability of receiving a blessing. Aurora looked numb, sighed this elf king can really love ah, dead so many years still cannot let go of the offspring have already spread their leaves. After a few more unlucky people who didn't get the blessing, he finally met a different one. That is a quite temperament boy, looks like a protagonist face. The instrumental and dignified walked up to the altar. Soon, the magic array was unleashed. Just then, Domi's side received a message. The chosen one of the Mori elf clan has been detected and the villain value gained from the TA will be doubled 5 times. By directly killing the current stage of the chosen one, you will directly gain 10 million villainous values. Warning, if you want to hunt the chosen one, please be careful. After successfully killing it, your body will be hunted down by the world will as well as the sacred tree will transcontinental ultra long distance descending strike. Please pay attention to it. Warning, with your current strength, please do not actively provoke the chosen son to avoid a violent death. Put, Domi's mouthful of black tea spewed out directly. What the heck? Chosen son? This can even be touched for him? One can only say that. Luck is good. If a stable doorway for harvesting villain value could be carved out of him, multiplied five times, it would be the otherworldly version of the Silk Road. His mind immediately came up with all sorts of methods that could glean villain value from this chosen son. Without saying a word, Domi directly used his consciousness to connect to Aurora. Aurora. It was as if she was also curious about the voice that suddenly appeared in her head. Dominic Sama? I'm here. To her senses, Domi's voice seemed to echo and remix itself, as if she were in an ancient palace, with an inexplicably sacred and ethereal feeling of awe. Remember this man standing on the altar, approach him depending on the situation, and percent dollar hashtag. After hearing this, Aurora frowned slightly in disbelief. I've memorized it all, but my lord, why are you doing this? It's on a level you can't understand. You just need to perform it, for the sake of, for the sake of what? Domi immediately moved his little brain. He had to come up with some kind of common goal to strive for that had a sense of compulsion and hope and a big pie in the sky. There it is. In order to follow in the footsteps of the gods, we can't get away from the aura that comes with the chosen one. Remember Aurora, it was through the power of that deity that I created you. It was him, brought me the true meaning of life. So let's follow him and in doing so explore more mysteries. In order to have more people come together to accomplish our greatness, the organization needs your action. P.S. Recently addicted to Eldon's Falcon. Now finally reached the full ending full achievement. Today began to formally pay off the debt, seems to have two more to come. Remembered wrongly if also please careful book friends remind me. So that's how it is. She and Dominic Sama actually had such a mission on their backs. As you wish. I will definitely try my best. Well, looking forward to your performance. As the call ended, 
Aurora immediately raised her spirits and looked at the chosen one above the altar with a torch-like gaze. The moment the magic array appeared, the scene suddenly resounded with murmurs from the distant past, as if the way of the world was being extolled. The magic array became incomparably bright, and it even carried a rainbow-like light. The ten elders sitting on the sidelines violently stood up, trembling and said, The Chosen One, after hundreds of years, our Mori Elf clan has finally seen another Chosen One. The heavens will prosper our clan. The elders all reacted like this, and the civil official specializing in presiding over the awakening ceremony even dropped his jaw in shock. The altar even reacted like this. Could it be that the one giving the Chosen One the blessing is the sacred tree itself? No, no, no. He immediately dismissed this unrealistic idea because the current Sin Elf Queen hadn't even collapsed yet. It was impossible for the sacred tree to give the blessing to a second person. Looking more closely at the imaginary figure that was about to be presented in midair, the clan emblem of the Mori Elf Clan, the Golden Sacred Tree, the all-encompassing bestowal of the Primordial Elf King. When these words came out, those present were all talking. Most of them were shocked beyond words. After all, it was the birth image of the Chosen One. Ah, many people couldn't even touch it once in their entire lives only to see the sacred tree are emerging out of the gold luster, will be part of the blessing distributed to the son of the chosen one, equivalent to the establishment of a good prince, the next king of the elves, no accident is him, the whole place boiled over, while that boy just smiled faintly and walked down the altar calmly, standing aside but glancing at Aurora who was at the end of the queue by chance, breezy as he was, he couldn't help but fall into a brief daze, what a perfect woman that was, kind of looking forward to her performance, regardless of their status, Youngsters are youngsters after all, and the little thoughts of adolescence have been written on their faces for a long time. If Aurora could have a passable talent, the two of them together would be a match made in heaven, envied by the gods. Well, it was decided. Merlin's heart stirred after a long time. After the appearance of the heavenly chosen, the appearance of any other ancestor blessings couldn't cause any more shocks, and as the number of people at the front of the line dwindled one by one, and seeing that it was about to be her turn, Aurora couldn't help but get nervous. Next. Aurora Shikoti Monimosween, come forward, so her name is Aurora, what a great name, so Merlin thought, now everything he looked at Aurora was wonderful, nothing could tarnish her image as the white moonlight in his mind, love at first sight, as they say, too, Aurora took a deep breath and murmured Lord Dominic please bless himself, just don't be too humiliated, nothing happened like the others and just leave quietly, she moved her slender legs and took a step up to the altar, which became incredibly empty in front of her, surrounded by stone statues, as if they were one of the ancestors from ancient times, who were sizing her up in a circle, after two seconds, nothing, happened, just when everyone thought it was a pity that the girl had not been blessed, Domi made his move, how could you get close to the chosen one without some status, the original status was that of a commoner's daughter, and if you wanted to cross the class, the awakening ceremony was the last chance, Domi, who was far away at the castle library table, put down everything in her hands and said secretly, System, use thank you for your patronage to exchange for false chosen aura, then pass it to Aurora and use it. Operation completed. With almost zero delay, on the other side of the screen, a huge golden magic formation violently surfaced, blooming with rainbow-colored streams of light just like Merlin's then. Such a vision directly drew the attention of the altar and the sacred tree. Ancient murmurs once again resounded in this space, and countless birds came to the branches, their gazes swiping towards Aurora above the altar. In a flash, a hundred birds chirped in unison. The sacred tree once again radiated a golden light, but it would dim a little from time to time, as if it was repeatedly jumping sideways between giving and not giving. Elusive. The sacred tree doesn't give blessings? No way. It must not have enough force. System. Stack another chosen aura. Operation completed. Under the dumbfounded expressions of the crowd, the golden magic array actually hardened and expanded by more than double again, directly overflowing the holy tree but the golden radiance of the holy tree remained elusive. This doesn't work, forget it, thank you patronage isn't worth much anyway. System, stack eight more, make it a ten in a row. A total of one thousand thank you patronage has been consumed, and a total of false chosen aura x10 has been exchanged. Operation completed. In the next second, the entire altar shook, and within the golden spell formation, the complicated magical patterns shifted rapidly like data, the edges then expanding and expanding again and again overflowing the holy tree, spreading across the giant door, until the entire palace of Mori was enveloped under the golden laws. The rainbow even transcended the spell formation, transforming into a real rainbow bridge that surfaced in the night sky. This time, the sacred tree finally stopped jumping across repeatedly, and once again gave a small portion of its blessing to Aurora. Snap! 
The sound of a few chairs collapsing wasn't even worth mentioning in such a grandiose scene, and the elders almost gouged their eyes out. The sacred tree has once again blessed the earth. The golden law has enveloped the earth. A rainbow bridge has descended from the sky, and a hundred birds have flocked to the sky. Another chosen elf queen, with two chosen ones in one generation. It's only a matter of time before my forest elf clan unifies the entire elf clan. The civil official couldn't believe that this girl at the end of the line had actually become the heaviest finale. Two heavenly choices. Ah, such a situation had never occurred throughout history. Where's her bestowal of blessings? Exactly what kind of ancestor bestowal of blessings would be worthy of someone with such a great talent? The civil official hurriedly searched for the vapors, but he gazed ahead and looked for a long time only to see a faint golden curtain, as if there was no specific blessing bestowed on the vapors. It can't be a rare case of not having an ancestor bestowed blessings but having been blessed by a sacred tree. Just as the civil officials were in a state of disbelief, someone from the crowd waiting on the sidelines, who had already completed the ceremony, reached out his hand and pointed to the sky. His lips along with his body couldn't stop trembling, and he couldn't utter a complete sentence. Everyone, including Aurora, looked to the sky. It was at that moment that everyone realized that it wasn't that Aurora didn't have a specific blessing void like the shadow of Thuvalo or the emblem of the sacred tree, but rather that her void was so large that with the clerical officer's horizontal direct angle of view, what he saw was merely its calf. A golden giant like an ancient god stood proudly between heaven and earth, half the height of the sacred tree, and had the power to turn the clouds and rain when it raised its hand, clad in golden armor. He wore a general's helmet and held a long spear and a huge bow. Inside the helmet is a flow of golden light cannot see the specific face, only a pair of pure white eyes indifferently looking down on the earth. But soon, the huge shadow dissipated. At the same time, Aurora received Domi's instructions and immediately used her magic power to release the first stage of Susanoo. On Aurora's body, Susanoo had changed into another form, and her ribs and hand bones were translucent golden bones, just like this giant's initial form. In this way, no one could doubt that Aurora had not bestowed her blessings. The civil official also thought deeply. This is, a blessing from an unknown ancestor who is in no way inferior to the initial king. You have robbed the chosen one of half of his fame. Villain value plus 2000. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a warm welcome to the rising stars of the future. Waves of cheers followed like thunder. The 80 bestowers after the selection came down arrived at the central square and started the night's revelry surrounded by the crowd. Beside the gorgeous fountain, there was a group of elves dressed in gowns using various kinds of musical instruments, playing music that belonged exclusively to them. There was a lot of singing and dancing, and a lot of free food laid out on long tables to be taken at will. It was more of an open-air party than a bonfire, and Aurora had seen some poor elves come over to the buffet table and gobble their food, and no one would accuse them of falling asleep afterward. The Blessed One, a man of great promise and a pillar of the nation, was given enough respect by the commoners to grow up in such an environment of mutual respect. I'm afraid that even if I were to die for them, I would be willing to do so. There is no deceit, no wasted lives. All sacrifices will be rewarded, and the golden law of the sacred tree will correct any mistakes that should not have occurred. Aurora couldn't help but envy such a society. Just as she was contemplating, a person called out to her from behind. M.S. Aurora, do you have time to have a drink with me? She turned around and saw that it was actually Merlin, the real chosen one, or the person that Domi had instructed her to operate. Not realizing that she didn't need her to make a move, Merlin came over on his own. Door to door good opportunity. How could Aurora give it up? Immediately agreed. That's great. There are many people here. Why don't we find a slightly quieter place? Thus, each of them carried a glass of white wine, and went to a slightly more remote corner, still in the center of the square, but with slightly fewer people, surrounded by the same old faces who had just performed the ceremony together. Everyone is talking about where they are going to go in the future. What about you? Stay in Yaletta. Or, go to the front line? About this question. Aurora originally had a clear answer, which was to stay in the king's city and find something random to do. Anyway, she was just a common citizen without a blessing, but Domi gave her too big a surprise. No, it should be considered a shock. Let her leap from the ordinary little people to become the next generation of the elf king candidate. The span is too big, cannot help but make her confused about the future. So she quietly used her consciousness to ask Domi about it, and the answer she got was casual, meaning that she could do whatever she liked. As long as she followed the main chosen one thread closely, she asked rhetorically, I'm still a little lost, what about you mister? Merlin, what are your plans? Aurora sought to go wherever Merlin went so that she didn't have to make her own choices and could still account for Domi. Out of the ordinary, we are the same chosen one, just call me Merlin, can I also directly call you Aurora? It should, be possible, that's good, 
As for the intention, Merlin did not answer directly, but first went towards the two people's name for each other, unintentionally upgrading their relationship from strangers to slightly more familiar people. Domi watched from in front of the screen with his teeth itching, secretly saying that this kid was quite good at communicating with girls is actually so skillful. I hope Aurora won't be fooled by this minotaur. After a moment's pause, Merlin said, I intend to go to the front line to get some good exercise and come back when the war has stabilized. Almost every chosen one has had this experience. More than that, I would prefer that you stay here. Aurora. Why? She was puzzled. Didn't you say that every chosen will go to war? So am I. Why don't you want me to go? How could Merlin say something like he liked her and was trying to keep her from getting hurt? In that case, the small boat of friendship that had just floated up would have to capsize the next second. Because. Because you are a girl ah, not as strong as a boy. Is it not good to stay in Mori no Gong and learn internal affairs like today's queen? We two chosen. One main outside. One main inside. Everyone will be convinced. However, Aurora felt that this guy just wanted her to stay here and help him with the administration. So that when he returned with a group of soldiers who followed him, he could directly take over the well-kept Mori elf kingdom. Domi had told herself that the best way to pull wool over the eyes of the chosen one was to take away everything he deserved. If she hadn't come out of nowhere, the entire kingdom would have been Merlin's for the taking, and her appearance meant just one more contender for the throne. What a good plan. If she agreed to it, wouldn't she be going against Domi's words? Right now, not staying in Yaletta and following Merlin to the front line was the best option to clear the clouds. She was well behaved towards Iggy, but that didn't mean she was stupid and sweet. Aurora laughed easily. But Merlin, aren't you forgetting something? Her majesty was also a chosen one and a woman before she became queen and went to war to kill the demons as usual, besides, with her majesty here, what else do I need to be the lord within, I couldn't decide before, but after you said that I suddenly realized that I want to go to the front line with you, and it's so happily decided, really thank you Merlin, come on, let me toast you, Merlin also only had to bitterly smile as he picked up his highball glass and clinked it with Aurora, not realizing that he had stolen the chicken but failed to eat the rice, making it counterproductive, but this is good, if you can cultivate mutual feelings during the process of fighting together, it's not a bad thing, and it would be even better if you can heroically save a beauty once, then come back and get married, perfect, looking at the corner of Merlin's mouth containing a smile, Aurora suddenly felt a chill, always feel that this guy has a belly full of bad water, at this moment I do not know what to play it, Domi turned off the live screen when he saw this, according to Aurora's words, when tonight's banquet was over, and after saying goodbye to their families tomorrow, they could depart for the frontline battlefield, but they were the chosen after all, they definitely wouldn't be assigned to the frontline battlefield, they would just be responsible for some small fights on the flanks, and would only be transferred to the front when the time was ripe, so there was no need to pay much attention to her in a short period of time, just sit back and wait for her to pull wool over Merlin's eyes and collect villainous values, it's so reassuring to have such an efficient henchman, one Aurora could provide him with one more stable way for villain values to come in, so with a few more, wouldn't he be able to rattle card draws while lying down? He couldn't wait to give 10 blank templates in a row right now. Of course, it's good to think about this kind of thing in your dreams, and you still have to live the day you need to live. Eat an early dinner, rest, and shatter sleep with Kelsey, and the next day, go to review in high spirits, the very next morning. However, Carlos once again called Domi into his office and told him of the existence of the devouring scrolls in a rather unforeseen and cold manner. Ordinary people without talent are disliked by magic and you have to make magic love, or even stay away from you in order to learn it, it's up to you to decide, before asking that last sentence, Carlos told the pros and cons of the demon devouring scroll in great detail, without hiding anything at all, and also stated the encounters of all those who had practiced the secret book, as well as the world's opinion of it, all in all, in this world filled with magic, the scroll of devouring magic was definitely a wolf-like existence inside the flock that could never get enough, not only was it immune to most magic damage, even attacks that came from itself could deal a devastating blow to mages. Let's take the one you have on your own body as an analogy. Gathering chi in his fists and striking out, he could strangle Tuso's kidneys under normal conditions, and after mastering the devouring scroll and then punching that chi out again, in addition to being able to strangle the kidneys, it could also semi-permanently or permanently destroy the magical veins in his body. And if the situation was serious there was the possibility that he would be unable to use magic for the rest of his life. This is still a side effect of being able to survive afterward. In a battle, it will become increasingly difficult for the opponent to use magic again. If he wanted to use it, he would have to endure a bigger tear in his magic vein. And if he didn't use it, he would have to die under his fists. Four people in the high magician class.
The magic power vein was already no different from an aorta, and after it was torn, one would definitely not live long. This led to no one wanting to fight a spirit eater. Spirit eater? This was the world's name for those who learned the magic eating scroll. Then why wasn't it called a demon eater? The reason was that those who managed to escape from the spirit eaters, no matter how strong their magical power was, with their magical veins hammered into a puddle, they simply couldn't use magic anymore. Cultivate half a lifetime to get the strength of one day into nothing. From the magic master into the ordinary people? Oh, this blow, not a little big heart who can stand, so these lucky children in the body after the recovery of the whole day wandering aimlessly, as if lost soul-like, spirit devourer will be so named, to learn, or not to learn. Domi hesitated, not about learning or not learning, but any hint of hesitation about the demon eater scroll would be disrespectful to it. What he was actually thinking about was whether or not the devouring scroll could be used without conflicting with his magic, and whether or not he would have to give up his magic in the end. Learning, that was for sure, compared to a mage's natural enemy, what was the use of even a talent that was more advanced than perfect? It would be crippled in three or two hits, but this profession was obviously a big late stage profession. Learning it meant that it could only be used in melee combat, and the mages would all have long range means of attack, so it would be too difficult to get close to them in the early stages. However, as long as he could have both magic and devouring scrolls, wouldn't he be able to approach the mages through magic and then take them away in one set? This idea could definitely be tried. The thought had formed the theory that guided Duomi to make an action. Father, I want to learn, he said firmly. Although Carlos was also curious about what kind of marvelous chemistry would happen if a perfectly gifted person were to learn demon eating scrolls, he instinctively still didn't want Domi to take the risk. All he could do was sigh and say, think about it, there's no turning back from the bow, it means you have to give up this field of magic for life, and can only dive into the magic devouring scrolls with a single mind. If you want to go to school elsewhere, you can't reveal that you don't know magic and only kill mage, mages, because once you use this ability, you will become a target and all the mages in the world will see you as an irreconcilable enemy. The family will also banish you because we are incapable of protecting a spirit eater, and you will be left without a bond. Like I said, this is a big gamble that concerns your life, and after having the perfect talent, you wouldn't have had to learn it, but Domi still looked as if her mind was made up. Carlos finally chose to respect Domi's wishes and took the topography of the demon devouring scroll out of the drawer and handed it to Domi. This is the first half of the demon devouring scrolls. Try it yourself first. Talk to Kelsey if you need anything, if you can't, take it back, don't force yourself if you can't learn it, after all, the difficulty is quite high, remember, never let the second person know that our family owns the devouring scrolls, it's a death sentence, don't do it, I understand father, I will proceed alone, after saying that, Domi left Carlos's office, and after walking out of the corner, he changed his previous depressing appearance and returned to his room with a bounce in his arms, holding the demon eating scrolls and unlocking the door and pulling the curtain shut in his hand. The corners of the room were scouted with magic to make sure there was no one before lying down on the big bed, opening the magic devouring scroll as if he was secretly reading some forbidden book, and rubbing his hands together with excitement. Demon devouring scroll ah, let me take a good look. On the brand new topography, the cultivation method was written in the Lionheart Empire's text in black font. If you want to learn it, you first have to develop a body that is disgusted by all attributes of magic and those with low magical talent are especially suited. The first step written in the book is to drain all the magic from the body, and then adapt to this state, not letting any magic in. In this step, one can use an auxiliary prop called the Abyssal Stone. Transparent black in color, it has the effect of absorbing any attribute of magic and then releasing it as a miasma. Its texture is as hard as steel, and it is usually used as the raw material for the shackles of the magician prisoners, and the output is not much. So the price is more expensive than the crystals that contain magic power. However, Blofeld's family is large. As long as there is, buying a large warehouse full of them for him to eat is not a problem. These conditions can be solved. Then continue reading. A person whose body is empty of magic power will return to the initial state of the body over time. Since the body has previously possessed the power of a transcendent, it will automatically look for a transcendent from another system to fill the void in this area in order to complete the filling of instinctive memories. It has been tested that this is the body's own function and there is no need to worry. In the process of searching for the transcendental system, magic, because of the exclusion will no longer be accepted. So a kind of energy in opposition to the magic will be accumulated in our body. That is from the mystery of the mysteries of the heavenly way to explore the power. Just as there are seven emotions and six desires, there is an opposite emotion to any one of them. Happiness is the opposite of frustration and sadness. And anger is the opposite of calmness. 
a person will only be in one of these pairs. For example, if they lose their happiness, they will be frustrated or sad. Losing magic is the same thing. When you have successfully birthed this power, it means that you have officially begun. Next, as long as this power is gradually expanded until it is spread all over the body, then you can enter the next stage. Note, after countless experiments, ordinary people who don't already have magical talent can't learn, so please don't waste your time, and the more magically gifted you are, the harder it is to learn, because the magic will scramble into your body, making it impossible for you to return to your initial state, and it is even more difficult to maintain it for a long period of time in the later stages. Please practice at your own discretion, it's either black or white, and without black there can be no white. Domi summarized the passage described on the scroll, saying pretty much the same thing. At this point, his mind opened up and he boldly guessed, then the darker I am, the whiter the one I give birth to won't be? A perfect level shadow system talent. If its opposite was generated, would it be a perfect level spirit eater's power? No forerunner had ever tried it, because it was really hard for a highly gifted person to completely exercise the ability from their body, and a drop of magic entered if they weren't careful. It's the same reason why couples in society can't get pregnant even if they try to, but college students can't get pregnant with each other. But just because others can't, doesn't mean he can't. Don't forget, he was a normal person with no talent in his bones, and all of his advanced talent had been taken in exchange for a super magician. Today's perfection level was forcibly upgraded by the system. As long as you figure out the logic and prioritization of it, his eyes lit up and he seemed to have found the right direction, immediately asking, System, how did you raise my magical talent? No comment, please explore on your own. It's fine. It doesn't bother him. His mind now came up with two possibilities that could be verified with just one experiment. Soon, he had Kelsey prepare a room for him in the castle's cultivation room filled with abyssal stones as well as a magical ball that was even larger than the second test. Once inside, he could clearly sense that the magic inside had been drained, leaving only a very thin bit. Good. The experiment needed such a pure environment. Next, he injected all of his shadow system magic power into the magic ball. At this point, there was very little magic power left in his body but some tiny shadow system magic power still more or less burrowed in. No harm done. Everything was ready. Now, only need to check how much the increase of shadow system magic power in his body was to determine the logic in the talent enhancement. He closed his eyes and carefully experienced. After a while, he finally opened his eyes, and his face was filled with an unstoppable smile. Right, right, the amount of shadow system magic power naturally recovered from. The perfect grade talent was far from being that small. It was known from the knowledge Connor had tutored him with, a person with a magic talent, even if there was no magic power around him, then he was just inhaling a breath, it could be converted into magic power in his body, the more advanced one is, the more amount is converted each time, the gap between perfect and beginner, Domi could still see it, what could this mean, it meant that the system was pulling up the amount and speed of the magic power he drew from the outside world to achieve the same effect as a perfect grade talent, his bones didn't even have the beginner's shadow system talent, while his body had the instinctive memory given by the perfect great talent, to achieve the highest level of accomplishment with the lowest conditions, was there a more suitable physique in this world than his to cultivate the devouring scroll? His mouth was about to break into a grin, taking this opportunity to strike while the iron is hot. Domi immediately utilized his cheese ability to turn into a film that sealed his body on its own, so that even subtle magical power could no longer come in. Just then, he suddenly realized something was wrong. This chi film that he had opened up was actually, Slowly expanding, Domi immediately sank his heart to feel the chi in this space, and another huge surprise hit him on the head. It turned out that after absorbing the magic power, the abyssal stone did not turn into a fart and exhaust back into the atmosphere, but was transformed into the most original and purest energy in the world, chi. It was the same as the chi he used. Since it was from the same origin, he could quickly absorb them thus expanding the content in his body, but he had to drop his speed so that his body could have a process of adaptation waiting for the birth of spirit devouring energy while expanding his chi, time could be broken into two halves. In the future, please call him a time management master. According to the small notes left by some previous generations in the devouring demon scrolls, once you enter the state of cultivation, you need to be prepared to not eat or drink for a few days and nights, or prepare food and water in the room. Anyway, no matter what, one must not allow the process to be disconnected in the middle. Once the magic power surged back in, it would undo the previous efforts. But what they didn't know was that Domi possessed Qi, a black technology that they didn't have. Simply by covering the entrance of the magic power into the whole body with Qi, one could maintain a pure initial state, walk out of the cultivation room, and it didn't matter if one ate or bathed. Sleeping might be a bit of a problem, 
He wasn't sure if he could maintain the form of Qi in the sleeping state, so he ate and drank as usual, but sleeping was better. Let's just stay up for a few days first. The big deal is to use more energy potions, and he can still get through it by force. Thinking this way, Domi felt a sudden surge of pressure. Long night, one actually has to be awake and spend it alone. Let's go find something to save for the night first. He strolled through the castle, searching for just what to do for company. As he walked, he ended up stopping in front of the library. The same unending stream of books was the ladder of human progress. Ha, huh? gotta, read novels, even if these novels are all fucking masterpieces. Right, by the way, bring the magic dictionary that Connor gave me as well. It can also make up some magic knowledge. It was happily decided. Let's spend the evening with reading books. After such a long period of self-study, wasn't passing a midterm casual? So much so that he put his mind on extracurricular books. Who could blame him? 24 hours a day. Too damn idle. Soon, he ushered in his first night. That night, he reviewed the exam material again, memorized it backwards, and read half of the magic dictionary, as thick as the Xinhua dictionary. In the meantime, he drank a lot of energy potions, and until the morning, there was still green potion residue at the corner of his mouth. I have to say, when it comes to really focusing on reading books, the skill of, one eye, ten lines, is simply not too good to use. The brain basically doesn't need to spend more time and effort to read so many words. It only needs to be responsible for processing that information and then memorizing it, saving a third of the steps. It can't be any less simple. In the morning, I walked out of the training room, went to the roof of the spire to take my first breath as usual, then came back to eat breakfast and continued to dive into the training room. Another sleepless night. He had already finished reading four famous books, and the books he had brought in in the first place weren't enough for him to read, so he went and brought in another stack, and those who didn't know thought that he had opened an otherworldly bookstore in there. The glass test tubes after drinking the energy potion have been piled up into a small mountain in the corner, and the abyssal stones have been replaced one batch after another. On the third day, everyone was getting worried, and the uninformed ones even approached Carlos and Grace, wanting the two parents to enlighten Domi, not to give him the whole UUA. Carlos, of course, knows what Domi is doing, and did not expect him to get on board so quickly, so he planned to wait for the results to come in and dismissed the crowd straight away. Should do what to do to go. Duomi is fine do not care about him, rice is not all eating it, children just temper tantrums. On the fourth day of surviving on energy potions, all those ranked masterpieces in the whole empire were finished by him, and Domi only felt that his soul had been sublimated. Even though it was very different from the masterpieces of his previous life in terms of sensation, the spiritual kernel of it still benefited him a lot. Perhaps from the outside, he was already a man with a belly full of poetry? Not at all. He actually looked like he was about to hang up now. The dark circles under his eyes were as heavy as a panda's, and his eyelids couldn't stop sliding down. At this time, if he was given a pillow, he would definitely be able to sleep for three days and three nights. Even the energy potion was starting to be a bit ineffective. After all, what it stimulated was energy, and it didn't care about the body's exhaustion. The more exhausted the body was, the faster the energy that was replenished faded away, which was why every day the maids swept out a large box of small glass green bottles from their rooms. Fifth day. The energy potion no longer worked, and Domi had gone into a state of muddled confusion, with the book he hadn't yet read being held over his head in an attempt to make it seep into his brain. Day 6, it was no longer possible to eat, so we had to starve for now. After personal practice, it was found that starvation helps to stimulate the nerves. Day 7, with a black eye, he almost fell to his death on the floor. The small mountain of books slammed down and subdued the lower half of his body, and the sudden turn of events caused him to relax his chi barrier a bit almost letting the magic in. But fortunately, the amount of chi had been perfected and could flow around his body, and those magic forces were expelled by the faster arriving chi before they had a chance to get in. This wave of operation could be described as a detail pull. Yes, seven consecutive days of constantly micromanaging the chi in his body to defend against the pervasive magic. Subconsciously, his level of control over chi had evolved. Along with that was the constant honing of his spiritual power. Even the system acknowledged this progress. Upgrading the shadow stream body technique from out of this world to the generation master level. Ability value increased significantly. Strength, 16. 1821. 18. Agility, 16. 6821. 68. Mental power, 15. 525. 5. At the same moment that the system sent the upgrade notification, he only heard a crisp popping sound in his ears that was internal to his body. Domi was jolted. He had waited for this moment for too long. Ten consecutive bottles of energy potion went down, and then he forced himself to get up again, and examined it with full concentration. 
It was found that at the place of his dantian, a deep blue gas suddenly appeared, submerged in the atmosphere of qi, burning like a flame at the bottom of the sea. This spirit devouring energy had an extremely high density, was more active, yet did not clash with the qi in any way. There was nothing wrong with it, after all, when the magic was there, the qi didn't clash with the magic either, but a magical scene happened. That dark blue gas was actually gradually devouring the surrounding qi, and then expanding itself. No, more than a meter of careful observation found that the new dark blue gas that was created after devouring was different from the original dark blue gas as well as the qi. It turned out to have a higher and higher density, but less of that activity, turning into that middle of the road calmness that was unique to qi. It became a mediocre calmness that was unique to qi. To say that it was devouring was more like fusion. The fusion of the two resulted in a new type of spirit devouring energy that had never existed before and was easier to control. Domi quietly waited for it to devour all the qi and then become the main energy that flowed within his own body. At this moment, the membrane that had protected him from magical invasion could finally be removed as well. He stretched out his right hand and spread it out. And with a thought, he drew out the spirit devouring energy in his body and condensed it in the center of his hand, coming to the outside world, the faint light it emitted, that was as mysterious and deep as the ocean, was like a dream, far better looking a hundred times than what it looked like in the body, what was reflected in Domi's pupils was full of its shadow, and elation had already overflowed the corners of his mouth, this, is the result of my continuous all-nighter for seven days, spirit devouring energy, try its power. Duomi dragged his tired yet excited body all the way down to the underground Northfall Division's prison cell that was specialized in holding prisoners, just he has been refusing to submit right. Yes young master, this is a dead soldier from an unknown place, just that we controlled him at that time before he had the chance to kill himself, now we have to ask about his origin and purpose, but we can't get him to open his mouth even after exhausting all the penalties, then I'll try. In the eyes of many members of the Northern Fall Division, Domi was already the future hand-picked lord of the Northern Fall Division and his words were no different from what Atelier said, so this small request could certainly be fulfilled unconditionally. The henchman opened the cell door and then retreated, giving Domi full privacy. The dim and humid cell was still full of long dried blood in the corners. The man who was hung up, the upper half of his body was not in pieces but covered with bloodstains and pus, and his head was disheveled slowly raised his head and looked at Domi with that one eye, and his voice was hoarse. Ah, guess you are the third young master of Blofeld. You don't look like a waste of space. His voice echoed in the imprisonment gallery. Don't look at this guy still has a tongue that can speak. In fact, it has long been inflicted with speech magic. As long as he bites his tongue, he will be immobilized and will not be able to bite his tongue to kill himself at all. Domi is also a ruthless person. Simply do not talk to him more nonsense. Come up and spread out his palms fixed on the anvil. Trying to break my fingers? Ha 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 it's useless. All my fingers have been broken before. Breaking them again after recovery is no feeling at all ah. Ignoring the other man's advice, the spirit devouring energy wrapped Domi's thumb and index finger, and then pinched one of the man's random fingers with those two fingers. The moment the spirit devouring energy made contact with the man's skin, his skin and even his flesh and blood turned into a ghostly blue ash, like magma touching ice. The excess energy then seeped in through his magical veins, coloring his veins and blood vessels a deep blue. Under Domi's remote control, the energies did not directly destroy the magical veins, but rather eroded them bit by bit a medium mage with no talent, after learning magic for most of your life, you can't separate yourself from magic anymore, magic is your life, Domi's soft whisper echoed in the man's ears, the feeling of being eroded by the spirit devouring energy was more torturous than any punishment, as if there were countless ants gnawing at his veins, satiating his magic power, and then destroying his foundation step by step, soon, blue veins spread all over his body, and along with his soul, he was cold to the core, and the pain of 10,000 insects gnawing at his heart was like a tidal wave lapping at his heart. Blood pressure was spiking, his heart was beating furiously, and his brain was trembling. Slap after slap caused his body to convulse violently as the chains clashed against each other, making pinging sounds, but he couldn't utter a single scream. He no longer had the strength to scream. It was this silent wailing that made the other prisoners in the confinement gallery shudder, wondering what had happened to the man with the toughest mouth on this floor that he couldn't even let out a scream. The heart balked. Before the man could stand it during the half-hour-long torture, the other prisoners broke their defenses and shouted, Confessed, confessed. I'll confess all. Me too. Please don't torture me like this. Don't you want information? I'll give it all. Just want to apply for a prisoner preference can you? The henchman standing outside was confused and unsure. He remembered that Domi was only interrogating one person. Right? Why did the others give in first? Slap. Domi clapped his hands together and finished up and called it a day. 
taking the bloodstained white gloves off casually and tossing them into the trash can, and said to his men, that guy has been taken care of, you can handle the others yourself, who else has a hard mouth in the future, unconsciously, his original azure pupils have now turned into the color of the deep sea, looking at the back of the subordinates a little cold, remember to call me, hear me, obey, before leaving, Domi wrote down the information he asked for on a note and handed it to him, after watching Domi leave, he breathed a sigh of relief, this was only a seven-year-old child, why did he have such a sense of oppression, could it be that all children in bigwigs families are like this, then this world is too scary, isn't it, while convincing himself to relax, he walked towards the man's cell, he wanted to see just what kind of maneuver Domi had used to get this tough-talking bastard to loosen up, as soon as he entered the cell, it was as if he saw something so horrible that he almost fell to the ground in fear, only to see that one of the man's hands had already disappeared completely for ashes, blue lines all over his body, his eyes rolling white, foaming at the mouth, a look of unconsciousness, he picked up a piece of ash remaining on the ground, and muttered in a daze, in the end, what kind of tactics can make this kind of end ah, Duomi who had completed the experiment had returned to his room at this moment, took a hot bath, and comfortably burrowed into the quilt, it was time to take a nap, and this sleep was two whole days, after devouring a person's magic power, the spirit devouring energy seemed to also transform and then store the products of the devouring, and it seemed to be able to be used as a backup energy source for the body, relying on this backup energy, Domi was hardened and did not wake up from hunger, sleeping for 48 hours, don't mention how refreshing it was, when he got up, he naturally ate a lot of food, Edward and Argyle looked at Duomi who was like a gourmand on the dining table, people were shocked, their younger brother, what stimulus did he receive in these days, his behavior was so abnormal, but now he seems to be much more normal, and will also flirt with the maid's sister, like before, when they passed by Domi, Domi didn't even look at them as if he was possessed, white silk high silk nah, don't even look at them, Edward almost thought that Domi had become a saint, fortunately he was still the same, after eating, Edward immediately put on Domi's shoulder and shouted, where else, the midterm is coming up in the afternoon, why don't we go to the library together to review, did I hear you right, you're actually going to review, have you been dropped by the demons, I should be the one to say that, Edward rolled his eyes, honestly, what have you been doing in the cultivation room for a week, a small child's curiosity is very heavy, Domi casually made up a reason to put it off, cultivating special secret books and trying to break through, this answer was not unexpected by Edward, what else could one do in a training room, stir frying slices of meat, he looked up and down at Domi, and didn't see how much more bullish he had become, just a little more indescribable aura, and, so he said in a serious tone, duo me na, brother knows that you may have recently indulged in those fresh mercenary novels, those novels are cool, but they can't be taken seriously, people can upgrade from a trainee magician to a forbidden magician in a day, but it's impossible for us real human beings, sober your mind, that's just a figment of the imagination of small writers, Domi was stunned, did Edward think he was reading a novel and watching magic? At that moment, he couldn't help but laugh bitterly. Misunderstanding is misunderstanding, as long as he can get away with it. Okay, okay, don't mention this in the future. Don't you want to go review? Go, just now. I just wanted to find the maid sisters to enlist their feelings and earn some small villain value in the meantime. Anyway, I have nothing to do, so I'll accompany Edward to stay in the library for a while. The library immediately resounded with the sound of clattering and flipping books. It was all the noise made by Edward. This guy claimed that he would review, but in reality, he only took a cursory look every time, thus deceiving himself, until the eve of the exam only, carefully think back, only to realize that he so many knowledge points simply did not remember. Domi silently sighed, can only secretly wish him to pass the exam, and not mess with him, this child is strange miserable. So, Edward was writing furiously while Domi was calmly reading famous books from other countries and leisurely drinking black tea. This stuff, he kinda liked to drink. In the midst of hard revision, Edward glanced with his afterglow and found that Domi was actually enjoying himself so much. Where was the slightest bit of nervousness before the exam? In the end, he couldn't help but ask, Domi, you know all the knowledge points for the exam? Aha, uh -huh. don't you want to consolidate more? Why do I need to read it if I know it all? That's not a waste of time. Waste of time. Waste of time waste of time, these four words were like a hammer on Edward's deluded heart, he thought he had found a comrade in arms, but he didn't realize that he was asking for it, regret is too late now, if I had known, I wouldn't have brought Domi to play, Edward gathered up his book and pen and silently got up, hey, where are you going, back to my own room, not reviewing, I don't want to see you while I'm reviewing, 
Domi laughed and shook his head as he continued to work on the task at hand, sitting back and waiting for the midterm to arrive in the afternoon. The district midterm was certainly a solid pass for him, achieving a grade only slightly less than Argyle, who had been studying diligently. The main difference was that he was not as familiar with the traditional magic system as Argyle was, and the last question was an open-ended question about that very area. Domi's knowledge blind spot couldn't support him to find the right direction to fool around, so he was deducted a lot of points by Connor. But as far as the final result was concerned, Domi's score was even good enough for Connor to look at, and he didn't mince words of praise in front of Carlos and Gressa. It was this self-discipline that was the most valuable part of being able to make up for the backward progress through self-study. When they got their papers back, a few families were happy and a few were sad. Argyle and Domi are naturally qualified, smiled and laughed and passed, pressing no difficulty at all. On the contrary, Edward with the lowest score was so happy that he lost his head, jumping up and down like a monkey in Shiraz. He shared with Domi and Argyle the score he had just stuck over the threshold. Welp, I passed, I passed. Argyle Domi, look look look, I passed. The two men took Edward's paper and looked at it. A big, red 60 in the upper right corner, just above the passing line. Looking at Argyle's speechlessness as well as Domi's encouraging look, Edward wiped his nose in amusement. Ha, you guys don't get it, do you? Above the passing line, one more point is a waste. At this time, his younger sister Rosa came down the stairs holding a doll, just in time to see the monkey like Edward, with a strange expression, saying, Brother Edward is acting crazy again. P.S. Editor said, the new book fourth round of recommendations cannot be resurrected. This Friday on the shelves, resurrected on next Monday. Used to row recommended chase read all look at today. Friends send power. After reading remember to turn to the end, and then rub a four rounds. Shelves day million na. The first booking over 500 to rush that hook 8 war list. Since Rosa came to the castle has been some days. The little girl when she first arrived here is very shy. Only dare to talk to Domino. Sometimes some shy words also stammer to be able to card half a day. Now she has gotten acquainted with everyone, and is gradually showing her own character. For example, she would express her dismay at Edward's brother's various fishlet behaviors. Other than that, Rosa was still a cute and lovable obedient little lowly. Oh, it's Rosa ah. She thumped and ran to Domi's side, enjoying Domi touching her head. Rosa's hair was as smooth as silk and rubbed comfortably, and he also noticed that Rosa still had the high ponytail hairstyle he'd taught her. Now it looked like Domi thought it was better for her to have a pill head, and it just so happened that he drew a card to get the braiding skill, a small life skill that sometimes worked. Still keeping a high ponytail, why don't I change your hairstyle? It must be cuter. Ponytail is also very cute ah. After all, it was the first time Domi gave her a hairstyle, Rosa still quite cherished it, but thinking that the second time or Domi gave her a hairstyle, then it's fine, said, but try it if you want to tie it. Brother, I trust brother, guaranteed to look good. The hair tie was loosened and her long hair poured down like a waterfall. Sitting on a small bench in the hall, Domi was beside Rosa tying her cute girls must have pill hair, while Edward and Argyle sat on the couch doing nothing. Midterms were over and their little vacation was coming as it should. Even Mr. Connor had gone on a break and they were no exception. They had been looking forward to their vacation for so long, but then they didn't know what to do when they actually got into it. At this time, Argyle looked at the three people in front of him, the second brother the third brother and the fourth sister. People are up and live ah. In addition to the dinner time is rare to get together a table. This must not do something interesting? He immediately jumped off the couch, found a maid, whispered something in her ear, then ran back and sat expectantly. He didn't say anything even when Edward asked, pretending to be very mysterious. Soon, that maid came over with a roll of black and white newspaper. Young Master Argyle, you asked for yesterday's copy of the Loxon newspaper. What do you need yesterday's newspaper for? Edward, who was sitting next to him, put his head over curiously. Argyle had his finger pointing towards the front page headline in it. The hand of the almighty auction is about to be held on the 10th of this month. Inside the auction house of the domain's dragon's nest, general seating tickets are 1,000 gold dragons, with a local limit of 1,000 tickets. Next to it was an emblem. A white dragon's head is depicted on a gray and white iris-shaped shield, with two ornate long swords crossing it a slender dagger running through the head right in the middle, and the iris-shaped shield's edges are embellished with five points of radiant starbursts as well as a sinuous white gold olive branch. This was the Blofeld family's coat of arms, the dragon hunting star emblem, to commemorate the fact that their family had accomplished the first kill of an ancient dragon on the continent. The five starbursts represented the five fingers of the magic hands, and the dagger represented the existence of the Northfall master sect. There wouldn't be a branding of the clan emblem next to the usual headline, and if there was, 
It meant that it was an official statement of credentials that was very believable. The territory will soon be hosting the triennial hand of the almighty auction, which is one of the most prestigious auctions in the entire empire. At that time, people from all over the empire, the neighboring regions and even other countries will come to our family's territory to participate in this auction. After three years of accumulation, all sorts of rare treasures will be presented to the eyes of the world. It just so happens that we're all on vacation. Let's go see the outside world together. When Argyle said this, Domi got a little giddy. What was the last thing their family lacked? Money. Money that couldn't be lost in generations. Let's just describe it like this. Spend 10 gold dragons on the street to buy an item. And in the end, after going round and round, there will be 7 gold dragons that will fall back into one's pocket. This is the benefit that comes from the closed loop of industrial ecology. So even children like them have almost inexhaustible pocket money. And the money paid out can also be returned in the form of commissions. Spending not many coins, just enough to splurge. Poo-poo on the auctions held in their own homes. And rationally buy some things. Right now he had enough hard power. With a mutated version of spirit devouring energy, various skills, and perfect grade magic that he couldn't use for a while. It would be nice if there were some good things to use such as bullish weapons, trinkets, and whatever fruits that could enhance abilities. On the contrary, Rosa wasn't interested in this. What she was interested in was the chance to hang out with her three brothers. This was the first time, the last time we went out. Domi didn't get to go because he was left behind by Mr. Connor for tutoring, so this time, we must make up for all the regrets we had back then. Why don't we go to the auction and then go out on the town at night, see a play together, perform at the circus, eat street food together. Go horseback riding together. Just as she was about to tell everyone about the idea, Edward beat her to it and shouted, Then after we go to the auction, we can also go to the opera, the circus, and the racetrack together eh? You didn't go out with us last time Domi. We'll have to make up for it this time. Aw, why are you looking at me like that? Sister Rosa? Only to see Rosa's small face puffed up, her mouth pouted, and she looked at Edward with a complaining face, which was clearly what she was going to say. That's a good offer. Domi had just finished tying her hair as well. Pill hair. Okay. The two sat down on the couch as well as Edward Argyle. Then it's decided. I'll go and talk to father now. Argyle said excitedly. There's still two days left until the 10th. So everyone get ready and don't make any impromptu mistakes. Preparation? What do you need to prepare to go to an auction? Clothes? It wasn't a banquet. It didn't matter if he just wore beach shorts over there. No need to bring money either. His name was an invisible bottomless check. Before the official start. Carlos must have the list of auction items there. When the time comes to bring it to look at first, have a general understanding, this is to do. And what about? He thought carefully, might as well bring Murray and May along. Also let them see the world. Although he had never seen the world. Three years ago when the hand of the Almighty was held again. He was still only four years old. But that didn't stop him from bringing Moray and the two of them along. And then I can buy them what they want as well. To boost the strength of my future men. So it's happily decided. After the group dispersed, Domi took a moment to find Catherine, who was cleaning the guest room. What are you doing out again? Domi, isn't it good to stay home honestly? Geez, never mind that. Get a car ready for me. Something's up. It's urgent. He could go over there in his beach floral shorts with a floral shirt, but not Murray and May. Then because of the low self-esteem of the world, and then see such a glorious scene and dressed up the crowd, not to bury their heads in the dirt as a pippy bird ah, so there is a need to give both of them packaging a little bit with money ability from the physical level to enhance their self-esteem. Shattered, catch up on reading, 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 catch up on, 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 read more, 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 catch up, catch up. The center ring of the city, a tailor store with quite a long history. The old man wearing a monocle and dressed meticulously was helping Murray and May measure their circumference. Don't look at his hair is already gray. The age of the grade has also gone up. The spine is still straight. Enough to see that he has extremely harsh requirements for themselves. It is this requirement that has been passed down from generation to generation, so that this tailor store in his hands enduring. Countless celebrities wore clothes from this tailor store called Sigma. They specialized in men's dresses but they also made women's, just not as famous. The two men's circumferences were measured and recorded and put away. Then the sizes were shown to them. Both of you, would you like to use a ready-made pattern or have it specially customized? Use the ready-made ones. The time is rather rushed, preferably before the day after tomorrow. Please, 
Murray quickly made his decision. Then I'll do the same, May echoed. No problem. These are the off-the-shelf versions, so please take your pick. I must warn one thing. Although most of them are customized, there are still some individuals who chose ready-made. There is a certain possibility of clashing. Please also pay attention to. Domi just sat off to the side, silently observing the two. After a week or so of bonding, even though Mori was quite a bit less than May, May seemed to have become Mori's only friend. Never mind that Mori was only a mere two years older than him, he was already showing his maturity, and he could do almost everything himself and do it well, thus making May trust him. He also seemed to treat May quite well. This didn't seem like a bad thing to Domi, and it was acceptable for the two to be tied together. He didn't have to get all imperial minded and stir up trouble and stimulate growth and whatnot in this. After all, May had become a bit more capable and lively and cheerful as a result hadn't she. He stood up and said goodbye to the store manager. Then you can get busy with your work. Store manager, we have to take our first step. All right young master, I'll have my son send it up to the mansion when it's done. Please don't worry, I've always been relieved by your service here. Let's go. With the doorbell ringing once more, they left the store. My lord, where should we go next? Moray asked. At this point Domi's identity was out in the open to May. For a week, not only was Mori constantly sidetracking and checking every aspect of May, he had also sent the intelligence department of the Northern Fall Division to check out all of May's background. After confirming that he hadn't asked a single question, and that May was indeed quite miserable, and secondly was really a silly white sweet, he let go and let Mo Lay tell May about his true identity. She was already shocked beyond words after hearing it, and simply couldn't believe that the legendary super official second generation would actually join him in his adventure and save her life. So much so that the sight of Domi now made her a little fearful. There, Domi looked up and pointed to the sky high man made tower. Giant tree. Ordinary adventurers can only ever move around in a fixed space. And if they want to travel to a higher level, they must have the appropriate status. Countless people spend their entire lives unable to see the scenery located at the top of the giant tree. Don't you guys want to take a look? Under the gray and white bowler hat, the corners of Domi's lips curled into a confident smile as if a mysterious jazzman would lead them to the Garden of Eden that they had never dared to envision. Murray and May both gulped. The very top of Blofeld Collar. The heavy land of organs. Even the dignitaries don't want to go up. Its difficulty is harder than the sky. Moray, who had been crawling at the bottom of the society, was struggling for his whole life, but he had to stop at the front. If the Lightshield family hadn't been in decline, May would have had the possibility to go up once. But with her previous status, she had never even thought about it. But now, a person came out and told them that they wanted to go up? No problem. They could go up any time. How unexpected that would be. Arriving at the giant tree, the interior of the mage tower, they entered the central hovering lift that led to the very top. And as the hatch closed, the lift began to slowly rise. Know what the world is? Dom stood in front of the two men, his back to them, and spoke. Murray thought for a moment and said, Being able to eat luxurious meals and live like an aristocrat? Save the world? May chimed in. Domi shook his head and said, by worldly, I mean the side of the world you see, I can eat mountains of food every day, enjoy the glory and riches at my fingertips, admire precious works of art, and listen to a symphony orchestra playing music for me alone, that's my side of the world, but I can't tell whether wheat or leeks are planted in the field, I don't know what kind of fluctuation in the price of an egg, its price in the morning and in the evening, and what kind of means, should be used in order to survive in a poor and difficult environment, I don't know all these things, but you know them, and that's your world. Having saved the world. That's the worldliness of heroes. Everyone has their own worldliness. Proust never traveled far because of his asthma. He never saw the world. But he wrote the famous book Remembering the Days. There was a doctor named Kant. Just a country boy who never traveled. Yet he profoundly influenced our medical technology today. It's only stupid people who say others haven't seen the world. So there's no need to be secretly hurt by people saying you've never seen the world. Because they're the ones who are really stupid. Yet that alone is not enough. You must also know what it means to have truly seen the world, to have seen the best, and not to be pleased with it, to know the worst, and not be saddened by it, to know the worst and not be saddened by it, to know the best and not to boast about it. I believe that the following three you two can do, but the first one, but has never had the opportunity to practice, so taking advantage of this opportunity, I would like to take you to see, standing at the highest level, will be when the top of the world, a view of the mountain's small scenery. Domi turned around and held the brim of his hat. The radio inside the hovering elevator issued an alert. Attention! About to reach the top of the magic tower. Attention! About to reach the top of the magic tower. His arms stretched out like an eagle spreading its wings. And at the same time, the closed doors slowly pushed to the sides. 
and a fierce wind swept in above the clouds, blowing their hair around. Ladies and gentlemen, Dom spoke with pride, welcome to the highest level in the world. With that, he took the first step backwards out of the lift, giving the most expansive view to Moray and May. Their feet trembled as they stepped out, and their eyes were greeted by an unblemished blue sky, the rising sun hanging in that not-so-distant skyline, and clouds that were once far away now within reach. If you bend down a little, you can see the towns on the ground like ants' nests below the clouds. The scene was truly as Domi had said it would be. Murray's lip quivered noiselessly. We'll be the top of the world. A view of the mountains. Have seen the best, and do not take things for granted, and then associate Domi's acting as a person. My lord, I have realized, on the second floor of the Nightwish Tavern, inside the remodeled multi-purpose office, May had already finished dressing, and at the tender age of 18, she could be beautiful with just a little bit of dressing up, not to mention dressing up, it directly mesmerized Murray, he is sure that the current May is the most beautiful woman he has ever seen, in addition to his old mom, especially that pair of hidden dark reddish purple pupils, paired with this harmless face, was both innocent and flirtatious at the same time, it was hard to imagine how these two words could appear on the same person, but he just had a feeling like that, and it was this kind of Yukai who was at this moment in front of the full-length mirror helping him to arrange his clothes, a large area of snow white under the gown's background was particularly dazzling, making him, a young boy who was only eight years old and bloodthirsty, a little bit distracted, and he didn't even know where to put his sights, did his lordship say where to go to wait for him, may ask suddenly at that moment, number 301, he's prepared a compartment for us, just wait for his lordship there, he'll be here after he's finished with his own siblings, by the way, his excellency also said that if there is anything we want, he can shoot it for us, Murray, it's best not to, why, this is a good intention from his lordship, I don't want to owe your lordship too much, I'll feel a little guilty inside, and I'm afraid I'll never be able to pay it back, saying this, although Moray felt it was a bit reasonable, he still put his thoughts into words, may, some luxury items, like paintings, jewelry and the like we definitely don't have the need, but if it's some items that can enhance our abilities, we'd better not be overly modest with his excellency, after all, only when we grow up will we have the ability to return everything his excellency has invested in us, it's us without abilities that are a waste of his lordship's trust, don't you think it's the same thing, may not it in agreement with Moray after careful thought, obviously 10 years younger than him, actually can think so much, she also need to work hard to improve herself to be able to do so, let's go, the carriage is already waiting for us outside, at the same time that Moray and May had already moved to set off for the dragon's nest, here at the castle, a large group of children had also already bumbled their way into the carriage, Edward was still chattering and bickering, just like kindergartners who were about to go out for a spring trip, the proper atmosphere group, even Argyle, who usually wasn't much of a talker, was unexpectedly excited, and even spoke a few more words, Domi and Rosa, on the other hand, sat quietly, looking at Edward and Argyle in all directions, words first, Argyle reminded, father has given us a separate box, if there is anything you like you can bid on it, but you can't maliciously inflate the price, there are people who will do this, and you can't just run around when you're out of the box so you don't disturb other people's bidding, understand, at this time, Argyle is like a big brother, although he was only born a few seconds earlier than Domi, he was still very responsible, no problem, got it, I'll follow my brothers, okay, then it's a deal, Osmond, head guard, it's time to go, as you wish, Osmond, Osmond's gruff voice came from outside the carriage, the short-range magic array bloomed with light, and in the next moment, the carriage shifted from the top of the mountain to the avenue at the foot of the mountain, galloping towards the giant dragon's nest, the dragon's nest, as the name suggests, was a giant building that was transformed from the dead remains of a dragon, this dragon was none other than the white dragon that was decapitated by the Blofeld family back then, and its corpse landed within the city's center ring, might as well say that the city was built around this dragon corpse, it was also the symbol of the family, one of the most dazzling business cards of the Blofeld collar, the other two being the giant tree mage tower and the peak castle, the giant dragon's nest had two functions, in order to create a sense of atmosphere, the auction house was constructed underground, and above ground, inside the dragon bones that were coiled in a circle was the arena as well as the official certification venue for the mage rank test, there were entrances in all directions, and there was even a passageway and parking lot specifically for carriages, which was a little too advanced in Domi's opinion, and the flow of people, coming here today is also a little too much, it is simply a sea of people, they came from all over the world different territories within the empire, even different countries and tribes, and even people across the ocean had people who had heard the news and traveled thousands of miles to attend, humans, elves, half-orcs, 
Dwarves, in addition to the demon race, almost all species of subhumans have come all over, wearing all kinds of costumes, topped with all kinds of faces, walking together, as if filled with all kinds of cosplay comic show field, entering the underground parking lot. If they were to go down from the carriage and directly enter the main road to the auction house, the five of them would instantly be swept away in front of that raging crowd. Of course, they would never be squeezed like most people. Privilege should have the appearance that privilege should have. Scar-faced Osmond led the way for them. Young master and young lady, please go this way. You can go directly to the box area. It wasn't too far off from what was described in the comics he read in his previous life. A huge round underground space, like the audience in the Roman Colosseum and the staircase classroom in a university classroom. Below the box area, there were layers upon layers of ordinary seats, densely packed, at least tens of thousands of ordinary seats. At the bottom, on the center stage, is where the auction items are placed. In the upper level of the box can have the best view. If the eyesight is not good to see clearly or cannot see the back, there will be magic projection directly in front of the display. If you are thirsty, there are free fruits and drinks. If you suffer from cardiac arrest because of excessive stimulation, there are professional medical and funeral teams on standby, realizing one-stop treatment, invalidating, entering the pavilion, and eating the banquet. The service can be said to be quite thorough. Their four siblings sat in the four big soft chairs prepared in advance. Only Osmond did not. He had to guard the door. The others, except for Domi, were chatting away, and he was the only one thinking back to the list of auction items. He had stopped by to look at the list of auction items when he had gone to ask Carlos for an extra box. Carlos originally couldn't show it to him, but reluctantly gave him a glance after Domi's soft words. However, what Carlos could not have imagined was that Domi actually had the ability to see everything at a glance. With just a glance, he included all the information into his brain, and then as long as he did some rote memorization in a short period of time, he would be able to completely memorize it. A high mental power had the benefit of a drastically improved memory. Right now, he was probably the only person other than Carlos and the narrator who knew all the information and order of the auction items, but he could only stop at the names of the auction items, and the functions were all based on guessing, but this level was already enough for him to find the right zone to meet up with Moray and the others. Once all the guests were seated, the auction soon began. The lights in the entire room went out one by one. Only the center stage remained illuminated by the spotlight. Da, 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 da. Then, a rather flirtatiously dressed and well-built woman, wearing a one-shoulder bustier evening gown, stepped on her high heels and walked up to the stage with enchanting steps, entering the public's field of vision, and opened her mouth graciously. Welcome to the hand of the almighty auction, which is lovingly organized by the Blofeld family. The pleasant and seductive voice could undoubtedly stir up the primal desires within the men, thus making them lose their minds and swipe their big hands to heavily auction off the collection. The auction's control over human nature was to constantly stimulate people's greed and desire, to turn this place into a place of paper drunkenness, chasing dreams, and the winners eating the losers eating dust. Pa 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 pa. The whole room burst into thunderous applause. Many people have been waiting for this moment for as long as three years. Come on, favorite money game. The first round to be auctioned is from all over the outstanding masters of the paintings, identified, all have a considerable attainment of art level and has a very high collection value, if it is hung in the lobby of the family home, it is also a beautiful thing, the words fell, the maids of honor lined up in a row, the paintings neatly arranged on the stage, covered with a curtain, by the beautiful auctioneer lifted one by one, none of the people here are short of money, the gap is only reflected in the amount of money owned, a small painting, or can be bought, Hidden for a long time where the painter suddenly died, the painting can also appreciate it. As an excuse for tax evasion is also a good choice, when you are short of money or sell. So, these famous paintings were invariably digested by the buyers under the stage, the speed of which is amazingly fast. The people in the box, on the other hand, looked faintly interested. The auctioneer is also a veteran, have heard of the reputation of the hand of the almighty outside, did not expect to have such power, she did not idle immediately began to stir up the atmosphere of the scene. The effect is outstanding. There are already people who can't stand to see the next round of items. Then next, let's usher in the second round. With the main items for sale being ancient items and props, an oval ceramic pot rose onto the stage on a lifting platform, and buyers could see the incomparably fine relief patterns engraved on it, while some traces of wind erosion and erosion added a sense of age to it. This is a large pot unearthed from the ruins of an unknown ancient country, at least 500 years old. As you can see, the auctioneer was trying his best to trumpet the artistic value of the jug, and apart from those who wanted to collect it and those who didn't know what they were harboring, no one else had much interest in it, and inside the box, Edward was the only one who couldn't stop staring at the jug. 
It's so beautiful. As beautiful as the maid's sister? Domi teased. Edward just shook his head slightly, not even wanting to take his vision off the jug. No, you don't understand. It's a beauty of art, not beauty in primal desire. It's so stripped down that even time can't erase the light from it. And that mesmerizing mystery. Oh my god. I must take it and place it in my room to view it properly. With that, he invoked his magic to draw its amount on the floor-to-ceiling window, 3,000 gold dragons. He became the first box buyer to make a bid at this stage. The buyer of box 309 bids. 3,000 gold dragons. Is there any higher? Oh, box 404 has also bid. 3,500 gold dragons. Tisk. Edward skimmed his mouth. These guys were the most annoying. As soon as they saw that someone else wanted to buy, they had to test whether he was sincere or not. The rose stuck to the mouth can't just fly away. To compare financial strength, he Edward never falls who. Box 309. 4,000 gold dragons. 4,000 first. 4,000 second. 4,000. Third. Sold. Congratulations to the buyer of box 309 for successfully auctioning this old dynasty antique pot. In the box, although everyone was surprised that Edward would actually spend a huge amount of money to buy this useless broken pot, but no one said anything about him, where the interest lies, spending a little money is nothing, just happy, Edward, Edward was happy now, Domi continued to put his vision on the auction stage, the next ancient item is a prop from the magic side, only a tattered book was placed inside the glass display case, the cover had been corroded to a beige color, and the surrounding area was still a bit burned, after identification by the organizing party's professionals, this is a book that records how to inscribe a coat of arms capable of storing magic power. Many people couldn't help themselves when they heard this, and many of the people in the boxes started to get excited. A coat of arms capable of storing magic power ah, if it was put to use in battle, wouldn't it be able to have an additional backup hidden energy source? Turning the tide against the wind wasn't impossible. It can be said to be a book of heraldry. I don't know out of the hands of which talented magical genius. You know, this technology has not yet appeared in today's society and it is the only way to contact and learn this technology. Although it's a remnant book that only records the first two grades of heraldry, and the amount of magic that can be stowed away is not much, only enough to put in a high-level magic. The practical combat value as well as the scientific research value that it represents is immeasurable. Minimum price, 50,000. Each call cannot be lower than 1,000. Bidding begins. 51,000. 55,000. 70,000. While the people in the other boxes were making hot offers, Domi was still in the middle of thinking. A coat of arms capable of storing magic power. Engraved on the body to be able to use magic power. Using magic power without occupying extra energy space in the body? What is his current situation? The spirit devouring energy occupied all the space in his body in an overbearing manner and no longer allowed any other system of energy to come back in. In which case he had no energy to drive his shadow system magic at all. Wouldn't an external magic power storage be a solution to his immediate needs? And unlike other people's practice of using it as a backup energy source, his perfect shadow system talent didn't rely on itself to produce magic power, but rather, it used absorbing magic power from the environment and converting it into shadow system magic power as the main means of obtaining energy. In other words, as long as he had such an external energy warehouse, his own perfect level talent could still be used. Being able to cast magic was a heavenly blessing for a spirit eater. Rosa, write a hundred thousand for me, Domi said nonchalantly. He didn't have magic, so he could only let his sister do it for him. It was worth mentioning that Rosa, like Carlos, was born with an advanced level time-based talent, and the overflowing mana looked as white as a comet when she used time magic. None of the three children in the main court were time-based, and the second wife only had one, just enough to inherit Carlos' mantle, the only bad news being a girl. Actually, a boy would be even more problematic. The big buyer in box 304 is bidding $100,000 straight up. It's already double the reserve price. Anyone else want to raise the bid? Box 101, $110,000. Box 201, 130000 Rosa, 200000 230000 250000 Rosa, write 300, 000. This is how it is when a good auction house conducts an auction. Once there is something that must be taken down, the huge auction house will soon turn into a one-man show for a few people. The competition between money and power was fought at this moment. Inside box 201, the stocky man wearing a gold silk mink coat, his fingers covered in rings that emitted a magical aura, and a pipe in his mouth narrowed his eyes and looked down to box number 304. Father Sama, I really need this coat of arms. With it, I'll definitely be able to take the laurels in the entrance exam five years from now and win glory for you. If I were to open a one-fan value speech, I'm sure my comment backstage would be a lot more refreshing. Schneier, 
It's good that you're planning for the future now, but you can't talk about empty credentials that have no basis, even if it's an investment, you have to see a near-term return, five years, and what are you pledging against me, my son, Schnell poofed, directly kneeling behind, just by the fact that I'm your son, if I can't do it, you'll pretend that you don't have me as your son, really courageous ah, oh, by virtue of the identity I gave you to use to make a deal with me, who taught you to do business this way, also, then as you wish, the buyer of box 304, check it out, a valet walked noiselessly behind the man and said quietly as he brought his mouth closer, reporting to Lord Chancellor, the officials don't allow us to inquire about the identity of the people in box 304, but I learned from a passing attendant that the boxes seem to be filled with children, with an escort, children, how many, judging by the fruit platter that was sent in, at least three or four if not one super big fat kid, three or four kids plus an escort, that's all it takes to monopolize a box that's not even an inch of gold, so it seems like the answer is already crying out, take this opportunity to see how much Carlos thinks of his own kids, write me, $400,000, the auctioneer exclaimed, the buyer of box 201 has actually offered 400,000 gold dragons, do the other two still want to follow, at this point, the buyers in the general seats on the stage had already collectively pressed the mute button, what the hell kind of fairy fight is this, a broken book, although it has value, quadrupling it is too outrageous, right, or is it that they've seen less of the world, and that's how auctions are supposed to work, other people are checking him, Domi naturally also sent Osmond to check the identity of the buyer of 201, with their home field advantage, Osmond quickly brought back the information and reported to Domi, young master, the buyer located at 201 is our empire's chancellor, Schlieffen, and this time he brought his youngest son, Schnell, along with him, afraid that Domi didn't know him well, Osmond also introduced him in passing, Schlieffen is known by the people in the court as Beast Chancellor due to his rugged yet powerful figure and his beast-like ruthless approach, and his strength in all aspects cannot be underestimated, then, you say, compared to our family and this Beast Chancellor, who has more money, naturally it is us, Osmond answered honestly, Schlieffen also entered the political arena from his father's generation, although he rose rapidly by virtue of his personal strength, but his heritage is not as good as ours, and he can't fight hard against financial strength, he can't fight against you, provided your father agrees, I see so, now, the one in box 101 should have given up the bidding, and the only enemy left in front of him was this beast chancellor, Domi picked up a pen and wrote down a few paragraphs on a piece of paper before folding it into small pieces and handing it to Osmond, show this to my father, he should agree, oh yeah, don't peek at it oh, I can't imagine the consequences, don't worry, Domi was pretty sure Carlos would agree and continued, half a million, Schlieffen, 600,000, 700,000, now even the auctioneer was shocked, she had never, never seen such a ferocious fight on a prelot, and both sides had no intention of laying down and continuing to pull the price, Schlieffen, $800,000, 1 million, it should be coming to the limit, Schlieffen laughed slightly, the red wine in his hand shook, puffing and puffing to give himself a comfortable sitting position, a child's pocket money is no more, there should be a limit, 1,100,000, there was indeed no sound from across the room, so it seemed he had guessed correctly. Carlos, it seems you don't think that highly of your sons either nah, not willing to spend even 1 million, TSK TSK, box 201 final pricing 1 million 100,000, 1 million 100,000 once, 1 million 100,000 twice, just as the auctioneer was about to repeat it for the last time. Osman rushed back into box 304 and shouted to Domi, young master, the master agreed, he said this one is yours to auction as you please with no ceiling, he smiled, as expected, Rosa, don't stop with your hand, one and a half million dollars, let's show this beastly chancellor how determined we are, oh my goodness, the buyer of box 304 actually directly quoted a heavenly price of one and a half million dollars after some silence, so does buyer 201 want to continue to go even further, inside box 201, Schlieffen moved his vision away from the direction of no, 304 and took a sip of red wine, looks like you're still a little bit interested, I'm sorry son, this thing doesn't belong to you anymore, even if it fetches a hundred million dollars, it doesn't belong to you anymore, only just been helped up Schneier such as a thunderclap, legs are soft off, father, father, what does this mean, this point of bearing ability are not, Schlieffen glanced at him, said, can't shoot is not shoot, this setback cannot stand, I think you still stay at home, out of the net to me shame, Schneier lowered his head, his eyes staring vacantly at the palm of his hand, and his mind did not know what gain and loss, were counting, these small actions are all Schlieffen see in the eyes, he as a prime minister, even the emperor's mind are touched seven or eight, 
his son in the thought of what he can not be clear it. Just Schneier chose the wrong direction ah. Schlieffen sighed, and the baby fell into the hands of Domi. Spend one and a half million dollars to buy a real magic plugin. Blood money. If Edward spends four thousand gold dragons at best just figure a fun, then Domi spends one and a half million. There is really a component of defeat. Argyle as a big brother have not used such money. Beyond half a million will be Gressa and Carlos racked on the thighs of the mixed sex double. Why can Domi still get the permission of the father lord? Is it favoritism? No. In his opinion, it was compensation for his father's lack of talent for Domi. Everyone except Carlos knew that Domi's talent was only beginner level, and it was justifiable to want to compensate him in this way. Argyle thought to himself as he thought about it, and there was a hint of comfort in his eyes as he looked at Domi. After a fierce competition, the remnants of the Book of Heraldry is finally in the hands of buyer 304 Ah, Let's congratulate this buyer for obtaining another treasure. Then without further delay, let's lift the next lot. The Army Banner of the Undead Kingdom. A cursed army banner that can provide a large number of gain effects for friendly troops. The specific effects are. The specific effects are, life, magic dual recovery growth rate, toughness, fire prevention system water system 20%, courage aura, group healing, impact resistance 80%. Energy enough can also unfold a wide range of shield, so that the user is protected from long-range attack damage. Its effect is comparable to a whole army of gainers, but as strong as the ability is, it certainly won't live long once it's used, and the range of its curse is all those who are benefited by it. Minimum price, 100,000. Each increase must not be less than 1,000. Tomorrow at 12 noon on the shelves, kneeling for a first booking. This flag came from a small country in the outer realms which had ended up burying itself in the pursuit of extreme legion combat power. Their motherland won that battle, and just when they wanted to capitalize on the victory, the curse struck, and the entire group of troops instantly died violently on the plains, directly leading to the destruction of the kingdom. And that plain is now the wilderness of the dead, which has become a paradise for the dead and the souls of the dead. People in later generations dug up this flag on that plain littered with graves and came here after going around in circles. This thing, proper plus buffs into a sidetrack. Use it as a self-destructing pickup truck is the right way to open ah. Domi instantly figured out the correct use of this dead army flag. People didn't have much desire to buy it. It was more of a joke. After all, no one wanted to be associated with something cursed. Yet it was such a thing that was too obscure to buy. But there was still a buyer from the general seats who stepped in and auctioned it off for 10. 000 above the reserve price. And left the scene after buying it. By all rights. Such a dangerous cursed item should have been sealed away. But since the object it cursed was immune to the curse as long as it was above its standard in a certain value, it had no effect on high-level magicians at least. However, that group army just happened to be a proper ordinary human melee army again. That's why none of them were immune. But any magician who was in there could be the sole survivor. Counted as dangerous. But not very. Straw man in the grand scheme of things. No one would have a problem with money. Even if the cost was the lives of countless ordinary people. The hiccup brought about by the military flag passed just like that. The auctioneer continued to auction off the remaining ancient items one by one, and in an auction of this scale, not a single lot was a runaway, extremely efficient, striking every rich and right-sized customer with precision. Then next is the important stage of this auction. The theme is, props or items with magic. Please look. The first item, from the orc continental plate, a giant sword capable of summoning sandstorms, desert wolf. Legend has it that it was the weapon of a certain legendary orc hero of old who had defeated countless magical creatures with it. It's a heavy weapon well suited for use by adventurers. Starting reserve price, 600, 000 gold dragons. Each increase is not less than 10, 000. The black eye patch of the fire protector maiden, from the far north, used to peer in the direction of the world civilization fire. Starting reserve price, 200,000, no less than 10,000 per increase. Dark moon slime gel amulet. Wearing this amulet will allow you to harness the power of the dark moon slime transforming the highly moldable gel contained within it into any shape you desire. The gel is moderately hard and tough, and even when pinched into a weapon, it still has considerable performance. Most importantly, it will not break completely, and can be used again by replenishing it with the gel that can be regenerated in the talisman. One thing to note is that this talisman only supports shadow system magic to regenerate the gel as raw material. Starting bid, $400,000. Each increase is not less than 10,000. Domi, 500,000. Big brother, dislike it if anyone else offers, this east, west I must have it, Rosa puzzled, then brother where are you going, so anxious look, feeling coming on, I'm going to take a break, before leaving the door, he also heard the news that he had successfully auctioned this talisman, 
and even while standing in the corridor he could still faintly hear the auctioneer lady's voice. Sulfur fire fruit, a top-grade heavenly treasure that can drastically increase the purity of a fire mage's flames and change the flames released in the future to sulfur volcano fire, which is more than a little bit more powerful and is predicted to be increased by about 40% in all directions. The starting bid is $800,000. Edward heard this and directly stormed out. Sensei's starting bid was only 800000 directly pulling it to 1 million. 1 million, take it directly. The voice was so loud that Domi almost fell over. Looks like I was right to go out just now. In a puff of smoke he ran to the next box, in half an hour Osmond wouldn't be able to find him, because this matter was already known to him. 301 box. Upon entering, he saw Moray and May still standing. Domi lost his smile while rubbing his ears. Why don't you sit down if you have a chair? Since you haven't come yet, my lord, we won't sit. Moray and May said after bowing and greeting. All right, all right, sit. It's weirdly tiring to stand. Although Domi was a bit dissatisfied with his mouth. In his heart he was actually satisfied. It seemed that Moray and May hadn't forgotten who had given them everything. The next thing to shoot if there is something you want just say it. Don't be pretentious. I will shoot it. Murray gave May a C. I told you so look. If he didn't give May a good shot ahead of time. This half-grown girl definitely wouldn't say more than a single word until the end. But now this look. Say a piece of want to be the top of the sky. Right. The first two lots were sold quickly due to their decent efficacy. However the next few lots were what Domi was going to be up for maneuvering. The high-performance dagger whose weapon's inherent ability was temporary invisibility, night killing, was auctioned at 400. 000 dollars. Use it as your own sidearm. Also auctioned were the medium-sized armor violet gold armor and the lance dragon's tooth, both of which were also equipped, and were given to May and Moray respectively. The purple gold armor had been modified and could be fashioned into a model that perfectly matched May's body shape, much better than the original heavy armor that was heavy ill-fitting, and weak in defense. M.O. Lay himself was a high-level ice talent, and although the dragon's teeth was called dragon's teeth, the material used was the fangs of the alpine snow plains wolf king, which was also ice, with a better compatibility of the same lineage, and an even higher level of power. Two people form a small team, and then a little bit of combat experience, purely relying on the advantages of equipment, like Tuso like a small Karami can still deal with one or two. In addition to this, there is also a necromancer summoning undead followers must medium ashes. This time, three pieces of ashes were set out at once. Black Knight Mountain Shield Bearer, Tower Shield, Black Knight Mountain Assassin, and Black Knight Mountain Shield Swordsman, combining a big front row, assassin, and warrior into one, just enough to be packaged and sold in a bundle. The three together were also said to be able to perform group battle skills, which were even demonstrated once at the scene. After the release of the battle technique, all three of the black armored warriors that were selling well would receive a buff that boosted their full attributes by 10%, as well as a powerful 60% anti-impact gain. That is to say that this 60% impact resistance to just anywhere. The shield bearer's large tower shield and then a ride. Here is a tenacious small stone in the turbulent river. As long as the gap is not outrageous, it is impossible to be washed away. These three people's ashes bundle, face value strength are online, simply as the undead system mage outing kill and set fire to the necessary artifact ah, Domi once again spent a huge amount of money to take it, spending a huge amount of money at the auction, reaching the villain playing the hidden achievement, the landlord's stupid son, villain value plus 10 w, if one encountered an auction house bridge in other novels, the protagonist would only be able to buy one or two pieces after selling the wealth he had gotten from previous adventures, but when it comes to Domi, the auction is not called an auction house at all, but a wholesale market instead, pure and simple to buy goods, and by the way, it also sends a thousand straight draws, the landlord's son of a fool, the name is not good to hear a little, but who will and money and villainous value over now, soon, the last magic side lot was taken out, preserved in a glass marquee, it emitted an eerie blue light, and the four walls were dyed a light blue hue as a result, passing the image in front of him and taking a closer look, it was actually a human finger bone, it was obviously a bone, but it emitted such a fantastic color and was also crystal clear. Those who didn't know would think it was some kind of glass artwork, but it was an actual magic side prop, placed last to be moved onto the stage, indicating that this thing was still quite something. Unknown ethereal blue finger bone, which contains some kind of powerful energy, the intensity of which is high enough to dissolve all external objects that touch it, including magic. Even professional appraisers cannot be sure of its origin and role, but we believe that it will be in the hands of the right person to play the greatest role, which is also why it will come here. Others might not know what this thing was for, but could Domi not? The aura on it was the same as the initial spirit eater energy that he had boiled down. Although it was a little different now, it came from the same origin. 
This was the finger bone of a spirit eater senior. Whether it was useful or not, it had to be taken. Starting bidding price is $600,000. Each increase will not be less than $10,000. M.O. Lay, write $700,000. Write again, $800,000. Write again, $1 million. This thing, I'll take it. In the end, the other party was still unable to defeat Domi's financial power and gave up this finger bone, falling into Domi's pocket. Moray and May two people's equipment together is only 600,000, and Duomi in order to want to do not know what to do with the finger can throw a million. They now know what is called trenchless ah, long acquaintance. This round to this also ended, rest for a while and then began the final finale. Domi also took this opportunity to return to the 304 box, and instructed Moray and May when you want to go can, do not care about him, can be in this level of auction as the finale of the auction will not be much, only can be three. One of them is also provided by the family. Domi interest is faint. After all, this level of things is not he can fight. Is the big families of Carlos those in power? The royal family and so on. Only have the qualification of the PK on stage. They get along just fine. Simply figure afresh. The first is a friendly offer of the auction, the blood of the ancient white dragon emperor. Ancient dragon is equivalent to the king of the dragon tribe. There are not many. Want to get their blood is as difficult as heaven. Blofeld can come up with such a small bottle must also be very painful. In fact, not so much. Domi recognized it at once. When he caught Joe did not see this bottle of blood? Such a valuable thing for him to capture the weak. Not afraid of him to take a dagger to smash it cluck? It must be a gimmick used by Carlos to cheat more money. As expected, those who play with capital have dirty hearts. However, this gimmick still fooled most of the people. They threw their heads and blood to bid. And in the end, it actually fetched a sky-high price of 90 million gold dragons. It was auctioned off by the royal family of the Lionheart Empire. 90 million dollars. There was no middleman to make a difference in price. And in the end, it all went into their own pockets. It's a bit dizzying to think about. In fact, if the buyer wasn't the royal family, no one would have dared to call it again. The price could have been higher. However, the dragon's blood was just the beginning. In the Seal Seal Demon Atlas, there's even a never-before-seen forbidden lightning technique. As long as you have a forbidden art, it is equivalent to monopolizing a way to become a forbidden art mage. Forces that already have a forbidden art are fine, as the value of buying it is not high, but those that don't have a forbidden art, and have a predominantly lightning system, will have to scramble for their heads. Domi then witnessed the entire process of a famous Thundertype clan in the Empire and a foreign orc clan spilling their coins to each other. Everyone else had dropped out of the competition, leaving only these two families still relentlessly raising the price. Something that had a reserve price of $50 million was actually handed over to this famous family in the country at a sky-high price of 150 million gold dragons in the end. The poor orc family sold most of their family's assets. The small treasury is still not as rich as the big empire's famous family ah, but buy it, that family is not good. The future will have to be silent for a good period of time, but then come out of the mountain. There may be a forbidden mage to sit in the family, promoted from archmage to forbidden spell mage. The lack is often so a forbidden magic that can glimpse the avenue ah. As for the last lot, the lights in the entire arena suddenly turned off, and everyone waited in eager anticipation. At that moment, a brilliant golden light blossomed from the bottom of the elevating platform, piercing the darkness in the auction house. As the lifting platform gradually rose, that golden light became more and more grand until it enveloped the entire space in gold. When its complete appearance appeared in view, the cold gasps of astonishment that resounded from the scene rose and fell and could not be dispersed for a long time. All honored guests, please allow me to grandly introduce to you this lot as the grand finale from the kingdom of the Mori Elves, the newborn shoot at the top of the golden sacred tree. It was said to be a young branch, but in fact, its hardness had already surpassed most of the materials in the world, and only a mythical weapon could touch it. Moreover, this branch was straight as a spear. There were also purely natural patterns wrapped around it, making it appear both sacred and magnificent, whether it was forged into a weapon a staff, or used as a medicinal herb, it was the best material, bar none, it would not be an exaggeration to say that it was the best stick in the world, since it is still in its nascent state and has been properly preserved, it also contains the golden laws within the sacred tree, so if you are able to comprehend it, you will definitely be able to use it to realize a deeper path of magic, in addition to this, it was also a national gift from the Sin Elf Kingdom at the beginning of the Lionheart Empire, and by bringing it to the Sin Elf Empire, you can ask the Sin Elf Kingdom to do what you can, and the current queen of the Sin Elves recognizes this matter as well. Its value. I believe you all have a rough idea in your hearts. Next is its starting bid. Starting auction price, 500 million gold dragons. Each increase is not less than 10 million, and can be converted using national currencies. Hiss. 
Hearing this price, Domi all sucked in a breath of cold air. 500 million na, all of it in front of him could be piled up into a huge mountain, right? This equivalent, even the Blofeld family, which was known to be the richest in the entire empire, would not be able to take it out, right? However, the reality is always unexpected. Everyone knows that the 101st box located on the top floor is the box belonging to Blofeld's current head of the family. Carlos, from the beginning of the auction to the present have not been shot once in the box, this time finally issued a voice. That voice, loud, calm, and with a mesmerizing bottom, 600 million. Don't even need to handwrite on the screen, directly speak out, can also let the people over deepen the impression, so that they know, Blofeld is still the same Blofeld before. Since the beginning, there has never been a hint of decline, $650 million. Yet even with Carlos himself, there were still people who wanted to take a chance, and Domi looked to the box that had voiced it, which was understood to be the very box that the Mori Elf delegation was in. Looks like they're eager to take the branches back home with them, Domi guessed. Isn't it something that's been given away? Why pay to buy it back? Edward looked puzzled. In his opinion, wouldn't it be purely stupid egg behavior and a waste of money to buy his own stuff back? This you don't understand. Argyle incarnated as Copper Emperor and explained, because of the perennial war between the Sin Elf Kingdom and the Demon Race, the country's comprehensive national strength has been declining instead of increasing, and now it is already weaker than the Lionheart that was just founded at that time. The prosperous and strong royal family certainly no longer needs to use this branch to request the help of the Mori Elves, and now that we are also at war with the demons, in order to fill up the national treasury, it is justifiable to sell this tasteless and disposable chicken rib thing for money, and the Mori Elves are here to take it back in order to prevent the branch from falling into the hands of someone with an agenda, thus causing even more damage to the kingdom. Since it was about the Mori Elves, Domi listened quite attentively to Argyle's science, knowing a little more might help Aurora who was far away. At this point Rosa raised her hand nicely to ask a question. Well, Sister Rosa you speak. Why did father get it when the Moroi elves were trying to buy it back to protect their country? How could Argyle know what Carlos was planning to do? And could only say, as long as father doesn't use it against the Sin Elf Kingdom, it's really no different than if they bought it back for themselves. But now the Mori elves are like beaten and scared. They won't trust anyone anymore. Domi added the crucial point. No matter what promises father makes, they won't give away the sacred tree tender branch anymore. Osmond in the back secretly nodded. Never underestimate Dominic and Argyle. These two little guys have pretty good analytical skills on practical matters. Hit the nail on the head nah. Carlos had discussed with the Sin Elf delegation before the auction started. Wanting to buy the sacred tree shoots privately. But the Sin Elves said nothing. They came out this time on the orders of the Queen and the Council of Elders. And had to bring the shoots back to their own country. And would do whatever it took to do so. That's what led to the current scene. Carlos was adding a hundred million at a time and the Sin Elves' treasury was also a bit empty. The Imperial Golden Dragon had run out, and had been filled with their own currency with a much lower exchange rate, adding only 50 million at a time, and then would be overwhelmed by another and another hundred million from Carlos. Inside the Mori Elves' box, several middle-aged men had already made a mess, constantly contacting King City Aletta, with the theme of just one word, fighting for money. The royal city there was also very anxious ah, uh, in front of the treasury, the staff in charge of calculations were also busy, constantly calculating how much free money was still available for bidding. Your Majesty, converted. We only have $200 million left that can be used for bidding. She frowned. Only this much? Yes. If we use any more it will affect the war on the front. Seeing the Queen's hesitant appearance, the courtiers, also panicked, fearing that the Queen would invoke the military pay in a hot head. So they all knelt down to admonish. Your Majesty. Think twice, if the front line collapses and we ask for support from the neighboring countries, the debt we have to bear is much bigger than the cost of a promise, and there's no harm in selling it to that Carlos ah, he shouldn't use it to honor our promise, and please give up the shoots, your majesty, truly the treasury is empty now, no, the queen slowly shook her head, these days I've been learning about the situation in the world today, the Lionheart Empire is resisting the demons while still having the spare capacity to wage wars to the surrounding areas with increasing frequency, and with each conquered place they will transform it into a tool for them to make money, showing that they have plenty of spare capacity and will grow stronger and stronger. The Republic of the North, which has long been dissatisfied with their situation for a long time, has been foolish enough to move. The other neighboring elf kingdoms have been prying into our fertile land for a long time, there are also the orcs and dwarves, to whom the sacred tree has a great attraction. All of these people want to devour our flesh and suck out our blood. Do you guys think you're just competing with that Blofeld family head? What if he buys it and sells it back to these forces as a way to hide their true intentions and take us by surprise when we're at our emptiest? This is the only chance left. 
we can't lose this initiative. For the current Mori Elf Kingdom, it had reached a dilemma, with the Devil Race constantly encroaching on the borders in front of them, fighting a war that consumed a huge amount of money, and the hidden dangers brought about by the sacred tree tendrils behind them, with a wolf in front and a tiger at the back, one had to think of a way to break the situation. Borrow, the queen made up her mind, I'll go and borrow money for me, as much as you can. The development of the matter was sent back to the dragon's nest as used 200 million to stall for a while longer, already went to borrow money. In charge of the entire delegation is a female elf, part-time diplomat, rare wearing a pair of myopic glasses, even more shrewd and capable. To this point of exhaustion also showed a tired decadence. 750 million dollars. 950 million. Snap. Carlos said the deadline in her heart almost without thinking, and the cup she had originally held in her hand to ease her tension directly shattered on the ground. Why? Why can that man directly cross so much? Could it be that we have a mole here? Other than a mole. She really couldn't think of any other possibilities. And since there was a mole, it wouldn't help if she quoted a higher price because Carlos was perfectly capable of having their funds thoroughly investigated. The funds owned were all clearly registered before entering the auction house, and the money borrowed on a temporary basis was not counted if they didn't have time to write it down. Once the amount of money is not enough but still reported upwards, they have to compensate half of the amount of the final transaction. The loss is not worth the gain. On the stage, the auctioneer's voice sounded almost high oh, 950 million dollars. First time, 950 million. Second time, is there a higher price? Her hands hang down helplessly, fantasizing that at this time, if there can be a rich and powerful handsome to save them from the fire, then she will certainly be in favor of it. Oh, it's a pity that the fantasy is all said and done. And itself, of course, it is impossible to realize. She gave up. On behalf of the Mori Elf Kingdom completely lost the battle. $950 million for the third time. Sold. Congratulations to the buyer of box 101 for winning this final lot. Slap. The entire room resounded with enduring applause, congratulating the auction for coming to an end with such a wonderful game of money. I'm really looking forward to the next one. It's quite wonderful. Let's do it again next time darling. Tickets all cost a thousand. Loser bitch. The buyers left the venue in droves, and inside box 304, Domi and the others were ready to leave. They still had a bit of an event that had only just begun. The excitement was high. Later we'll go to the best restaurant in town first. Then there's an opera in the afternoon. Just as they were stepping out of the box, however, a bright red color appeared to the side of the view, and Edward's speech stopped immediately as Domi looked sideways. It was a young girl in a pure white fringe dress, long to her snow white ankles, and below her ankles, a pair of flat soled, cross strapped little white shoes wrapped around her jade feet, slightly curly, such as fire like burning rose red hair, large eyes with wave like curvature, fair skin and delicate features, hands and feet, all show its graceful and noble temperament. When Domi turned his head to look at her, the other party also seemed to be looking at himself. The four eyes were facing each other. She blinked Bryn Bryn's eyes, which seemed to have light in them, as beautiful and touching as a ruddy lagoon nebula. She only saw her hands lifting the hem of her skirt up, slightly bending her knees, looking up at Domi with a confident smile, her vermilion lips lightly opening, her voice as cool as snow in the warm sun with a bit of warmth and passion. No matter what, it sounded so pleasant. First time meeting, my name is Shay. Shay N. Augustus. Dominic. Student. Please, can I have lunch with you? 84 in review. Gotta wait. Augustus. Augustus? Hiss. What a familiar surname. The moment the doll-like delicate young girl said her name, Argyle's mind was still spinning. Then, he finally remembered. Augustus. Damn if it wasn't a royal family name. Looking at the young girl's age, it seemed like she was three years older than a few of them. Around ten years old. Royal family. Ten years old red hair, these several key words combined together, the answer is already crying out, the youngest daughter of the current emperor, known as the rose princess, that mind near demon, but also like an iceberg like rejecting people outside of a thousand miles of genius girl, actually appeared here, Domi didn't feel much surprise, he knew that box 102 was the royal family, his cheap dad was next door to 101, and the one who brought her here from the royal family was probably still chatting with Carlos for a while, compared to her identity, her appearance and demeanor were more in Domi's heart. A question always haunts his mind. They say that a girl's age changes. Why does a 10-year-old girl look so good ah? Shay gave him a sense of shock. No less than in his previous life and the trembling sound to see those extremely good big sister. But is he not someone who can be tempted by beauty? He still had to go out and get high with his fish-lipped brother and cute sister. So how could he have time to pay attention to her? And it's better to try to have less contact with people who are linked to the royal family. No go. 
No, before he finished saying no time, he was covered by Argyle who ran over and whispered in his ear with a rather gloomy face, he is the youngest and most favored daughter of his majesty the emperor, and the fact that she has appeared here means that the person who brought her here may have had a few words with her father, and now that she has come to find you, it is assumed that there is still a meaning from her father, so I don't care if you want to or not, you have to go, but we made an appointment, there's plenty of time for that later, go, Argyle randomly said to Shay in a second, ah ha 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 ha, I'll let you see the joke princess Shay, Domi is just a little bit afraid of being born, in fact, he is free, right Domi, Argyle said so, what else could he do, only had to nod his head repeatedly like a chicken pecking at rice, ah, uh, if it's just a lunch, that's great, Shay smiled faintly, then walked over quickly and reached out to take his arm, what a marvelous touch that was, they say it's hard to go from luxury to frugality, but Domi thought it would be quite nice to have a little bit of bitterness, oh, Argyle, and oh god of transmigration, thank you, and behavior like holding hands is actually normal, if a girl has a male companion, she will hold their arm in this way, this refers to the male partner who is traveling together to do something, so as to show that Ta is mine, if you want to talk to me, you have to ask me first, otherwise I will be left on the side of the embarrassment meaning, after giving Domi a marvelous touch, she tilted her head and said to Domi with a bright smile, let's go I've already made a reservation at the restaurant, watching Domi being kidnapped away by a woman who came out halfway, Rosa was nothing but confused and jealous, at least, least during childhood, Duomi's brother should have belonged to, she is only right ah, also, why is this princess Rose only looking for Domi, not Edward, not Argyle, ah, uh, little sister, even if you ask that I don't know what to say ah, uh, that's just it, maybe, the princess is looking at Domi like a turtle looks at a kiwi and is right on the money, Edward said this without even noticing that he had said the wrong thing, Rosa then huffed and puffed away, cursing brother Edward super duper in the process, a dumbfounded Edward looked at Argyle in disbelief and innocence, sincerely asking for help, big brother, why did my little sister scold me, I shouldn't have done anything wrong, right, it's not like I'm the one who abducted Domi, at the loss of you still claiming that you have a knack for flirting with girls, you can't even understand your own sister's mind, so it's all the maid sisters who are cooperating with your performance, hey little sister, don't go too fast, wait for me, saying that, Argyle also left him, leaving Edward alone in the wind, clam, the other side, the restaurant with reservation was not far from the dragon's nest, and it didn't take long to reach the ground after getting on the carriage, the restaurant was of the highest class in the city, and even Carlos often chose this place when he received foreign guests, he had also been here a few times, it was one of the few upscale restaurants where the taste was proportional to the price, and it didn't charge much in the way of IQ tax, Fia chose a window seat, since it was on the third floor, and had a full view of the street below, as well as the castle at the top of the hill not too far away, trying to reserve this seat would cost quite a bit of money nah, I'll let you break the bank princess, Domi first moved his chair to let Shay sit first, then it was his turn to take a seat, sitting upright with his head held high and his eyes free of the shyness that Argyle had described, that little detail was in Thea's eyes, at least he possessed good house manners as well as perfect etiquette, which made her feel comfortable, unlike other children from big noble families who came up and showed off their little merits, and those who didn't know thought they were more powerful, thank you, it was only natural for a sassy gentleman to be rewarded with a counterpart, do you know it yourself, Domi, what, you're really attractive, at least in my opinion, Shay covered her mouth and laughed softly, seeing that the latter remark was pure teasing, then again, with the long hours of exercise, well read books, and the good skin that his parents had given him at birth, Domi's temperament had indeed changed significantly, gentlemanly and mysterious, powerful and introspective, it was only natural that he would be complimented by a girl in such a way, Domi smiled politely and without embarrassment, once again ignoring her teasing, princess is flattering, I'm just doing what all men should do, how awkward to call you princess, just call me Shay, like I call you Domi, oh yeah, I'm still three years older than you, adding a sister is fine, I've heard that you're like an iceberg to outsiders, rejecting people, but now it seems that it's purely the slander of others, Domi directly bypassed about those meaty names and opened the next matchup, well, it's not all that law, and so Shay just performed a Sichuan opera face turn in front of him, immediately going from being enthusiastic, to looking at the, garbage look, yeah, yeah, the kind where you sit in a chair with your legs crossed and look down on a cockroach from top to bottom, even taking a whip felt disgusted, there's no highlights in his eyes anymore, but soon changed back to his old self, smiling at Domi, it's good to keep a bit of distance in front of outsiders, but if it's in front of someone who makes me feel comfortable, I'll still let go of that layer of disguise and treat you with the real side of you, Shia crossed her fingers, 
letting her chin rest on it, and tilted her head to kill and tenderly smile, and the most horrible thing was that under the desktop, those legs that could play for 10 years were still rubbing against his calf from time to time. Damn she's simply too good at it. Is it really okay for an imperial princess to know these skills? Or is she self-taught? Domi just felt like the bull was going to be unable to top it. It took the devouring energy to force down that evil fire and physically put a calming spell on himself. Shia. It's better to save the unnecessary temptation. Before the food starts to be served or first. What's the matter with asking me out? She only then stopped the table under the rubbing action. Well hands down from the tabletop, neatly folded on top of the thighs together, quiet as a child's elegant appearance as a princess should have posture well, sure enough, I didn't look at the wrong person, she muttered to herself before addressing Domi, before we get down to business, I would like to confirm one thing first can I, her expression was extraordinarily serious, well, you talk, I'll listen, are we friends, Domi froze for a moment, and when she thought about it, Shay was very good at it, but she could sense that she wasn't a bad girl, and those were just her way of dealing with people, sort of, except the friendship isn't deep enough, that's good, since we are friends now, then, can you let me see that broken book of heraldry, I'm kinda interested in this kind of special ancient knowledge, she had made a bid when the book of heraldry was first auctioned off, but she hadn't followed it to death, and could only say that she had a shallow taste of it, allowing Domi to auction it off, she wouldn't say that she still had the intention of using this opportunity to get close to Domi, as for the book being gone, it was fine, as she was 90% sure that Domi would take it out and share the knowledge in it with her, and if she could make a separate appointment, then that would be up to 10%, Shay blinked her big, watery, flirty eyes, and Domi wasn't going to share the lot he'd gotten just because she was cute plus pouty, calmly analyze it, with her degree of favoritism plus the royal treasury, even if I had Carlos's unlimited amount of access to the golden dragon, I'd have to spend thousands of times more to try to auction this book off in Shay's hands, to say the least, but she didn't do it, and she is the princess, its own talent IQ IQ are online, and her friendship, right on the line of the royal family on my hundred benefits and no harm, the only price to pay is that one and a half million gold dragons of small money, I'm afraid that Shia has long anticipated this situation so it is so emboldened, because I have no reason to refuse, everything is good for me, this woman, my near demon this point is not wrong, after thinking about it, Domi directly nodded in agreement, no problem, since Shia you like ancient knowledge so much, how can I take away its favor? Only I need to learn it first before I can do so. That's fine. I can wait. You can wait even for a month or so? Are you a lookout stone? Haha <laughs> what's that? Don't change the subject. Although I've heard that your magical talent is slightly less than a little bit. But it's not so bad that you can't learn it in a month. Right? You may have misunderstood. What I mean is that it will take quite a while to send it to the imperial capital even after I learn it. Aha. Uh -huh. Shia revealed a hint of a bad expression. The corners of her mouth rose slightly as she said. Who said it has to be sent to the imperial capital? I'll study it whenever you finish learning it. Actually, it's not impossible for us to learn it together. What does that mean? That is to say I can live in your house ah. The castle at the top of the mountain is such a wonder. I want to go in and stay for a few days. And then I can also go out with Domi and you guys to date and socialize. And Uncle Carlos agreed to it very quickly. Time back to the scene of the incident. The one responsible for bringing Shay out was none other than Prince Cape. Carlos good brother who had worshipped him, the two of them had a rare chance to get together again, and for a while they chatted with each other, at this time, Shay looked at the right time, so she approached him and asked, Uncle Carlos, can I stay at your house for a few days, Carlos just froze for half a second, and then without asking what the fuck he was here for, he directly agreed in seconds, of course, little Thea can stay as long as she wants, and I'll get to teach my ungrateful sons a lesson in the process, but does your father agree, I informed my father in advance, and he said it's whatever I want if I live in the castle at the top of the mountain. Domi was ultimately defeated. I didn't realize you had all this set up before you got here. Awesome. Awesome. Shay glanced her mouth away. It wasn't for you. The voice was so small that Domi kind of missed it. Did you just say something? Nope. Thea's tone of voice rose a rare shade higher. This was the first time she had ever shown panic yet. Did. She conceal any purpose? Finding an excuse to come to the peak castle and discussing academic issues with him was a lie and spying on their family was the real thing, adults would guard against adults, but definitely not against children, or at least not very seriously, that could be quite bad, not to mention that this spy was still an old-shouldered and slippery imp like Shay, no, it's not an imp, it's a chimera, a seductive chimera, just as Domi was rambling, the waiters of the restaurant had already brought up the dishes that Shay had ordered in advance one by one, they were all made on the spot and then served one by one, 
the purpose of which was to be able to allow the customers to savor the deliciousness of them and not have to eat them in too much of a hurry. The dishes are here. Aren't you in a hurry to eat to fill your stomach? Eat while it's hot. Oh oh. Both of them picked up their soup spoons at the same time and settled the appetizer, creamy mushroom bisque, in three or two strokes. As soon as a spoonful went down, the flavor blossomed directly in their mouths. A fresh mess. This is considered a famous dish here in Blofeld Collar. Although the imperial capital also has this dish, but their mushrooms with milk are definitely not as original plus fresh as the ones native to this place. The best proof of this was Shay who was so delicious that she squinted her eyes. I've also had cream of mushroom soup at the palace, but it's definitely not as good as the one here. How can I eat this dish without getting tired of it? It's the best for appetizers. Aha, agreed. Wait Shia, what's wrong? Ha, ah, why are you coming over here? Only Domi stood up, spanned the entire continent of the dining table, and reached over to wipe away a large chunk of leftover cream of mushroom soup from the side of Shay's mouth. Then, to Shay's extremely shy and shocked and bashful eyes, he took that finger directly into his mouth. Yikes, no shame, I was wrong about you Dominic, so that's what you are, even though the voice was specially lowered, there were still people looking towards here, isn't she that, Rose Princess, seems to be a, then the one opposite her seems to be Blofeld's third son, are the two people falling out, done and done, Blofeld is going to do battle with the royal family, let's grab and run, the atmosphere grew more and more unpleasant, and she immediately shut her mouth, but still stared at Domi with a pair of taken advantage of, watery eyes, Hey 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 don't get me wrong, I just want to help you wipe off the residue ah, dang princess, there is residue in the corner of your mouth but it's detrimental to your image, so that's how it is, so he didn't just want to pinch my face and then stuff it in his mouth and suck on it like a pervert, I'm sorry, I was wrong about you, and I sincerely apologize, I'm the one who has to say I'm sorry, I was a little too direct, I should have told you first, with this kind of back and forth, Domi was fine with it, but when he looked at Shay again, he realized that she was slightly inclining her head to look out the window, and her pupils were unfocused obviously not looking at the scenery but thinking about something, and the white face turning red was also looking particularly obvious. Another novel angle get square root, and then look down. It was then seen that Shay's broken hair scattered in front of her flowed down above her delicate and prominent collarbone, forming a vague curtain of water, making the neck behind it that was half hidden especially seductive. The intertwining of red and white, the body of a young girl hiding the heart of an imperial sister, and the most deadly contrasting Mo. Obviously she is the one who likes to play tricks on people, but she becomes the loser who is shy first. Why is the plot going in a colorful and inexpressible direction? After this, it wasn't known if Shia's brain went down or she was too shy to speak. The two of them just finished the hour and a half long luxurious lunch in silence. Does she hate me? Domine thought to herself. Yeah well, hate it or hate it. Let's take her back first. Let's go Shia. Since you want to stay at my house temporarily for a while, then there's no need for a carriage it's quite close, I'll just take you directly to walk there, and by the way I can also stroll around the shopping street, also let me do my best in hospitality, um, her voice at this point was literally lower than a mosquito buzzing, yet just when Domi thought the awkwardness was going to last for a few more days, Shay remained just as she had been before, jogged a few steps to his side and then skillfully took his arm, only this time a little closer and tighter than last time, what are you waiting for, let's go, you're going to take me to the mall, the first day of Nikwan is here. Shopping and strolling around the street seemed to be engraved in a girl's jeans, and even Shay wasn't immune to it. Located in the center ring of the city's commercial street is incomparably prosperous. From the street to the end of the street I do not know how many stores of all kinds, and Shay actually intends to shop every single one of them. Domi didn't think anything of it. Could his physical strength not be better than that of a little girl? But the facts prove that he was wrong. Terribly wrong. Girls shopping physical strength directly modified into unlimited, even if he is a special forces also have to be honestly tired down, more is the heart tired, as for the large bag of goods, it was left to Shay's entourage to carry, Domi looked backward, followed by a team of guards, there is no place on the body is empty, the whole body everywhere hung full of merchandise bags, I'm sorry brother, it's my fault, I shouldn't have brought her here, Domi silently apologized, his eyes full of sympathy, the variety of merchandise here is even more than in the imperial capital ah, how refreshing, Shay came out of a small merchandise store once again with Domi on her arm, which meant that another old guardsman brother suffered, Shay, do you have any use for buying so much stuff, he asked the soulful question, in his opinion, he could not even use all of these things until he was an adult, leaving them to eat dust would be a pure waste, what kind of things have, cosmetics, clothes, bags and shoes accounted for a large part of the pile, there are a bunch of strange small toys and glass products, but the dolls such as little girls will buy things she did not buy one, 
You don't understand, do you? What you buy is to have fun, not to buy what it's for. Do o me ah, being in a high position, the things that can make us feel happy in the future will become less and less. So happiness and joy will become luxuries in the end. So it's only right to cherish it while it's still here. By the way, it can also add a lot of revenue to these stores. Why not? This answer from Shay was something he hadn't expected. He had thought that Shay would say that she had money and could buy whatever she wanted. An answer that only a young lady would say. In that case, this little princess who was holding onto her arm was quite interesting. At that moment, she suddenly stopped in her tracks and pointed her finger at a building and asked, "Hey, Domi, isn't that the Opera House?" Well, the Venus Opera House, the best and biggest opera house in town. Domi looked in the direction of Shay's finger, and there just happened to be quite a few spectators pouring inside right now. Let's see. There should be an opera about to start. I hear it's been quite a long time in the making, and the director says it's going to be the pinnacle of his work. It's called Black Moon Werewolf Love, romantic comedy type. It seems Shia had wanted to go along for the ride, and after Domi said that she wanted to see it even more, then let's go see it together. Wait, halfway there, Shay suddenly thought of something serious. The ticket stage is over, right? Can we still go in? As she was a princess, the higher her position, the greater her responsibilities. And the royal family had taught her from a young age that she had to be a good example in front of the people, and things like jumping the queue were absolutely not allowed. Domi gave her a reassuring look and still led her to the door. The entrance was being guarded by two ticket inspectors and guards. This opera house is also owned by my family, and there is always a box with the best view and three front row seats reserved for us. As expected, the guards bowed and led Domi through straight away when they saw him, and gave him and Shay each a briefing sheet for the current performance in passing, with a reminder. Third young master, the first and second young masters with a young girl are already in the box. Aha! After entering the opera house, Domi said to Shay, "My two brothers are also in the box. Go and join them." But Shay didn't agree and shook her head. I snatched you away from them before. Your brothers will definitely be a bit upset. After all, disturbing your pleasure. Now go over again. Won't you run into a gun yourself? It was then that Domi came to a realization, putting himself in another position. If he were Shay. He wouldn't want to encounter Argyle and the others again before he didn't return to the castle today. It would be too embarrassing. He immediately patted his head. I'm sorry, I wasn't thinking straight. So we'd better go to the front row together. You with me? Shay was kinda surprised. Not going to accompany your brothers? I'm actually fine on my own. What silly thing to say? Which man would leave his female companion alone? Let's go. You won't get a full view if you go late. Domi gave her a reassuring smile, as bright as the warm winter sun. Before facing forward and continuing deeper into the theater, she looked at Domi's charismatic jawline. Even though she was ten and Domi was seven, Domi was still a point taller than she was. And Thea had to lift her head slightly to look at him. She wouldn't know what to do with herself if she had someone whose XP, persona, and virtues poked her in the heart bar. Thump 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 thump. Crap! Why is the heart beating loud and fast? Hurry up and calm down. It's so loud. What if Domi hears it? Shia was on the verge of falling. Just in a state of a bit of brain fog, being led by Domi to the soft seats without even realizing it, or it was Domi's words that brought her back to reality. There seems to be a situation with the crew backstage. I'm going to check the situation. I'll be right back. Ha!、Huh? She looked in the direction that Domi had left, and only then noticed that, in addition to the slightly noisy audience, there was indeed a bit of bickering coming from the back of the room, which was covered by the curtain. Domi took the dark path to the stage behind the curtain. Only to see that the scene had already been set up on the stage, but the actors, along with the director, were all gathered together, looking worried. Seeing that Domi had actually come, the director immediately went forward to greet him. Young Master Dominic, what brings you here? It's because I heard that your masterpiece is about to be performed, so I've come here with my female companion to show my appreciation. It's the first time that Young Master has brought a female companion along. It really makes me feel honored. Yes. I didn't realize that Shia would be interested in coming to see a stage play. Shia, I dare to ask, is it that Rose Princess, Thea N. Augustus? Yes, you know this too. The director deserves to be a director, as if he knows everything about society. I thought that the director would be quite happy. After all, after being complimented by himself and with Shay also coming to support him, if word got out, the next few repeat performances would definitely sell out. But the director not only wasn't happy. But the sadness on his face increased. Hey, he said after letting out a deep sigh. Young master, truth be told, the person from our troupe who was responsible for dubbing the soundtrack with the piano was hit by an out-of-control mud wagon and hospitalized when he came over. So now we are equivalent to having no background music. As you know, 
music is a very important part of a stage play, and for my current play it's even more crucial throughout the entire play. Without it, many scenes lose their original expressiveness, and under such circumstances, how can I dare to say that this is my pinnacle work? The audience at the scene will also be disappointed. Hey, that director, why don't I come and try to fill in? Domi spoke out of turn, instantly attracting the eyes of all the actors, and when they heard the word understudy, one's ears perked up. Chapter 84 has been released, so those who want to catch up on the plot can go back and look at it again. Domi, piano playing, replacement for the original piano musician? These words together become ridiculous. There's a consensus that the aristocracy will always have an instrument or two, and they'll have to be involved in rituals, music, archery, calligraphy, and mathematics, but that'll have to wait until they're in their teens. Now what would be the reaction to telling you that a seven-year-old has reached a level of piano proficiency where he or she can replace a dedicated pianist? It's good enough without making a mockery of it. The other's newly raised hopes were immediately extinguished. The director, who also thought that Domi was joking and joking around, and with so little time left, was in a terrible mood and clearly didn't want to tangle with Domi any longer. Young master, I appreciate your kindness, but if you want to be a pianist for a stage play, not only do you have to be skillful in using the piano, but you also have to memorize the music score, and then match the music perfectly to the performance. If the music doesn't match the scene, the view is very bad. We've already gone to call for a replacement. I believe he'll be here soon, so just sit back and wait to watch the performance at ease. Young master, the original news of that pianist's accident just came back. Then you guys went to call for a replacement for five minutes. I'm afraid the news didn't even arrive halfway, right? Domi hit the nail on the head. Director. How about breaking a dead horse? Trust me. The director looked deeply at Domi and finally agreed. Clapping his hands to the other actors. The piano dubbing is settled for now. Everyone cheer up. No matter what. Bring out the effect from the previous rehearsal. Young master. Here. This is the sheet music. The piano piece will not stop during the entire performance. You only need to play along with the sheet music all the way. Don't worry. I know it in my heart. The others went off to make their preparations and Domi made his way to the far left side of the stage, where the piano was placed in the shadows, that way it could be allowed to resonate through the interior of the theater without interfering with the viewing experience, sitting down, he adjusted the seat to his comfortable position, and then read the sheet music, with the addition of a glance, the score had entered his brain, and since it had many intervals to repeat, it wasn't too difficult to memorize, after remembering almost everything, he placed his ten fingers lightly on the black and white keys without pressing down, purely as an analog practice, even just this level was enough, a generation of master level piano skills was enough for him to learn all kinds of difficult tunes in a short period of time, and bring in his own imaginations of meaning based on perfect playing, yes, a piece of music, let two very different people to play, can also play a different atmosphere, the weight, speed and urgency are especially important, and are the main means of setting the tone, like this piece, you have to create a horrible tone in the early stages, this is a point that Domi has studied a lot. Soon five minutes passed. The show is about to start. Before the curtain rises completely, the director took one last look at Duomi, inwardly praying that he must not go wrong. Ah, naturally, Duomi would not let the public know that he was playing the piano here. So he pinched a mask as well as a full set of black suits out of the dark moon slime gel amulet that he had just acquired, growing a little bit more there on his calves, along with his leather shoes. Slimes just happened to only be able to pinch black. Slime just happens to only be able to pinch black things, so that's perfect. No one would be able to tell that he was Dominic, with his different height and attire. The audience would just assume that he was a grown man and had done a bit of cosplay to fit the tone of the stage show. I have to say this slime amulet is a real treat. Off stage, at the very front, in the first row, Thea was looking for Domi. Really? How about saying you'll be back soon? You don't even show up when the show opens. Just then, all the lights in the audience went out and a spotlight shone on the stage, it was a forest that was decorated in a dark style, and in the clearing, a carriage had suffered a rollover, and the beautiful woman in gorgeous clothes was helplessly lost in the forest, at the same time, heavy and slow bass piano sounds rang out from the corners, each syllable falling tugged at the audience's heartstrings, creating a tense atmosphere as if a wolf would pop out of the forest and bite the heroine's head off in the next second, blood splattered three feet, at this point, you are like the piano playing villainous priest, with a deep impression, Villainous value plus 5,000. Quite effective. Additional 20% bonus. Total villainous value 6,000. Perfect background music plus articulation. The director sitting in his own exclusive seat finally loosened his clenched fists a bit. His face was covered with shock. Dominic Young Master he actually really knows how to play the piano. 
and he plays it so well. If the level of Duomi is a generation master, then the previous pianist is estimated to be only a small success level. The too hard across the too big level. The gap is like a chasm. Under such an atmosphere, some of the audience had even become afraid, huddled on top of the seats, unconsciously substituting themselves into it, looking worriedly at the hobbling young girl. Everyone else was looking at the young girl, except for Shay, who was staring intently at the far right side of the stage. The one person no one else ever paid attention to, she always did, and recognized her at a glance. The dark moon slime gel talisman can actually be used like this. She giggled, looking at Domi with admiration in her eyes, as if looking at a treasure yet to be excavated. You never told me that you could also play the piano. View the scene together with the soundtrack. You will find that the control of the melody of Duomi is accurate to the point of minutes and seconds. What kind of effect should be played in what kind of occasion? The desire to rise and fall first. A wave of three twists and turns are played by him in a marvelous way. With a soundtrack of this caliber, any stage play could be a god. From this we can see that what Domi knows is not playing the piano to death, which has no soul, but his piano has the understanding and thinking of the scene, and the atmosphere that he thinks should be expressed with notes. The two could be said to be worlds apart. To reach this level, how could one do it without a few decades of precipitation? Could it be that he's put all his magical talent into music? Shia couldn't help but speculate. As the plot continued to deepen, apart from Shia, more and more people began to notice the pianist who could be called the point man. Why do I feel that? That person's back looks a bit familiar. Inside the box, Argyle stroked his chin, a little puzzled. In his friendship range, except for his mom, Grace, it seems that no one plays the piano so well all. At this time Edward also said, Hey big brother little sister, you see that piano player, give me a sense of deja vu ah, as if often ca. He, seems like brother Domi ah, lol. After Rosa said so, the two talents reacted, indeed very much like Domi to come. Before, he thought that it was impossible for Domi to go on stage to play the piano, so he didn't think about him at all. But the body shape doesn't match it. Eh. Edward spotted the blind spot. No, Argyle said. Remember? That thing Domi asked us to help with at the auction, the dark moon slime gel amulet that can pinch anything. This guy, that's Domi. When we get home, we'll have to ask him when he learned to play the piano. Edward also felt a sense of crisis, saying we'll be salted fish together. But you stole away? So indignation rose. That's right, we must give him a stern confession. Actually sneaking rolls behind our backs. After dinner time, back at the castle at the top of the hill, inside Domi's room, Domi was forced to sit on a chair. Argyle and Edward stood left and right, the two of them looking down on the innocent Domi, while Rosa who was in the doorway was a bit worried, leaning against the doorframe, but Shay who suddenly appeared was in a watchful mood, and comforted Rosa, don't worry, Domi will be beaten up at most, ha, huh? say Domi, are you learning the piano every day while we're in magic class, Argyle got right to the point, he had long been curious as to what Domi was doing every afternoon, and now it seemed that the only answer that best fit the bill was practicing the piano, or did you find out? Domi went along with this. It would be great if they all thought they had gone to piano practice. Edward listened to a very painful. Said, you say you practice just practice. Why make so mysterious? Look at me to scare. Father and myself feel that magic is not very suitable for me. So they found me another track. Who knows that I had an epiphany as soon as I learned to play the piano. So it's not my fault right? It's your freedom and we respect your choice. Argyle had gotten the answer he wanted and wasn't about to verbally abuse Domi or anything and was about to leave when he finished. However, just as he reached the door, his entire body nearly jumped and screamed shrilly, Princess Shia, why are you here? The cry simultaneously startled Edward, who was rubbing Domi's head, and he glanced back, also startled. Thick gift crab. It was an interesting reaction from these two, and Thea, always thinking it would be fun to live with this group, got up from the doorframe and gave them a curtsy. Argyle, Edward, and Rosa, I'm going to be living here temporarily from today. So please take care of me just call me by my first name from now on. Well, Domi explained for her. Shay also wants to study the book of heraldry. So she's going to be staying here for a while. So if you guys want to learn it too, you can do it together. It's, you can come together if you want to learn it as well. Edward pondered that Domi should have had a small development with the princess at that moment at noon. And all called her by her first name. And the princess looks like this. And looks at Domi quite obedient. And the probability of being able to make it is not small. If Domi ran away with the princess, by then the Greenville family's wife and youngest daughter to the marriage, can be less a strong and powerful competitor ah. In fact, Sullen Argyle also kind of thought about this aspect, quite hoping that the princess hurriedly took this guy who specializes in flirting with girls away. 
The two instantly reached a united front in spirit, immediately grabbed the door and left, together with Rosa, before leaving Argyle also sent an assist. There's no rush on this, it's not too late to teach us when you've studied it thoroughly. And Domi, people are going to sleep here tonight, why don't you hurry to help organize the luggage? Inside, only Rosa was innocent and confused. Eh, hey, brother where are you taking me? After saying that, the three of them withdrew without a trace. Only Domi and Shia were left looking at each other in all directions. He skimmed his head with a slight sense of embarrassment. Ah, the luggage you brought over. Is it packed? I can help if you haven't packed it. You're quite a gentleman during the day. Squire, how come you're slow at night? Come on, there's a shortage of hands. Knowing that Shay is coming, Grace immediately arranged for her to have the best guest room. And Domi and others are the same to live on the third floor. Bed sheets, bedding and other things are all complete. Hush, warm, to Shay then to the biological son are good. Grace not only to Shay super good, but also take her as an example to teach the three of them. Hate iron cannot not not steal said. Look at other people Shia. Not much older than you guys. Already passed the official mage exam. Half a foot into the door of the medium mage. Learn more from others. Since then, Shay is like obtaining the queen's license. In front of the three of them, the authority of a higher level. In general, has reached the level of not to be disobeyed. Came to Shay's room. The floor of the guest room is full of goods bought today. Still in the bag did not take it out. The clothes are taken out for the maids to wash. Add some magic. Tomorrow can be changed. But even with the big category of clothes missing, there were still quite a few things to organize. That's it. Domi, please. Blanche, actually being cute. With zero resistance, he directly exploded into a violent death. And like a donkey in a production team, he capably puffed and puffed his way through the work, while she sat on the edge of the bed and smiled as she watched herself work. Hey, do you move yourself without driving a bit? There's no such thing as letting a guest do the work themselves. The upper half of his face was suddenly covered in shadows. Even guests should pack their own bags right. He he he. I asked for it. I asked for it. I asked for it. I asked for it. Domi began to seek self-relief. Halfway through the dry spell, perhaps out of boredom, Shay asked, By the way, what do you do during the weekdays? Sleep. Eat. Go to class. Eat. Sleep. Talk properly. Believe it or not, my life is just plain, boring, and uninteresting. Just forget it if you're not going to say it. Ha. Huh. Anyway. She was living here, just a few corridors away from Domi, so if Domi didn't say anything, she would just observe on her own. Soon, Domi finished organizing her things, her forehead was covered in a dense sweat, and her thin shirt was soaked to the skin. It was getting close to summer, so it was really hot, and without air conditioning, it was even harder. Just as he raised his arm to wipe off the sweat, a piece of beige lace-edged handkerchief was pasted on his forehead. The material was ice cold, raising his eyes to see. It was actually Shia who came in front of him, using the handkerchief she carried with her to help him wipe off the sweat. The gentleness of the action reminded him of his first love. Tough on you, help you wipe away your sweat. He he, it's just compensation from the little chimera. So naturally, Domi was content to enjoy it while saying, Say, Shia, why are you so grounded? Shouldn't a character like a princess be all high and mighty, chin up to the sky, holding her nostrils to people, moving to ask for this and that? With an arrogant tone of voice that doesn't serve anyone except the emperor's dad, disliking the sky to the earth to the air, and that everyone else is her dog that can be driven at will, but avoided for thousands of miles because of the dog's pungent and unpleasant smell that exudes an inferior odor. The more Shay listened, the more the corners of her mouth twitched, and finally, she snorted and laughed an extraordinarily hearty laugh. Ha 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 ha, ha 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 ha, too funny, where did you hear about this ah, which is what princess, is the demon king's family's retarded daughter right? Listen up, the so-called princess, although not as good as the future ruler of a country like a prince or crown prince, is still the face of a country, and the red tape and requirements on me could even be composed into a book as thick as a dictionary. Domi, she tucked a small gift box into his arms, you should be glad that I can be bitterly happy even in the midst of bondage like punishment, or you wouldn't have seen me like this, consider this your reward for helping me organize my room, I'm going to bed, good night, the end of an exhausting and fulfilling day had finally come. After taking a shower, Domi lay down on his bed in a big shape and found the small gift box that Shay had slipped him, turning it over left and right. Dark gold small gift box is quite heavy, the size of a bull four outlets. Packaging and texture is quite sophisticated. I do not know what exactly contained inside to deserve such a gift box. Open it and see. As he opened it, Domi thought to himself that Shay wasn't that much of a tormentor. At least there was a reward for a job well done. So it evened out. Let me see what's inside. The moment he lifted the lid, 
his entire body's spirit devouring energy boiled violently, as if attracted to something, and if he hadn't controlled it in time, I'm afraid that some of it would have been sucked out, a fragment of a broken blade, a weapon once used by a spirit eater, that looks like a blade fragment of a long knife, a fragment can cause his energy to surge, then how powerful a spirit eater should its owner be, wait, not right, now was not the time to think about this, why would Shay give this to him, it was written within the spirit eater cultivation manual that Carlos had given him that future generations of spirit eaters could gain benefits from objects left behind by their predecessors that contained their power, this blade was one of those objects, an object that belonged exclusively to spirit eaters and could only be used by spirit eaters, and for Shay to give it to him, didn't that mean that Shay knew that she was actually a spirit eater, how was that possible, this matter should only be known to Carlos and himself ah, could it be that Carlos told Carpe, and then Carpe told Shay? it didn't fit Carlos style, and this kind of thing was obviously carried when leaving the imperial capital, ruling it out like that, there was only one possibility left and that was that Shay had determined through her own judgment that he was the spirit eater, otherwise, she wouldn't have directly given him something so symbolic, working backwards from here, Domi felt that Shay's previous claim of being interested in ancient knowledge was also half true, or that there was another meaning hidden within it, that's why she looked at her desire to learn the external magic power reserve heraldry as if she were an observer, observing her attitude, details, and results, because Shay guessed that she was a spirit eater and utilized his desire to use magic even though he couldn't use it, he had revealed himself when he purchased the book of heraldry, so he found the time alone at this moment and played the decisive move of the gift box, not going to ask her about the gift box yourself and pretending that nothing happened, this was not the way to behave when receiving an unknown gift, face to face to ask her what it is, is the same as sheep into the tiger's mouth, she will have a variety of ways to prove that he is a spirit devourer, refuse to cooperate, is a sign of weakness, is equivalent to a disguised admission, so in the end, all had to go to her once more, awesome, really awesome, and so, Domi got up once again and left the big, cozy bed, at this time, most of the magic lamps in the castle have been extinguished, only a few in the corridor are still lit, which is a bit bleak and scary, but he didn't even bother to think about it much, and now his head is full of, but he didn't think much about it, now he was full of Shay, he quickly came to the door of the guest room where Shay was, knocked, hey Shay it's me, open the door, from the inside came a ghostly voice, I did not say sleep well, morning not come late not come, but this time too, not open, quickly roll, behind anyhow Domi knocked did not respond, tsk, seems to have to use some unconventional means, at this time, the window was open, and the wind from the outside world whistled into the corridor, pointing out a clear path for Domi, if we were to say which generation of Assassin's Creed had the best protagonist, it would have to be the revolution, whoever called that time the outside of the building was full of cornices, window edge cornices, balcony cornices, carved cornices, and all sorts of places that could obviously be climbed, and so, with his superb physical fitness combined with his shadow stream stance, Domi had no trouble climbing up onto the balcony outside of Shay's room, the door between the room and the balcony was closed and locked, but that was hard to beat, darting back to his room to fetch a couple of paper clips before returning, he relied on his experience of playing fading light in his previous life, and it only took three paper clips to pick the lock on the door, crunching open the door to the room, Shay, who had just fallen into sleep, was awakened by the rattling, and sat up in a carp-like position, the thief who smuggled in and the girl in the boudoir stared at each other in disbelief, and the bright moonlight shone through the glass on Shay's face and between the two of them, forming a world-world famous painting, Shay froze, because she did not think that Domi actually did not sell the misery, but rely on this method of forced entry, so long no movement, she thought that Domi gave up want to ask tomorrow, did not expect to engage in such a thing, and the main reason why Domi floundered is that the only white halter dress nightgown on Shay's body fell half due to the old shoulder, suddenly carp, etc., resulting in, ahem, that what, don't want to go into the small dark room, villain value plus 500, the villain's value is 500, the fact is that the most important thing is the fact that you can't get a good look at the whole thing. After a moment of staring, Shay's face reddened into a ripe apple, covering her chest with both hands, thinking about the wrong things, and pulling the quilt to block it, shy and exasperated. You 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 you, are so bold. Domi also glanced her head away with a red face, pretending not to see. I'm sorry, I'm really sorry, I didn't see anything, just now it was me who was too anxious, I will definitely correct it next time still dare to have next time, Domi exasperated Shay to the point of tears with some tiger and wolf words, after some friendly negotiation, Domi was forced to crouch in the corner with his hands on his head and his back to Shay, if you have something to say, just say it, 
Don't even look at what time it is. I have to sleep if you don't. Domi got permission and asked directly without ambiguity. That blade, what does it mean? What what does it mean? You spirit eaters should be able to use it. And what are spirit eaters? Even though I'm three years less educated than you, I can't be framed like that. Ah, thanks to that. I even helped you organize your room for more than an hour. Shia smiled coldly, playing dumb and knowing. Stop pretending. I know you're a spirit eater. No Shia. Don't come up and put a big unfounded hat directly on my head. Ah, what is a spirit eater you haven't even explained? How do I know if I am? Forget it. Don't bother to talk nonsense with you. Show me a shadow system magic to come. Just the simplest one that that. Invisibility spell. I know all the spells. Do you want me to teach you? Domi can't pretend anymore. That book of heraldry he hasn't learned yet. Half a bit of magic power is not on his body. He can't use invisibility at all. Okay, I admit it. But I have two questions I want to ask you. You can. But I can only answer one. How did you know I was a spirit eater? It's something that no third person knows besides father and me. How did you know since you want to know? Then I'll mercifully tell you. It's not really hard to guess. First of all, the royal family was aware that the last demon eater scroll in the country was originally in the hands of the Blofeld family. While I stumbled upon the demon eater scroll as well as the existence of the spirit eaters when I was rummaging through the library materials. Out of curiosity, I went through all the relevant materials and finally got a general understanding of this group. Curiosity will only kill you. That's how Cat died. Domi couldn't help but spit out. You're the one who talks too much. Shut up if you want to hear it. In normal times, if a stranger dared to interrupt while she was talking, then she would have pressed him into the incinerator without mercy and sent him to his death. But just knowing about it wasn't enough. I wanted to see what makes a living. Breathing spirit eater different from a normal human being to be hunted down by the whole world. So I set my sights on the Blofeld family. That is, three years ago. For three whole years, nothing out of the ordinary was noticed until you three brothers started attending Mr. Connor's class and you were alone in the afternoons doing disappearances. That's when you came to my attention. No one else would be so idle but me. Domi interjected again. So you spent all your free time spying on me? That's disgusting. Yeah, that's right. That's why you guys took over my entire childhood. Satisfied? After saying that, holding his head and crouching down, Domi was just a little bit more snotty than before. Hia huffed and resumed her seat. Continuing. All day long. The only place I couldn't monitor was this time of day in the afternoon. I'm not sure what the hell you're up to, but I'm guessing that you're learning about magic eating scrolls. So let's define that guess as correct for now, and use it as a way to make another guess. A loser with almost zero magical talent. Domi was just about to retort with a few words when Shay glared back with a fierce look. A scum. In a top prestigious family. I can't think of any reason why Uncle Carlos wouldn't let you learn the magic devouring scrolls. When you grow up, your two brothers can't protect you for the rest of your life. You can only defend yourself. So you're bound to learn the magic devouring scrolls and become a spirit eater. Growing up, a spirit eater can become a lifelong nightmare for all mages. But in the early stages, a spirit eater's abilities are not obvious. So you need magic to supplement yourself. Thus, the book of heraldry at the auction became your optimal choice. And you really spared no effort in auctioning it. At which point my suspicions were mostly verified. Then came the scene where I sent you the blade. With the aim of getting you to come over and confront me thus removing the last piece of your cover. But I had no malicious intent. I simply wanted to meet a living spirit eater. That's all I've thought about. Make any comments? Being able to persist for three years. Perseverance is commendable. Ah, a pig-killing squeal came out from the room at once. When he saw Domi again, he was already spread out on the carpet, muttering, I didn't realize you were still living with strange strength. Finger jujitsu. One more question. Why did you send me blades? Shay sat on the edge of the bed like lotus roots, white snow white long legs cocked Erlang, one foot on Domi's back, the corner of the mouth slightly curved up, obviously moving voice, but full of teasing, I only promise to answer one of your questions, the next one, for a fee, as for the fee, I'll tell you tomorrow, but, head sinks, the distraught Domi plopped down on the carpet and went straight to sleep, when he woke up, it was already the next morning, and according to the inertia of the biological clock, he still woke up at 5 a.m., m., sharp, opened his eyes, and realized that Shay didn't have the goodness to move him to the bed to sleep with himself, so much so that as soon as he stood up, all the bones in his body ached. Looking at the bed, where was Shay's shadow? I don't know where she ran off to. Forget it, don't care about her. Holding his waist with one hand and the wall with the other, Domi walked out of the room shakily. Just as he went out, he bumped into Kelsey who woke up at the same time. She had just changed into her maid outfit and was ready to start her day's work. Being able to see Kelsey early in the morning really changed his mood quite a bit, 
Even the depression left over from last night dissipated quite a bit. So Domi greeted her. Good morning Kelsey. Ah, much better in the morning. M. Kelsey's response was barely halfway through when she stiffened. Mucho mucho M. This is supposed to be the princess's room. How did you get out of the princess's room? Kelsey's face changed from pleasure to shock and back again to curiosity plus gossip. The princess has only been here for a day and you are. Like this? Can the body. Eat? Domi helplessly held his forehead. It's not what you think. Listen to my explanation. Domi then told the whole story in full. And only then did Kelsey come to her senses. So not only did you disturb someone's sleep, but you also sneaked into a girl's bedroom? Domi. That's not right oh. You have to be thankful that the princess doesn't hate you for it. I'll change it next time. Domi was once again heartbroken and didn't want to explain more. He was afraid that the more he explained, the more outrageous it would get. After saying goodbye to Kelsey, he headed to the top of the castle tower as usual to continue his persistent ritual of the sun and moon essence absorption. The medicine could be stopped, but the daily rewards for getting stronger could not be unclaimed. Arriving at the small storage room in the corner of the top of the tower, he rummaged around but couldn't find the small mat he had used for several years. That is the companion of his comrades from childhood to adulthood ah, can be said to witness with him countless days of the sun rising in the east and setting in the west, together with him through countless lonely moments, carry through the hail and rainstorms, accompanied by Emperor Dominic into the pass of the generals. Just like this is gone? Open the door only to find his little cushion had long since been dragged out and sat under the buttocks by another. With her slender back and red hair like the first days of this day, who else could it be if not Thea? She'd been spying on him for three years. Surely she knew this habit every morning. But why was she here too? Getting up even earlier than him? Don't you want to die? Coming sit. Shay said without looking back. Talking as if she was the owner of this little cushion. Leaving Domi helpless. But he chose to sit next to the fragrant Shay in order to keep his butt out of the dust. Both of them were arm to arm and could feel the warmth of each other's bodies. The coolness of the morning made his skin cold with it. But he could feel the blazing heat that lay beneath that coldness. There weren't too many words between the two. Domi took it upon himself to begin the breathing cycle while Shay waited for him, as if she had come over so early to do just that. Day 2 of Niven. It went on like this until Domi completed the great cycle around his body and exhaled a mouthful of cloudy air, having claimed his daily reward for the day. With his eyes still closed and seemingly a little reluctant to face reality, he simply spoke. Now can you tell me your terms of payment? Thea did take a deep breath like Domi did, just like he did, but it certainly didn't work. Why does your breathing have a special rhythm? Could this be a spirit eater's ability as well? You answer my question first. But Shia continued as if she didn't hear it. Very well. The spirit eater's trait adds another one. If you don't want to talk about it, just forget about that question. After saying that, Domi was planning to get up and go down to eat breakfast. However, just at this time, Shay said, Don't be impatient. Look, your payment conditions this is not coming. The sound of the carriage's wheels resounded in the parking lot in front of the castle. A loud sound in the morning when there were basically only the cries of birds. Domi turned around and stood on the edge of the battlements to look in the direction the voice came from, only to see a clean-cut young man step out of a carriage belonging to the royal family. With a simple, plain long sword behind him, with his sword and starry eyebrows, he exuded a sharp aura that went straight to the clouds, as if he was the sharpest ear long sword in the world. This teenager didn't look much older. A vague guess, only about 10 years old, about the same age as Shia, and a third taller than Domi. And he is? Alger, a genius kendo boy from the army. Not only is his kendo talent unprecedented, but he also has the superpower of never forgetting. After this good seedling of his was discovered, he was promoted all the way. And now he has entered the mouth of the Lion Elite Troop Youth Training Camp, about the same age as me, and has already been to the front line to fight with the demon race, and is very experienced in actual combat. One of the chosen of the human race is detected and the villain value gained from the TA will be doubled 5 times. By directly killing the current stage of the chosen one, you will directly gain 5 million villain values. Warning, please be cautious if you want to hunt the chosen one. After successfully killing it, your body will be hunted down by the will of the world as well as being targeted by the Lionheart Empire's town beast. Please be careful. Compared to the Mori Elf chosen son that Aurora had encountered last time, the system had issued one less notice warning him not to be presumptuous and the reward he received for killing him was also 5 million less than Merlin's. What did this indicate? It showed that Alger, the human chosen son, had yet to develop and was huntable with his current strength. Despite his confidence, Domi still didn't let his guard down. After all, it was a life and death situation, but he couldn't possibly fight to the death with others right off the bat. Could he? Without fighting to the death, it was still possible to glean villainous value from him hard. Noticing Domi's grave and thoughtful gaze, Shia said while comforting. 
This payment conditions, is an elder than a, when I will tell you, do not win also thing, do not give yourself too much pressure, really cannot pass can also come to me here to complain about ah, I am always welcome oh, okay, remember what you said, remember what you said, do owe me silently memorize this guy, already can't wait to go over to give him a downward spiral, and then earn some villain value, looking at Domi's unafraid demeanor, Shay wondered if she had made Alger sound a little too useless, so much so that Domi didn't react half-heartedly to hearing it, but instead became excited, Alger wasn't just a mage, but a player who specialized in swordsmanship and supplemented it with magic, even for a spirit eater, he was the worst kind to deal with, moreover, he was still three years older than Domi, which was equivalent to three more years of growth, and with such a gap, wasn't Domi worried about losing, worthy of being the heir of a spirit eater, it was true as the ancient book said, every one of the powerful spirit eaters were unruly and untamed, not afraid of the sky or the earth, let me look forward to your performance, Shay had light in her eyes, although she had arranged such a powerful opponent for Duomi, she couldn't wait for Duomi to win, as for the reason, if she didn't say it, who would know, on the other hand, Domi had already arrived at the gate of the castle, under the reception of the two maids, Alger had already arrived at the gate as well, and the two of them stood on the two sides of the threshold, facing each other from afar, just a glance, Alger and Domi know that the other party is a real material, not a soft persimmon in vain, although their strengths were not similar, their identities were vastly different from each other, Alger has never forgotten that he is just a soldier's son, if not for the authorization of her highness, he may not see the son of the Grand Duke of Blofeld in half a lifetime, let alone fight with him, out of respect and politeness, Alger crossed the threshold and extended his hand to Domi with a smile on his face, my name is Alger, Princess Shay ordered me to come, it is an honor to meet you, young master Dominic, question how do you pull tons of wool from the chosen one, a, in the dragon pride novels, those villains do what they do in terms of death and arrogance, in order to prevent such behaviors from attracting blackness to himself, Domi has additionally placed a persona on himself, Shay's avid pursuer, and later on, Jean will force another persona on Alger's head, Shay's avid pursuer, by that time, Domi would have a justifiable reputation for all his behavior, and would be able to wool gather, killing two birds with one stone, so, without even looking at Alger's outstretched hand, Domi forced himself to look down on Alger, who was a third of a head taller than him, with rather contemptuous eyes, A.O., oh, so it's just you called Alger, don't know without looking, a look scares me, outside rumors about how talented and powerful you are, after seeing the real person I realized that you turned out to be nothing more than that, just a name in vain, with this degree, it's better to be a dirt genius in a small countryside, you're still not worthy of Shia, the two maids beside them sucked in a breath of cold air when these words came out, they had never seen such an aggressive duomi, before, young master duomi had always been gentle and friendly to everyone, why did he change as soon as he came to Alger's side, and listening to Domi's last sentence, there seems to be a big melon in it, Domi and Alger, a young master and a genius born at the end of a tiny genius, jointly pursue the imperial princess, they love each other so much for the sake of a woman that they are full of gunpowder right off the bat, reason, it's all for a reason, gosh, this is gossip they can spread until next year, we'll have a nice chat with the other sisters later, Alger's outstretched hand and the smile on his face stiffened, and he giggled violently inside, as if his long buried privacy had been discovered all at once, how did he know that he liked princess Shia, you have given the chosen one Alger a classic villain style dismount, villain value plus one W, after the bonus is settled, the corners of Alger's mouth twitched hard, and his hand hanging in midair dropped feebly, just wanting to say something to ease the current atmosphere, maybe there was a bit of a misunderstanding between him and Domi or something like that, but I did not expect that after giving a downward spiral, Domi directly turned his head and walked away, did not give him half a bit of respect, his heart was immediately filled with anger, aggravation, and helplessness, the other party is the son of the Grand Duke of Blofeld, even if he has the talent, it is impossible to arm wrestle over such a huge thing, but if there is a miracle that can come to his head, he believes that 30 years of River East and 30 years of River West, do not deceive the youth poor, only after Domi was out of sight did the maid next to him dare to come forward, receive Alger's salute, and guide him to the guest room on the fifth floor, along the way, the maid sisters still didn't forget to help Domi with his words, Mr. Alger, truth be told, young master Dominic wasn't like this before, humble, studious, gentle, very kind and gentle to everyone, even us commoners, he would give great care, yes, it's really not as mean as you see, young master, he might have suffered from some rather big stimulus, so much so that his speech and behavior are a bit radical, under the constant diversion of the maid sisters, Alger, 
who came to his guest room, fell into deep thought. In a noble family, would there really be subordinates who would speak one way or another for their master? In his perception, didn't the nobles all oppress their subordinates vigorously and use them as cattle and horses? If they weren't really treating them well, why would they speak in Domi's favor? Could it be that Domi was really stimulated by something? As the maids had said? What stimulus? It dawned on Alger that he remembered Domi saying that he was not worthy of pursuing Shay, the implication being that Domi also liked Shay and was pursuing her. He himself was the equivalent of a love rival who came out of nowhere. Domi was only seven years old. His mind wasn't as mature as his, so it didn't seem impossible for him to say something radical like that under the sudden change of events. I see so that's how it is. It's because I was not thoughtful enough and misunderstood you. On the day of the competition, why don't we let some water out? Like Domi. Although Alger perceived that the other party had real skills, he still thought that the winner would definitely be himself. It would be good to let some water out of the water on that basis, so that he wouldn't lose too miserably and lose face in front of his beloved. After all, he had to win as well. No, in order to gain Princess Hia's heart, he had to win. After learning that Alger had taken up residence, Shay told Domi that the contest took place a day later, at 1 p.m. M. in the Dragon's Nest Arena and that it had been postponed for a day in order to allow him to acclimate himself to the home environment. Domi was in no hurry, as Shay also told Domi that Al, Jai was the personal guard assigned by her mother, the current empress, to protect Thea on a day-to-day -day basis and to cultivate a relationship with her. But don't get me wrong, Shay explained, the bonding means that he will always be loyal to me. After all, Alger is quite a good man and will make a good guard when he grows up. Domi just shrugged, there's no need to explain so clearly to me. We're just utilizing each other aren't we? She had choked. What she wanted to say in her head went up in smoke for a moment. She didn't know how to go on. She could only let out a long sigh. Fine. Good luck. She said it almost through gritted teeth. It seemed angry. But Domi couldn't think for the life of her to figure out what she had done to upset her. A woman's heart. A needle in the bottom of the sea. Can't figure it out. Can't really figure it out. Returning to his room. In addition to thinking of other methods used for wool gathering. Domi also searched for ways to quickly increase his strength. Although it was important to mentally scorn the enemy and verbally disdain them, it was still important to remain cautious and careful in his actions. He took out the knuckle bone and the blade that Shay had given him from his locker. Both of them were gifts from previous generations of spirit eaters, and the scroll of devouring demons recorded that absorbing what was contained in the bearer, no matter how much, was beneficial. Since this was the case, it would be a good idea to give it a try. He tuned out a trace of ghostly blue spirit eater energy and carefully probed into his finger bone. The moment he probed into it, he realized that the finger bone contained a huge amount of primordial spirit eater energy, more than his entire body in just one finger bone. Absorbing them into his body could be assimilated by the mutated spirit eater energy. The conversion efficiency was considerable, but it was impossible to absorb them all in a short period of time. So Domi temporarily put down the finger bones and shifted his focus to the blades. Unlike the finger bone, this time, the moment he probed the energy into it, his soul was pulled into a memory-like space. A powerful blade-wielding spirit eater was fighting against a multitude of mages. Destructive magics were smashing down like meteors, and Domi couldn't even tell from this what level of mages they were. The span of levels was too great. However, this spirit eater senior was still invincible, only to see that he covered the blue spirit eater energy on top of his long blade, burning like a flame, and as soon as the blade went down, it was as if there was a string of deduction account like damage floating up on that mage's head. Mages as powerful as this. As long as they were slashed, they would fall from the sky like birds at the end of their lives. A large number of them. It would have been great if the slashing had continued. But it didn't last long. Just as the mages were about to be killed. A mysterious person wearing dark gold armor and holding a huge axe came from the distance. The spirit eater exarch fought with him as if he were an enemy. Fast forward in time. This battle lasted for three days and three nights and that dark gold armor seemed to be made of the same material as that gift box, as if it was heavenly keeled spirit eater energy. Eventually, it ended with the defeat of the spirit eater's senior. The long sword could not withstand the continuous hammering of the giant axe and cracked into pieces, and the senior's head also fell on the muddy soil of the rainy night, and he died without resting in peace. The last scene before the darkness was to watch the mysterious man wearing tattered armor and carrying a huge axe leave, with his soul back in his body. There was no longer any fluctuation of spirit devouring energy within the blade, and as a result, Domi had learned the proper way to attach spirit devouring energy to his weapon. Before, if he had tried to attach spirit devouring energy to his gloves, the attack he would have thrown out would actually have been about as effective as a normal punch, plus throwing a spirit devouring energy ball out. 
The correct approach was to visualize the spirit devouring energy attached to the gloves in the shape of a fist. Although he didn't know the principle, as long as he did so, every punch he threw would give the spirit devouring energy attached to it an extra impact and explosive force, like the strength of a punch thrown. This would allow the spirit devouring energy to penetrate into the enemy's body as if it were a lit fuse, causing the magic to implode. Domi tried it. When the spirit eating energy was attached to his fists, it looked like fire fist ace, with his hands burning with dark blue flames. With one punch, ghostly blue ashes flew and strong winds gusted. 2ka chapter is 2 drop average subscription. So then I synthesized 2 chapters into 1 chapter. A chapter of 4k, average subscription up faster. The average booking rose faster. The recommendation has hope. The recommendation to write not strong ah. The day 10,000 is still the same. But send 3 chapters. The day 12,000. The stock of manuscripts is almost used up. The latter may have to now code now send. So will not be all at once sent out. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to get the best out of me, but I'm sure you're going to be able to get the best out of me. It's just a shame about that senior ah. The scene where he was killed still lingered in Domi's head. Also, that dark gold armored mysterious person, who exactly is he? It seemed that in the circle of spirit eaters, there were also some secrets waiting to be unearthed ah. These were still far away from him, and it was imperative to improve himself first in order to deal with the competition that was coming tomorrow. Domi looked at the villain value in his system account. 20. 45 W. Let's have another 2. 0, 0, 0 consecutive draws. How much can be improved? A temporary hold. 2000 consecutive draws. Being drawn. Energy Potion X 166. Inspiration Potion X 14. Night Vision Potion X 5. Trauma Ointment X 89. Strength Enhancement plus 8. 9. Agility Enhancement plus 1. 2. Mental Strength Enhancement plus 4. 5. Authentic Thai Horse Kill Chicken, Dengfong, Wow, Golden Legend, Randomized Elementary Earth Magic Book X1, Used to Learn, Randomized Elementary Earth Magic Book X1, Used to Learn, Lingy Graveyard Bell Orchid, Gold, X1, Can Upgrade Purple Ashes to Gold Quality, Currently Available Objects, Black Knight Villa 3 Strong Men's Ashes, Purple, Writing Skill, Small Achievement, Repeat, Collectively Known as Writing Skill, Hearth and Flame, Pimp Prayer Skill, Normal attack refresh displacement skill CD, note, displacement skill, not magic, can only designate one displacement skill, consume any magic sacrifice, lasts for 3 minutes, cooldown for use is 2H, assassination, hot fire, repeat, synthesize to assassination, exaltation, mastery of the lance, a small achievement, insight fragment X9 from a certain fated one who became a king in the junction lands, from Elden's fellowship ring, synthesized for 3 star battle gray use of insight, hounds pace adaptive, Ultra short range and vulnerability frame instant. Consume any energy to use. CD 2 seconds. Thunderstorm Dragon Hidden Mod Patch can be used on any displacement skill. Bound after use. Effect, the entire displacement process will be enveloped in a black mist entwined with red lightning. With the silhouette of a dragon's head looming in the mist. Description, appearance replacement mod that makes your displacement handsome intimidating. But without any additional bonuses or damage. Bikini Bottom Admiral, Krabby Patty's Royal Chef, Patrick's Best Friend, Death of the Harp, Plankton's Lifelong Enemy, SpongeBob SquarePants, from SpongeBob SquarePants, Tips Fragment X1, Delicious Krabby Patty Making Tips X1. Thoughtful Note, Items are graded as White, Green, Blue, Purple, Gold, and Red. Thanks for patronizing X1560. Premium Pool Reward. Nico's Duplicator, Against a Target. Can perfectly duplicate its special ability X1 to itself? The final interpretation of the definition of the special ability is owned by the system. Trill of Tragedy's End, Passive Skill, Beginner Skill Sustained Trauma Damage is increased by 1%. Subsequent damage from Spirit Devouring Energy belongs to Sustained Trauma. Currently gained a total of Thank You Patronage, 4560. Current Attribute Changes, Strength, 21. 1830. 08. Agility, 21. 6822. 88. Mental Strength, 25. 530. Good luck. Then, he started a series of operations based on the rewards he drew. Gift, Lance Proficiency, to Aurora. Reminder, gifting skills cannot be made available to your own body through the feedback mechanism. Will you continue the operation? Yes. He didn't plan to specialize in lances either. Daggers and two-handed were already enough. Using tasty Krabby Patty making tips. After a while he learned how to make delicious Krabby Patties. Use Lingy Graveyard Suzurin, Gold, to upgrade the ashes of the three magnificent men of the Black Knight Villa. Operation completed. Black Knight Hills 3 Strong Men, Purple, Black Knight Hills 3 Strong Men, Gold. Domi immediately previewed the effect after they were summoned in the system interface. After all, he didn't have magic power right now. 
He only saw that the blackness of their entire body had become even more intense, and the two spots of scarlet in their eyes were even more intense. Compared to the original blank slate effect, there was now a black mist-like particle floating effect, as if they were wearing tattered pitch black cloaks without wind. It's okay, it's cool, but speaking of cool, you still have to look at this ah. Apply the thunderstorm dragon hidden mod patch to hound pace and use it. After observing a certain king of Elden abusing bosses using hound pace with mods, he would too. Without magic, flying thunder god couldn't be used, and hound pace came at just the right time. Consuming very little spirit eater energy, Domi surged in the designated direction. In an instant, his entire body was enveloped in black mist. Countless red lightning arced out as he traveled, and a dragon's head accompanied by lightning loomed amidst the black mist, as if what was enveloped inside the black mist was a giant dragon. One second after the invincibility frame, he appeared at the designated destination. The distance between the two places was 1. 8 m, equivalent to the distance of a normal adult walking 3 steps. Short was a bit shorter, but during that time he was invincible, mixed with the power of the rules, then you can't take the distance. If you use it while well, you might even be able to dodge a nuclear explosion. After taking care of the regular rewards, it was time to work on the advanced rewards. At that moment on the spire, Shia introduced Alger as having the special talent of not forgetting. So it's already clear who to use this Nicole's replicator on. A glance, plus, unforgettable. One is responsible for reading. One is responsible for writing. The two together can directly transform Domi's brain into a computer. Nico's replicator is in use. Please choose one of the following options as a replica object. 1. Perfect Kendo talent. 2. Unforgettable memory. 3. Sword Saint possession. The sword-related Domi didn't even look at it more than once, and directly and brainlessly chose Overwatch. Special talent Unforgettable Eyes has been copied to the host. It seems that from now on, all he needs to do to read a book is to pick up the beginning and the end, and then clatter over it and call it done. Everyone knew that reading books was a good thing, but not everyone had the time, perseverance and interest to do so, and these two abilities of his were simply a blessing. A wave of operation was as fierce as a tiger, and soon, there was only one last reward left. Tragedies and Tremolo, a passive skill that, when drawn out, only has a beginner's proficiency and a bonus of only 1%. However, it was one of the rare skills that could directly increase the total amount of damage done by spirit devouring energy. No matter how fancy the other skills were, spirit devouring energy was his main power system, and there was absolutely no mistake in disliking it and upgrading it. Domi looked at the thank you patronage on his account. A total of 4, 560 thank you patronage. It was finally time for them to dedicate themselves to the organization. Split 4, 000 thank you patrons to exchange for reinforcement essence. Use all of them on the skill, trill at the end of tragedy. Strengthening essence x 400. Remaining thank yous, 560. Tremolo at the end of tragedy. Upgrade, beginner slightly accomplished, slightly accomplished hearth and flame, 0. 9w slash 5w. Bonus, 1%, 10%. Domi also left out a bonus a randomized beginner's earth magic book, which could be used to learn a spell straight away, without a corresponding magic reserve. There was no harm in it for Domi. He had magic hands anyway, so he didn't need to. Just use it as a synthesis material and pinch it into a shadow or necromancy magic that he could use. Random primary earth magic book has been used. You have learned primary earth magic earth escape, unable to use, but without magic power. It was useless for him to have magic. No magic power. For him at this time is what an embarrassing situation. Before the battle pimp prayer can only pray in air. Scarecrow cannot jump big. Susanu. Flying thunder god. Summoning ashes such a powerful skills cannot be used. What is the use of gold quality ashes? Still not put in the warehouse to eat ash? So Domi resolutely opened the book of heraldry. Clattering and flying from the beginning to the end. Three seconds later. Okay. He already roughly understood the process of using it. Coming to the castle's warehouse specialized in storing materials, there was a collection of almost all types and varieties of materials from the entire continent. There was no material difficulty in making second-level tattoos. He casually called a famous tattoo artist and told him to stand by, then started mixing up the heraldry original liquid himself. That's what the book called it. The original fluid of the second grade of heraldry, 200 milliliters of pure water, 10 magic sacks of deep-sea jellyfish crushed into powder and added, 150 milliliters of sap of the magic absorbing tree added, sap of the honeysuckle fruit added, 50 milliliters, 10 milliliters of universal moderator for material phasing added, 10 milliliters of paint of any color added to customize the color of the heraldry. Domi chose a simple ink sack as the heraldic color. Finally, add the instant paper inscribed with the following spells to the stock solution. If all these materials are the hardware, 
Then this super complex spell formation is the integrated system that drives and links the various hardware, doing it step by step, with the rapid distillation of the original liquid. Only 50 milliliters of pitch black viscous liquid remained in the glass bottle. According to the book, the last step is to use the original liquid to draw a favorite pattern on any part of the body to your liking. And then the job is done. The author suggests drawing on the heart, so that the absorbed magic power can be transported to all corners of the body. It's kinda user-friendly. Domi couldn't help but marvel at the mysterious author's magic side IQ. Even researching something like this and customizing the diversity. Awesome. The original liquid couldn't be left for too long. So Domi immediately called the tattoo artist in and handed him the pattern he had drawn. Young master, what is this? A unicorn stepping on a ghost. I usually call it a big flower arm, but I've never seen a unicorn before. It's all in your imagination. Just draw and be done with it. Eight hours later, Domi paused his absorption of the energy from the finger bone, and the tattoo artist had just put down his pen, then brought in a mirror and pointed it at Domi's heart area. He had to say that the tattoo artist lived up to his reputation as the most prestigious in all of the territory, and the drawing was better than he had expected. The national style wasn't quite enough, just a bit of a look. After all, he'd never been to his former home, but the western fantasy colors were strong, and he seemed to have taken the image of a gargoyle's head and slipped it into a unicorn's head. The whole face and limbs were black, as were the scales, though the scales were white from scale to scale and from flying sideburns. The ethereal, Undefined ghosts were replaced with eerie black clouds. The unicorn is spread diagonally downwards from the left shoulder to the left chest, in the form of clouds and fog, with a hideous face, intent on suppressing all the demons and ghosts in the world. It can be described as domineering. Even if the otherworlders didn't know how to appreciate the culture of their old home, they could still feel the majesty and terror of it just by looking at it. Anyway, it was usually hidden in his clothes, so it was still a matter of whether he could peel off his clothes to see it. Dismissing the tattoo artist and giving him a generous payment, Domi returned to his room. That is, in such a short period of time, his perfect level of shadow system talent had already filled up the tattoo that could only store one high-level magic by sucking the surrounding shadow system magic factor. The magic-filled tattoo then showed its hidden side it was inked as if it was filled with shadow magic, as if it was the deepest black in the world, blacker than a purebred black man. As of this moment, he was able to use magic again, and with the speed at which he used it, as much as he used it, the perfection talent would be able to restore it to him, even if he used too much at once, it would be refilled in a few minutes, it was simply beautiful, at this time, it would be less awkward to study magic, try earth evasion, try earth transportation plus shadow transportation, his desk was covered with magic books, the quill in his hand constantly writing down their magic sequences, shadow transportation would allow him to travel through shadows, earth transportation would theoretically allow him to travel through actual objects, and with the two combined, he would be able to travel through most scenes, but that wasn't enough, not even using the external component of his magic hands, it's only barely passable after using magic hands to add invisibility to the mix as well, nowadays, the overawed Domi was able to pull it off by simply reciting the incantation to his memory, shadows color everything, I choose to dance on the edge of darkness, he recited the conveniently memorized incantation, fingers were able to penetrate the wall now, then legs, and finally his body, while his person could travel through walls, the spirit-eating energy within him could not, but the energy itself was penetrating, so when he used this magic, the spirit-eating magic appeared as a dark blue gradient mass, standing from the perspective of an onlooker, it looked like a ghostly fire wandering around, this magic was actually very similar to a skill that Kain had used, and in order to commemorate the fact that he had such a soul tutor as well as to save time, Duomi called it, shadow swiping steps, which was considered to be a displacement, escape, an assassination, decathlon type of magic, and it was comparable to the displacement sector's labor model, the efforts that should be made, he has done, and in the afternoon, he even did not forget to accept Atelier's destruction and devilish training in the North Fall Division base, all the rest of the time, except for eating, sleeping and going to the toilet, was used to absorb the pure spirit devouring energy within the finger bone, the density of the mutated spirit devouring energy in his body was climbing every moment, which meant that the damage of every punch he threw was growing at a rate visible to the naked eye. At this point, one would have to ask, why go through the trouble of boosting the power of a spirit eater when you can't use it in a formal battle? There were two answers. One, there was nothing left to do, and there was not much to boost it in a short period of time. Two, spirit eater energy had been fused with chi, and chi was something that could nourish the body like the forging method breathing, which equated to the mutated spirit eater energy nourishing the body as well. Alger is sleeping while he is getting stronger every moment. I really don't know what Alger should take to win himself tomorrow. 
P.S. A generalized chart of the rewards, skills and talents the protagonist has earned and learned so far is placed in the comment section of this paragraph. The next morning at 5 o'clock sharp, Domi still thundered on time at the top of the tower, absorbing the first mouthful of the purest fresh air between heaven and earth, completing the breathing cycle of the great circumference. Strength and sensitivity respectively added 0, 0, 0, 004, daily reward. The competition is coming up soon, and you still have the leisure to come here to recuperate? Domi didn't even need to think about it to know that the one behind him was Shay. Her life breath had long been memorized by Domi. He just said lightly, it's almost time for breakfast, will you give up breathing because of that? It seems you have enough certainty. That's natural. I never fight a battle I'm not sure of. With one last look at Domi's unfaltering back, Shay turned her back and headed for the stairs, saying before she left, I hope so, and by the way, Aunt Kelsey is calling you down for dinner, why didn't she call out like she did before, why don't you ask her yourself, well, it could be that Kelsey saw Shay go up and asked her to drop by with a message, when they came into the dining room, the whole family, except for Thea, seemed pretty worried about him, you could tell by the look in their eyes, Greta put down her knife and fork and opened up in a comforting tone, Domi, don't worry too much, it doesn't matter if you lose ah, after all, the other guy is three years older than you, when you grow up to the age of ten, you can beat him just as well, Carlos chimed in, your mother is right, winning and losing is a common thing, look on the bright side and it won't be hard, Edward and Argyle saw that their parents had spoken, and those of them who were big brothers couldn't not show it, so they also consoled, said Domi as if he thought he had already lost, he said with a bitter smile on his face, what? Everyone thinks I have no chance of winning? At least have some confidence in me. At that moment, everyone glanced over in unspoken agreement. The others probably thought it would be hard for Domi to win because of the fact that Alger had three extra years of development over Domi and had the strongest kendo talent, and both were also of the same type, favoring melee fighting over typical mage sparring, so that gave Domi even less of an advantage. When peers met peers, one had to go to death. That was the true meaning of chess. Carlos, on the other hand, felt that Domi, as a spirit eater, not only couldn't use magic, but was still admittedly weak in the early stages, and was naturally physically incapable of going toe to toe with Alger, who was armed with a great deal of skill, so losing was inevitable. So there was such a scene, only to hear a poof at her side, Shay are covering her small mouth and giggling, at least, I'll be cheering for you, hey, he let out a long sigh, since everyone didn't think he could win, he'd win for them, the competition didn't start until noon, before that, the tickets to enter the dragon's nest to watch it had already been put on sale in advance, hearing that it was the battle between Alger, today's leading teenager, and Dominic, the son of the Grand Duke. A lot of people had raised their interest, and the tickets were snapped up, and the arena, which could accommodate 80,000 people, was instantly filled to capacity. Some people even engaged in scalping at the gate. Actually, the identities of the dueling parties were not the main thing. Half of the audience inside were actually women, who from various trails had. They got the news that this was not just a mere competition, but a fatal battle between the two to decide who would be able to pursue the courtship of the Rose Princess. That's a lot of fun to watch. The joy attribute points were full, so they became the mainstay of the tickets, and another third of the remaining half of the men were their male friends or family members, hard pulled to watch together. Obviously, all of them were not short of money. Little rich girls one and all. Domi's eyes had long been on the group. Inside Moray's Nightwish Tavern. Well, well, well. It's all so much fun, isn't it? they have to pay for their blindness. Saying that, Domi picked up the wine cup and just took a sip into his stomach. Young master, no matter what others say, May and I are supporting you. Yes, yes, absolutely support you. We believe you can win. Looking at these two friends beside him who believed in him unconditionally, Domi definitely made everything before worthwhile. Shondo, since you guys believe in me so much, I can't let you down for nothing. He took out a piece of paper from his bosom and handed it to Mori. Mori who had already accumulated quite a bit of culture, instantly recognized what it was the official rules for opening the casino set up inside the dragon's nest. 80,000 people will be present at today's match between me and Alger, and there are plenty of people who want to bet on this surefire hand. Mori, bring all of Nightwish's liquid funds to bet on my win at that time. It will definitely allow us to raid all the money in the pockets of that group of guys with no eyes. Mori agreed dryly. This money was originally Domi's. He was also supported by Domi and he himself believed that Domi could win, so why hesitate? Then, then I will also bet on young master you win. May took out all the savings he had saved these days. Mori said that he wouldn't give May a single penny anymore because he had already overdrawn his salary to May in advance, but in reality, he would give her an extra amount of money every month. Ha, mouthy man, 
Of course Domi wouldn't turn down the opportunity to give May more money, the little girl was so poor. So let's take this opportunity to give her standard of living a hard boost. After eating a good lunch at night wish, the time for the competition was approaching. Before leaving, Mo Lei called out to Domi who was about to head to the dragon's nest. Young master, May and I have always believed in you, since the beginning. Well, thank you guys, wait and watch me take Alger's dog's head, but don't really kill him, young master. At this time, the audience had already entered, and the interior of the dragon's nest was filled with people, and as far as the eye could see there were densely packed heads, knowing that the bird's nest in the previous world could only accommodate nine, one W people. The dragon's nest was already close to this number. There is the equivalent of an Olympic audience to see themselves make a fool of themselves. TSK TSK TSK. At the very top of the audience, the odds between the two had reached an outrageous 112. That meant that if someone bet one gold dragon on Domi to win, he would be rewarded with 12 gold dragons, showing that most people didn't think Domi could win at all. He stood in the waiting aisle and sneered. It's not certain who the deer will win. Alger was standing in the waiting lane on the opposite side and the two seemed to be able to look at each other across the entire arena, where the line of sight collided arcs of electricity and sparks shot out in all directions. The voices from the nearer spectators could even be heard in the waiting tunnel. Hey, hey, who do you think will win? What's the point of guessing? Young Master Duomi only has beginner's magic talent and is so young. How can he beat Alger? He's known as the proud son of mankind, the pillar of our future to defeat the demon race. Both of them are so handsome. What if I don't want either one to lose? Don't come to the game with a love brain, okay? Shit, who are you calling a love brain, Kenzuka? Amidst the cacophony of exchanges, the countdown to the match drew to a close. Bang, buzz. As the gongs and drums were struck, the voices in the audience disappeared into thin air. The two sides in the waiting aisle took a step in unison and stepped inside the yellow sandstrun. Leveled arena, the gusty wind blowing, swirling sand and dust between the two men, whistling like the clash of generals against generals on the battlefield. Unleash prayer, peeps, designated object, hounds pace. A flash of transparent light flew over Domi, resetting the cooldown of the displacement skill with each pounce, and hounds pace no longer required a two-second CD. Donning a handsome trench coat made of dark moon slime gel kneaded together, he pulled out his secondary weapon, dagger night kill, and cast the weapon skill while invisible. A few seconds passed and the magic power within the crest refilled. The long gray hair tied into a high ponytail fluttered, and the trench coat hunted. For the first time, he showed a brand new full strength stance as his first opponent. Alger, be prepared to be thinned, putting harsh words on the chosen one before the battle in front of 10, 000 people watching. Villain value plus 5000. In the arena, of course, there were bleachers reserved for nobles, and at that moment there were eight chairs set up in a row. Sitting separately were the domes, Shay, and a charming, mature young woman as well as a young girl they had never seen before, about the same age as Argyle and the rest of them sitting right next to the young woman. Carlos, how did you let little Domi go up there and lose face in a match of such disparate strength? The young woman spoke to Carlos like she was an old friend who had known him for a long time, without any of the red tape between nobles. How can I say I arranged it? Alger wanted to challenge Domi, and Domi didn't refuse. So wouldn't it be like this now? And you as a father didn't stop him for a while? At this rate it's damaging the reputation of your old boo family nah. What's wrong with children fighting amongst themselves? Don't mind this. Just watch on. Maybe Domi can even perform some miracles. You old boy. You're all playing your own son for fun. The young woman was furious and said to herself, Domi ah, if you win, Auntie will definitely introduce AI way to you. I think it's good. Grace chimed in. This made Shia a little bit slightly dissatisfied. Mother Sama. The others weren't anxious, but the little girl beside the young woman was anxious on the spot. Fine. Just saying. Eh look quickly. It seems like they're about to fight. In the arena. Alger and Domi had already skipped the part of putting harsh words before the battle. One drew out his longsword and the other pulled out his dagger, slashing towards each other with a murderous aura. Alger Nan had the experience of killing enemies in battle before, his killing aura was leaking out, as if he was a teenage killing god. As for Domi, he wasn't a vegetarian either. Atelier's training, the assassination technique at the level of the gods, and the previous feat of single-handedly defeating hundreds of guards with one man's strength, made him dangerous like a viper hidden under the darkness. The killing auras of each other were indistinguishable for a while. When it was too late, just when the two were about to meet with their blades, Alger only made a fake move. His real target of attack was on Domi's dagger-wielding side. As long as he stabbed his arm and dislodged the weapon, it would be considered the end of this match. Take that, I'll make your loss look good. Ha, I haven't even let go yet. And you let up first? Big talk. Hound pace. 
Alger's eyes blinked, only to see a flash of lightning and thunder plus a surge of dragon cloaking, and Domi actually disappeared from view. Night killing, unleashed, at the moment of the attack, his entire body entered a stealthy state and like a ghost, he slashed a not too deep but not too shallow wound on Alger's spine. Was it that his attack was painless and did no damage? No, he had every chance to set his dagger on his neck and wipe it down, but it would be too pointless to end it like that, wouldn't it? So he decided to play patiently. The peppermint prayer effect triggered, and the two-second CD of Hound's pace ended immediately. When Alger swung back with his sword, Domi had long since disappeared into black mist entwined with electricity and appeared behind him once more. Night killing, stealth, and another female ticket to a slash. Each downward slash was precise on insignificant muscle parts, and didn't hurt his internal organs to make him unable to fight, because Domi knew every part of the human body like the back of her hand. He dismembered Alger's body like a butcher's knife. Just like this, in the midst of all the audience's dumbfounded stares, Kendo's pride of heaven, Alger was like a street rat, hard to be teased by Domi. Just teasing wasn't enough. Since he couldn't kill Alger directly, he would destroy Alger's Dao heart. I guess this could also harvest a big wave of villain value. The two of them were not relatives, so it didn't matter if they were a bit ruthless. He kept adding new wounds to Alger's body while taunting loudly, hating that everyone could hear him. Is that all you've got? Why don't you fight back? Villain value plus 5000. I told you, you look like you don't live up to your name. What swordsmanship genius? What teenage leader? Your sword. Can it touch the corner of my coat? Villain value plus 1W. Domi's speed was getting faster and faster and the wounds on Alger's body were getting more and more. The scarlet blood was like nails on the pillar of shame, rubbing his proud dignity on the ground. Speed. Extreme displacement brings extreme speed, before was far from his limit. The trench coat on his body fluttered around like a creepy charm. Every dead end he couldn't see. Yes that's right that's the look of hate that can't wait to kill me. You look like a clown in a circus with your impotent rage. Villain value plus 2W. Come on, use the sword you're so proud of. Use your ability to even need to let off steam and defeat me, okay, rubbish, villain value plus 5w, enough, Alger let out a snarl, and Domi backed away a distance to wait it out, young master Dominic, why do you use such despicable tactics in the honorable arena, is winning that important to you, so much so that you don't care about your reputation, as soon as these words came out, Shia said that it was not good, Alger had lost his cool, but some of the extreme viewers didn't think so, when Alger said that, they all felt that it was Alger who had a point, and immediately verbally attacked Domi. That's it. To actually use such despicable means to wear down your opponent's state. I was wrong about you. Aren't you good with daggers? Fight your opponent head on with a dagger. What's the point of being stealthy and running around all the time? For a moment, Domi was very reluctant to pay attention to these extreme and retarded spectators. But in order to smash Alger's Dao heart, he felt the need to clarify a bit. Despicable? Winning? Fame? Domi said slowly his voice the only thing that resonated throughout the arena, to define another's strengths as despicable, and in doing so negate all of the other's efforts. Do you want your opponent to compare his shortcomings to your strengths? Is this what you call being honorable? What a slip of the tongue. And Alger you need to understand that in my position, I haven't had to devolve myself to gain any notoriety from you, because you don't deserve it yet. Understand? Domi gagged all the braindead viewers, including Alger, with a few words, but that wasn't all. He continued. As for winning, since you want the victory so badly, how about this? Domi was seen inserting Night Slay back into the sheath at his waist, pinching the slime gel into tight-fitting gloves instead of boxing gloves and putting them on. He liked the magical side gloves better than the physical ones now. He crossed his fingers, moving his wrists and ankles, and said, I'm not going to bully you either, so as you wish, how about I give up my best and take my shortcomings against you? Who is known as the genius of Kendo? Looking at this, Domi made it clear that he was going to fight Alger with his bare hands? Day 12. 000 Day 3. 